Chapter 142 An Unexpected Misunderstanding After the internal clearing of e-corporation, both the work efficiency and the progress of the project had improved a lot. In just half a month, EU was ranked as the number one of the top 10 groups in the country. For a time it was hot in B-City and the directors of the major groups were competing to chase after EE. The chrysanthemums of early autumn were already in full bloom in the top floor of the president's office in E-Corporation. They were red and charming in stark contrast to the black and white colors of the past. President, I am you now, but you are still a celebrity and you are still a celebrity. Shin Yu sat casually on the table and teased with a smile. Yi Yi smiled and said coldly, don't compare me to that person. Shin Yu jumped off the table and said in disbelief, I don't think so, do I? You're still worried about that. Now that the popular young man has been suppressed by you to a pale white color, isn't he relieved yet? Yi Yi glanced coldly at him and asked, how is Yi Chin in prison? Although he was denied the right to appeal, the court did not sentence him for long, and he came out about two months later, said Shin Yu, who objected to the usual seriousness. Keep an eye on him. He has great ambitions. I'm afraid he will harm Xioma. Yi Ye's cold eyes flashed with a hint of ruthlessness and his words were ice cold. Shin Yun nodded thoughtfully and said hesitantly, we haven't finished this yet. Should we add another fire to him? What do you plan to do? Yi Ye looked at him leisurely, waiting for the answer. Shin Yu said with some apprehension, President, let's say that you can't blame me. Yi Ye thought for a moment and frowned, since I expected that I would be unhappy, then don't say anything. He knew in his heart what Shin Yu was trying to say. He had made the same mistake once and would not make it a second time. After a moment of silence, Shin Yu hesitated and said, Yichin doesn't have enough cash on hand to make a breakthrough in the business war. He may still start with someone beside you this time. Gu Yi or Xiaoma, maybe you'll have to give up one as bait. Yi Yi stared at him coldly and didn't say anything for a long time. The cold air around him made people not dare to look at him directly. Shin Yu knew that he had made a mistake and lowered his head to avoid looking at him. The silence inside the door caused the outsiders to be especially shocked. Little Lon came to the company at Butler's command to deliver information to Yi Yi. He did not want to hear this chilling remark before he entered the door. After a long while Yi Yi did not hear Little Lan's reply. He covered his exclamation in surprise and hurriedly turned around to leave. He gave the information to the secretariat as if he was fleeing. Some of the last time was not enough and they actually put their ideas on Madam and Little Young Master. Could it be that the gentleman's usual good deeds were all fake? No, she had to tell Madam everything. Little Lon made up his mind, and his footsteps became lighter and lighter. He took a taxi from the door and drove towards the impression media. She rushed to Gu Yi's office without stopping. She was still shocked, but she actually got the news that she had already left. She had no choice but to return to the old E Clan mansion. Coincidentally, Gu Yi was invited out for coffee by Lan Iran's agent as soon as she arrived at the office this morning. She hesitated repeatedly because she didn't want to. She could imagine that when Xiaoma was kidnapped, he had helped her. Afterwards, he was willing to appear in court to testify on Yi Ye's behalf. Together, this series of events made it difficult for her to refuse to allow anyone to leave a thousand miles away. Gu Ying clenched his phone tightly and did not leave. However, he arrived at the coffee shop in front of the company in a short while. Lan Iram was still used to sitting by the window. It was as if he was looking around. Please, Editor Gu. My artist has been waiting for you for a long time. The manager flattered her by opening the glass door of the hall. Gui did not say anything. She slowly walked to the table and sat down. She lowered her head and did not look at him. She secretly thought about her purpose for coming to see her this time. I'm going to country why, thanks to Lan Iran, I can't stay here anymore, said Yi Yi, still obsessed with her eyes as he stirred his coffee subconsciously. Gui paused for a moment and slowly raised her head. She looked at him apologetically and said, What do you want me to do for you? Lan Iran helplessly smiled bitterly and said indifferently, I don't want you to do anything. I just want to tell you something. Gui was rather surprised. She originally thought that he had called her here to plead with Yi Yi. She looked at him and waited for him to say the last thing. You have to be careful of Yi Yi. He was the one who planned Xiao Ma's disappearance this time. His goal was to use him as bait to lure out 10%. Otherwise, why do you think he would find Xiao Ma so quickly? Gui looked at him in disbelief and stood up from her chair. She said unhappily, please don't say anything like this in the future. Lai Yuran stood up calmly, his face full of loneliness. He said in a deep voice, the death of a human being is also a kind thing to say. I have said all of this. 
Believe it or not, it's up to you. After saying that, he turned around and left. The agent followed closely behind him, leaving Gui in a daze. He slowly stood up and watched as Lani Ran disappeared outside the door. Her delicate brows knitted slightly. She did not believe a word he said. Yi Yi loved Xiaoma so much and had been shot for her. How could she be harmed? Gui returned to the company with a bit of disappointment. The scene of working together with Lan Iran was still vivid in her mind. Regardless of acting skills or looks, he was a good actor. It was a pity that he had caused such a scene today. Turning on the computer and making herself a cup of coffee, Gui slowly sat in front of the computer and revised her script. Arya's image had gradually enriched, and she believed that her new script would soon start filming. However, she did not know how Yi would react when she saw this movie and television image based on her. A sweet and bitter smile blossomed on her lips. In three months, they would be separated. The little things that she had spent with him in the past seemed to ripple in her heart like a playback. It turned out that she had already gotten used to living with him unknowingly. The afternoon passed in a dazed and busy state. With the rustling sound of the tip of the pen on the paper, the sun's shadow gradually tilted to the west. Gui looked up at the clock on the wall. It was getting late. She picked up her handbag and walked out. When she returned home, it was already dusk. As soon as Gui entered the hall, she was surrounded by the fragrant smell of food. The quiet sweetness of time slowly flowed in her heart. Madam, sir, you haven't finished your business yet. You won't be coming back tonight. Butler took the bag from her hand and said respectfully. Gui frowned slightly. Her amber eyes were filled with disappointment. The matter with the group had not come to an end some time ago. Why was she so busy now? Walking slowly to the dining room for dinner, the taste was like chewing wax. Xiaoma Gulin teased strangely, Mommy, do you miss your father? Guyi's face turned slightly red as she nodded at Xiaoma's nose and said solemnly, hurry up and eat. After that, there's still homework to do. Xiaoma curled his lips and didn't say anything else. He just took a big bite out of the food and thought to himself, it looks like he can only accept Yi Yi as his father. Mommy has already fallen into it. Little Lan stood at the side and saw Gui put down her chopsticks to go back to the bedroom. He immediately followed her and looked nervously from time to time, as if he was afraid of being sent down by someone else. Gui turned around and closed the door only to see her nervously following her. She smiled warmly and said, Little Lan, what's the matter? Little Lan shook his head and looked back. He quickly closed the door. Gui took two steps back and looked at her strange behavior with a puzzled expression. Just as she was about to ask, Little Lan knelt down in front of her with a complicated expression. Gui was stunned, then went to pull her up and said in surprise, Speak slowly if you have anything to say. She looked at Little Lan's struggling face and comforted him in a slow voice. The only thing on her left was to shatter the dishes in dishes. If they weren't good enough, they would be antiques. She told Yi Yi properly and believed that he wouldn't make things difficult for her. Little Lan refused to get up. He lowered his head and didn't dare to look at her. He said guiltily, Madam, I'm sorry. It's because I'm too cowardly to tell you. Seeing her reaction, Gu Yi was even more surprised. She predicted that things would not be that simple. She said softly, get up first. After saying that, he pulled her to sit on the sofa. Little Lan looked at her gentle face. Her tears were like broken beads. She could not help but sob for a long time. That day, I went to deliver tea to Mr. Shinyu and accidentally heard him and Mr. Little Young Master talking about Little Young Master's kidnapping. She told Gu Yi little by little what she had heard. After she finished speaking, she heaved a sigh of relief and explained, I'm very scared, but seeing that Madam is getting more and more sad because of what happened in Little Young Master, I'm very sad in my heart, but I don't dare to tell you that I'm sorry, Madam. After saying that, her voice became softer and softer. Gu Yi's amber eyes were filled with shock. She could not believe that all of this was true. When Lan Iran told her about this, the suspicions in her heart were quickly suppressed by her. There might have been a misunderstanding between them after spending so much time together, but she was sure that he was sincere towards Xiao Ma and herself. But now, all of this was like a joke, mocking her ignorance and childishness. Madam, what's wrong with you? Don't scare me. Little Lan saw her looking out of the window absent-mindedly silent for a long time, and shook her arm nervously. Gu Yi slowly regained her senses. Her amber eyes were empty as she looked at little Lan. She asked dully, is what you said true? Did Yi say it himself? Little Lan nodded his head seriously. His simple appearance was as pure as a mountain stream. Gu Yi smiled self-deprecatingly. How could she lie to herself? 
How ridiculous. She actually suspected such a simple child in order to free Ee. -E. Madam, I'm sorry to make you so sad. Little Lon held her hand and whispered, not daring to look at her. Gui smiled miserably and patted her shoulder to comfort her. It's not your fault. Thank you for telling me. Little Lon suddenly grabbed Gu Yi's hand tightly as if she remembered something. Originally, I wanted to rot this matter in my stomach when I saw little young master return safely. But today, I heard that Mr. Gu wants to push you and little young master out for the sake of the group, so I can't help but tell you the truth. All right, I see. What do you plan to do next? Forcibly suppressing the grief in her heart, Gu Yi asked calmly. Seeing that she didn't blame herself in the slightest, little Lan finally heaved a sigh of relief and said, I'm not working here anymore. I want to go to the training class to study first. After saying that, she slowly walked out the door, leaving time for Gui to think about it. Chapter 143 A Heated Quarrel Late at night, the cool night breeze blew on his face, making him especially sober. The bedroom window was wide open, and Gui stood by the window, letting the night breeze disrupt her silk hair. She understood everything in her heart. These past few months have been nothing more than a play. Both he and Xiaoma were nothing more than a chess piece in his hand. He had never cared about their safety and feelings. The bone-chilling coldness and sour made her heart numb. Little Lan's words struck her sensitive atrium. She couldn't believe that his anxiety and busy schedule during the days when Xiaoma disappeared were all faked. Or maybe he was just hiding something from her as if it was today. Butler said that he was working overtime at the company, but he was just planning to use her or Xiaoma as bait. It was pitch black in front of Yi Yi when he entered the room. He fumbled and turned on the light. He looked up and saw Gu Ili standing in front of the window with a look of refusal. Why don't you turn on the lights? Yi Yi clung to her, walked to her side, softly whispered, bent down and wrapped her in his arms. Gu Yi let go of his hand coldly. Her amber eyes looked into his eyes with hatred. She asked in a deep voice, did you plan to kidnap Xiaoma to deal with Yi Chen? A trace of shock flashed through Yi Yi's cold eyes. He then calmly nodded his head and said indifferently, everything is over. There is no need for us to dwell on that matter. Gui looked at him in shock. Her delicate face was filled with disbelief. She asked, using Xiaoma's safety as a bargaining chip, can you pass with such a light sentence? At the same time, he turned his face away, not wanting to talk more. Yi Yi stroked her shoulders comfortably and slowly said, I've arranged everything well. He won't be in danger. Xiaoma was his own flesh and blood, so how could he really let his eyes see him in danger? However, due to the guilt in his heart, he didn't want to say more. Gui shook off his hand and turned away from him. She could not believe that Yi Yi had actually downplayed all of this. The grievances suffered by Xiaoma, her uneasiness and anxiety were nothing compared to Yi Corporation in his eyes. Mr. E, I think this scene can end here. Gui turned her back to him and said calmly, your goal has been achieved. There is no need for our contract to last for another three months. Tomorrow, I will leave with Xiaoma. She didn't want to stay in this place for a minute, nor did she want to see the person in front of her. As soon as Gui finished speaking, Iya's cold gaze almost burst out with sparks. She stared fixedly at her. Originally, she wanted to say something soft to persuade her, but she didn't expect that the moment she said it, she would threaten, if you choose to leave now and break the contract, then I won't give you a single cent of ten million. Whatever you want. Gui turned around and left the window. She walked to the cabinet and packed up her things. You also saw that he had already decided to ask her to stay, but you didn't know what to say. Who the hell told her these words? Stay. Yi Yi paced to her side and spoke indifferently. His tightly wrapped hands revealed the unease in his heart. How could she leave him? He had already planned the woman in front of him and Xiaoma for his future life, and his heart was filled with sour feelings. The inexplicable emotions made his heart even angrier. Yi Yi looked down at Gui with a cold gaze and couldn't help but ask, What do you want? Gui packed up her clothes and only packed a few of the clothes she had brought into her suitcase. She did not even look at the beautiful clothes Yi Yi bought for her. Her amber eyes were cold and resolutely did not have the slightest room to change. Her neither coldness nor coolness finally irritated Yi Yi. He abruptly stepped forward and held her tightly in his arms. He whispered in her ear in a low voice, Let's turn the page, shall we? Gui let him hold her. She neither resisted nor struggled. She just looked at him with a cold face. The vigilance in her eyes was like a captured little beast. She no longer had the love and wholehearted dependence she used to have. Keep us so we can use me and Xiaoma as bait again? Gui sneered and asked back. Her words were full of ridicule and her distant gaze pierced Iya's heart fiercely. 
Who told you? Yi Yi grabbed her shoulder and asked. Since you've done it, are you afraid that others will say it? Gu Yi did not answer him directly and endured the pain on her shoulder with a mocking expression. Yi Yi was enraged by her words and his temples jumped. He tightened his face and tried to restrain his emotions. He slowed down his tone and said, As long as you are willing to stay, everything is up to you. Gu Yi sneered and finally raised her eyes to look at him. She firmly said, Not everything can be measured in terms of money. As she spoke, she pushed away the nighttime grip, closed the packed suitcase and pretended to go out. Was everything including human feelings priced in his heart? Her expression was gloomy, leaving behind only a back view for him, not even willing to look back. The creaking sound of the door shook Iya's nerves. In the dead of night, the wheels of the suitcase rubbed against the floor, making a sound that stirred the emotions of the two of them. She was his and he would never allow her to leave. Yi suddenly raised her cold eyes. She strode forward and grabbed her wrist. She closed the door fiercely in front of Gu Yi and shouted, As long as I'm here, you can't leave. He gripped Gu Yi's hand and threw her fiercely onto the bed. The suitcase on the side lost its support and fell to the ground with a bang, as if the relationship between the two of them had been completely broken. Gu Yi was thrown to the ground and before she could struggle to get up, Yi Yi bullied her and pressed her beneath her. Let go. Gu Yi struggled endlessly, her slender arms pushing against his chest, but Sameo couldn't pull the distance between the two of them apart. The smell of smoke with a faint mint made her slightly dizzy. Her amber eyes were somewhat blurry and then she woke up. The man in front of her was not the Yi Yi in her heart, but a businessman who could play tricks on people. Let go of you. Which man are you looking for, huh? When Yi Yi thought of her meeting with Lan Iran in private today, her cold eyebrows flashed. No matter who it is, they won't use their children like you, Gui said without fear. Her chest heaved violently in anger, but she did not know that this was a beautiful scenery in Iya's eyes. Her unreserved words successfully enraged Iyi. His cherry blossom face, flushed red lips, and fresh grapefruit fragrance intoxicated him. Her hot lips pressed down fiercely, ravaging the people below her without any pity. The tossing and turning between her lips and teeth unceremoniously blocked Guyi's words. She opened her mouth to bite him, but Yi Yi grabbed her chin before her, becoming even more arrogant and corroding her. Gu Yi could not move in his arms and had no room to resist. Yi Ye's cold eyes were bloodshot. The pagoda beneath him wanted to be released, but all reason and logic disappeared. There was only one thought left in his mind he wanted to monopolize this woman so that she wouldn't leave. Gradually Gu Yi was fascinated by the entanglement of his lips and teeth. Her chest suddenly cooled down, allowing her consciousness to instantly return to its original position. What did he want to do? Did he think that he would be able to retain her like this ridiculously? The scorching lips gradually moved down from her delicate lips, giving Gu Yi a moment to catch her breath. While struggling, she said unwillingly, let go, don't let me hate you. Yi Yi raised his head and looked at her with confidence. She actually used such a serious word, and her clear eyebrows became even more crazy. No matter what, it was impossible for him to let her leave with her child and throw her into the embrace of others. As she pushed forward, Gu Yi's cherry blossom complexion became even redder. She tightly grabbed her collar and was about to leave. She did not want to have anything to do with this man anymore. The disgust at the corner of her eyebrow stung Yi Yi deeply, and he was tired of pushing his hands away. He held her hands high above his head and bent his head down again to wantonly brand his own red marks on her exquisite white collarbones. I won't let go of you no matter what. Die this heart. That hoarse voice was exceptionally low and mellow, but it sounded extremely ear-piercing to Gu Yi. Since he was only a chess piece, why did he have to force him so hard? Her amber eyes blurred as she looked at him. She always knew that you also had desires for yourself. Perhaps this was a man's weakness. Only after obtaining it could she let go calmly. She lowered her slender arms and resigned herself to stop struggling. If she used this night to exchange for Xiaoma and her freedom in the future, then she would admit it. Yi Yi felt the gentleness of his subordinates and slowly relaxed his grip on her. He enjoyed the sweetness of his delicate body. Five years ago, he knew how charming she was. Now she was more delicious than before, making him unable to let go of it. Gu Yi gritted her teeth and endured the throbbing waves he had brought to her. She tightly clutched the sheets beneath her and barely sealed the tender roars she was about to utter in her red lips. Seeing her endurance, Yi Yi teased her even more maliciously, continuously mobilizing all her senses until a lazy and tender cry came from the side before she relaxed the grinding between her lips and teeth. Seeing that his movements had slowed down, Gu Yi heaved a sigh of relief. 
However, the stinging pain under her body caused her pale face to feel the same pain and humiliation as it did five years ago. His invasion was accompanied by pain and humiliation. Gui bit her lower lip tightly and turned her face to the side. She buried her face deep into the pillow. She secretly comforted herself that everything would be fine after tonight, but her wrong tears were still hidden in the pink pillowcase like pearls with broken threads. Yi Yi noticed her peculiarity and looked at her purple lower lips with distress. He slowly imprinted his blazing lips on hers. He rubbed and doted on her. His large warm palm also created sparks on her body without stopping. Only when he felt her delicate body gradually soften did he completely gallop away. A full moon was hanging by the window. In the pitch black night, the starry river was brilliant. The night wind slowly passed through the window and he could not bear to disturb the tender and loving people on the Chapter 144 Don't Think About Seeing Xiao Emo Again The next morning, warm sunlight poured down on the room, warming the body. The birds chirped crisply outside the window, disturbing the silence of the room. Yi Yi slowly opened her cold eyes and saw Gu Ying's pink face. She was a small ball and hid in her embrace. There were traces of tears on her cheeks and the pillow was also wet. Her burning gaze was tightly locked onto her body and a wisp of heartache flowed between her eyes. The hands around her waist became tighter and tighter and there was not a single gap between the two of them. Hearing the even breathing sound in his ears, Yi Ye's heart was calm. Recalling last night's satisfaction, a satisfied smile slowly blossomed on his lips. His cold eyebrows were still slightly warm. At this moment, Yi Yi felt that she had the whole world in her arms. Last night, her obedience made him eat marrow and no taste. Did this mean that she was willing to forgive her? He quietly watched her frowning face while she was asleep. No matter what, he would not let her leave his side. Thinking like this, Yi Yi picked up the phone at the bedside and gave his orders to the other end of the phone in a cold voice. The faint sound of conversation made Gu Yi let out a subconscious dream talk. Then she opened her pair of drowsy eyes and the drops of last night instantly surged into her heart. A wisp of sour feeling blossomed at the corner of her eyes. She glanced at Yi Yi, then grabbed the quilt in front of her and turned around. The slippery cold hair slipped past Yi Yi's palm and before he could finish it slipped away. His cold eyebrows were slightly lonely. He supported Gu Yi's shoulder and said softly, breakfast is ready. Gu Yi looked up at the clock on the wall. It was almost nine o'clock and Xiaoma should have gone to school. Since you've already gotten what you want, let me go. The hoarse female voice was exceptionally bleak and Yi Ye's heart was cold. She thought he could let go after last night? Yi Yi stood up first, grabbed his pajamas and slowly put them on his shoulders. Breakfast first, he said without a doubt. Gu Yi tightly grabbed the blanket in front of her. Her pajamas had been torn apart and could no longer be worn. Yi Yi was right in front of her again. She stood beside her with big thorns. She shrank back and did not dare to go out. Seeing through her predicament, Yi Yi took a silk nightgown from the wardrobe and put it on the bedside and went out. Bang! The door slammed shut, causing Gu Yi's heart to tremble. In an instant, she couldn't help but burst into tears. Forcefully enduring the pain on her body, she reluctantly got up and went to the bathroom to tidy herself up. The blue and purple on her body were all left behind by Yi Yi. In her eyes it was especially dazzling. She desperately washed her body, trying to dilute the aura left behind by the night on her body. Yi Yi had been waiting for her for a long time when he got to the dining room, and when he saw her coming, he immediately asked the servants to serve the porridge. Gu Yi's expression was cold. Her gaze was cold as she looked at the man sitting in front of her. She glanced at the servants again. She did not see little Lan so she was slightly relieved. She thought that she should have resigned. Yi Yi looked at her and opened his mouth. In the end he didn't say anything. The two of them were silent and eating breakfast. After a bowl of porridge, Gu Yi slowly got up and walked towards the bedroom. Yi Yi put down her chopsticks and followed her. As soon as he entered he saw her carrying a suitcase and wanting to leave. You don't want to see Xiaoma anymore? He said softly. Gu Yi immediately stopped and turned to look at Yi Yi indifferently. I'll go to school to find him, she said disdainfully. He's not at school. Yi Yi paused word by word, his cold eyes meaningfully looking at Gu Yi. Gu Yi was surprised and dropped her bag on the ground. She hurriedly walked to Yi Yi and asked, What do you mean? Did Xiaoma get kidnapped, or? She panicked. Could it be that she was a step too late? Did they already start implementing the plan that little Lan had mentioned? Where did you take the child? Gu Yi grabbed his collar and questioned him. Her pair of watery eyes stared straight into his eyes, determined to almost spit out fire. 
Don't worry, he's very safe. However, if you don't give up the idea of leaving, you won't be able to see him for a day. Yi did not mind her actions. He stared at her in a leisurely manner, his burning gaze filled with threats and playfulness. You're shameless. Gui loosened her collar and fell to the ground. She accepted her fate and closed her eyes. After a while, she calmed down and said, All right, I promise you that I will leave after the three-month contract expires. Can I see Xiaoma now? Yi Yi put the suitcase and bag neatly to the side and then sat beside him. Her clear body was close to hers and the overwhelming pressure made Gu Yi unable to breathe. I mean to keep you by my side for a long time. The contract will not be counted. Yi Ye's gaze was burning as he looked at her. His cold eyebrows were filled with unquestionable determination. Also, I've already asked for a month's leave from the company. You should calm down at home. Gui looked up at him coldly and said in disbelief, You want to trap me here? Yi hugged her tightly and muttered, Don't leave me, okay? Gui let him hug her, her stiff body did not react at all. What was ridiculous was that she actually heard a few pleas in his voice. He had always followed his own path and did not even consider his own feelings. Yi raised his head from her neck and looked at her cold and stiff face. The tenderness between his cold eyebrows instantly disappeared. He said stiffly, there's nothing you can do to understand me like this. Unless you give up the idea of leaving, you'll never see Xiaomu again. Gu Yi's slender hands were twisted together and her face was full of struggles. There was nothing she could do. He hit Xiaomu and locked herself in the old E Corporation mansion. She had no choice. I won't be at your mercy. She turned her face away, not looking at Yi, her amber eyes full of determination. Yi Yi was secretly shocked. He knew her temperament. If she was in a hurry, she was willing to do something too extreme. He held her wrist tightly and threatened in a low voice, I've already asked Butler to find little Lon. I'll let her serve you during this period of time. If anything goes wrong with you, I won't spare her. Gui looked at him in surprise. She didn't expect that he could use such a method to force her. How can you do this? Yi Yi hooked up her chin and slowly stroked it. Her cold voice carried a hint of seriousness as she said in a deep voice, As long as you promise not to leave me, I will give you everything you want. I don't want a person who treats me and my child as business pawns. Gu Yi's cold voice was filled with extreme anger. Yi Yi looked at her calmly. Suddenly his tyrannical lips pressed down on her, enjoying her sweetness to the fullest. He tossed and turned with anger and was not gentle at all. Oh Gu Yi was caught off guard by his actions. She struggled to let go of him. The push of her hands did not draw any distance between the two of them. Instead, Yi Ye's hand was tightly pressed against her back and pushed her towards her. Pa! With a crisp sound, Gu Yi uncontrollably slapped her hand on Yi Ye's cold face. She looked at her hand in shock and the redness on Yi Ye's face. She unconsciously shrank back to the sofa. Yi Ye stroked his cheeks and a cold smile bloomed on his lips. His eagle-like gaze was firmly locked onto her and he said indifferently, Who was it last night that was courting under me? Why did she become a virgin woman today? Please let me go. Gui pleaded in sorrow. Her amber eyes were pitiful and piercing to Iya's eyes. Since you've already contaminated me, don't even think about escaping. Iyi bent down, his handsome face pressing against her charming face and said coldly, we are legally married. Is it so difficult for you to fulfill your wife's obligations? Gui curled up and kept retreating. However, after two steps, her back was already tightly pressed against the back of the sofa. She did not understand that she and Xiaoma were just chess pieces. Why did he have to tangle with her so bitterly? Let me and Xiaoma go free. I'm willing to be your bait again. Gui took a deep breath and said slowly. If she insisted on letting someone enter a dangerous situation and finish the contract for him, she would rather do it on her own. Enough. Don't mention this matter again in the future. Yi Yi grabbed her shoulder fiercely, his large palm almost clenched into her flesh. Gui gritted her teeth and endured the pain on her shoulder. She said word by word, what exactly do you need to do to let me go? No matter what, I won't let you go again. Yi e gritted his teeth and said sternly, I've lost to you. I love you, don't leave me. He stared fixedly at Gui, his pitch black eyes staring straight into her eyes, almost looking into the depths of her soul. Gui was shocked by his low roar and looked at him in disbelief. He said he loved her. After a moment of surprise, Gui immediately woke up. Her blurry eyes were filled with disbelief. What kind of trick was this? She had already promised him that she would be willing to be the bait. Why would he feed this fish that he had already caught? I've already promised you, why fire this kind of sugar-coated cannonball at me? 
Gu Yi's exquisite face was full of ridicule as she raised her eyes to look at him. Yi Yi let go of his grip on her dejectedly. He put down his pride and self-esteem. This was the first time he had confessed to a woman in such a low voice. He didn't expect that the response he received would be like this. What did she think she was? How many women outside would automatically lie on the bed and be picked with a wave of her hand? She actually didn't know what was good for her. I'll give you a month to think about my words. Iya's face was ashen as she said fiercely. Don't tell me that this stupid woman didn't know what her words meant. She could easily get the seat of hostess of E-Corporation, but she didn't care about it. Gui immediately replied in less than a month, my answer is very clear. I want to leave with Xiaoma. Yi turned around abruptly. His large palm brushed past Gu Yi's face a few centimeters away and smashed fiercely onto the sofa. His eyes turned red and he said sternly, No matter what your answer is, I will lock you up beside me. The only difference is whether you are willing or unwilling. He slowly got up and straightened his tie. He looked at her indifferently and said coldly, Do you want to make yourself feel better? Choose. After saying that, he turned around and left. Gu Yi tightly pulled on the collar of her clothes that he had just pulled open. She looked blankly at the tightly closed door, and a pa 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 sound echoed. She knew that she could not leave without his permission. Where the hell is Shyama now? What should he do with the new film he had on hand after asking for a month's leave unknowingly? Chapter 145 Helpless Compromise Little Lan slowly walked through the door and saw Gu Yi sitting on the sofa with an expressionless face. Her lonely eyes looked out of the window, filled with desire. Madam, have some soup. She put the soup bowl on the coffee table, then closed the window and advised, Madam, it's cold. You'll catch a cold if you keep blowing like this. Gui turned to look at her and said with a hint of sadness, This is the only window I can see right now. Little Lan took her hand and comforted her softly, Madam, why don't you give Mr. Yi a soft drink, so that at least you can go out and think of a way, even if you leave later. Gui looked up at her and smiled bitterly. She helplessly said, as long as he doesn't want to let go, I won't be able to escape. She held little Lan's hand and asked anxiously, have you heard from Xiaoma? Is he well now? Where is he now? Mr. Little Young Master was transferred to a noble school. That school is boarding and little young master comes back once a month. He has a good time there. Little Lan told her everything he knew about the recent events. Half a month later, she finally heard the news about Xiaoma. She finally felt relieved. In fact, Yi had deliberately let Butler leak this to Little Lan. He had also deliberately brought her to deliver daily necessities to Xiao Ma so that she could tell Gu Yi about this. Only in this way could Gu Yi feel at ease. Madam, sir has placed more than 20 bodyguards in the school, which is enough to ensure little young master's safety. It seems that we have wrongly blamed sir, said little Lan timidly. She had only heard half of what she had heard that day, and Butler had made it clear to her. Gui sneered and patted her hand. She slowly got up and walked to the window. He had always been like this. Last time, in order to make the play realistic, she had even specially photographed Shen Yu to take care of Xiao Ma. This time, it was such a big battle. What did he want to do? Little Lan, tell Yi Yi that I want to see him. Gu Yi suddenly shouted. She could no longer hide like this and allow Yi Yi to control her. Little Lan thought she had figured it out and immediately replied, Well, sir is in the hall now, and I'll go and tell him. She had always felt uneasy about telling Gui about this matter, but now that Madam had finally thought about it, she felt a little more comfortable. After dinner, Yi Yi finished his business and slowly went upstairs. It had been half a month since he had seen that little woman so that she could calm down. It seemed that she had finally figured it out, or was it going to have a bigger break with him? When he opened the door and saw Jiao Yin, who had been away for a long time, Yi Yi's heart couldn't help but be moved. He slowly walked to Gu Yi's side, his cold voice implying some uneasiness and unease that he had never felt at the international negotiating table. Have you thought it through? Gu Yi stood up from the sofa and looked straight into his eyes. She said slowly, I've thought about it. As long as you don't use me and Xiaoma anymore, I'm willing to stay behind and be your nominal Mrs. E. In a short sentence, Yi Ye's clear eyebrows knitted again and he said coldly, I don't want a husband and wife in name. Don't go too far. Gu Yi's voice was cold and fierce. She was already extremely regretful that night. Could it be that he still wanted? If you have a need, you can go find another woman. I won't fulfill any other obligations except for a name. Gu Yi walked to the window and didn't want to look at him any longer. Yi Yi followed her closely, her cold gaze filled with displeasure. So that was how she thought about herself. 
I don't care what you think, but I advise you not to play any other tricks. Otherwise, I will definitely not give you custody of Xiaoma. Yi cold voice struck straight into her heart, causing her heart to chill. I know. Gui looked at him and said helplessly. Xiaoma was injured in front of him. With Yi swift and swift methods, he had no chance of winning in front of him. What else could he do but obey her? Yi nodded and wrapped her in his embrace. He raised her chin and questioned, is this your sincere words or your strategy of holding back? Gui turned her head away and didn't look at him anymore, but Yi Yi refused. She forcefully grabbed her chin and let her look straight into her eyes. Gui couldn't beat him and said hesitantly, Xiao Ma is in your hands, what else can I do? Yi Yi let go of the grip on her and lowered her hands weakly. How could she accept him sincerely? What exactly do you want? Yi Yi asked sharply. Gui rubbed her shoulders and said coldly, I'm afraid I should be the one asking you this, right? Yi looked at her angrily and put his hand down on the wall with great force. Boom. He said sternly, I will conquer you sooner or later. Gui looked back at him coldly and said coldly, I've already promised you, can I go to work tomorrow? Yi stared at her with a burning gaze. Her pitch black eyes were filled with anger. Could it be that she was not as important as working and filming in her heart? Whatever you want. Lung Fong put down a sentence, then slammed the door and left. He did not dare to stay with her any longer, afraid that his anger would hurt her. Looking at the tightly shut door, before the sound of locking could be heard, Gu Yi's empty eyes gradually brightened. She hesitated and tried to push the door open. Ka Bie, the door was really opened by her from inside. A burst of ecstasy swept her away. She really could go out. The sound of footsteps came from afar. A faint tall figure reflected the dim night lights, causing Gu Yi to hurriedly close the door. Yi Yi, didn't he already leave? Why did he come back? He brutally kicked the door open and entered with a bit of alcohol in his mouth. His cold eyebrows lost their previous self-control and instead carried a bit of blurry and scorching heat. He walked towards Gu Yi step by step. Gu Yi looked at him in surprise, her eyebrows slightly knitted. Was he drunk? She was no longer indifferent, leaving behind only a bit of warmth and intoxication. When she regained her senses, Yi Yi had already walked in front of her. She retreated step by step until she stopped beside the bed. You're drunk. Gu Yi pushed him. The pungent smell of alcohol lingered around her body, causing her mind to become somewhat smoky. Although she had promised him not to leave for the time being, she did not want to get involved with Yi Yi anymore. Yi Yi's fiery gaze locked onto her body. He grabbed her slender wrist and pushed her back. I'm not just drunk, I'm crazy. He said sternly. He was crazy, he was simply poisoned by this woman in front of him. Gui was so scared by his fierce appearance that she fell on the bed. Before Yi Yi bullied her, a fiery kiss landed on her face. She cried out in alarm and was completely sealed in her mouth before she could exit. Gu Yi's eyes widened. She could not breathe because of his intense actions. All the struggles in her hands were rejected by him. His large paw moved around her waist and waves of excitement almost made her unable to think. Let go of me. Gu Yi abruptly bit his lower lip. A bloody smell exploded between their lips and teeth. The stinging pain between their lips made him relax. It also gave Gu Yi a moment to catch her breath and express the rejection in his heart. Follow me and I'll take you to see Xiaoma tomorrow. Yi Yi disdainfully wiped the blood from the corner of her lips and whispered into her ear. He hadn't seen her for half a month. He was thinking about the little woman beneath him. He abandoned his pride and pride and said his words to her. However, she disdainfully scoffed at him. He suppressed the emotions in his heart and didn't come looking for her again. It was not easy for her to let go of her words today, and she agreed not to leave again. She did not expect that she would close the door in a panic the moment she saw her. How can you be so heartless? Gu Yi is your heart made of stone. Don't tell me you really don't feel how good I am to you? Yi Yi pressed down on her shoulder and slowly stroked her delicate jaw. The numb itchiness made her involuntarily groan. Gu Yi then covered her mouth. She couldn't believe that this soft voice was actually coming from her mouth. Yi Yi, I'm not a casual woman. Please don't make things difficult for me like this again. Gu Yi said angrily, her hands constantly pushing back, refusing to approach his forehead. Seeing her suddenly struggle, Yi Yi held her hands high above his head and said again. Don't you really want to see Xiaoma? After she woke up, she could only blame him. Gu Yi heard what his hoarse voice was saying and immediately stopped struggling. She looked at him in surprise and asked in disbelief, Can we really go see Xiaoma? Yi Yi blew a mouthful of hot air into her ear and said in a low voice, Of course. 
As he spoke, he bent down and put her snow-white earlobe between his lips and teeth and said ambiguously, Will you obey me now? Gu Yi accepted her fate and closed her eyes, her hands powerlessly hanging on both sides of her body. Seeing her compliant appearance, Yi Yi felt even more depressed. Could it be that this was the only way he could force her to submit to him? Under the influence of alcohol, reason had gradually moved away from his brain. Losing his mind, leaving everything to instinct was not necessarily a bad thing. His hot lips worshipped the trembling body beneath him. Yi Yi reached out to turn off the headlights beside him, leaving behind only a dim bedside lamp. The two of them were entangled in each other's bodies. The moon shadow outside the window was also in the thin clouds, afraid that he would disturb the silence of this room. The stars blinked at the side and scattered in the pitch-black night. This night was full of intoxication. The next morning, when Gui woke up, her side was already empty. Yi had already gone to work. She rubbed her aching waist and looked up at the clock on the wall. It was almost noon and it was just in time to see Xiaoma. Gu Yi barely suppressed the grievances and humiliation in her heart and forcefully walked to the bathroom to clean herself up. She didn't even want to look at herself in the mirror. After hastily washing her face, she left the bedroom. The residual smell of excitement in the room almost drove her crazy. As soon as he entered the hall, Butler greeted him and said respectfully, Madam, before you left, Sir has already instructed me to arrange a car to take you to Little Young Master School. Everything he has brought is already prepared. Gui nodded. She had always had a good impression of the old man in front of her and said slowly, Thank you, Uncle Lee. Seeing that she might be right, Butler smiled and tried to persuade her, Madam, please relax. Mr. Little Young Master has taken good care of her. It's good if there's any misunderstanding between the husband and wife. Let's fight at the head of the bed and at the end of the bed. Gui nodded and did not want to explain further. Then she went out and got into E-Clan's car. The scenery in front of the car window quickly retreated, and her heart also became nervous. It had been half a month since she had seen him. She wondered if Xiaoma was fat or thin now, and if she should tell him the truth about his kidnapping? Chapter 146 Conceal the Truth the car stopped at the entrance of the noble school. Gui couldn't wait to get out of the car and enter. Xioma ran towards her from afar. She waved her hand and said in surprise, Mommy. Gui squatted down and looked at her son who was hugging her thigh tightly. Her eyes couldn't help but get wet. She snorted at the edge of her mouth and said slowly, How is Xiaoma doing here? Xioma looked up at Gui and said happily, Mommy, you have to believe me. As a handsome boy, I won't lose too much popularity anywhere. Narcissistic and smelly look appeared on her son's face again. Gui tightly held Xiaoma in her arms and said softly, It's not hard to study. You've lost a lot of weight. Xiaoma got out of Gu Yi's embrace and patted her chest nonchalantly. Dad said that it's impossible to do a good job without a little hard work. The sooner you work, the higher your achievements will be. That's why Xiaoma transferred to the school. Mommy, what good stuff did you bring to Xiaoma on your business trip? He said, grabbing Gu Yi's sleeve as if he suddenly remembered something. The driver took out all the things in the trunk and respectfully walked to Gu Yi and Xiaoma. Little young master, here are some gifts that Mr. and Mrs. Gu ordered for you. I'll help you bring them back to the dormitory first. You and Mrs. Gu can chat slowly. Gu Yi looked at the driver's back with a complicated expression. Was this Yi Ye's intentional order or was it his careless mistake? If he took advantage of the fact that no one was paying attention to take Xiaoma away now, where could they go? Mommy, what are you thinking? Will Xiaoma take you to lunch? Xiaoma shook Gu Yi's hand and greedily said, The school food is delicious. Mommy, you didn't miss Xiaoma. Daddy said that you will be on a business trip for a long time this time. I didn't expect you to be back in half a month. Gu Yi lowered her head to look at Xiaoma's innocent little face, her eyes shining deeply. So that's what he said to Xiaoma. Does Xiaoma like this place? In the cafeteria, Gu Yi put down the chopsticks in her hand and asked tentatively. Of course I like it. The teachers here have high IQ and the students are also interesting. Especially my roommates. Mommy, you don't know that he is Uncle Xiaoma's grandson. He is very righteous. Butler said with a mouth full of snacks and stammered, of course I like him. The teachers here are all very intelligent. My classmates are also interesting. Mommy, you don't know that. He is Uncle Butler's grandson Lee's grandson. He is very righteous. Gui nodded, her eyebrows slightly knitted. For a moment, she did not know what to do. Mommy, why are you always absent-minded today? Xioma finished the last piece of sweet and sour ribs, wiped his mouth and looked at Gui. 
Gui rubbed her eyebrows and pretended to be relaxed, nothing much. I'm a little tired after my business trip. Xiaoma nodded and said embarrassedly, I see. You must have come to see Xiaoma after getting off the plane. You haven't gone home yet, have you? Xiaoma turned around and sat beside Gu Yi. She held her hand and said coquettishly, Mommy, Daddy comes to see me from time to time. Don't worry. Gu Yi held his hand tightly and asked seriously, Xiaoma, do you like Dad very much? I like it very much. Dad treats Xiaoma very well, said Xiaoma seriously. His watery eyes were filled with admiration for Yi Yi. He had been talking about it for months, and the relationship between father and son had unknowingly become very deep. Gui nodded and suppressed the impulse in her heart. The child was still so young and full of attachment to Yi Yi. How could she tell him the truth and how much harm it would do to him? Xiaoma, take good care of yourself. Mommy will leave first. Gui patted Xiaoma's hand and left reluctantly. As long as she saw him well, she would be relieved. Xiaoma jumped out of his chair and said, Mommy, Xiaoma has two weeks to go on her monthly vacation. She will be able to go home by then. Gui hugged him tightly and then left. She did not dare to stay any longer, afraid that she would be unable to help but tell Xiaoma the truth. As soon as she got in the car, the driver heaved a sigh of relief and respectfully asked, Madam, where are we going? Fortunately, she had returned. Otherwise, he really didn't know how to explain to the president. Impress the media. Gui said coldly. Xiaoma was currently in Iya's hands. Other than waiting for an opportunity, everything else she did was in vain. After a while, the car stopped in front of the company. Just as Gui got off the car and was walking towards her office, a black figure suddenly came out from the corner of the corridor and grabbed her and walked into the corner. Who? Before she could exclaim, she was covered by the black shadow. When she reached the corner, Gui looked at the person in front of her nervously. She was surprised to see that familiar face. Senior? Why are you here? Qin Yu stared fixedly at this delicate face that he had not seen for a long time, his eyes filled with obsession. He had been busy for so long and things had finally come to an end. He was finally able to come and see her. Little E, let's cut to the chase. I know your current situation and know where Xiaoma is. Stay calm first. I've already arranged everything. Let's leave the day after tomorrow, okay? Qin Yu hurriedly said what she thought in her heart. Gui looked at him and couldn't figure out the situation for a moment. What the hell is going on? Aren't you with Kirsten? Gu Yi's amber eyes were filled with doubt. Why did he suddenly appear here? What did he know? Qin Yu grabbed her hand and hid in the storage room, whispering, Kirsten and I were only together to find out the cause of Aunt Jang's death from the Zhang clan and why he suddenly wanted to turn hostile to Yi Yi. Hearing this, Gu Yi grabbed his hand and asked anxiously, how did mother die? What happened back then? Auntie was angered to death by Zhang Qishan. Her heart was not good, and Zhang deliberately tried to provoke her. That's why she didn't see you one last time. Qin Yu's eyes flickered and he didn't dare to look into her eyes. He didn't mean to hide it, but he didn't want her hands to be too excited for a moment. Why would he do that? Gu Yi retreated in shock. She had always suspected that what happened back then had something to do with Zhang Qishan, but she didn't expect him to do all of this. Qin Yu avoided her question and changed the subject. Maybe he's trying to force you to do something for yourself, but we'll talk about these questions later. What's important now is to help you and Xiaoma get out of Yi Yi's hands. You already know? Gu Yi bit her lips and trembled slightly. Everything about you is on my mind. Qin Yu looked at her affectionately, his pitch black eyes staring at her. Gu Yi turned around and didn't look at him. She had always known his feelings for her, but unfortunately... Qin Yu understood her thoughts and his handsome face was full of loneliness. He helplessly smiled bitterly and took out a bracelet from his bosom and handed it to Gu Yi. Gu Yi refused and whispered, I can't take this. Auntie left this for you. I found it from Zhang Qishan. Qin Yu explained, stuffing the bracelet into her hand. Perhaps one day it will help you. Mothers. Gu Yi was surprised. The chain in her hand looked very valuable. How come she had never seen it from her mother? If they had been able to use this chain back then, perhaps the days wouldn't have been so difficult. Seeing the doubt in her eyes, Qin Yu explained, perhaps Auntie values this chain very much. Keep it well. Gui nodded and carefully put the water blue chain into the jewelry box and hid it in her bag. When Qin Yu saw her accept it, he finally let out a sigh of relief. He recalled the scene when he first saw the chain, his eyes deep and deep as he fell into deep thought. Ever since Yi Chen, Jiang Yun, and the others were imprisoned, Zhang Qishan was afraid that Yi Yi would not let him off and hide everywhere. 
Originally, he was accustomed to being respectful and could not do any work at all. In a few days, he was reduced to the streets and wandered everywhere. When he met him on the street, he was walking towards the largest pawn shop in B-City with the chain in hand. Fortunately, he appeared in time to stop him. Otherwise, if this chain were to spread out, it would definitely cause other troubles. Senior. Gu Yi's clear voice evoked his thoughts. Qin Yu looked at Gu Yi's haggard appearance and felt sad. Hold on for two more days. The people I invited the day after tomorrow will arrive. They have enough ability to help you get rid of the subordinates Yi Yi planted next to you. How about we go pick up Xiaoma after that? Gu Yi dodged his gaze and was at a loss for a moment. She was thinking of getting rid of Yi Yi's grip day and night. Now that she really had a chance to escape, she was not happy at all. Instead, she felt a little sour. Was she really going to leave that man? But what if he didn't leave? He was sincere, but he just abandoned it like an open shoe. Shioma and himself were just a chess piece in his shopping mall. All right, where shall we meet the day after tomorrow? Gui calmed down and said calmly. Come to Chain Corporation the day after tomorrow. We'll meet at the door. Don't worry, everything will be fine. Qin Yu patted Gu Yi's hand comfortably. Her clear voice sounded exceptionally reassuring. Gu Yi nodded. Qin Yu looked at her reluctantly and said goodbye slowly, I have other things to arrange. I can't stay any longer. Take care of yourself. After he finished speaking, he paused for a moment and immediately left. This time, he found the legendary sworn enemy of Yi Yi and hoped that everyone would be able to escape unscathed. In this way, the secrets he had learned from Zhang Qishan might be sealed in his heart forever. She looked at Qin Yu's departing figure, her heart filled with emotions that could not be resolved. How could they settle down together in M Nation, and how could Xiao Ma explain it? Impression of the work of the media to do a bundle, Qin Yu is so deeply attached to him, she really can respond to him? What should we do with Kersen? Her intentions towards him are so deep-rooted. Her complicated thoughts gave her a headache. She barely managed to support herself and walked upstairs to the office. She held her bag tightly in her hand. What was going on with this chain? Why did she always feel that Qin Yu had something to say, as if something was hidden from her? Chapter 147 The Last Side After dealing with the work at hand, it was already late. It was already dark in early autumn. However, it was only 6 o'clock in the evening, and the horizon was already dark. Large clouds of fire and clouds were gathered together, rolling about, as if a storm was approaching. After packing up her usual things, Gui looked reluctantly at the grass and wood in her office. The conversation with the director in the afternoon was still fresh in her ears. What? There's something you can't do. The director stood up in shock, full of regret, pondered for a long time and said, Is it a family matter? Is there anything we can do to help? Gui smiled and said slowly, No, it's my personal matter. Thank you for taking care of me during this period of time. The director smiled and stood up. He shook her hand and said reluctantly, All right, let's call it a day off. I'll keep this position for you for a year. Go. Gui smiled and nodded her head. She didn't say anything else. She just distributed the small gifts she had prepared to her colleagues. After that, she had been handing over the work in her hands. Thoughts returned to the packing box in Dao's hand. He looked around again before closing the door and leaving. He had been working here for more than half a year. Although there were occasional setbacks, there were still more beautiful memories. When he thought of leaving this media company that he had yearned for since he was a child, his sadness bloomed one layer after another. He didn't know when he would return to this place. The driver slowly stepped forward and took the packing box from her hand. Madam, sir is already waiting. Let's go back early, he said respectfully. Gui nodded and got in the car. She looked at the trees on both sides of the street from the window. Her amber eyes were filled with mourning. Ever since she returned to China, Waves of unrest had risen again and again. Now that she had finally settled down, she was troubled by Yi Yi. I wonder how things were going with Qin Yu. The car stopped at the old E Corporation mansion. As soon as Gui got off the car, Little Lan came out and said with some uneasiness, Madam, you're back. Sir has lost his temper there. Gui frowned slightly and strode towards the dining hall. He was unhappy after she came back a moment later. His temper had become more and more unpredictable during this period of time. I'm back. As soon as Gui entered the dining room, she hesitated to greet her. Yi Yi sat there with a calm face, his hands crossed over his shoulders, and his cold eyebrows were about to drip with water. It will take so long to resign? He picked up his chopsticks and questioned in a deep voice. 
Gui did not dare to look up at him, but said hesitantly, I bid farewell to my colleagues and handed over the work at hand. Yi Yi coldly snorted and did not raise his head. He said indifferently, sit down and eat. Gui sat upright on his right hand and picked up her chopsticks. She looked at the delicate dishes on the table with no appetite at all. Looking up at the cold man with cold eyebrows and deep features like stone sculptures, his heart dropped. Yi Yi had been deeply attracted to him since he first met him five years ago. After spending more than half a year together in the tender web he could create, she became more and more muddy, unable to extricate herself. If she could, she would rather never know the truth about Xiaoma's kidnapping. A bitter smile blossomed on her lips. It was already at this time, but she was still reluctant to part with him, lingering on for him. What's the matter? Seeing that she hadn't moved her chopsticks for a long time, Yi Yi was dumbfounded and asked softly. He knew that he could not imprison her heart, but he had plenty of time, so he was not afraid that he would not be able to conquer her. Gui blinked her watery eyes and looked at him timidly, afraid that she would reveal some clues. She forced a smile and said, nothing. I just miss Xiaoma a little. The corner of Yi Ye's lips curled slightly as he explained in a deep voice, I specially chose this school for Xiaoma. I had this plan before, but thinking that he had never left your side, I arranged a summer camp for him to adapt. Now it seems that this noble school is more suitable for him. After a brief pause, he added he will be E Corporation's successor in the future. He can't stay by our side all the time. After saying that, he looked at her ambiguously and whispered, since you like children so much, let's have another daughter. We can always hold her in our hands as a little princess. How about it? Gu Yi's face was crimson. She lowered her head, revealing a snowy neck. Yi Ye's pitch black eyes flashed with a trace of heat. He raised his hand to caress Gu Yi's catkin and said slowly, it's good to quit work, so it's convenient to raise a baby at home, huh? Gu Yi was even more embarrassed by his explicit words. Ever since that night, he had always liked to play tricks on her like this. I'm afraid there won't be a chance for them to have another one. Seeing that she was shy, Yi Yi did not say anything else. After all, it was useless to say such a thing. He still had to use it to fight for it. After a meal, the two of them remained silent. Gui put down her chopsticks first and looked at Yi Yi. She asked tentatively, I'll go back to my room first. Yes, wait for me. Yi Yi stroked her delicate face and whispered ambiguously. Seeing her slender figure disappear at the door, Yi Yi's eyes grew deeper and deeper. With his understanding of Gu Yi, the more submissive she was, the more he concealed his true purpose. Butler, send a few more men to keep an eye on Madam. Yi Yi coldly instructed Butler, also, Yi Chin will be released on bail in the next two days. Send more people to the school to protect little young master. He can't let anything happen to him. Otherwise, the misunderstanding between him and Gui would only get deeper and deeper. Butler answered and ordered a few people to clean up the table. Little Lan was anxious to leave but was stopped by Yi Yi. He could only dawdle in front of him and tremble, not knowing what he was going to give him. Did you tell Madam about Xiaoma? Yi Yi suddenly opened her mouth. Her cold and fierce voice almost scared Little Lan to kneel down. She stammered and could not say the complete number of sentences. She only nodded her head hesitantly. Yi Ye's sharp gaze swept past her, and after carefully examining her for a moment, he slowly said, Take good care of Madam these days. If anything happens to her, let's settle it together. You should consider it. After saying that, he paced away. In the bedroom, Gu Yi packed her scattered script and manuscripts into her handbag. Then she scanned the surroundings and secretly sighed. She had lived here for a period of time and already had so many difficult-to-leave gadgets. However, there was bound to be a soul-stirring struggle tomorrow. She could only give up on these. Her slender hand slowly touched her neck. There was the necklace that Yi Yi had given her. She carefully stroked the heart-shaped gemstone on it. After hesitating for a long time, she still didn't take it off. Forget it, let's just leave it for a thought. When Yi Yi opened the door, he saw her reluctantly stroking the snowy gemstone on her neck and smiled, If you like, I'll take you to buy more jewelry tomorrow, eh? Gui reluctantly smiled and nodded, allowing him to misunderstand. In fact, apart from being exploited, he treated himself and Xiao Emo very well. Whether it was food, clothing, or anything else, it was the best. Seeing that she was gentle, Yi Yi was delighted in his heart. He affectionately wrapped her in his embrace and leaned against her ear ambiguously and said softly, Didn't you say that you wanted to have a daughter as soon as possible? A moment in the spring night, huh? A delicate red color blossomed from her ears to her cheeks. Gui refused, not wanting to tangle with him before she left. 
She tried to refuse, fearing that she wouldn't be able to leave tomorrow if she provoked him again. Don't. A tender plea made Iya's gaze turn hotter and hotter. The fresh smell of grapefruit at the tip of his nose made him even more intoxicated. It had been so many days and his fanaticism towards her had increased unabated. Iyi knew that he had fallen completely on this little woman. Don't provoke me or you'll know the consequences. With a warm breath, Gui stiffened her body uncomfortably. She turned around and dodged. She whispered, I'm not feeling well today, can I not? The voice behind her became softer and softer, almost inaudible. Iyi looked up from her hair, caressed her shoulders and looked up and down with concern, what's wrong with you? Did you catch a cold today? Gui looked at his anxious appearance, a trace of warmth piercing her heart, and then her eyes dimmed. Was he acting now or was he sincere? She did not understand his intentions at all when they had been together for so long. No, I'm just a little tired and have a headache. As she spoke, she slowly stroked her temples, deliberately putting on an appearance of exhaustion. Yi slowly placed her shoulder, forcefully suppressing the restlessness in her heart, and said slowly, call Dr. Lee to show you. As soon as he finished speaking, he was about to turn around and leave. Gui hurriedly grabbed his hand and said hesitantly, No, I'm just a little tired. I just need to rest. Never call a doctor, or you'll find out yourself. Iyi sat on the bed with her shoulders and said slowly, Then lie down. I'll ask the servants to make you a bowl of brown sugar water. He looked at her uneasy expression and secretly calculated the days in his heart. Only then did he understand. No wonder she was embarrassed to call the doctor over, so he could only use the old method. Gui sat side by side with him on the bed. She knew that Yi had thought of something crooked and did not correct it. She was so happy that he did not disturb her. Her fixed monthly days were always inaccurate. It was rare for him to remember. She looked at Yi with a complicated expression. Could it be that his current concern was also faked? However, for a moment, little Lan brought a bowl of brown sugar ginger water from the tray looked at Gui worriedly, put it down, and reluctantly left. Drink while it's hot. Rest early tonight, said Yi Yi as he picked up the bowl from his childhood. Gui endured the spiciness and drank a bowl of thick brown sugar ginger water to the bottom. Seeing that she was not dragging her feet as usual, Yi Yi predicted that she would definitely feel terrible this time. He stroked her shoulder comfortably and lay on the bed with her. He said slowly sleep well. Tomorrow will be all right. As he spoke, he placed his large palm on her waist and abdomen and slowly stroked it. Is it any better? He held her tightly in his arms and asked softly. Gui nodded. Not long after she arrived in E-Clan, she fainted because of this. He did the same thing. Under the dim light, Gui raised her head to look at his cold face and slowly closed her eyes. This was her last night at the old E-Clan mansion and this was probably the last time she saw E. -E. Chapter 148 Yi Chen was released from prison to commit an evil deed. The next morning, when Gu Yi woke up, the sun had already risen high. Her sleepy eyes slowly opened. Yesterday she had actually slept peacefully in Yi Ye's arms. She opened her eyes and looked at the clock on the wall. She suddenly woke up. There was only one hour left before she and Qin Yu had agreed. He hurriedly went downstairs and hastily instructed before he could have breakfast, Uncle Li, I'm going out. Butler greeted him in the hall and said respectfully, the car is ready. I don't know where madam is going, so we can give you an explanation when sir comes back. Gui Chiang calmed down and said according to the prepared words, I already told him yesterday that I want to go downtown to see jewelry. Butler nodded and respectfully escorted her out. Gui sat in the car and watched through the window as the old E-Clan mansion slowly slid past her eyes. Her amber eyes were filled with disappointment. Whether it was happiness or pain, she had left behind her unforgettable footprints here. She suddenly left, always a little reluctant to part. Ding dong! The sound of a text message called out to look back at Yi Xinyo's thoughts. It was Qin Yu. Little Yi, I'll wait for you at the gate of Qin Corporation. If you ask the driver to park the car at the left door, someone will naturally pick you up. Noticing the driver's expression, Gu Yi carefully sent a text message to France and immediately put away her phone. Go to Gavinci's specialty store at Chin Corporation Group. Gui thought for a moment and instructed slowly. The driver immediately answered. He turned around and drove in another direction. Looking at the change in the foreground, Gu Yi's heart beat faster and faster. She felt a little sour from nervousness. She was about to be free. This also meant that she had to leave Yi Yi and start her new life again. In a short while, the car stopped in front of Gavinci's shop on Chin Corporation Commercial Street. 
Gui got off the car and instructed the driver to wait in the car. She looked around and carefully walked to the left door. A tall man hid in the shadows of the building and immediately greeted her when he saw her coming. Come with me, young master Qin is already waiting for you. The man suddenly raised his head. Gui looked at him. She was truly shocked. She unconsciously took two steps back and exclaimed, You are the one from that day. Before he could make a sound, he was covered by the man. He could lower his voice and shout, Don't make a sound. He looked at Gui and said meaningfully, Sure enough, he can't keep women by his side. It's wise for you to leave now so as not to end up like Linger. Gui looked at him puzzled. She was dragged to the Qin Corporation gate by him. Qin Yu was already waiting there. She looked at Gui from afar and waved her hand. The man took her to the car and closed the door forcefully. He said coldly, young master Qin, the matter has been settled for you. I will also take the reward. After that, we have nothing to do with each other. Qin Yu nodded. Seeing that Yi's people were entangled, he immediately stepped on the accelerator and the car immediately flew out. Gui grabbed the armrest tightly and asked with some doubt, was that Li Mo? Yes, you know him? Gui thought, the last time he attacked me in Xiaoma, he was targeting Yi Yi. Qin Yu nodded and smiled, there is a big feud between him and Yi Yi. Other than his surprise, City B probably doesn't dare to go against Yi Yi anymore. Gui nodded and suppressed the doubt in her heart. Who was Linger? She had heard Li Mo repeat this name the last time. What was the conflict between him and Yi Yi? Qin Yu did not notice Gu Yi's instantly absent-mindedness. He led her quickly towards the direction of Xiaoma School. At the same time, another black Bentley was heading in the opposite direction. As the black Bentley sped along, the passenger in the passenger seat looked apprehensively at Yi Chen and said, President Yi, are we really going to do this? Even if we lose everything, you can still live a rich life with the money at hand. If you don't want to go, get out of the car immediately. No one will force you. Yi Chen's thin face was filled with gloom. Secretary fiercely stepped on the accelerator beneath his feet, and the car flew out like an arrow. Secretary held onto the armrest beside him in horror, not daring to say another word. The red light at the intersection seemed to be empty. Yi Chen increased his horsepower and dashed forward, attracting the dissatisfaction of a group of car owners. One of them even opened the car window and cursed. Driving a good fucking car was amazing. He died just like in an accident. Yi Chen sneered. There was only one goal in his heart, and that was to get revenge on Yi Yi. Humph, I'm afraid that you won't be so lucky this time, Xiaoma. Don't blame eldest uncle for being ruthless. Who knows what kind of days he's been in prison these past few days. Every day, apart from porridge, he didn't even have a single meat dish. He had never done such heavy physical work before. If he did it a little slower, the whip in the instructor's hand would mercilessly and ruthlessly pull it down leaving no one with the ability to retaliate. Eight people lived together in a small cell without windows. They were wrapped in a pungent smell every day, and they had to endure the harassment and beatings of those prisoners. All of this was caused by Yi Yi, and Yi Chen wanted to return all of this humiliation to him. Yi Chen's eyes are cold and fierce, and his mad killing intent is surging. He definitely won't leave any room this time. It's time for us to end this Yi Yi. Xiaoma is a reverse scale that you can't touch. This time, I insist on moving. Yi Chen's car finally stopped at the entrance of the noble school. Looking at the strong security guards at the entrance, he knew that they were from Yi Yi. A cold smile slowly blossomed. It seemed that Yi Yi really cared about this son. He took secretary around the woods behind him. Sure enough, the rusted iron gate was still there. He had been studying here with Yi Yi and had been sneaking out of the school from the middle of the junior high school. After so many years, the memories of the times were still vividly remembered. How did the two brothers end up like this in the past few years? A bitter smile blossomed at the corner of his lips. Looking at the rusty iron gate in front of him, Yi Chen's deep gaze became fierce. It was all Yi Yi. He had been at the helm of Yi e Corporation for so many years, so Yi e Corporation should continue to run by himself. Why did he have to compete with him? Go up. Yi Chen ordered secretary coldly. President Yi, have you thought about it? Once we make our move this time, there's really no turning back. Secretary looked at Yi Chen seriously, hoping that he would think twice before taking action. Yi Chen snorted coldly and pulled the corners of his mouth, there is no President Yi here. There is only a street rat, Yi Chen. I can no longer turn my head back. As soon as he finished speaking, he climbed up the wall and jumped down. Secretary sighed helplessly and jumped over. That brat should be in the big class. This way. 
Yi Chin sneaked on his old campus with ease. He had spent the most dazzling of his school days here, and now he had indeed come back to do such a shameful thing in a dejected manner. What do you do? Two bodyguards dressed in black plain clothes did not wait for them to approach the main building to stop them. The shape of a pistol appeared on their waist, making Yi Chin and secretary not dare to rush in. They could only retreat. We are here to see the parents of the children. Secretary cleverly went forward and laughed. The person on the other side, however, was not moved at all. He said officially, do you have an access card? Aya, we lost it. What should we do? As the two spoke, they pretended to be searching. If you don't, then stay away from here. If we accidentally injure you, we won't be responsible. The plainclothed bodyguard pushed the two of them as he spoke. Ichin helplessly looked at Xiaoma, who was in the middle of class angrily. He reluctantly took secretary away and walked to a hidden place. Damn it, it's full of bodyguards. We can't even see anyone, let alone catch them. Secretary fanned Ichin from the side and comforted him. There's always another way. We can start from scratch if we can't. Even if it's fast selling, we can start from scratch. I'll always follow you. I'm not willing, said Ichin, throwing his hat angrily to the ground, his handsome face haggard and the faint green stubble of his jaw making him seem more than ten years older. Secretary suddenly stopped moving and hugged each and uneasily. Someone seems to be coming for us, he said in a low voice. The faint footsteps and sounds of conversation caused the two of them to hide in the bushes like frightened birds. Xiaoma is in the building in front of us. I'm afraid we won't be able to bring him out so easily. Qin Yu led Gu Yi forward slowly. If he hadn't prepared everything well in advance, he probably wouldn't have even been able to enter the gate. Gui followed him closely and looked around anxiously. No, I came here once. The teachers knew that he was Xiao Ma's mother. Qin Yu explained with a bitter smile, Yi Yi may have discovered recently that there are more than a hundred of his people in the gates, kindergartens, school buildings, dormitories, and even classrooms. As long as we make any moves, they will probably report to Yi Yi. How could this be? Did he discover our plan? Gui clutched Qin Yu's hand nervously and trembled. When she thought of how he dealt with her, her feet felt as if they were stepping on cotton wool. They were soft and could not use any strength. Don't worry, Yi Chin is about to get out of prison recently. He was afraid that that person would harm Xioma, so he planted these people. Qin Yu patted her hand comfortably and slowly passed through the bushes, not noticing the two people hiding inside. Yi Chin and secretary watched as they walked over and tacitly winked at each other. Then they pounced on each other at the same time. One of them firmly pressed down on Qin Yu, while Yi Chen grabbed Gui tightly in his arms and slashed at the back of her neck, causing her to collapse softly. Let her go. Qin Yu struggled, but he couldn't get rid of Secretary's grip. President, Yi Yu go first. I'll cut you off. Secretary suppressed Qin Yu and shouted at Yi Chen. Yi Chen hesitated for a moment before running towards the back door with Gui who had already lost consciousness in her arms. Someone bodyguard. Seeing him kidnap him, Qin Yu immediately shouted loudly. The bodyguards in front of the school building were afraid of diverting the tigers away from the mountain when they heard the noise, so they only sent a small number of people over. The few of them quickly subdued secretary and pressed him to the ground. Young Master Qin, why are you here? The leading bodyguard asked with a smile. Before Qin Yu could say anything else, he pointed in the direction of Yi Chen's departure and hurriedly said, your wife has been kidnapped. Hurry up and go. A few people chased after him towards the back door, but Yi Chen and Gui had already disappeared. Chapter 149 Gui was kidnapped. The noon sun shone fiercely into the president's office on the top floor of the E Corporation building. Through the thick landing glass, people still couldn't open their eyes. The room was silent and the air seemed to have frozen. The pressure was so low that they couldn't breathe. Yi put down the phone in his hand. Anger and uneasiness rolled between his cold eyebrows, causing him to be unable to breathe. Xin Yu stood opposite him, his scalp numb as he stood upright, not daring to move. Why did she appear at school at that time? Why was Qin Yu there? Yi Yi questioned sternly. Although he knew the answer clearly in his heart, he still refused to believe it. Could it be that she hated herself so much that she couldn't wait to escape from him? He even used his brother-in-law. Yi Yi fiercely slapped his hand on the table, his calm face smiling as if it wasn't a smile. The dense rage made people unable to breathe. Xin Yi thought for a long time before saying, we have sent people to investigate Madam's whereabouts. This matter is still hidden from Xiaoma, and Qin Yu has also been brought over by our people. After saying that, he raised his eyes and secretly sized up Yi Ye's expression. 
He knew that what E.E. E. needed at this moment was not an answer, but the facts that had happened in the progress of the settlement. Bring him over. Iya's eyes were sharp as he said in a deep voice, continued to track down Ichin's whereabouts. At this moment he was on pins and needles. That little woman was so fragile. Ichin hated him to the core. He didn't know what kind of torture she would suffer if she fell into his hands. Xin Yu answered and slowly went out to do what he had told him, but Qin Yu was pushed through the door in a short while. As soon as he entered, he hurriedly ran to Yi Yi and urgently said, Did you find little Yi? The current Yi Chen is a fugitive. He can do anything. Yi Yi suddenly raised his eyes to look at him. He suddenly stood up and punched Qin Yu in the face. With a bang, he fell to the ground. Qin Yu covered his face and a wisp of blood slowly flowed down the corner of his mouth. He struggled to get up slowly and before he could slap the soil on his body, he staggered to Yi Yi again and looked at him without fear. I'd like to ask you, what do you mean by taking my woman to my son's school? Yi Yi grabbed his collar and said word for word, gnashing his teeth. You know, Qin Yu said nonchalantly. His heart had already been given to Gu Yi, so had Qin Corporation. No matter who else, he had already risked everything. As long as she was willing, he could do anything for Gu Yi. Yi Yi grabbed him by the neck and exerted his strength fiercely. His cold eyes were filled with killing intent. Gu Yi was his woman, so how could she be coveted by others? Qin Yu closed his eyes slightly and felt suffocated. He knew that only Yi Yi had the ability to rescue Gu Yi from Yichen. As long as he was willing to help, it didn't matter to him. Seeing his handsome face gradually turn green and purple, Yi Yi took a deep breath and suddenly let go. He sternly said word by word, get lost. If you take a step closer to Gu Yi in the future, I will definitely take your life. Save Gu Yi. Qin Yu stroked his neck and coughed violently. However, he did not move at all. He stood in front of Yi Yi and said persistently. Yi Yi turned around and stared fixedly at him. His cold and fierce gaze was filled with killing intent. He snorted coldly, I will take care of my own woman. There is no need for others to interfere. After receiving a positive answer, Qin Yu staggered away. His empty footsteps were filled with urgency. He also wanted to go down and ask the servants to look for Gu Yi. Seeing Qin Yu's figure disappear from the door, Yi Yi fiercely tossed the teacup on the small table out. The porcelain shards flew everywhere, and a crisp sound swept across the silent and stagnant air. It was like a bolt of lightning, which was extremely shocking. Damn it! Since this woman entered the E-Clan mansion, she hadn't had a day to calm herself down. Damn it, where is she now and who is she? In an abandoned garage in the western suburbs, it was dark and damp, filled with rusted car parts. After a light rain, the smell of rust became even heavier, making people unable to breathe. Gui coughed lightly a few times. The pain in the back of her neck gradually woke her up. Her slender eyelashes moved slightly and her hazy eyes slowly opened. This was a scene of utter ruin. You're awake. Yi Chen's cold voice exploded in his ears, causing Gu Yi to tremble in shock. She looked at the haggard expression on his face as he approached step by step and retreated step by step, but she was unable to move a single bit. Only then did Gu Yi realize that both her hands and feet were tied tightly. Her back was leaning against a truck that had been abandoned for a long time. Scarlet iron rust stains were all over the ground. It looked shocking. She looked at Yi in horror and forced herself to calm down. What do you want to do? Ichin sneered as he sat beside her and casually said, What do I want to do, of course, is to use you as bait to lure a tractor over. A trace of bitterness blossomed on her lips. Gui coldly said, I'm afraid that you've miscalculated. I'm just a chess piece in his hand. He just wants to use me to lure you into a trap and catch you all in one go. How could a heartless person like him really care about his own life and death? Ichin frowned and looked at Gui up and down. He thought about the credibility of her words. After a while, he sneered and said sternly, you little woman dare to fool me. I'm telling you, don't play any tricks, I won't let you off. Gu Yi coldly snorted and leaned back against the truck. She coldly looked at him and said, believe it or not, I'm afraid you've already fallen into Yi Ye's trap. Yi Chen set the fire in front of him and smiled evilly, why do you look down on yourself like this? I'm not afraid to tell you the truth, I was going to catch Xiaoma. He was protected too well by Yi Yi, so there was no room for him to do anything. He caught you by mistake. If you blame him, you shouldn't have appeared there at that time. After saying those words, Yi Chen stood up from the ground and paced back and forth. He was a little confused by Gu Yi. He wasn't sure what kind of feelings Yi Yi had for her. 
After all, with the example of Linger in front of him, he could even abandon his beloved woman for the sake of E-Corporation's control. Moreover, Gui was just his son's mother. He turned around and swept his gaze over Gui. He had no choice but to treat Sima as a living horse doctor. Seeing that he had already sent so many people to look for the two of them, he didn't think that he didn't have any feelings for her at all. Forget it, hang him for one night first, and then make a condition tomorrow. Woman! Ichin walked in front of Gu Yi. She slowly lifted her chin with the stick in her hand and said, You'd better pray that Yi Yi will come and redeem you tomorrow. Otherwise, I'll sell you to the lowest cave and hang up a Mrs. E Corporation's token for you. With your beauty, you'll definitely have a benefactor. Ha! Yi Yi will definitely be wearing this green hat then. His perverted smile made Gu Yi turn her head uncomfortably and said disdainfully, What kind of ability is it to attack a woman? If you have the ability, you can go face to face with Yi Yi. Yi Chen fiercely threw the stick in his hand into the fire and shouted angrily, If you blame me, blame you for being Yi Ye's woman. There's never a good end to being his woman. What do you mean? Gu Yi took a deep breath. Her chaotic thoughts had calmed down. Fortunately, she was caught. If it was so cold in Xiaoma, she would definitely catch a cold if she slept outside at night. Yi Chen sat beside her leisurely and looked at her charming face with a cold smile. He reached out and slowly rubbed her side face and teased, It's a pity that you've already given birth to Yi. It's not fresh. Otherwise, I would really like to taste your taste. Gui turned her head away and fiercely threw his hand to the side, saying in a deep voice, Speak as you please, don't make any moves. Yi Chen curled his lips in disdain and poked the fire in front of him. Seven years ago, there was a lover in Yi named Linger. He was in the same situation as you. He refused to compromise and that Linger died. Gui was secretly shocked that a human life was so casually described by him. The struggle between them was not limited to the business world. There was also such a bloody side to it. A young girl died just like that, losing her life for these pointless struggles. Gui smiled bitterly. How much weight could her son Yi have in his heart? Perhaps her fate would be even worse than that of Linger. She just hoped that after she died, Yi would treat Xiaoma well. Don't think about it. We'll know the result tomorrow. Ichin looked at her with a faint smile and said playfully, How is it? Are you very curious? I also want to know how much weight you have in his heart. As he spoke, he closed his eyes and fell into a deep sleep. No matter what, Iya's woman was injured now. Even if she couldn't extort a huge fortune, she could at least break his face. The thought of his livid face made him secretly feel good. Gui saw him fall asleep and tried to break free from the hemp rope in her hand, but it was useless. She sighed lightly and looked up at the bright moon and the stars in the sky. She crawled into her heart desolately for a while. Originally, he thought that after today, he would be able to bring Shyama out of Iya's control, and he would be in a different predicament. Waves of cold wind whistled past, and the smell of rust that was filled with fishy smell almost made her unable to breathe. Gu Yi shrank back, her goose bump seeming to have been blown up by the late autumn night wind. Looking at the crescent moon on the horizon, she was actually thinking of the big bet in the E Clan mansion. The night before she left, Yi e hugged her tightly. Her warm big palm slowly slid across her waist and abdomen, filled with warmth. He didn't know what he was doing right now if he knew that he had been kidnapped, or if he didn't care about him at all. Qin Yu was by his side when he was kidnapped, so he didn't know if he was all right. Lang Yu was speechless as a trickle of light poured down from the ground. Xing Zi blinked her eyes speechlessly. Chapter 150 A Thrilling Moment at the Seaside The morning dew was thick and dripping down the rusty old truck. Gu Yi's thin autumn clothes were slowly wet. She shrank in a daze and suddenly sneezed with a tremor. She woke up. Her drowsy eyes slowly moved, and what entered her eyes was a shabby scene. Ichin fell to her side, sleeping soundly on her side, her handsome face full of decadence. She carefully sized him up for a long time. Seeing that there was no movement from him, she secretly sized up the surroundings in an attempt to find a way to untie herself. Time was of the essence. She had to hurry up and think of a way to save herself. You're awake. Ichin rolled over and woke up. Suddenly she spoke. Gu Yi immediately stopped her subordinate's movements and pretended to look at him with ease. Ichin took out a rectangular piece of bread from his backpack, handed it in half and stuffed it into Gu Yi's mouth. He said coldly, hurry up and eat. After we finish eating, let's go somewhere. Gu Yi barely swallowed the dry bread in her mouth, trying to recover her strength as soon as possible. 
the bread that had been dried for a long time almost slipped down her throat, and her sour tears almost flowed down her face. Ichin seemed to see through her thoughts and scolded coldly, I warn you, it's best not to play tricks on me, otherwise you'll understand the consequences. As he spoke, he bent down, clutched her slippery chin, and rubbed it with ill intentions, and said with a wicked smile, if you don't do what I want, I'll put you in the cave for a few days before Yi can save you. Gui was shocked when she heard the vulgar words. She shrank back and struggled to retreat. She was only able to move an inch when Ichin grabbed her ankle and said sternly be honest. As he spoke, he tugged at the rope behind her and pulled Gu Yi up from the ground without any pity. He forcefully pressed Gu Yi into the black Bentley. Then he got into the car and stepped on the accelerator. The car quickly rushed out. Seeing the scenery in front of her rapidly retreat, becoming even more desolate and desolate, Gu Yi grabbed the handrail and asked, Where are you taking me? Dragon Jump Cliff. Ichin didn't even look at her. He coldly tossed out a sentence and drove his car. The faint sound of the wind accompanied by the sound of the shattered waves, all of which showed that Ichin was not lying to her. Gu Yi's amber eyes were filled with astonishment. Dragon Jump Cliff, the famous Jedi in B-City remembered that when she was young, she would listen to her mother whenever she said this. Dragon Jump Cliff means that even if a divine dragon jumps down, it will lose its life. What are you scared? Ichin pulled the car aside and asked with a thoughtful smile. At this moment, what he admired the most was Gu Yi's panicked look. Unfortunately, the faint expression on her face was like that of Yi Yi, unable to see the slightest fluctuation. Ichin grabbed her and got out of the car. The bone-piercing sea breeze immediately attacked Gu Yi's delicate body. She staggered and almost couldn't stand steadily. Looking around, she was immediately stunned by the grand and ferocious scenery before her. The tall cliff became steeper and steeper, like an inverted triangle. The more steep the road was, the fewer roads there were. Below was the surging waves. They made loud noises as they struck the rocks, causing one's eardrums to ache. There were faint droplets of water sprinkling on their faces. However, in a short moment, the two of them were half wet from the thin mist of water. Let's leave this place. Gui dodged and was held by the water mist no matter what, so she helplessly said slowly. Ichin laughed maniacally and grabbed her tightly towards the end of the cliff. Gui struggled desperately, but in the end, she could not resist her strength and was pulled to the end of the cliff. Looking at the surging waves, waves of dizziness engulfed Gu Yi. She knelt on the edge of the cliff and could not move. She was just trembling. She was afraid of heights so she could not come to such a place. Gu Yi's weak appearance succeeded in pleasing Yi Chen. He laughed arrogantly and tucked into her hair as he pulled her back. We, Yi Yi, have an appointment here at 8.30. You beg for your fortune. If he doesn't come after the time, I'll push you out of here. Gu Yi struggled to catch her breath. Her fear of height and waves had rendered her helpless. The mournful sea breeze slammed into her face. Tears flowed down her cheeks as she looked at the faint sun. She was looking forward to seeing Yi Yi for the last time. She was afraid that he would really be in danger here. On the other hand, E Corporation's old house was brightly lit, and it didn't go out all night. Yi Yi had stayed up all night, his cold eyebrows were somewhat haggard, and now it was dark green. He caressed his eyebrows weakly, full of anxiety. Ding Dong's text attracted his attention. It was from Yi Chen. Your woman and I are at Dragon Jump Cliff. If you want to see her again, I'll see you at 8.30 this morning. A short text message frightened Yi Yi. He put away his phone and immediately arranged for his subordinates to surround Long Jumping Cliff. He drove alone. The silver Cadillac was traveling very fast. Yi Ye's cold expression was exceptionally grim. As he watched Yin Qing's scenery quickly retreat, he thought to himself, Gu Yi is waiting for me. She must be fine. At the same time, Qin Yu also received news through his subordinates that Yi Chen had brought Gu Yi to the Dragon Jump Cliff. He anxiously picked up the car keys on his desk and was about to leave. Unexpectedly, as soon as the door opened, Zhang Kersen appeared in front of him, his delicate face full of bitterness. Kersen, I'm sorry. Qin Yu was so apologetic that he didn't even dare to look into her clear eyes. Zhang Kersen shook his head and shook his hand. It doesn't matter. Your decision is mine. Let's go together. After all, she is my sister. Qin Yu hesitated for a moment before nodding his head and leading his subordinates towards the dragon jump cliff. Time passed by minute by minute. Every time the waves hit the reef, it caused Gu Yi to tremble. She shrank into a ball, her hands tightly twisted together, almost pinching out a cyan purple bloodstain. Seeing that she was motionless, neither crying nor shouting, Ichin sneered and cut the ropes between her hands and feet. 
He grabbed her arm with one hand and pressed her back with the other as he pressed hard down the cliff. No! Gui cried out in alarm. The surging seawater struck her cheek straight. The sound of the waves was deafening. She twisted her body, struggling but unable to shake Yi Chen in the slightest. The cold seawater smelled salty on Gu Yi's cheek, but it woke her up from her panic and suffocation. She slowly moved her feet, which had been tied up for a long time, and when she recovered, she fiercely stepped on Yi Chen's feet. A burst of intense pain hit Yi Chen's senses. He loosened his grip on Gu Yi. As soon as Gu Yi was free, she immediately ran down the cliff. However, she was caught by Yi Chen's extended leg and fell firmly to the ground. She struggled to get up again when Yi Chen grabbed her long hair and pulled her back. Bitch, you dare to bully me. Yi Chen gritted his teeth in hatred and slapped Gu Yi's delicate face without any pity. Pa! A crisp sound rang out, causing Yi Yi, who had just arrived, to feel extremely distressed. Gu Yi's league of the left was swollen and red. Five palm prints on her fair muscles and skin were particularly conspicuous. A strand of blood slowly flowed down the corner of her mouth. She covered her cheeks, her pair of sparkling eyes half kneeling on the ground. She was so weak that it was as if a gust of wind could blow her down. Yi Chen, let her go. Yi Ye's cold eyes were filled with heartache. Immediately after, a monstrous amount of rage started to burn, and it was so dense that no one dared to look directly at it. His tall body slowly walked towards the cliff, his upright back like a pine tree, proudly aloof. Yi Chen grabbed Gu Yi tightly took out a delicate browning pistol from her waist, and pointed it straight at her temples. She looked at Yi Yi proudly, cousin, you really came so early this time, beyond my expectations. Yi Yi stared coldly at him without making a sound, but he mobilized all his senses to pay attention to Gu Yi's current situation. She half knelt beside Yi Chen and did not have the strength to stand up. Her amber eyes looked at Yi Yi with a complicated expression. She was neither surprised nor aggrieved, but full of unease. He actually came and didn't bring anyone along according to Yi Chen's request. This fool, Yi Chen is a fugitive now, he can do anything, how can he take risks alone? What are you feeling heartache? The black barrel of the gun was filled with the mysteries of death, tightly pressing down on Gu Yi's temples. Yi Chen looked at Yi Yi playfully and slowly said, if you feel heartache, you can take her place. I've already sent secretary to your account for the 300 million yuan you want. Quickly let Gu Yi go. I won't pursue you any further. Take the money and live a good life. Yi Yi said indifferently but his footsteps did not stop as he approached them bit by bit. Yi Chen smiled coldly and pressed the muzzle of his gun closer to Gu Yi. Don't think that you can dismiss me so easily. I want you to taste all the humiliation I've suffered. He said fiercely. He pulled Gu Yi back a few steps. The rocks beneath his feet loosened and slid down the cliff without making a sound. Not even a drop of water splashed out from the surging waves. Yi Yi was so shocked that he immediately stopped and comforted, I'm not going over. Don't retreat any further. Yi Chen sneered and stopped. His gloomy eyes were filled with a sense of revenge, kneel down. Yi Ye's cold eyebrows furrowed slightly, his pitch black eyes filled with killing intent, ignoring it. Yi Chen didn't care at all. He slapped Gu Yi in the face, causing her head to tilt to one side. His hand slowly covered her snow white neck. He rubbed it and looked at Yi Yi like a demonstration. Don't let me say it again or I'll let your woman perform in the living spring palace. Gu Yi bit her lower lip tightly, trying her best to suppress the pain at her lower lip and the tears in her eyelids. She did not want to disturb Yi Ye's thoughts anymore. Now that people were trying to kill me, they were in a very bad situation. A struggle flashed in Yi Chen's eyes. Just as Yi Ye's hand fiercely removed the bow tie from Gu Yi's dress, Yi Chen's legs suddenly bent and he knelt down. He stared fixedly at Yi Chen, the veins on his forehead twitching slightly, as if he was on the verge of exploding. I never knew our dignified president Yi would listen to me like a dog. Yi Chen's hand still hadn't left Gu Yi's neck. He smiled complacently. Yi Yi, you are also today. I finally grasped your we- Chapter 151 Life Hangs in the Balance Seeing Yi Yi kneeling in front of him like a beggar, Yi Chen laughed arrogantly. He lowered his head and looked down at Gui, who was half kneeling in front of him, and said proudly, How is it? Are you moved to see your man kneeling in front of me for you? Back then he wasn't as kind to linger as you were. Yi looked at him coldly and said indifferently enough, What do you want to do? I can give you the money. Quickly let her go. Yi Chen grabbed Gui's collar tightly and sneered, What's wrong? It's easy to save her. I want you to take care of yourself now. His sinister gaze was tightly locked onto Yi's body. His straight back hurt Yi Chen's eyes. 
How could he be so indifferent and elegant when he landed in this field? Seeing that there was anger in his cold eyebrows, Ichin sneered and slapped Gu Yi's face fiercely without hesitation. He said ferociously, your man is reluctant to suffer for you, so don't blame me for not showing mercy to her. As he spoke, he fiercely waved his fist and was about to slap Gu Yi's other cheek. Wait! Yi Yi harshly scolded, while another elegant voice said the same thing. Behind Yi Yi, Qin Yu and Zhang Kersen strode towards the cliff. Let go of little Yi. Qin Yu's clear voice sounded exceptionally loud. Zhang Kersen stood side by side with him, holding his hand tightly. He looked around and said, Yi Chen, this place is surrounded by the police. It's not too late for you to surrender now. Yi Chen looked at the surrounding troops and grabbed Gu Yi and nervously took two steps back. Unknowingly, they were no more than a meter away from the cliff not far away. Yi Ye's eyes were dark. Every step Gu Yi was dragged along made his heart tremble endlessly. Behind him was a 10,000-foot cliff. There was almost no chance of survival under the swift current, let alone Gu Yi not knowing how to water. Stop retreating! Yi Yi frowned and shouted coldly. Yi Chen listened to the thunderous sound of the waves. He didn't need to look to know how dangerous his current situation was with Gu Yi, but all of this was nothing compared to seeing Yi Ye's frightened and cold face. Do as I say, or I'll shoot this woman. Yi Chen shouted at Yi Yi with a ferocious expression as the gun landed firmly on Gu Yi's tender skin. Yi Ye's thin lips slightly pursed, and he almost gritted his teeth. His cold gaze locked onto Gu Yi's swollen face and the bloodline at the corner of his lips. Without any hesitation, his slender fingers fiercely slapped towards him. The crisp sound almost overwhelmed the sound of the waves at the edge of the cliff, which also surprised the people at the mountainside. Gu Yi covered her lips and cried out in alarm. The tears at the corner of her eyes could no longer be restrained. A string of broken pearls fell down like a rustle. He actually did it for her. The amber eyes stared at his cold eyebrows. The emotions in his four eyes flowed. All the misunderstandings and unhappiness in the past turned into beards when his life was hanging on the line, leaving behind only the true love and throbbing in his heart. Qin Yu looked at Yi Yi in disbelief. Gu Yi's appearance made him feel lonely. John Kersen held onto his wrist, his clear gaze filled with longing. Yi Chen watched as he used to flip his hand over Yun Fei Yu's big palm and greet the face of an exiled immortal without any courtesy. His heart was filled with revenge, and the corner of his lips curled into a malicious smile. He wantonly said, Look, dignified president E is obedient like a puppet in front of me at this moment. A burst of arrogant laughter caused everyone present to frown disrespectfully. Yi Chen scanned them and said disdainfully, Yi Yi, do you think this is the end? Let me tell you it's not that easy. You want to save her, don't you? What exactly do you want? Yi Yi stopped moving his hand, wiped off the blood from the corner of his mouth, and asked coldly. It's very simple. If you jump down from here, I'll let her go. How about it? Yi Chen was serious, not joking at all. He wanted to kill Yi Yi. He naively thought that as long as Yi Yi died, a corporation would naturally belong to him. Yi Yi sneered and slowly stood up. After kneeling for a long time, his footsteps staggered a little, but he firmly walked towards Gu Yi's direction. What do you want to do? Yi Chen nervously grabbed Gu Yi's collar. The sound of the waves behind him made him dare not retreat. He wanted to save his life. Only in this way would he have the chance to take back everything that belonged to him. Yi Yi coldly looked at his timidity and said indifferently, jump down as you wish. Yi Chen looked at him in surprise. He didn't expect that he would really risk his life for a woman. He stared at Yi Ye's every move and carefully guarded against it. He even pulled the gun in his hand slightly. Gu Yi watched helplessly as Yi Yi got closer and closer to them. Her throat seemed to choke. She wanted to shout but could not make a sound. She could only let her tears wash down her cheeks and turn cold in the roar of the sea breeze. No, Yi Yi, hurry up and leave. Leave me alone. In the blink of an eye, Gu Yi struggled violently. As if a bowstring was about to break, she tightened her grip on the gun in Yi Chen's hand. Yi Chen was shocked by her sudden explosion. She pushed her finger and pressed the trigger. A bang sound rang out, causing the clouds to tremble. Gu Yi was slightly stunned as she went to snatch the gun from him. Yi Yi also took large strides forward and tightly grabbed Yi Chen's hand. He forcefully folded the gun and landed on the ground. He suppressed Yi Chen and the two of them were fighting. Seeing Gu Yi sitting on the ground, Yi Yi was stunned and shouted, hurry up and get down. Then what do you do? Gu Yi's face was pale and she wanted to step forward to help, but she didn't know where to start. Your presence will only distract me. Yi Ye's hook fiercely hit Yi Chen's face. 
He was dizzy for almost half a day without reacting and he was already showing signs of weakness. Only then did Gu Yi obediently move her numb legs and slowly walk down the cliff, looking back uneasily as she walked. Qin Yu was stunned by the gunshot just now. He was born into a wealthy family, and although he had experienced kidnapping for ransom, he had never seen such a battle before. Zhang Kersen was even more shocked. He shrieked and crawled into Qin Yu's arms. He didn't dare to raise his head for a long time. By the time they regained their senses, Gu Yi had already walked towards them, and Yi Yi had already subdued Yi Chen. Qin Yu comfortably stroked Zhang Kersen's shoulder and dragged her out of his embrace. He strode towards Gu Yi, ran to her side, and slowly carried her arm away safely. Are you all right? Qin Yu looked at the bruises on her snowy neck and said in distress. Gu Yi bit her bloodless lips and shook her head reluctantly. She grabbed his arm and pleaded, Senior, can you help him? Qin Yu nodded and said slowly, I'll send you over first and then I'll go help him. He quickened his pace, almost half dragging Gu Yi along. Zhang Kersen watched as both of them walked over. A pair of peach blossom eyes were tightly locked onto Qin Yu's big palm that was placed on Gu Yi's shoulder. A wisp of bitterness filled his heart. In his heart, he might never be able to compare to his sister. A bitter smile appeared on his lips and he immediately went forward to receive Qin Yu and Gu Yi. A gunshot rang out from afar. The three of them were stunned. Gu Yi anxiously turned around. The scene in front of her left her dumbfounded. Yi Yi was shot in the chest. Blood gushed out from the wound. Large patches of blood blossomed. Her snow-white shirt was dyed bright red. Yi Yi was weak and fell to the ground. Yi Chen took the opportunity to catch her breath and collapsed to the ground. Following the source of the voice, Li Emo revealed half his head from the side of the reef. His laughter was filled with bitterness and satisfaction. Linger, I've finally avenged you. As he spoke, he took his men out of the reef and walked in the direction of Yi Yi. Surprised for a moment, Gu Yi suddenly broke free from Qin Yu and Zhang Kersen's hands and ran in the direction of Yi Yi. At this moment, Yi Chen struggled and grabbed Browning who was shot down by Yi Yi again. She sneered and drove in Gu Yi's direction. Yi Yi, even if I can't successfully obtain Yi Corporation today, it won't make you feel better for the rest of your life. Didn't you care about that woman? Then let him wait for you underground with Linger. Qin Yu watched as the bullet flew towards Gu Yi and quickly pushed her to the ground. His body tilted and was exposed to the bullet. At this moment he looked down at Gu Yi with a somewhat haggard face. His heart was filled with calm. If only he could die for her like this. Brother Qin, don't forget me, she said in a gentle voice as she slowly closed her eyes and got into a warm embrace in front of her. Gu Yi fell to the ground weakly. Her amber eyes stared at the tragedy in front of her in shock. Zhang Kersen stood in front of Qin Yu and was shot in the back. Blood flowed along the light pink gauze dress like a delicate plum blossom, slowly blooming and flowing down. Kersen! Qin Yu held her in his arms and cried out her name in sorrow. He held her body and slowly slid on the ground. Tears rolled down his cheeks and he whispered, Why are you so stupid? Gu Yi looked painfully at Yi Chen, who had been shot in the distance but was still fighting with Yi Yi. She then turned around to look at her sister, who was lying in Qin Yu's embrace. Thick sorrow filled her heart. Her eyes were sour and dry, and she could no longer use a single tear. Seeing the alarming change in front of him, Yi Ye's cold face was no longer heavy. Seeing that Gu Yi was fine, he heaved a sigh of relief. Li Amo led his men closer and closer to him, and Yi Chen, who was beside him, kept pestering him. In the blink of an eye, they had already fought to the end of the cliff. As long as they took a few more steps, the two of them would be pink and fragile. Yi Yi today, this place is your desperate situation. I can finally avenge Linger. As he spoke, he slowly raised the gun in his hand. Yi Yi looked at him, then looked at Yi Chen and the cliff below. Without hesitation, he pulled Yi Chen down. Li Emo followed them closely and saw the two of them engulfed by the surging waves. He stopped and led his subordinates down the cliff. Seeing Ia's tall and handsome figure disappear and fall, it was as if she had also heard her own heartbreak. At this moment, time seemed to have stopped. Other than the raging splashes of water, she could not see anything else. Don't move. Ia's men brought the policemen and surrounded them with live ammunition and guns. Seeing that the situation was wrong, Li Emo immediately led his subordinates away. Gui staggered forward and grabbed the officer's hand. She pleaded in a hoarse voice, please save him. Lifeboat, hurry. Don't worry, Mrs. E. We will do our best. The police officer instructed on the walkie-talkie and respectfully said to Gui, Chapter 152 Confessions Before Dying 
The turbulent waves roared and the dark clouds lowered. Rumbling thunder accompanied the torrential rain. Qin Yu hugged the unconscious Zhang Kirsten tightly and looked at Gu Yi uneasily. In the end, she got into the Mercedes-Benz ambulance. Yi Ye's subordinates and butler were both here. She no longer needed her. The cold encounter in late autumn was not as cold as the despair in her heart. Gui sat on the rock, her amber eyes staring at the fracture of the cliff. Dozens of lifeboats were searching for that person. He was shot. How likely was he to survive in such a swift current? Madam, you're injured. Let's go to the hospital first. Little Lon held the umbrella and looked at her with distress. Butler was standing beside her, blocking the cold wind for Gui. Gui shook her head weakly. Her hoarse voice was exceptionally firm, no, I want to wait for him here. Butler took the coat from the servant beside him and carefully put it on Gu Yi. Madam, you need a cold compress on your face. It will hurt if sir comes back to see you like this. Gu Yi did not move. She just stared fixedly at the place where Yi Yi fell from the cliff as if he would be rescued. There's someone on the reef over there. I also found one here, but it's already dead. Two cries of alarm made people anxious. Gui Chiang propped herself up and stood up. Looking at the lifeboat that had already docked, her black shirt was already tightly stuck to her body by the seawater. She heaved a sigh of relief. Fortunately, it wasn't him. Officer, this is the kidnapper just now. How should we deal with him? A few policemen carried Yi Chen's icy corpse ashore and asked. Bring it back to the police station first. We'll deal with it after President Yi finds this. President Yi is here. Gui followed her voice and looked at the nearby reef. She wore a white shirt, which was especially dazzling against the blood. Her tall body struggled to climb onto the reef and barely managed to support herself. Gui suddenly exerted strength and ran down the cliff. Her amber eyes stared fixedly at the white light between the waves and the rocks. She did not pay any attention to the rough road beneath her feet. She fell several times but did not care about it. Even the soil on her body did not care about it and continued to run towards him. Yi Yi was carefully rescued by a few policemen and slowly sailed towards the shore on the lifeboat. Gu Yi ignored the cold water and rushed to the shoal. She waved her hand towards the lifeboat. Yi Yi sat on the lifeboat with her back straight. Looking at the worried little woman in front of her, a trace of satisfaction flashed across her pale face, and her cold eyebrows also carried a trace of warmth. He shook off the hand supported by the police and walked towards Gu Yi. He grabbed her arm tightly and said nervously, Are you hurt? Gu Yi could no longer control herself. Tears surged out of her eyes and she threw herself into his arms. She felt Yi Ye's warm and steady embrace. At this moment, she no longer wanted to be separated from him. Butler, Little Lan, and the others also rushed over. The stretcher of the medical team was also carried over. Dr. Lee, one of the medical staff, looked at the bloodstains in front of Yi Yi and carefully suggested, President Yi, your wound is very dangerous. I recommend that you be hospitalized immediately. Yi Yi looked at him coldly and blamed him for breaking the tenderness between the two of them. When Gu Yi saw the crowd gathered around her, she raised her head from Yi Ye's embrace shyly. His pale face and thin green lips stung her eyes. The wound on her chest went through many twists and turns, but the blood still did not stop. It trickled down and dripped down the corner of her shirt. Before long, a small patch of land had turned bright red beneath their feet. Gui held Iya's hand and said slowly, Shall we go to the hospital? The mournful voice was choked with sobs. Iyi remained unmoved, still tightly wrapping her in his arms. Even though the pain in his chest caused his brows to tightly knit into a ball, he did not relax in the slightest. Promise me one thing first, okay? Her cold voice was somewhat hoarse and depressed. Gu Yi did not hesitate to nod her head, only wanting to hurry to the hospital for treatment. Iyi stroked her shoulder, his pitch black eyes full of darkness. He looked at her with a burning gaze and said seriously, don't leave me again, okay? As soon as these words were spoken, Gu Yi's expression stiffened and she was silent. She did not know how to answer them. The past few drops, the truth of Xiao Ma's kidnapping and today's shocking scene constantly pushed her cognitive limit. She could no longer make a rational judgment whether to leave or stay. Gu Yi, I love you. That's right. At first, I thought of you and Xiao Ma as my tools for revenge and retrieval of E Corporation. But later I discovered that Xiaoma's cute and quick-witted nature gradually allowed me to find the joy and forgiveness of being a father. Everything about you made my heart tremble and I couldn't help but feel moved. As Yi spoke, he gasped for breath and struggled to maintain his body. I was only worried that something might happen to Xiaoma, but I ignored that you would be here. That's why Yi Chen had the opportunity to take advantage of it. 
But believe me, I never thought of taking advantage of anyone this time. Gui sobbed and nodded. She believed him. If it was his scheme this time, then he was playing too big. He almost lost his life. Which conspirator would bury him for a chess piece? I believe you. Yi Yi smiled like a child and asked, don't leave me. Will you marry me? Madam, President Yi's injuries cannot be dragged on any longer. Dr. Lee reminded him from the side, watching nervously as more and more blood accumulated beneath Yi Ye's body. Gui hesitated. She shouldn't answer so easily. This was not only her life but also Xiaoma's life. Yi Yi had nurtured him as Yi Corporation's successor. Was Xiaoma going to face such a bloody storm in the future? Yi Ye's hand on her shoulder became heavier and heavier. Her tall body almost couldn't hold on and slowly slid down. The bullying on her chest also became more and more urgent. Everything in front of her made Gu Yi shocked. The increasingly weak Yi Yi made it too late for her to think any further. Her amber eyes were a little certain, so she nodded and said, I promise you, let's go to the hospital quickly, okay? The answer he wanted finally came to his ears. Yi Yi heaved a sigh of relief in his heart, and his meaning became blurry. All of his weight was on Gu Yi's body, and he instantly lost all consciousness. Hurry up and send President Yi to the car. Dr. Lee and a few of his subordinates carefully placed Yi Yi on the stretcher. After a brief examination, they discovered that Yi Yi had not only a gunshot wound on his chest, but also a large number of scratches on his arm. His flesh was bloody and was extremely miserable. The patient's condition is very dangerous. Hurry up and stop the bleeding. Dr. Lee ordered his subordinates in an orderly manner. Gui also boarded the car, followed by Butler, Little Lan, and Shin Yu. Her expression was extremely solemn. How did things end up like this? After arriving at the hospital, Yi Yi was pushed into the operating room as soon as possible. Dr. Li handed Gu Yi the preoperative agreement and carefully instructed on the relevant matters. Gu Yi's heart skipped a beat when she heard this and her hands twisted incessantly. She asked, what are the chances of the operation succeeding? 50%. The bullet was too close to the heart in delayed treatment. The current situation is not optimistic. Dr. Lee replied truthfully. Gu Yi's face was full of grief. She grabbed the pen in her hand and signed her name on the agreement with trembling. She slowly handed it to the doctor and asked, May I accompany him? Dr. Lee frowned at her. He wanted to refuse, but when he remembered that Yi Yi had been unconscious and was calling her by her name, he reluctantly nodded and instructed the assistant to disinfect her and put on a special surgical uniform. Butler looked at Gu Yi and hesitated to say anything. In the end, she was still worried and said, Madam, the injury on your face has not been treated yet. Although Butler was also worried about Iya's injuries, Gu Yi was still Iya's treasure. If he came out and saw Gu Yi like this, he would definitely complain that they did not take good care of her. Gu Yi shook her head indifferently. Compared to him, her injuries were nothing. Everything that happened today was all because of her. If she hadn't been accidentally caught by Yi Chen, there wouldn't have been so many things that happened afterwards. After changing clothes, she signaled for Butler and Little Lan to feel at ease. Then she followed the doctor into the operating room. Yi Yi lay unconsciously on the operating bed. His pale face grew colder and taller while his face was as cold as an exiled immortal. His thin lips did not have a trace of blood. If he did not pay attention, he would hardly be able to detect the fluctuations in his chest. Yi Gui half knelt in front of his bed, sadness could not be felt by herself. Ever since she met him, she had never seen him so weak. Waves of self-blame and heartache mixed with worry almost made her unable to breathe. He's fine. He's temporarily unconscious after taking the anesthetic. Dr. Lee helped her up and sat to the side. He comforted her slowly, you can stay here and accompany him. Promise me that no matter what you see or what happens, you can't make any noise to prevent the operation from being affected. I know. Gui took a deep breath, calmed her emotions and nodded in agreement. At the beginning of the operation, Gu Yi held onto Yi Ye's hand tightly, wanting to transmit her strength to him. Seeing the doctors carefully scratch his wound with all kinds of scalpel, blood surged even more, tears blurred Gu Yi's eyes, and her heart ached so much that she could hardly breathe. Yi Yi for me for Xiaoma you must persevere, definitely. Ding! The sound of colliding with the porcelain came. Gu Yi slowly opened her eyes. Finally the bullet was removed. The doctors were relieved. Dr. Lee looked at the indicators on the detector and instructed the assistant, go to the blood bank to get some more blood for a rainy day. Doctor, is he all right? Gui nervously stood up and grabbed Dr. Lee's hand. I'm out of danger. I need to observe how I recover later. 
The operating lights were turned off and Yi Yi was pushed out. Butler, Shen Yu, and Little Lan, who were waiting outside, heaved a sigh of relief. Gui followed closely behind, afraid that if he suddenly woke up, he would not be able to see him. Their days were still long, so he must quickly recover. Chapter 153 Wake Up In the spacious and bright VIP ward, sunlight pierced straight through the floor to ceiling window. On the small table in front of the bed was an exquisite crystal bottle with white perfume lilies inserted inside. Yi Yi slowly opened his cold eyes. He looked up and saw Gu Yi lying on the head of his bed. Her delicate face was full of fatigue. Right now, there were thick black circles under her eyes. Her long fan-shaped eyelashes were constantly moving, attracting people's love. He slowly stretched out his hand and stroked her palm-sized face, his pitch-black eyes filled with gentleness. Oh! Gu Yi gently stroked her cheeks and just happened to touch Yi Ye's big palm. She suddenly woke up from her shock and stood up helplessly, smashing straight into his burning eyes. Are you awake? Is there anything wrong? I'll call the doctor. With that, Gu Yi turned around and was about to leave. Yi Yi pulled her arm, her pitch black eyes locked tightly on her delicate face, and said softly, don't go. Then he pressed the button at the head of the bed and Dr. Lee immediately knocked on the door. President Yi, are you awake? He smiled and examined Yi Yi. He nodded in relief and said, Your injuries are finally under control. If you want to be discharged from the hospital, you can go home and rest now. Yi Yi nodded and waved her hand to indicate that he could leave. Gu Yi was relieved after hearing Dr. Li's words. Her nervous heart finally calmed down. Dr. Li looked at the two of them and smiled meaningfully. He closed the door for them thoughtfully. The door was closed softly, leaving only Yi Yi and Gu Yi in the huge ward. She stood in front of the hospital bed and lowered her head to avoid his gaze. Her increasingly delicate and beautiful face had a different charm which fascinated Yi Yi. Do you still remember what you promised me before? He suddenly raised his eyes. His cold tone made Gu Yi feel as if she was in another life. Ever since the surgery that day he had been unconscious for five days and five nights. She stayed by the bedside with her clothes on, hoping that the first person Yi Yi would wake up to would be her. Riri looked at his handsome cheeks lying on the pillow, his eyes tightly closed without any vitality. In his heart, he prayed countless times to the heavens. As long as he could hear his voice again, it would be good for her to do anything. Seeing that he was awake now, he felt a little timid in his homeland. Yi Yi held her hand and sat beside him. What don't you remember? He said slowly. Looking at his thin handsome face, Gu Yi recalled that day and still felt a lingering fear in her heart. I remember I won't leave again, she said hesitantly. She had already seen through Yi Ye's intentions towards herself and Xioma. She didn't want to think too much about the past and just wanted to grasp the happiness of the present. All right, let's go home. Yi Ye held her hand, her fingers clasped together and said tenderly. Gui nodded and got up to pack her luggage. Yi Ye watched as a warm current swept past her heart after she was busy for him. He was intoxicated by the sense of peace and security. Don't be too busy. Come and accompany me. Just ask Butler and Little Lan to do these things. Yi Yi picked up a peeled apple and tasted it. Gu Yi obediently put down the waiter in her hand and sat beside him. Yi Yi smiled and fed the apple block in her hand into her mouth. She stroked her delicate chin with one hand and said softly, It's been hard on you these days. While Yi Yi was half asleep, his eyelids were so heavy that he could not open them no matter how hard he struggled. A clear voice was always speaking to him softly at this moment. He could not make a sound with his hoarse voice, but he knew that it was Gu Yi. His restless emotions were calmed down by her comfort. The soft grapefruit aroma at the tip of his nose told him that the little woman had always been by his side. Gu Yi shook her head and held his hand. Her clear eyes looked at him affectionately, and she worriedly said, It really doesn't matter? Do you want to stay in the hospital for a few more days? Yi Yi shook his head and didn't say anything. He held Gu Yi in his arms to let her lean against him. Gu Yi gently avoided his wound and covered his shoulder with her slender hand. She was tender and loving. Yi Yi fondly stroked her long black hair and said in a low voice, I'm fine now. Don't worry, huh? Gu Yi looked up at him and smiled. She nodded and said apologetically, Yi Yi, I'm to blame for this disaster. Otherwise, you wouldn't have suffered such serious injuries. Yi Yi patted her shoulder comfortably and comforted her, I won't mention anything else from before, okay? Gu Yi nodded and said softly, let's start over. M.M., it's time for me to give you a wedding. As Yi Yi spoke, he kissed Gu Yi deeply on her white forehead. The two of them stared at each other, their gazes glued together. 
The air was filled with a sweet smell and they were intoxicated. A light knock slowly sounded on the door interrupting the affection between the two. Butler brought little Lan and Xin Yu into the room. Seeing that Yi Yi had woken up, tears streamed down his cheeks as he shouted, Young master, you're finally awake. Yi Ye's cold eyebrows were slightly moved. He held his hand and said in a deep voice, It's been a long time. It's true that Madam has worked hard. No matter how we persuade her, she will ignore it. She must personally take care of you here. Little Lan smiled and started packing. Her words caused Gu Yi's face to flush with suspicion and she lowered her head so embarrassedly that she did not dare to dare him. Seeing her adorable appearance, Yi Yi smiled softly and leaned against the bedside. Seeing this, Gu Yi immediately extended her hand to support him. The two of them had a tacit understanding of each other's movements. Butler and Little Lan smiled happily as they watched from the side. Be careful. Your wound hasn't healed yet. Just tell me what you want. Gu Yi angrily said, her delicate eyebrows filled with worry for him. Yi Yi leaned against the bed and looked at Xin Yu, who was standing beside him. Why are you so quiet today? He said jokingly. Xin Yu casually picked up the apple and put it in his mouth. He ate it with relish and sighed, My single dog is about to be tortured to death by the two of you. What are you talking about? Turn grief and anger into appetite. Yi Yi chuckled. Gu Yi, who was holding her big palm in her arms, said seriously, What's going on outside now? Xin Yu said nonchalantly, Yi Chin is dead. As for his subordinates, they are now separated by five quarters. Jiang Xinyo and Jiang Yun are doing well in prison too. Don't worry. The real problem is Li Mo. He shot the black gun at you. Now the police are looking for people all over the world, but he seems to have evaporated out of thin air and disappeared. The more Yi listened, the more his brows furrowed, and he said worriedly, let our men pay attention to his actions. That's right. This person has always been against us. If something bad happens sooner or later, it's better to take action first. Xin Yu said firmly. Hearing Li Mo's name again, Gu Yi's heart was filled with doubt. Who exactly was he? All of these people who opposed Yi Yi were for the sake of reputation, benefits, and wealth. Only he was different, as if he had some kind of personal grudge against him. And all of this was probably related to that girl named Ling'er. Who was she? What does it have to do with Yi Yi? As a result, Gu Yi couldn't help but recall that a few days ago, Yi Yi had just finished her surgery and hadn't woken up yet. The police came to the hospital to find her and handed a wallet to her, saying that it belonged to Yi Yi. She had seen him use the black crocodile leather purse before. It was Yi Yi's stuff. With some curiosity, she subconsciously opened the purse and was immediately attracted by the photos inside. Although the ranger soaked in the seawater was blurry, it was not difficult to see that the picture was a very delicate girl. Her slender figure was charming, and her agile eyebrows were as lovable as words. Gui held the picture for a long time and was absent-minded. Who was she, what relationship did she have with Yi Yi, and why did she appear in his wallet? Now that everything was connected, an answer faintly formed in his heart. Gui, what are you thinking? Yi Yi's soft call made her come back to her senses to see him. He handed her his hand and signaled for Gui to help him out of bed. Be careful. Gui caressed him carefully while little Lan put on his shoes. Soon after, the group of people packed their things and walked out of the ward. Yi Yi stroked Gu Yi's shoulder and gave her half of her weight. Seeing how exhausted she was, she couldn't help but secretly let water slip and slowly stood up. Did you get hurt that day? Yi Yi calmly whispered into Gu Yi's ear without anyone paying attention. Her warm breath sprayed into her ears, causing Gu Yi's face to instantly turn red. I'm fine, just apply some medicine. Her face was only slightly red and swollen, and her body was slightly scratched. After these few days, she had already recovered. Compared to his gunshot wound, it was nothing at all. Sigh. Gui sighed softly and couldn't help but think of her half-sister, Zhang Kersen. At that time, Qin Yu stood in front of her, and she stood in front of Qin Yu. She was shot in the back and hit her lungs. Now she still hadn't woken up. Mother Zhang had already fainted from crying several times, and Qin Yu had always been there with her full of self-blame. Yi Yi knew all of this and comforted her slowly, I've already instructed Butler to get the best consultation from abroad for her. Don't worry, she will definitely be fine. Gui nodded and stroked him into the silver Cadillac. She then sat beside him. Shin Yu got into another car and said with some concern, Yi Yi, I still have some things to deal with so I won't go back with you. The smile on Yi Yi's face froze slightly before he recovered. He nodded and said, all right, you go. Her cold gaze was exceptionally distant, as if she had fallen into the memories of the past. 
The driver stepped on the accelerator steadily and the car drove forward steadily. Gui held Iya's hand tightly and said softly with some worry, Are you all right? Do you want to slow the driver down a little bit? Iya enjoyed her care at the moment and smiled, It's fine. Your man isn't that weak yet. Gui's face was crimson and she unhappily hammered him. Iya's posture made her cry out in pain, causing Gui to be filled with guilt. Just as she was about to step forward to examine his injuries, she was easily dodged by him and proudly said, I'm lying to you. Chapter 154 Help Me Take a Bath Returning to an old mansion, Xiaoma had been waiting for them in the living room for a long time. The moment he saw the silver Cadillac appear, he hurriedly pushed open the door of the hall and ran out. He didn't care about the cold outside and just put on a blanket and ran out. Dad, Mommy? He wrinkled his face and pounced into Gu Yi's arms miserably. He looked up at Yi Yi. Who provoked you? Why are you unhappy? Yi Yi stroked his head, full of doting. Half a month later, the little fellow seemed to have grown taller again. Xiaoma shrunk his lips and shook his head. Nobody provoked me. I was just worried about you guys. Dad, are you feeling better? Yi Yi held his chubby little hand and walked forward while smiling. Dad is fine. How's your homework recently? Hearing him mention homework, Xiaomo's frustration was swept away. He proudly propped up his chest and said, We just finished the monthly exam, and Xiaomo easily took the first place in the class. The teacher said that the year can show that he can smoothly advance to the primary school in. His aristocratic school was not something that could be entered by simply relying on money. There were a series of strict standards for entering a higher school. Most of the children graduating from high school had gone to world-famous schools. From this, it was not difficult to see how meticulous the quality of teaching and talent selection there were. Hearing that, Yi Yi smiled and said with relief, all right. Let's have a good lunch today as a celebration, shall we? Gu Yi stroked his round little face, full of love and pride. Although Xiaoma would occasionally make mistakes, fortunately, her IQ had always been online and she didn't have to worry about her studies. I want to eat mommy's coke chicken wings. Xiaoma pulled Gu Yi with one hand and Yi Yi with the other shaking and acting coquettish. All right, mommy will do it for you. I'll bring you some school later and share it with the children, okay? Gui lovingly waved her hand with him, and Iya's heart was filled with joy as she watched their happy smiling faces. As soon as they walked into the hall, Iyi and Gui were attracted by the exquisite flowers. Xiaoma looked at them with pride and jumped in front of them. He smiled and said, these are all prepared by me to welcome you home. How about it? Do you like it? Yi Yi hugged Gu Yi and watched the walls wrapped in strings of gardenias. The small table and boga shelves were also filled with pure white perfume lilies. The sofa was even more exaggerated. The hearts were made out of bright red roses and then the beautiful flowers were piled up to say, Welcome home. The entire hall was beautifully decorated. Did you do all this? Gu Yi looked at Xiaoma in disbelief. Yi Yi's cold expression was also full of smiles. Xiaoma smiled as he picked up the blue demonic beauty hidden behind the table and gave it to Gu Yi. Mommy, I'll give it to you, he said happily. Gu Yi's excited eyes were filled with water. She took the flowers and was intoxicated. Good, her Xiaoma had grown up. Yi Ye's smile gradually condensed on his face. This little fellow was clearly injured by him, but this little ghost gave the flowers to Gu Yi. Where did he get so many ideas at such a young age? He actually walked in front of him and coaxed that little woman into being so happy with these flowers. Dad, Xiaoma also prepared a present for you. Seeing that his father's expression was gradually turning bad, Xiaoma obediently took out a large box of macarons hidden beside the boga rack and handed it to him. He flattered him and said, this is Xiaoma's favorite. It's all for you. Yi Yi smiled and took the gift from him, instructing the servants to prepare a French meal while Gu Yi and Xiaoma walked towards me. Actually, he had almost recovered, but he was still greedy for Gu Yi's consideration and gentleness, so he deliberately made a weak appearance from time to time. Lying properly on the bed and letting Gu Yi cover him with the blanket, Yi Yi raised his eyelids and saw his son, who was still standing by the side and refusing to leave. He asked seriously, Xiaoma, have you finished your homework for the weekend? Not yet. Xiaoma circled around Gu Yi and casually returned. Yi Yi cleared his throat and said seriously, although your results are not bad, you can't be proud. After saying that, she gave Gu Yi a meaningful look. As expected, Gu Yi nodded and looked at Xiaoma seriously. Xiaoma, what dad said is right. Let's go finish our homework first. I'll call you for lunch later, okay? She said affectionately. Xiaoma pouted his lips and stumbled towards his bedroom. 
These adults really didn't have any energy. They only wanted to get together with him and didn't take him to play. Seeing Shema Luo Luo leave unhappily, Gui looked at Yi uneasily and said, Shouldn't we be too strict with him? Yi disagreed and patiently explained, He will inherit E Corporation in the future. If he is not strictly required to do so now, how can he support such a large family business in the future? You must know that this is not just him, it is the responsibility of our family. It is also the continuation of the entire family. If we are not diligent today, how can we withstand this pressure in the future? Gui remained silent, and her heart was at a loss. She didn't know if this was good or bad for Xiaoma. Don't worry, Xiaoma can handle it. Yi Yi held her hand and comforted her in a gentle voice. He could see the child's potential every day. Gui forced a smile. Yi Yi patted the seat in front of her and signaled for her to sit over. Gui sat beside him and let him pull her. She said slowly, if you have nothing else, I'll make Xiaoma cola chicken wings first. But what if I don't want you to leave? Yi Yi rubbed her hand playfully and her deep tone made people's hearts palpitate. Gui lowered her head shyly. She did not dare to look directly at his blatant gaze. She wanted to break free from his grip on her hand but was forcefully clamped down by him. No matter how hard she tried, she could not escape. Seeing his cold face slowly approaching, her heartbeat gradually accelerated and her breathing became difficult. Yi Yi slowly lowered her head. The hot lips contained the edge of the impression. The sweet smell still made him intoxicated. As he tossed and grinded, the kiss deepened. Gui passively endured it. Looking at the handsome face close by, her mind was blank. She almost didn't know what to do. Breathe. Yi Yi's hoarse, smiling voice sounded in his ears, and he immediately relaxed his grip on her. Gui struggled to sit up from him and gasp for breath. Her originally pale face was full of blushes. She lowered her head and turned her eyes to the side. She stubbornly did not look at him. Yi Yi smiled and hooked her chin. She turned to her side and said in a deep voice, Why is it still so awkward, huh? Gui was so shy that she hurriedly stood up and left me to make chicken wings for Xiaoma. She then strode towards the kitchen. Looking at her slender back, Yi Ye's lips curled up slightly, full of playfulness. This little woman was shy again. The dishes for lunch were exceptionally grand. On the one hand, to celebrate Yi Ye's discharge from the hospital, and on the other hand, to celebrate Xiaoma's good results in the monthly exam, the family gathered together, and the atmosphere was exceptionally lively and harmonious. Xiaoma, this is your favorite cola chicken wing. Eat more. Gu Yiru smiled gently, her pair of watery eyes filled with affection for her child. Yi Yi looked down coldly and saw that his bowl was empty. He couldn't help but feel a little depressed. He said in a strange tone, I like cola chicken wings too, but I don't have the strength to add them to my hands. Hearing this, Gu Yi immediately picked up a pair of chopsticks for him. A pair of watery eyes looked at him with concern and said apologetically, What else do you want to eat? I'll pick it up for you. Xiaoma curled his lips and immediately lowered his head when he saw Yi Yi staring at him. Yi Ye's cold face was filled with a smile of success. During this period of time, he was astonished to find that he could no longer leave this little woman in front of him. Her every move, every smile and every frown attracted him without exception. Her concern and care made his ice-cold heart become exceptionally ironed. The slightest neglect of her made his heart not feel good. After a meal spent in their affection, Xiaoma frowned and went back to his room, as if he had foreseen the miserable life he would have in the endless years to come when he would compete with his father for favor with mommy. The servants at the side also left tactfully, leaving only Gu Yi and Yi Yi to eat this lunch endlessly. Back in the bedroom, Gu Yi helped Yi Yi lie on the bed. He looked at her with a pair of cold eyes and asked Gu Yi to lower her head embarrassedly to dodge. What do you want or what do you want to eat? He asked hesitantly. The long-standing tacit understanding let her know that Yi Yi had something to ask her for help, but she didn't expect that his words would cause her endless difficulties. I want to take a bath, Yi Yi said in a deep voice, without the slightest room for maneuver. Gu Yi's face flushed red, and she made a gesture to go out. I'll call Butler to help you. Not good. Yi Yi refused stubbornly and said discontentedly, he is thick-handed and thick-legged. He can't do anything well. My wound can't be stained with water. Then call little Lon over? Gu Yi panicked and did not choose her words. She only said it subconsciously. She did not expect that her words were so inappropriate. Yi Yi looked at her calmly, his pitch black eyes carrying a deep, playful smell. My lady, do you think it would be appropriate for a maid to serve a naked male owner in the bath? Ah. Gu Yi was speechless. 
She took a few steps back and blushed helplessly. Then what do you want? Yi paused word by word and could not refuse. Then I will have to trouble you. Gui hurriedly shook her head and repeatedly refused. No, I, I. She did not find a suitable reason to refuse for a long time, but she blushed, which was especially pleasing. Although they had already been intimate with each other several times, the naked body in broad daylight was helping her bathe, challenging her to the limit. AI, since Madam is unwilling to help, then I can only continue to be dirty and smelly, waiting for the mole to get better. Yi was aggressive with a hint of self-pity. Seeing his pitiful words, Gu Yi's heart softened. She subconsciously agreed. After nodding her head, she regretted it endlessly. She had no choice but to accept her fate and go to the bathroom to pour water for him. Yi watched her slender body bustle about in front of the big bathtub through the frosted glass, and a crafty smile slowly bloomed. Chapter 155 Sweetness in the Bathroom After taking care of everything, Gu Yi came out shyly and whispered, The water has been put away. Yi Yi couldn't put her shyly blushing face away and stretched out his arm to signal her to come and help him. Gu Yi helped him to the bathroom. Yi Yi stood in front of her with her shoulders crossed. She wore a black nightgown and didn't know where to start. Madam, if you dawdle any longer, the water will get cold. Yi Yi smiled at her with a playful expression. Turning around to look at the steaming bathtub, Gu Yi struggled to stretch out her fingers and slowly caressed Yi Yi's clothes belt. She pulled it off a few times with trembling. The only thing left was his nightgown. After hesitating for a while, Iya's cold voice exploded above his head, where else have I not seen before? His half-joking and half-serious words made Gu Yi's face even more charming. She bit her lower lip lightly, her trembling fingertips becoming colder and colder. She carefully avoided his muscles, grabbed both ends of her nightgown, and slowly took them off for him. Her sturdy body was visible and her healthy wheat skin was exceptionally conspicuous with several gunshot wounds. Her eyes were red and her heart ached as she stroked the wounds. She choked up and was speechless for a long time. Her tender and cold fingertips slowly scratched her back. The gentle touch made Iya's heart itch. He turned around and wrapped his arms around her shoulders, comforting her gently, it doesn't matter. Everything is over. I'm not standing in front of you right now. Gu Yi's body stiffened. Facing Yi Yi, who was naked, her hands had nowhere to be placed. She could only stick her hands on both sides, afraid of touching his muscles and skin that were filled with strength. Seeing her ostrich appearance, Yi Yi laughed heartily and teased, Does Madam want me to take a bath in my inner clothes? This is so uncomfortable. His words were blunt. Gui covered her face with her hands shyly and said coquettishly, If you don't wash me, I'll go out. I won't be tricked by you anymore. Seeing that she was really angry, Yi Yi immediately smiled apologetically, All right. I'll do it myself, but you have to stay behind and wipe my back. Gui turned around and didn't look at him. Hearing the sound of water whistling in her ears, her pair of eyes stared at one place and didn't dare to take a single step over the lightning pool. Seeing her embarrassed appearance, Iya's lips curled into a wicked smile. He slowly rubbed his chin and said playfully, Madam, don't you come and wipe my back? Hearing this, Gu Yi's snow greasy earlobes immediately turned red. She hesitated and walked over. She picked up the bath towel on the side and turned her eyes to the side, afraid that she would see something she shouldn't. Through a layer of cloth, her slender hands caressed Iya's broad back randomly. A slight force was not even enough to stop the itch. Iya narrowed her cold eyes and enjoyed the soothing feeling on her back. After a long time, fine sweat appeared on Guyi's face. The steam was diffusing between the two of them and a different kind of ambiguity slowly spread out. My back is almost scratched by you. Seeing that she still didn't dare to look up at him, Yi teasingly grabbed her slender white arm and slowly placed it on her lips, gently imprinting it on it. Gui raised her head in surprise. She carefully glanced at his bronze chest, which was full of muscles. She hurriedly turned her face away and didn't dare to look again. It was as if there was a big rock pressing down on her chest, making her suffocated. She stammered, then I'll go out and you can wash slowly. Hearing his words, Gui heaved a sigh of relief. She lifted her foot and was about to leave as if she had been granted an amnesty. However, Yi Yi held her hand and refused to let go. A violent force actually dragged her into the bathtub. Water splashed everywhere. Gui did not react at all. She looked at Yi Yi in shock. She saw the two of them lying in the big bathtub together. They were extremely ambiguous. Her hands were tightly pressed against Yi Yi's chest. The burning sensation made her feel as if she had been burned. She hurriedly stood up. She struggled to sit up, 
trying to keep a distance from Yi, and then remembered something and uneasily returned to his side to look at the droplets of water on his wound, and said uneasily, what should I do? I've got water. Yi grabbed her hand and deliberately said with a serious face, it's all your fault. If you were obedient, it wouldn't be like this soon. As he spoke, he locked his gaze tightly on Gu Yi. She was already soaked. Her pure white shirt was tightly clung to her body and her exquisite curves could be seen clearly. A wave of restlessness slowly rose up. Gui looked at the desire in his eyes and couldn't help but shrink. She retreated towards the edge of the bathtub. Yi Yi sensed her intentions and suddenly grabbed her arm and pulled it towards her. She whispered ambiguously in her ear, I let you escape last time. It's not that easy in the west of Zhejiang. Gui refused, careful not to press herself against his wound. She blushed and said, let's treat the wound first, okay? Yi Yi forcefully suppressed the impulse in his heart and nodded with a smile. I'll go out first and get the medicine for you. Can you do it yourself? Gui got up carefully and tried her best not to spill any more water. Seeing her slender figure into the door, Yi Yi held a smile on his lips. He took a towel from the side and slowly wiped it off his body. He got up and went out. He sat on a reclining chair beside him, not the slightest bit weak. Gui hurriedly took the disinfectant cotton ball and the anti-inflammatory medicine into the door. Seeing Yi lying on the couch, she hurriedly stepped forward and said, What's wrong with you? Are you feeling uncomfortable? Yi frowned and looked straight at Gui with a cold gaze. He neither admitted nor denied it. He only whispered, Hurry up and treat my wound. We have more important things to do in a while, eh? Gui did not understand what he meant for a moment. She only accelerated the movement in her hand and familiarly applied anti-inflammatory medicine to him. She looked at him with concern and asked, How's it? Am I attacking too heavily? Does it hurt? Yi Yi shook his head. His wound had already started to scab. There was no need for him to be so nervous. He slowly caressed her delicate face and said in a low voice, All right, that's enough. Don't be too busy. Gui broke away from his hand and said seriously, No, this is not careless. The doctor said that the wound is close to the heart, so it would be troublesome to speak again. Yi Yi laughed softly. He loved the way she talked so much that he was satisfied with her. He cared about her without any falsehood. I'm fine. As he spoke softly, he stroked Gu Yi's cheeks. He couldn't help but admire her appearance. Gu Yi Li ignored it and continued to sit on her hands. She comforted softly, don't be annoyed, it will be over soon. Yi Ye's lips blossomed with an imperceptible smile. He allowed her to act on his empty mouth. Soft strands of hair brushed past his cheeks from time to time. The refreshing grapefruit fragrance made him almost lose control of it. All right. After bandaging up the gauze on the wound, Gu Yi finally let out a sigh of relief and said while tidying up the tools in her hand. She slowly stood up. The wet clothes on her body hadn't changed yet. The exquisite curves were displayed in front of Yi Yi without any concealment. Gu Yi, however, didn't notice at all. She was still busy, afraid that she wouldn't be able to take care of him. Yi Yi looked at her with deep eyes. Her cold gaze was burning hot. Gui packed up the medicine chest and handed him the wallet with some hesitation. She said slowly, you lost it at the cliff the other day. The police helped find it. When she saw the wallet, her heart felt uncomfortable. Who was the girl on it? She had always pressed this question to the bottom of her heart, but she did not dare to ask. She was afraid that the answer was not what she wanted. Gu Yi even wanted to hide the wallet for a time and did not want him to see it again, but the pride and stubbornness in her heart did not allow her to do so. Yes. When Yi Yi saw the wallet, his cold eyes were slightly stunned. It was as if he had opened a long sealed memory. It was bitter, sweet, but more vague. Seeing that his expression had indeed changed, Gu Yi's heart sank even more. She slowly walked out with the medicine chest in her hand. Her heart was filled with worry. Perhaps that girl was the linger she had always heard of or some other girl. Perhaps there was an unforgettable past between them. When she thought of this, her heart ached. Yi Yi slowly opened his wallet. The picture that was soaked in seawater was blurry and mixed with the clear face in his memory. The teenage astringency had gradually blurred. Yi Chin deserved it. He had already avenged her. Perhaps now was the time to start his own life again. Gu Yi, Xiao Ma, and perhaps their future children will be the focus of his future life. A phone buzzing slowly rang, calling back Yi Ye's thoughts that had drifted far away. It was Shen Yu. He had not gone to the hospital, so why did he call at this time? After hesitating for a moment, Shen Yu answered the phone in his hand. Yi Yi, little Yu's illness is much better. She actually recognized me today. 
Yi Yi breathed a sigh of relief and said indifferently, that's good. Stay there with her and let the doctor take good care of her. Yes. Xin Yu paused for a while before asking, are you really willing to start a new life with Gu Yi? Yes. Yi Yi replied in a deep voice. His words were filled with determination. He had already missed it once and now he didn't want to miss the hard-won happiness in front of him. All right, I understand. Xin Yu hung up the phone as if he was relieved. Yi Yi put down his phone and took a deep breath. He had always understood what Xin Yu meant. He had no intention of helping Little Yu. He wanted to help them a long time ago. However, Little Yu had always been confused, so he was delayed. Now it seemed that it was time. Gui slowly walked into the door and saw that he was in a daze. Her amber eyes were slightly dim. She only went into the bathroom to clean up and did not disturb him again. Achoo! Although she tried her best to control it, she still sneezed. Gui looked down at her wet clothes and felt a chill. Yi Yi strode into the bathroom and saw that she was still busy in her wet clothes. She held her hand in distress and said with concern, Why are you so careless? It's good that you servants do these things. Hurry up and change your clothes. Gui curled her lips and whispered, You don't dislike Butler for being careless. You dislike little Lan for not being considered enough, so I have to do it. Yi Yi did not expect that she would use her own words to stop him. She did not care so much and directly took off her wet clothes. She took a dry towel from the side and wrapped it around her body and slowly wiped it. Don't just take care of me, huh? He brushed the wet hair on her cheeks behind her ears and said in a low voice, If you are tired and sick, I will feel sorry for you. Gu Yuru smiled and leaned into his embrace. Chapter 156 Study Marriage In autumn, it was rare for sunshine to fill the room. The hall of the old E-Clan mansion was coated with a layer of orange-yellow light. The coffee table was filled with all kinds of invitations, drafts of dresses, red powder, and even more colorful. Let's see, which one do you like? Yi Yi asked Xin Yu to spread all these things in front of Gu Yi with a calm expression. Gu Yi picked up the colorful invitation booklet on the table. She was both happy and flustered. She looked at Yi Yi uneasily and said, Are you serious? Of course. Yi Yi nodded and gripped her in a serious manner. The previous contract is null and void. I formally proposed to you. Gui looked at him in surprise. Her long-awaited proposal was actually so simple. A bit of bitterness slowly blossomed in her heart. It was already not easy for such a cold person to say these words. Why would she want too much? The venue and the wedding company have chosen according to my line of sight. I want to hold the wedding in a month. As for the wedding details, I will make plans after Madame finalizes them. Yi pretended to not care. She looked at the dim light in her eyes and said to Xin Yu, the venue and the wedding company have chosen according to my line of sight. Xin Yu smiled as he stood up. His fox-like eyes were filled with ambiguity as he sized up. Within a month, this point in time is very sensitive after saying that, he immediately flashed away, leaving Gu Yi blushing and almost stabbing her head into the picture album. Yi Yi looked at her shy look and curled his lips. He took the invitation card from the table and smiled, look at these first. If you're not satisfied with them, I'll let them search for them. Gui looked at him in surprise and hurriedly waved her hand. These are already very good. I just saw them in a daze. I don't know which one to choose. Yi Yi caressed her hair lovingly, grabbed Gu Yi's shoulder, took the album from her hand, and carefully picked it up with her. This dress is not bad. There's also this one. Yi Yi looked at it for a long time, and when Gui suspected that he had seen it or not, she finally spoke. Looking at his fingers, the two wedding dresses were both conservative. Sweet lace wrapped around his entire body tightly, but it was dignified and dignified, yet it lost some sense of fashion and liveliness. I think this is better. Gui stretched out her hand towards a wide open back gown made of augen yarn, her eyes filled with astonishment. Seeing Tu's expression immediately change, Yi Yi said unhappily, No, it's too revealing. Gui looked at him in surprise. Her amber eyes were filled with disbelief. No matter how he said it, he was still the dignified President Yi. Why was his thoughts so conservative? It was just that his back was bare and his front was covered tightly with a veil. But Gu Yi still wanted to refute, but before she could finish, Yi Yi interrupted, All right, do as I say, and bring these over for Madame to try. He instructed Butler to go to the shop and pick up his clothes. His tone was filled with unquestionable domineeringness. Evans knew how mad he was when he thought of this little woman's exposed back and her clavicle being seen by others. Gui turned to look at him for a while, then looked at the clothes he chose in the picture album, and came to the conclusion that Yi Yi liked the fell. It was both conservative and dignified. 
This was really an old-fashioned aesthetic. She didn't know that one day, Yi would give her a clairvoyant pajamas, but Gu Yi shouted in confusion, saying that she was being conservative. Darling, that's only for other men. You don't need to be conservative with me, but you need to be lascivious. Butler took the album and nodded. Finally, he saw that the two of them were keeping watch. Based on this progress, it seemed that the old mansion would soon have a new owner. The wedding dress was already settled, and all that was left was a series of small items. Yi Yi took the picture album to the side and carefully looked at it with Gu Yi, communicating with each other while looking at it. After finalizing the arrangements, it was already dusk. The bright sunshine only left a strand of dark gold on the horizon. Xiao Ma walked out of the bedroom beside him and looked at them complaining grievously, why haven't we eaten yet? I'm already starving to death. As he spoke, he wrinkled a bun's face and lowered his head to rub his stomach. Seeing him like this, Yi Yi gently waved his hand and handed him a picture album. He smiled and said, Xiao Ma, let's see which dress you like. Xiao Ma looked at everything on the table in surprise. It was as if he had discovered a new continent. He flipped through the picture album with relish and said happily, Xiao Ma is probably one of the few children who can be a flower boy for parents' wedding. So happy. Who's my partner? Isn't she beautiful? He kept on chattering and had long forgotten about eating. Yi Yi patiently explained to him one by one. After a while, Butler settled down his dinner and came to invite them. When Xiao Ma heard that the meal was about to start, he didn't react at all. He was completely attracted by the upcoming grand wedding and told Yi Yi and Gu Yi his thoughts. All right, let's eat first. There's still a month left anyway. There's no rush. Gu Yi could not help but interrupt the father and son who were getting more and more excited. Yi Yi smiled and held Xiao Ma in his arms. The two happily walked towards the dining room, leaving Gu Yi the bride to the side. Gu Yi finally breathed a sigh of relief when she saw their harmonious appearance. She had been worried that Xiao Ma would feel awkward knowing that his relationship with Yi Yi had been confirmed. After all, the father he had always favored was Xin Yu and the substitute was Qin Yu. However, she had not expected that in just a short period of time, he and Yi Yi had already reached such a tacit understanding. Could it be that this was the so-called blood relationship, the nature of father and son? Thinking of the upcoming wedding between her and Yi Yi, Gu Yi couldn't help but feel pleasantly surprised and nervous. She walked slowly to the dining room with mixed feelings. When she entered, Yi Yi and Xiao Ma had already started eating. He was picking a fish bone for Xiao Ma, while Xiao Ma was holding a piece of sweet and spicy food in her hands. Seeing the funny looks of the father and son, Gu Yi smiled helplessly. She temporarily put aside the worries in her heart and joined in. Mommy, this cod is delicious. Let Daddy pick out the fish bones for you. As Xiao Ma spoke, he stuffed rice into his mouth. It seemed that he was really hungry. Yi Yi gave Gu Yi the fish she had picked up thoughtfully, her cold eyebrows filled with tenderness. The servant at the side wanted to step forward to help, but Yi Yi scolded him for going back. He picked fish bones for the two most important people, and his happiness almost overflowed from his chest. After a meal, Xiao Mo returned to his bedroom contentedly to practice the flute, hoping to be able to surprise everyone at the New Year's Eve party. The remaining two, Yi Yi and Gu Yi, also slowly walked towards the bedroom. Close your eyes. Walking to the door of the bedroom, Yi Yi couldn't help but cover Gu Yi's eyes. Her thick hands covered her eyelids with a burning temperature, causing her heart to beat violently. Gu Yi was somewhat confused and uneasy, but she still obediently closed her eyes and allowed him to lead her into the bedroom. The sound of the door opening in front of her and the sound of the door closing behind her could be clearly heard by Gu Yi, who had temporarily lost her sight. Yi Yi, we're already in the bedroom. Can you let me go? There was only a faint light in front of Gu Yi. Everything was blocked by Yi Yi. She spoke with some unease and pleading. Hearing this, Yi Yi slowly let go and leaned into her ear ambiguously, you can open your eyes now. Gu Yi opened her eyes and was immediately shocked by the beautiful scenery in front of her. Yi Yi looked at her pleasantly surprised appearance and said proudly, do you like what you saw? Gu Yi didn't say anything. She just strode to the bed and looked at the heart formed by the blue demonic concubine and the white rose. The letter I love you covered her lips in surprise. She was speechless for a moment and didn't know what to say. The desk in front of the window was made of crafted candles. A long-haired girl in a white dress and a tall man with a face as cold as an exiled immortal hugged each other hand in hand. Gui looked at Yi Yi in disbelief. Did you do all this? Yi Yi smiled but did not answer. He took a few steps forward and took out an exquisite brocade box from his bosom. He suddenly opened it and half knelt in front of her. 
He said sincerely beautiful lady are you willing to marry me? Surprised Gooey was caught off guard. For a moment she was unable to react. He was actually willing to do so much for her. It was ridiculous that she had always doubted his intentions. Gooey took the exquisite blue pigeon egg diamond ring and let Yi wear it for her. She threw herself into Iya's arms excitedly and choked with sobs. She didn't say anything. She had never thanked fate so much that she could meet a lover like Yi at that moment. Do you like it? Yi held her in his arms and asked doubtingly. Gooey nodded, her dreamy voice as if she hadn't woken up from her pleasant surprise. I like it, thank you. Yi hugged her even tighter. The little woman always made him feel so distressed and I will never have to say thank you. I thought our wedding would be as simple as it was when the contract was made. Gooey said dully, occasionally stroking the ring in her hand. She couldn't let go of it. This was the testimony of their love, so how could she not cherish it? Yi hooked her chin and spoiled her, idiot. How could I let you feel so wronged? As he spoke, he walked to the desk drawer with Gooey in his arms, picked up the contract they had signed, and tore the tissue paper into pieces in front of Gooey. There will be no contract between us in the future. You are my wife, my honorable mistress of E-Corporation. Yi tightly wrapped Gooey in his arms and swore an oath. Gooey nodded and looked at his cold and handsome face infatuatedly. She slowly stood on tiptoe and gave her rosy lips. This was her first time taking the initiative. The smile at the corner of Iya's eyes and brows almost melted the hard ice on his face. He was polite instead and tossed and grinded carefully. In just a moment, the two of them tilted onto the bed. The temperature in the room continued to rise and roses flew everywhere on the exquisite European-style bed. The crescent moon outside the window hid in the clouds and couldn't bear to disturb this lover. Chapter 157 Ewer Who Lost Control of Her Emotions In the ICU of the 7th Hospital, the sound of porcelain and glass shattering was heard one after another, accompanied by a sharp howl that was extremely shocking to hear. Little Yu calmed down. Shin Yu stood at the side and tried to persuade her that he could not get close to her under her crazy actions. Voila! Another vase was forcefully smashed into pieces. A slender girl in a loose hospital uniform with a haggard figure picked up the blue and white porcelain bowl at the side and fell to the ground again. She angrily said, what is this? Was raising me here enough to atone for my sister's sins? This heartless little fellow, big sister has only been gone for a few years, his son is so old, and now he wants to get married again. Xinyu tried to walk in and calm her down, but she was afraid that she would hurt herself in the excitement, so it was useless to bind her hands and feet. She could only watch as she smashed everything in the huge VIP ward to the ground. After smashing it for a long time, the girl suddenly lost her strength and knelt on the ground, panting. Her face was filled with death-like sorrow. Xinyu carefully approached her, kicked away the shards around her and sat beside her. Little Yu Yi has done enough for your sister over the years. We were all right. It was Yi Chen's villains. Now she has avenged your sister. Yi Chen is dead. So what if she's dead? Could it be that my sister can survive? Little Yu's clear eyes were like sharp arrows as he looked at Shinyu angrily, disagreeing with his words. Little Yu, you know that no matter what, she can't survive. Why must she torture herself like this? Shinyu stroked her shoulder, his words sharp. I don't want to argue with you and I can't argue with you. Little Yu turned his head away from him, his slightly green face full of stubbornness. I just want you to live a better life, Shinyu said seriously. A pair of fox eyes were filled with sincerity, not the slightest bit of cynicism from the past. She was so intelligent and she had always known his intentions. She just didn't want to understand them. A bitter smile appeared on her lips. When is his wedding date set? Little Yu suddenly opened his mouth, his clear eyes filled with depths that did not correspond to his age. Why are you asking? Shinyu looked at her in puzzlement. He was clearly furious just now, but how did he change his attitude in a short while? Congratulations, of course. Little Yi said word by word, gnashing his teeth. Seeing that her mood had stabilized slightly, Shin Yu stroked her and slowly sat down on the bed. He then called a few nurses outside to order her to clean up the debris on the ground. Yi Yi is very happy that you have this intention. You don't have to go anywhere. As long as you cure your illness here, it will be better than anything else. Shinyu patted her shoulder comfortably, but little Yu dodged her, her hands hanging in the air, it was awkward. She remained silent, as if angry, and turned to the side. No matter what kind words or jokes Shinyu said to please her, she did not say anything. She only had a tense face as if she had great hatred. All right, let me tell you, next month, 16. Shinyu helplessly smiled bitterly. 
Ever since he knew her, he had been made into a little girl by this little guy, a strange and eccentric girl. There was nothing he could not do without her. Remember the first time they met, Yi Yi and Linger dated, and she insisted on accompanying her as a follower. Shen Yu volunteered to accompany Little Yu to play in order for his good friend to have a two-person world. He thought that he, as a foreign student who had seen the world, would not fool this bumpkin-like little high school for a moment. Unexpectedly, after walking around for a while, it was Little Yu who tidied him up. Until now, he still remembered the little girl in the school uniform who was holding an ice sugar gourd in her hand. Her round face blinked her big clear eyes and smiled. In Shin Yu's eyes, the past and the present were overlapping. She was much thinner than before, and she was no longer the girl who didn't know what it was like to be worried and only knew how to laugh foolishly. I knew Big Brother Shin was the best for me. When Little Yu got the answer he wanted, his expression immediately changed. He smiled at Shen Yu and said, Can you take me with you that day? Unable to resist her flawless smile, Shen Yu hurriedly stood up from the bed and hurriedly said, No, you're not cured yet. You can't go out. After saying that, he fled as if he was afraid that if he stayed for a second longer, he would agree to it under her soft grinding. Outside the ward, Shen Yu breathed a sigh of relief. He would come here to see her at this time of the month, and Yi Yi would come with him at first, but she would beat people like crazy the moment she saw Yi Yi. Later, Yi Yi could only get rid of taking care of little Yu and leave it to him. Seeing that her illness had become lighter and lighter these past few years, how could she lose control of her emotions today? After pondering for a while, he taught the nurse beside him to ask carefully, how did Miss know about President Yi's wedding? The middle-aged nurse carefully replied, for some reason, a newspaper appeared in Mrs. Ward. It says that Miss started to throw things crazily after reading it, scaring us all. As she spoke, she stroked her chest with an unsettled look. Shin Yu nodded. Thinking about who accidentally brought her in, he looked at the nurses and said seriously, take care. Don't let her see any news about President E again. Also, take good care of Mississippi. Especially on the big day in President E, you must pay close attention to her condition and contact me as soon as anything goes wrong. Understood. The few of them nodded as if they were crushing garlic. Inside the ward, Little Yu looked at Shin Yu's departing back and listened for a long time. After confirming that he had left, he opened the window and whispered to the outside, He's gone. Come on up. As soon as he finished speaking, a tall black figure immediately flipped through the window and landed steadily on the ground in front of the ward window. There was not the slightest sense of exhaustion that had been hanging in the window for a long time. It's good that you reach out. Little Yu sat on the bed, looking at him with disdain. If it wasn't for that, Yi Yu would have killed him long ago. The man spat out of the window and leaned against it with a sloppy look. Little Yu remained silent. He just lowered his head and looked at the newspaper on the ground, lost in thought. I'm here to tell you such an important matter. Are you treating me so neither coldly nor indifferently? The man said discontentedly. He angrily picked up the newspaper on the floor and placed it on the table. You've really called that young Miss E to have a temper these past few years. I wonder what your sister would think if she knew the way you just fell. You don't have to worry about what I do, Li Emo don't think I don't know what you're up to. Little Yu's explosion was immediately counterattacked. What idea can I have? I just want to avenge your sister. Li Emo walked over to Little Yu sincerely and said slowly, but these past few years I've really run out of tricks. Otherwise I wouldn't have dragged you into this mess. What are you talking about? This is my sister's matter. It's incomparably important to me. How could it be muddy water? Little Yu excitedly threw the newspaper on his face, his clear eyebrows filled with anger, but how can I do something that you can't even do? Now that I can't even get out of this room, what else can I do? Lia Mo looked at the familiar face and looked at her painful appearance. He felt sad as if he had returned to the day Linger died. He was absent-minded for a while. He looked at Little Yu calmly and said, You are the best weapon. Me? Little Yu pointed at himself. Unbelievable, ever since her sister died, she had been so excited that she had no idea what was going on he had been treating her crazily in this hospital for many years. It was only recently that he gradually regained consciousness. However, he didn't expect that the moment he regained consciousness, he would receive the news that Yi Yi was getting married. His sister was no longer here and had died for him. He was lucky that he was living a carefree and happy life alone with his wife and son by his side. She only hated herself for being a girl. If it was a boy, he would go to Yi Yi and fight to the death. That's right, it's you. You probably don't know that you and Linger are about 80% alike. That alone is enough to confuse him. 
In addition to your sister's voice, expression, and movements, he must have fascinated you. Liamo said slowly, the more he spoke, the more excited he became. What does this matter? Little Yu was puzzled and asked hesitantly. Very simple. Beauty trick. Take down E Corporation. In the end, his reputation will be ruined. His wife will be separated. Life is worse than death. Liamo paused one word at a time, his voice louder than another. His cold and fierce words made people tremble in fear. Little Yu thought for a while, nodded and hesitated. E Yi is not a pustul. Can we do this? Besides, he already has that woman called Gu Yi by his side. As she spoke, she stared fixedly at the photo of the two of them hugging each other in the newspaper. That woman was simply too beautiful. The most rare thing was her noble temperament, which was beautiful but not demonic. Looking at the beautiful face that made women applaud her, her gaze became even colder. She was indeed a beauty. No wonder E. U. was tempted. Isn't this how men abandon old people when they have new ones? That depends on your methods. I have already arranged some plans. As long as you are willing, you can join my team immediately. After the matter is done, I only want Iya's life. As for E Corporation, I'll let you handle it. How about it? Seeing that she was tempted, Li Emo immediately tried to persuade her. Don't worry, my people will protect you the entire time. With this face like Lingers, you will definitely defeat Gu Yi. After much thought, Little Yu finally nodded his head as if he had made up his mind. Tell me everything you've arranged. There's still a period of time when you have to accompany me in practicing my sister's expression and voice from back then. No one knows this better than you. Liam Mo said without hesitation, of course, we are all revenging for Linger. In my heart, I treat you as my own sister. Little Yu didn't say anything, but her curved eyes were full of sparkling light. Back then, she hated this punk who had been pestering her sister so much. She didn't expect that he would be the one standing next to her in the end after the passage of time. Chapter 158 Gu Yi is Pregnant In the early morning of autumn, with an inherent calm and solemn expression, Gu Yi stood by the window and was blown cold by the cold wind the moment she opened it. Yi Yi leaned against the bed, and when he saw her open the window and blow the wind, he immediately strode to her side, closing the window with a hint of reproach. Why don't you love yourself so much in the cold morning? Come and lie down again, eh? As Yi Yi spoke, he pulled Gu Yi to the bedside. Gui shook her head and followed him to sit beside the bed. She gently approached Iya's embrace and stroked her chest. I always feel stuffy in my stomach. Only then do I want to blow a cold wind. Nonsense. Iya scolded softly and said sadly, if you're unwell, tell me in time. How can you blow the cold wind by yourself? As he spoke, he called the intern and asked Butler to call Dr. Lee over. After the call was connected, Iya frowned in displeasure and asked coldly, where did he go? Butler didn't know what Iya said. Iya's cold and fierce expression froze as if he had frozen. He paused for a while and said coldly to the phone, All right, I know. Let him be home by noon at the latest. It wasn't hard to see that he was angry at Butler because Dr. Lee couldn't arrive in time. Gui looked at him nervously and apologetically pulled his sleeve. It doesn't matter. It's not a big problem. It'll be fine in a few days. Gui whispered. She was not a delicate person, so there was no need for her to work hard to stir up trouble for a slight illness. With me here, I won't let you treat me so carelessly anymore. As Yi Yi spoke, she gave Gu Yi a deep kiss on the forehead. Her deep voice made her eyes turn red, so she could only hide herself in Yi Yi's embrace. Are you hungry? Yi Yi smiled and stroked her long black hair. He looked at the clock on the wall and asked thoughtfully. Gu Yi nodded. They were all very tired during this period of time in order to prepare for the wedding. Last night, they discussed the invitation list very late. She was already very hungry until now. Seeing that she was rubbing her stomach and waiting to be fed, Yi Yi couldn't help but sneer. He held Gu Yi and slowly walked towards the dining room. On the way, the two of them would occasionally whisper ambiguously. You are not allowed to not cherish yourself like this in the future, do you know? Seeing that Yi Yi was still obsessed with this morning's matters, Gui surrendered and said, I promise that I won't do this again in the future, okay? Please, President Yi, don't keep chasing after this, okay? Yi Yi seemed to see through the pleading in her eyes and let her off with a smile. He sat upright on the dining table and began to pick on the dishes on the table. Take this kimchi. Madam said she liked it last time. Don't you remember? There's also this. It's too greasy for breakfast. Seeing that he was careful, Gui suppressed her laughter and pulled his hand to persuade the servants to explain, this is already very good. Let's start. I'm already starving. 
The soft and waxy voice carried a hint of coquettish intent, which made Yi Yi very comfortable. He immediately picked up his chopsticks and stopped making things difficult for everyone. Gui smiled and blinked at everyone. The craftiness in her eyes did not escape Yi Yi's shrewd eyes. He frowned slightly and then said in a low voice, even to Gui, but more to the servants, you always give them water and it will only make them treat their work more and more carelessly. Your prestige as the master will also decrease. The servants all lowered their heads, not daring to look at Yi Yi, and a few quick-witted arrangements were made according to his instructions, for fear that a neglect would make him unhappy, and then he would lose the hard-won good job. Seeing the changes in the dishes on the table, Yi Yi's expression became slightly better. She picked up her chopsticks reservedly. Gui pursed her lips and did not say anything. She was obviously not used to this kind of life. Since they discussed the marriage, Yi Yi had intentionally or unintentionally taught her the methods to control it, as if she was afraid that she would not be able to shoulder the heavy responsibility of hostess E Corporation. Eat! Didn't you say you were hungry? Seeing that Gui was in a daze, Yi Yi smiled and waved the chopsticks in her hand in front of her. You have your favorite mushroom and vegetable porridge. Gui came back to her senses and looked at him. She slowly picked up her chopsticks and spoons and slowly drank the fragrant porridge in the bowl. She only took a few mouthfuls before frowning and stroking her chest. She wondered what was going on today. She was clearly very hungry just now, but now she did not want to eat it anymore. Gu Yi's lack of interest made her feel distressed in Yi Ye's eyes. He held her hand and said softly, Be good, tell me what you want to eat. I'll tell the servants to cook. Gui shook her head sluggishly and said weakly, My stomach is so stuffy that I don't want to eat any more. Then he put down the chopsticks in his hand and slowly got up. I'd better go back to my room and lie down for a while. You can eat slowly. With that he walked towards the bedroom with soft and empty steps. Yi Yi looked worriedly at her departing back and strode after her. He couldn't help but hug Gui horizontally and lowered his head to her ear and said softly, I'll accompany you. Dr. Lee's examination told him to finish it in the afternoon. Now come to the old mansion. As Yi Yi walked away, he instructed in a low voice, his words unquestionable. After Butler received the order, he immediately hung up the phone in the lobby to explain what Yi Yi meant. In the private hospital's diagnostic room, Dr. Lee hung up the phone. After understanding what Yi Yi meant, he said apologetically to Little Yu, there's something urgent in President Yi. The routine examination this morning may be delayed until the afternoon. I'm sorry. Little Yu's expression was indifferent. There was no sign of joy or anger on his delicate face. However, his large clear eyes were filled with a deep and slow silence, causing Dr. Lee to almost tell her what he meant. Is Little Yu sick? Is he in such a hurry to ask Uncle Lee to come over? Brother Yi smiled as he looked at him. Dr. Lee frowned when he heard this. Seeing that the child had recovered from his illness, why did he look so different from before every day? His voice, expression, and daily movements were clearly the same as before. Shaking his head, he stopped his ridiculous thoughts and comforted Little Yu warmly, President, E is fine. His wife is feeling a little unwell and is in a hurry to call me over. As he explained, he packed his medicine chest and slowly walked out. Hearing what he said, Little Yu tightly twisted her fingers together. The veins on the back of her hand faintly popped out. The tiger's mouth made her pinch out a patch of purple. Her clear eyes were filled with bone-deep hatred, but her face was cloudy and gentle as she walked towards her ward. The moment she closed the door, she released all the emotions in her heart. She raised her hand and ruthlessly threw the doll toy Yi Yi had given her on the table to the ground. Lia Mo, who was hiding behind the curtains, came out at the right time and quietly picked up the doll on the ground. He smiled faintly and said, why can't you control your temper? Since it's already healed, then you can't throw things honestly. If others see you, they won't let you out. Our efforts will be in vain. Little Yu took a deep breath. The gloom in her heart did not dissipate at all. She had been under Ia's care and protection for so many years and had become accustomed to it. Today, another woman suddenly made him nervous and anxious. She even snatched the doctor away for her to let go of her routine examination. Loss and resentment assaulted her heart, so how could she control herself? All right. Lia Mo put the doll back in her hand and said, it's just calling a doctor. I'll think you've fallen in love with that man. I wish he died. Little Yi shouted harshly, revealing her original tone. It wasn't ugly, but it wasn't as clear and moving as before. You see, this excitement has revealed his true colors again. You are indeed far inferior to Linger. No wonder Yi chose Gu Yi instead of you in the end. You know he can die for that woman. 
As Lia Mo spoke, every word pierced deep into Little Yu's heart. Enough. Since he likes that bitch so much, I'll let him taste the feeling of losing the person he loves the most. Little Yu gritted his teeth, but the clear voice that he could pretend to have said was the most vicious. That's right. It's useless to be angry and lose your temper. What you need to think about is how to defeat that woman, win Iya's favor, and then kill him. Li Mo paused word by word and looked at Little Yu hopefully. She was Ling'er's younger sister, so she should answer the important task of revenge. She was his last trump card. I know. Little Yu took a deep breath and slowly said, When Dr. Lee comes back, I will definitely ask him what happened to the woman. It would be best if she had a terminal illness. At that time, it would save me a lot of effort. On the other hand, Dr. Lee arrived at the old E-Clan mansion at this time. As soon as the car stopped, Butler hurriedly greeted him and said nervously, You're here. President E is getting angry. Come with me quickly. Before Dr. Lee could enter the bedroom door, Butler harshly asked, How did you take care of Madam? Tell me. What did you give her yesterday? No one answered. After the deathly silence, a sudden retching sound followed by a low voice of persuasion. When they entered, they saw Gu Yi in Yi Ye's arms. He held a glass of water in his hand and slowly fed it to Gu Yi. He gently caressed her back with his big palm, trying to alleviate her pain. Gu Yi powerlessly leaned against Yi Ye's body. Her pale face did not have the slightest hint of blood. Her eyes were slightly red from the discomfort just now, and her sparkling and translucent eyes were filled with amber light. She had a unique and moving posture. When Yi Yi heard the door open, he immediately turned around and said nervously, What are you still standing there for? Quickly come over and take a look at her. Dr. Lee stepped forward and signaled Gu Yi to stretch out her hand. He narrowed his eyes and carefully took her pulse. Yi Yi looked worriedly at the skinny little man in his arms and held her hand tightly to comfort her silently. The servants, on the other hand, stood in a row and waited on the side, not daring to breathe a word of air, fearing that disturbing the diagnosis would make Yi Yi unhappy. After pondering for a while, Dr. Lee slowly opened his eyes and said to Yi Yi with joy, Congratulations, President Yi. Madam is fine. She is pregnant. As he spoke, he cupped his hands and bow. Yi Yi and Gui Ju were shocked. Ever since they untied their knot, they had been living in Miley. A few days ago, Yi Yi had mentioned having another child. Who would have thought that they would have another child so soon? Yi Yi held Gui tightly in his arms and said softly, Good. Gui buried her head in his embrace and nodded slowly. This news came too quickly. After being shocked, she was also covered in great joy. After all, having children for the man she loved was the greatest happiness in every woman's heart. Chapter 159 Be Regarded as a National Treasure From the moment Dr. Lee determined that Gu Yi was pregnant until the evening dinner time, the entire Yi clan mansion was filled with joy. Yi Yi rewarded the servants with three months' wages happily, and then decided to further advance the wedding so as not to reveal her pregnancy at that time. Be careful! Yi Yi stroked Gu Yi downstairs with a reproachful look, her cold eyebrows full of warm irons. Gu Yi sneered at him for being too careful and reluctantly allowing him to caress her. You've made me feel like a national treasure. Aren't you my treasure? You were kidnapped by Yi Yi when you were pregnant, injured and cold, whispered Yi Chen dotingly in her ear, her mellow voice warm. The doctor said you should be extra careful with this baby. You're not showing off yet. You don't have to be so nervous. Gu Yi said seriously. Looking at him like this, she probably couldn't say anything about her proposal to continue working in the impression media. The doctor says the first three months are dangerous. Yi Yi kept talking about the things he had to pay attention to when he stopped Dr. Lee from asking about pregnant women. He chattered endlessly like a worried old madam, and there was not the slightest bit of haste and coldness. Gui looked at his serious expression and recalled the thrill of Xiaoma. After pondering for a moment, she nodded her head. Her amber eyes shone brightly and Roro -Ro asked, Do you like boys or girls? Yi Yi stroked his chin and thought, As long as it's our baby, it'll be fine. But this baby is still a little better for our daughter. Boys are too skinny. As he spoke, he frowned, thinking of his son's stupid appearance, hoping to give birth to a considerate and obedient daughter. I think so too, and brother can protect my sister. Gui turned to look at him, and the two of them coincided. Yi Yi smiled and nodded her little nose. But it's good for a boy. Let Xiaoma play with him. Actually, as long as it was like her, what did men and women matter? Gui leaned into his embrace and smiled sweetly. How could she not understand his intentions? The two of them sat at the dining table hand in hand. 
Yi Yi looked at the seafood soup on the table and immediately became angry. This is a big cold. Don't you know? Maids, look at me and look at you. I have no idea how this dish offended this trembling gentleman of his. He just hastily removed it and some other dishes that were sent off by the red card. Yi Yi looked at them coldly and secretly decided to call Dr. Lee over tomorrow to properly train the servants at home. It had to be said that the appetite of pregnant women was really strange. This morning, Gu Yi had no appetite for mushroom vegetable porridge, but she had a passion for pumpkin porridge tonight and drank it with relish. Seeing that she was eating happily, Yi Yi was also happy in his heart. Movies and TV accompanied Gu Yi to have another bowl of porridge. Butler watched the couple's affection and beauty from the side and felt relieved. In his lifetime, young master's life events had finally settled down so he could calmly go down to see young master. Gu Yi ate a lot of delicious food with satisfaction. She put down the chopsticks in her hand and wiped her mouth. She looked up and saw Yi Yi staring at her coldly. She smiled embarrassedly. She had not eaten well in the morning and at noon but only ate so much at night. Could it be that he still hated her? Am I eating too much? Gui lowered her head and hesitated, afraid to look at Yi Yi directly for fear of catching a glimpse of the mockery in his eyes. Yi Yi smiled as he took her hand and said softly, You're eating two supplements on your own now. Eat more. I have to make you fat. After dinner, Yi Yi took Gui back to her room, and her posture of not leaving her for a moment really showed Gu Yi how nervous the prospective father was about the child in her stomach. It was night. Gu Yi was leaning against Yi Ye's embrace, her slender fingers constantly circling him subconsciously, and her long sighs sounded especially distressed in Yi Yi. He wrapped his long arms around her and asked slowly, what's wrong? Gu Yi looked at him, her gentle face full of loneliness. After pondering for a while, she said, we are so happy now and have our own child, but Kirsten is seriously injured and hasn't woken up yet. In my heart. Yi Yi covered her lips gently, rubbed her shoulders comfortably, and said thoughtfully, I know what you mean. Shall we go and see our sister tomorrow? Bring the invitation along with us and tell them our good news, eh? Gui nodded. She did not understand the real intention behind Yi Ye's words. A smug smile slowly blossomed on his lips. Ever since John Kirsten was injured, his love rival, Qin Yu, had been guarding the hospital bed. This trip just happened to kill his heart. What are you laughing at? Gu Yi was puzzled as she looked at the growing smile on his face. What she had just said was clearly such a sad thing. Yi Yi restrained his smile and coughed softly, Don't worry, I've already invited the most famous physician from abroad. The operation went very smoothly and the critical period has passed. When will she wake up? Gu Yi wholeheartedly depended on him and asked as if she was leaning against Yi Ye's embrace. The doctor said that he will wake up about this week, but the recovery period may be longer. As Yi Yi spoke, he secretly made his own calculations. His cold eyebrows were shining brightly. During this period of recovery, Qin Yu would definitely stay by her side even if she was feeling guilty. In this way, she wouldn't have the time to disturb his Gu Yi. When he had time, their child would probably have already prepared a full moon wine. Thinking of this, Yi Ye's pitch black eyes were filled with darkness. He was still concerned about Qin Yu's plan to secretly take Gu Yi and Xiao Ma away. His women and children weren't someone that everyone had their lives coveted. If it weren't for Gu Yi working for him and Zhang Kersen's sweetheart, Yi Yi would have settled the score with him long ago and would have allowed him to be so carefree until now? All right, don't think about those unhappy ones. Rest early, eh? Yi Yi tried to persuade Gu Yi as she slowly lay down. Gu Yi nodded and leaned against his embrace. She closed her eyes under his tender gaze. Yi Yi looked at her quiet and tranquil sleeping face. He raised his hand and turned off the night lights. The silver moonlight dimly passed through the window and sprinkled a bright light. The two people on the bed shared the joy and sweetness brought about by this new little life and slowly fell asleep. On the other hand, the same moonlight, the same radiance was noisy and chaotic. In the private hospital, Dr. Lee had only just returned to his office with exhaustion when he was entangled by little you. Dr. Lee, it's almost dinner. You just came back. You promised to examine me this afternoon. Little Yu stood at his desk and refused to leave, causing a headache for Dr. Lee. Yi Yi had just called him and had to give him a code of practice for maternity care by tomorrow morning at the latest. He put down the pen in his hand and helplessly replied, It's already too late, and the doctors have all left work. Shall we check it tomorrow? Aya, why is it that it's not easy to take care of after recovering from this illness? Not good, you have never delayed my examination before. You must tell me the reason this time. 
She held Dr. Lee's hand and refused to relax, trying to get some words out of him. Did something happen to Brother E? She pretended to be nervous and exclaimed, startling Dr. Lee, fearing that she would suffer another attack. Don't worry, President E is fine. His wife is pregnant. Seeing that she couldn't hide anything, Dr. Lee said slowly. Anyway, little you couldn't leave the hospital for the time being, so he told her that he wasn't afraid of leaking out. To little you, these words were like thunder exploding above her head. She took two steps back in anger and disbelief. Then she forcefully suppressed the violent emotions in her heart and pretended not to care. That's a good thing. Why did you stay in E-Clan for so long? Little you carefully observed his face, trying to see clues from it. Could it be that there was something else? Dr. Lee smiled helplessly and vomited bitterness, isn't it because President E is too nervous, madam? She has been pulling me to ask about the things I need to pay attention to during pregnancy. Why don't you ask me to write a manuscript about the daily health care of pregnant women overnight and hand it to him tomorrow? As he spoke, he picked up the pen on the table and smiled, urging little you, all right, I have some work to do tonight. President E and Mrs. E have to come here tomorrow to see my sister. You go to bed first. Shall we check it tomorrow? Little you nodded slightly and walked out of the door carelessly. His slender hands had already pinched the tiger's mouth to a purple color. His thin lips were tightly pressed together and he slowly closed the door before he strode back to his ward. Liamo saw that her expression was not right when she entered the room. He immediately closed the door and asked carefully what did old man Lee say? Why is your expression so bad? Little you laughed coldly and mocked, he actually made that woman pregnant. Did he forget the horrible situation when my sister died? She clenched her fists tightly, as if E. Yi was standing right in front of her, giving her a hard beating. Hearing this, Li Emo was also shocked. Back then, Linga was lying in a pool of blood. The endless stream of blood flowed from her chest and body. She dyed her pure white dress red. She didn't even know that she was pregnant with E. as child until she died. Why should a good person like Linga die a miserable death, yet E. Yi can be free and have a second child so quickly? The furious rage seemed to burn the two of them. Little Yu took a deep breath and calmed his emotions. He then recalled what Dr. Lee had just said. He looked up at Li Emo and said, E Yi will bring Gui Dao to the hospital tomorrow, as if he was looking at some little sister. Li Emo slapped the table and immediately said, That should be Gu Yi's half sister. Our chance has come. I'll call a few brothers tomorrow morning. Little Yu rolled his eyes at him and said disdainfully, Do you think they will come by themselves? I'm afraid that those of your little brothers who haven't even entered will be dealt with. Li Mo winds his head and says angrily, then what do you think we should do? Little Yu tidied up the corners of his clothes that he had just messed up outside and sneered, of course, it's according to our plan. Didn't he pay attention to this child? I told him to try the pain of the past again. I told his little nephew to have a lot of playmates down there. Li Mo looked at the girl in front of him and was secretly shocked by the fierce hatred in her eyes. Was this still the little sister he knew back then? Was it right or wrong for me to drag her into this matter, Linger? Chapter 160 Bumped into each other in the hospital The next morning, Gu Yi woke up early because she had something on her mind. She was thinking about going to the hospital to see her sister. It was not dawn outside the window. She opened her amber eyes and turned to look at Yi. He hugged her tightly and her cold face was safe and handsome in a deep sleep. Have you seen enough? Yi Yi slowly opened his eyes and smiled at her with one hand on his head. Gui lowered her head and smiled shyly, didn't you fall asleep? How did you know I was looking at you? Of course I know it's you. Yi Yi leaned sideways and wrapped her in his arms, her mellow voice making one's heart itch. I want to see Kirsten earlier. Gui leaned against his embrace, her slender fingers stroking his smooth jaw, her delicate face carrying a hint of coquetry. Yi Yi stroked her shoulder and smiled, no problem. We'll go after breakfast. Gui nodded. Then she got up and went into the bathroom to clean herself up. Yi Yi was still lying on the bed, leisurely hugging her shoulders. Seeing that Gui was busy, her heart felt at ease. After breakfast, Butler packed up the gifts and medicines he needed to bring and arranged for the driver. Yi Yi brought Gui into the car. Under his instructions, the car drove very slowly and carefully, so that it was already late when the car arrived at the private hospital. Yi Yi carefully stroked Gui out of the car. She held his hand and said coquettishly, you see, it was quite early to go out, but now it's almost lunchtime. Yi Yi hugged her shoulder and smiled, nothing is more important to me than your body. Of course, he wouldn't tell her that he was trying to slow her down because he didn't want her to spend more time with Qin Yu. Gui smiled and reached out to pinch his waist. 
Only then did she follow him into the hospital. Dr. Lee immediately greeted them when he saw them coming and led the way. Miss Jang's body is recovering very well. She woke up last night, Dr. Lee said with confidence in his medical skills. She's awake? That's great. Gui listened happily and immediately quickened her pace, wishing she could see Zhang Kersen immediately. This calamity was caused by her. Gui blamed herself in her heart for Zhang Kersen and Iye's injuries. She also felt guilty about Qin Yu in her heart because of what happened to Zhang Kersen. Seeing her excitement, Yi Yi immediately put his long arm around her waist and said slowly be careful. What if you fall? Gui looked at the anxiety in his eyes and slowed down. However, none of them noticed that at the corner of the corridor a pair of clear eyes looked at the intimacy between them. Little Yu hid his body, his eyes filled with hatred. She watched as Gu Yi and Yi Yi pushed open the door and entered. Dr. Lee's escort, the rest of the security guards and attendants were waiting outside. It was not difficult to see through the window that there was a large group of people surrounding them, waiting for the idlers to be unable to get close to Yi. See? Your previous plan simply won't work. She turned around and said to Lee Mo with a smug expression. Lee Mo angrily used his hand to hammer the wall and said angrily, then what do you think we should do? Little Yi smiled and said, look at me. After she finished speaking, she destroyed her ward and ignored the matters here. Lee Mo thought for a moment and followed. After the two of them left, the room was completely silent, except for the slightly black fist mark on the wall. In the ward, when Gu Yi and the others entered, Qin Yu was really considerate in feeding Zhang Kersen apples. At first glance, the two of them were stunned and did not know how to reply. In the end, it was Zhang Kersen who reacted first. He covered his face with his hands and said with a smile, sister, brother-in-law. Qin Yu stood up and gave up his seat. His elegant voice was still the same, thank you for coming to little Yi Kersen. Yi Yi coldly knocked on the two of them and remembered the news sent by Xin Yu. The doubts in his heart were finally dispelled. This Qin Yu was a smart man. After all, it was an easy choice to be his brother-in-law or his love rival. Thinking of this, he changed his warm face and put Gu Yi into his arms in front of the two of them. He smiled and said, seeing that you are in good health, we are relieved. After saying that, Yi Yi paused for a moment, his cold gaze enveloped Qin Yu. His smile did not reach the bottom of his eyes, we still have some good news to share with you this time. Gu Yi is pregnant. Zhang Kersen grabbed Gu Yi's hand in surprise. Her eyes were filled with joy, great, I'm going to be an aunt again. This time, I can watch the baby grow up from a young age. She liked Xiaoma very much. It was a pity that she never had the chance to see him as a child. This time, she finally made up for her previous regrets. She was happy, but Qin Yu's face was filled with embarrassment. She lowered her eyebrows and did not even dare to look at Gu Yi. She held a fork in her hand and sank into her own thoughts. The bitterness between her refined eyebrows could be seen by anyone. In the end, she chose Yi. She had never had the slightest bit of thought about herself. Forget it, what he owed Kersen was already difficult to repay. Why would he implicate little Yi to make her difficult to be a person? Gu Yi saw that Yi Yi had carelessly told her about her pregnancy. Her face was flushed red and she smacked him on the shoulder coquettishly. Sister, they're not outsiders. It's fine to tell them. Yi Yi smiled and grabbed her pink fist. He looked at Qin Yu proudly. The disappointment in his eyes fell into Yi Yi's eyes. This was the result he wanted. Zhang Kersen roughly understood from the strange expressions on the two men's faces. After pondering for a moment, he smiled and said, Is it a boy or a girl? Gui sat beside the bed, holding her hand with a bit of embarrassment and said, Yu Yu is small, I don't know yet. I wish it was a nephew and daughter. What does brother-in-law think? said Zhang Kersen as he looked at Yi Yi. The joy in her eyes could not be concealed. Ever since the fall of Yi Chen, Zhang Qishan had no idea where he was. Only the mother and daughter barely managed to support a shell like Zhang clan. Ever since she reconciled with Gu Yi, she had sincerely felt the beauty of brotherhood. Now she was truly happy for her. Yi Yi smiled as he sat on a chair beside him and said slowly, everything is good. I like everything. John Kersen sneered as he looked at Gu Yi and teased, Sister, you've really taught brother-in-law a lot of envy. Hearing her joke, Gu Yi blushed and secretly looked at Yi Yi. He, he's just a nervous child, she said softly. Apart from this excuse, she really wanted to not make a joke about how to respond. Subduing Yi Yi, her ability was probably far from enough. Isn't it good for young Master Qin to do as you please? He has been by your side every day these past few days. We have seen this in our eyes. 
Yi Yi looked at Qin Yu with a faint smile. His cold eyes were filled with pressure. Qin Yu raised his head and silently said, Perhaps Kirsten feels that I haven't done enough. I feel the same way myself. As he spoke, he pulled John Kirsten's hand and rubbed it carefully. For a moment, it was as if their hearts were completely silent. Seeing his serious expression, John Kirsten's eyes turned red with emotion and he choked, How could you be the best in my heart? Seeing the two of them like this, Yi Yi turned around and saw that Gu Yi had a gratified expression without the slightest bit of displeasure. Only then did he calm down and smiled as he took out two invitations from his bag. This is our wedding invitation. I hope you two will come. Zhang Kersen and Qin Yu were stunned when they received the invitation. Qin Yu flipped through it and couldn't help but say so hurried. A week later? Big sister is ready? If you need any help, don't hesitate. Zhang Kersen followed suit. Yi Yi smiled warmly and intimately held Gu Yi's hand. It's all ready. Don't worry, Ai Yi Yi will definitely not treat your sister badly. Zhang Kersen Amran smiled and then chatted with Gu Yi about the preparations for the wedding. The atmosphere was good with the wedding dress style and jewelry brand. The knock on the door interrupted their conversation inappropriately. Yi Yi looked out of the door in displeasure and asked coldly, what's the matter? President, Dr. Lee has something to say to you. The subordinate's respectful voice rang out. Yi Yi frowned slightly and his cold eyes flickered slightly. He slowly stood up and said to the few people you guys chat slowly. I will come over in a moment. After saying that, he got up and left the house. What exactly is going on? Is there anything wrong with the child? As soon as Yi saw Dr. Lee, he asked. When he came this morning, he had just asked Dr. Lee to take Gu Yi's pulse. Could it be that he had discovered something inappropriate? Dr. Lee was slightly stunned when he heard this and then he said, Madam and the child are fine. However, you were placed in the hospital to ask us to take care of that person. Today, you really have a temper. You said that you wouldn't take the medicine unless you saw you. Little you. Yi Yi stroked his forehead as if he was tired and asked with raised eyebrows. It's her. She was unhappy when she heard that you came to the hospital but didn't visit her. Dr. Lee explained further. He felt pity for the girl from the bottom of his heart, so he hoped that Yi Yi could fulfill her wish. Yi Yi's eyes were deep, and he nodded after pondering for a moment. He said in a deep voice, lead the way. No matter what, he had promised Linger that he would help her take good care of her younger sister, so little you was his responsibility. However, she did not want to see him again since she was ill. What happened today? Is she better? Yi Yi turned around and asked. His cold eyes were filled with thought. It was better not to let Gu Yi know about this matter. After all, she was pregnant and had a thoughtful temperament. Why bother adding to her worries in vain? Don't even let Madam know about this matter. Do you understand? Dr. Lee also stopped and nodded, I know, I definitely won't say another word if I shouldn't. The attending doctor and little you consulted with me a while ago. We can confirm that she is well and can be discharged at any time. A pleasant surprise flashed in her eyes. Yi Yi followed Dr. Lee to little you's ward with a smile. She could live a normal life and the burden on her shoulders could be removed. Dr. Lee heaved a sigh of relief when he saw how relieved he was. Little Yu was a pitiful child. Ever since she experienced that storm a few years ago, she had been unconscious. When she first arrived at the hospital, she refused to let anyone near her. She had also been suffering from the insanity of eating paper. Now she was finally able to see the light of day. Chapter 161 I'm going to your wedding. The bright sunlight shone through the window, plating the furniture with a layer of warm golden color. Little Yu was half lying on the bed, seemingly angry and angry, but he could not stop rubbing the pillow in his arms as if a child was venting his anger. Yi Yi had only just entered when she saw this scene. Her loose hair was half combed and the coiled part formed a beautiful twist behind her head. Her clear eyes, half pouted pink lips and fair skin were almost transparent under the sunlight. Who made her dress like this? Was the person in front of her linger or little you? Brother Yi, you finally came to see me. Little Yi suddenly raised his eyes and as soon as he saw Yi enter, he put down the pillow in his hand and pounced over with a smile. Suddenly seeing her walking towards him with a smile, Yi Ye's cold gaze was slightly hazy. Her slender figure seemed to be mixed with a figure in her memory, making her reluctant to push away this embrace that was right in front of her. By the time her expression was clear, Little Yu had already put her arm around his neck, as Linger had always done, and her fragrant body was close to him, without the slightest interval between them. Yi Yi lowered his head and looked at the fresh face in his arms. His expression darkened and he immediately pushed her away. No matter what the purpose of this embrace was, he could not accept it. The darkness in her eyes. 
He saw why little you was so close to him all of a sudden. Ever since the accident in Linger, she had always rejected him. Why would she take the initiative to throw herself into his arms today? You don't even come to the hospital to see her. Brother E is really annoying. As usual, little you acted coquettishly towards him, and a dim light flashed in his eyes. Then he stood beside him and pulled his hand, shaking it uncontrollably. You don't blame Brother E anymore? E Yi pulled back his hand and looked at her with a cold gaze. His memory seemed to drift into a distant night. At that time, Linger had just died. Little Yu had personally watched her own sister die. That night, she lost her mind. Her parents had both died when she was young, and the two sisters were living together in an orphanage. No wonder she couldn't stand the excitement. Yi Yi, you are the one who harmed my sister. You still have the face to appear in front of me. Little Yu crazily grabbed his hair. Yi Yi tried to stop her crazed behavior, but Little Yu seemed to be crazy. He beat him and Yi Yi did not resist. He owed them both. After a fierce beating, Little Yu's offensive gradually slowed down, but his clear eyes became even more confused. After a long time, he screamed harshly. Even Yi Yi could not recognize him, but he would go crazy the moment he saw him. I'm fine. Little Yu shook his hand coquettishly and summoned Yi Yi from a meeting a few years ago. Yi Yi looked at her still clear eyes. These youthful childishness had gradually receded from her body. Her originally slightly baby fat cheeks had become thinner. At first glance, they looked exactly the same as Linger's back then. That's good. You have to listen to the doctor and take the medicine properly. Only in this way can you recover faster, eh? Yi Yi patiently tried to persuade him and signaled the nurse to bring the medicine bowl over. Little Yi smiled and nodded. He took the medicine bowl and drank it all in one gulp. Because he was too anxious, he almost choked on it. He coughed lightly. His big eyes were filled with water vapor as he looked at Yi Yi. He stretched out his hand and said, Brother E, where's my sugar? E Yi habitually touched his pocket, but he didn't find anything. He pondered for a moment and looked out of the window. This was not the same year after all. At that time, Little Yi liked to pester him and linger, and she would never leave unless he flattered her with sugar. Brother E doesn't have any sugar with him today. Can you ask Shun Yi to deliver it to you another day? Said E Yi comfortingly. No matter what, they could not return to the past. All right then. Little Yu's eyes dimmed and he pouted pitifully. He lowered his head and paused for a long time before he slowly said, Do you not like Little Yu now that you have a new sister-in-law? Don't worry, Brother Yi, my illness is cured. I won't pester you and cause you any trouble all the time. Seeing the sadness and weakness in her eyes, Yi Yi couldn't bear it anymore and said softly, How can it be? You will always be my little sister. Don't think too much. Take good care of your body, eh? Little Yu nodded and pulled Yi Yi to sit by the bed. How's the new sister-in-law? When are you going to have your wedding? Can little you attend? He said flatteringly. Yi Yi thought for a moment and said in a deep voice, Little you be good. You must stay in the hospital and treat your illness properly. I will bring him to see you again when I have the chance. But brother Yi wants to be by your side at this important moment. Little you refused, tugging at his sleeve and shaking, muttering to himself as usual that he must agree to it. Yi Yi's expression was calm. Gui was pregnant now, so she couldn't take any risks. There were many people at the wedding. If Little Yu went, there would inevitably be some rumors in her ears. Secondly, Little Yu's illness was not completely cured. If something went wrong, they would regret their long plan wedding. Little Yu, listen to Brother E, okay? E allowed her to pull her along, patiently trying to persuade her. Hearing what he said, Little Yu unexpectedly stopped pestering him. Suddenly, he loosened his sleeve and turned around. Without saying a word, he said with a sobbing voice, I know that the new sister-in-law despises me and doesn't like me, right? Little you isn't qualified to attend your wedding. As she spoke, tears streamed down her cheeks. She didn't wipe them with a the tissue, but she kept wiping them with her hands. After wiping them, she said, you couldn't let me suffer any grievances when I was still alive. Now that I'm not here, it's not important for me to forgive my head, right? The sour words made Yi Yi not only answer, but also stopped in midair. Was he really such a heartless person? Makes little you feel like she's no longer important after Linger's death? Just promise her. I'll be by her side at that time and won't let anything happen to her. When Shinyu heard that she refused to take the medicine, he put down the work at hand and rushed over, listening to the conversation word for word outside the door. When Yi Yi saw him enter, he immediately stood up and gave him the seat beside little you. He pondered for a moment and did not say anything. Besides, going out for a walk is good for your recovery, isn't it? 
Shinyu saw that he was still hesitating. Yi understood his intentions and smiled all right, then you can bring her along. Seeing that he finally let go, little Yu let out a sigh of relief. He still looked at the two people in front of him with his clear eyes and smiled. Great, I want to study what clothes to wear that day. After saying that, he got up and walked to his wardrobe to carefully pick out the clothes. His slender fingers were constantly fiddling with the clothes, but his gaze was always focused on Yi Yi and Shin Yu. He couldn't help but look to the side of the bed. I understand what you mean. Treat her well. Little Yu is a good girl. Yi Yi patted him on the shoulder encouragingly, hoping for happiness between his good brother and her sister. Shin Yu smiled bitterly, I'm afraid Prince Yang has no intentions. When she recovers from her illness, sooner or later, she will be moved by you. Yi Yi slowly stood up and said, you stay here with her. I'll go see Gu Yi. Shin Yu smiled and hammered Yi Yi on the shoulder. You are a good wife slave with 24 filial piety. You can't bear to see her for a moment. Yi Yi ignored his teasing and went out. Because he wanted to return home, he even ignored little Yu who was inside. Pa! The door closed and little Yu's silk brocade was immediately wrinkled by her. He really didn't have any place in his heart. He had completely forgotten about his sister. Otherwise, how could he be so heartless to him? Right now she was more and more interested in Gu Yi. Just what kind of person was more charming than her sister? To think that Yi Yi would be so worried about her. She was not willing to let go for a moment. With a smiling face, little Yi sat down beside Shin Yi with the purple brocade Chang Sam in his hand. He smiled and probed, what is this sister-in-law's background? Is she very beautiful? Shin Yu smiled as he took the things in her hands and placed them properly to the side. You're just in good health, he said softly. Just leave these things to the servants. After a brief pause, he began to formally answer her question. Gu Yi is very kind and intelligent. She is different from other women who only rely on men. She is very independent and has her own personality. As for her appearance, there is only one word to describe it. She is peerless in the world. Little Yu looked at Shin Yu in surprise. She had thought that the woman Yi Yi was looking for this time was just a substitute for her sister. She should be very similar to Ling'er. Now it sounded like Gu Yi was a completely different type of person. How on earth could she win Yi Yi's favor? She was actually inferior to her sister. All right, don't think about it. When we meet again, you'll know how outstanding she is. As Shin Yu spoke, he picked up the apples on the small table and peeled them for her. I'm a little tired. I want to take a rest. Can you go out first? Little Yu knew what he wanted, so he changed his face and gave the order to leave. Shin Yu helplessly smiled bitterly and left. He put down the peeled apple and placed it on the fruit plate. He said softly, take good care of yourself, and left. Little Yu carefully closed the door and didn't let anyone in, so he walked to the window and knocked on the glass a few times to signal Liamo to come up. I didn't know that you were so good at hooking up with people. In just a few days, Iya's chief general was taken back by you. Liamo picked up the apple impolitely and took a big bite. Damn it, after lying outside the wall for half a day, I was starving to death. Little Yu glared at him fiercely and didn't respond. It was a few years ago that Shin Yu was interested in him. He had to take care of him for so many years. It was a lie to say that he wasn't touched at all. If he blamed him, he could only blame him for being with the wrong master. It was impossible for them to be together. I say, what's the use of you attending that wedding? After eating the apple, Li Emo regained his spirits and asked, don't tell me you've forgotten your sister's grudge and want to go out and live a good life with Yi, right? Little Yu slapped him angrily and said sternly, Even if I die, I will never forget what happened that day. Just wait and see, I will make their wedding a funeral. Lia Mo didn't get angry after receiving a blow on his face. He only caressed a few times and began to discuss with Little Yu about his next plan. Chapter 162 I've completely put it down. When Yi Yi returned to the Zhang Kersen ward, a few people were chatting about where to eat lunch. Gui greeted him as soon as she saw him enter and asked with concern, what took you so long? Did something happen to the company? Ever since Yi Yi left, Gu Yi would occasionally look at the clock on the wall. She was worried that something might happen to Yi Chen's subordinates. Qin Yu and Zhang Kersen knew that she was worried about Yi Yi's safety so they could not help but persuade her. In fact, Ichin had cleaned up all the men he had deployed in E-Corporation since Iya's death. Some of them were transferred to unimportant departments. Some of them knew that they had no hope, so they took the initiative to resign. Even the old shareholders who had been standing on the same front as him knew that Iya's swift and fierce methods had all ceased to exist, and they all retired. 
Now EE could be considered safe in e-corporation. Actually, Gui understood all of this, but looking at the anxious look of his subordinates just now, she couldn't help but worry. Sorry for worrying you. Yi Yi hugged Gu Yi apologetically. He did not intend to let her know about Little Yu, nor did he intend to let her know about his past with Linger. So much so that he had already taken out the photo on his wallet and safely put it into the photo album. He held Gu Yi in his arms and walked in front of everyone. He smiled warmly and said slowly originally, I was visiting Kersen today. I'm really sorry that I was absent halfway. I've booked a private room in Ilsa for lunch. Would you like to come over and get together? The few of them smiled and nodded. John Kersen held Gu Yi's hand and said, If Xiaomo was here, he would definitely be able to hook the greedy bug out right now. As soon as he finished speaking, the few of them burst into laughter. However, Yi Yi had a depressed expression on his face. It was a headache to think about the face of the foodie's son when he saw French food. Right now he only wished that Gu Yi's stomach was easy to listen to. Yi Yi held Gu Yi and Qin Yu carefully supported John Kersen. The group of people got on their seats and drove in the direction of Ilsa. Fortunately, the restaurant was in the suburbs but very close to the private hospital. They arrived without much effort. Sitting at the dining table and ordering the dishes, Gu Yi and Zhang Kersen chatted about the woman's private conversation. Yi Yi and Qin Yu looked at each other as if they were trying to see something from each other. Sister, I really envy you. Brother-in-law treats you so well. Zhang Kersen secretly glanced at Qin Yu. The sadness in his eyes did not escape Gu Yi's eyes. Is he not good to you? Gu Yi asked carefully. She knew that Zhang Kersen had always been arrogant and arrogant. Previously, she had been angry with her about Qin Yu. Even this older sister refused to recognize her. Therefore, she was especially careful when talking about this topic, afraid that she would touch her sensitive nerves again. These days, he hasn't even returned home. He has been taking care of you in the hospital. We are very moved by this. Gu Yi described what she had learned these past few days, wanting to reassure Zhang Kersen. Zhang Kersen smiled indifferently and pulled Gu Yi's hand. Sister, I'm not that ignorant young miss anymore. You don't need to be so careful. After a brief pause, she told her mind everything. He was indeed very kind to me, but it was only to make up for the guilt in his heart. I took a bullet for him and he took me as his responsibility. Such feelings were simply moral kidnapping, not true. Yi Yi listened to the conversation between the sisters and looked at Qin Yu with a faint smile. He raised his glass and said, You saved my wife the other day and haven't thanked young master Qin yet. I'll toast you with this glass of wine. Qin Yu immediately raised his glass and slowly toasted. In the entire B City business circle, there were probably less than five people who could make Yi Yi toast. His eyes were filled with pride and bitterness. Shouldn't you and your younger sister agree on their marriage as well? After a glass of wine, Yi Yi suddenly opened her mouth. Gu Yi and Zhang Kersen stopped talking when they heard this and looked at him in surprise. Qin Yu frowned slightly and did not reply for a long time. The wine cup he had just raised was also placed back on the table. Zhang Kersen saw the embarrassment on his face and immediately said, Brother-in-law, I'm still young, so I'm not in a hurry. Yi Yi looked at her with a cold gaze and said in a deep voice, As long as you get married after the legal age, there is no difference between being young and old. Besides, you have been in the hospital these past few days and young Master Qin is taking care of you day and night. Everyone can see that if he doesn't marry you as soon as possible, what will your reputation be like? John Kersen had never thought of this level before. He lowered his head and looked at Qin Yu with a dim gaze. He bit his lower lip and didn't say anything else. Seeing that, Gu Yi immediately explained there's no hurry. It's not too late to talk about it when Kersen's body is completely healed. Yi Yi grabbed her shoulder and secretly exerted force. His smile did not reach the bottom of his eyes. Eldest sister is like a mother. I always have to help arrange matters regarding Kersen. If it's not urgent to get married, then getting engaged is always fine. Gu Yi endured the force at her waist and pursed her lips without saying anything. She knew that in Iya's eyes, she was sensitive to her identity and said many things wrong. She simply did not say anything else. She only said slowly, I'll listen to you. Qin Yu, on the other hand, did not abnormally refuse. Instead, he said generously, what President Yi said is that I originally planned to visit the Zhang clan after Kersen's body has completely recovered. Now it seems that I can advance the time of the wedding. There is only one major marriage event in my life, so I should be better prepared for it. As he spoke, he pulled up John Kersen's hand on the table and looked at her seriously. Didn't you say that you were bored in the hospital bed? 
you could use this period of time to find a good wedding company and choose a wedding dress and a cake style. Zhang Kersen nodded her head, but there was no joy on her face. She knew that Qin Yu was only under Ia's pressure and did not want Gu Yi to do anything difficult, nor did she want her daughter's face to be lost. She simply could not take this as true. All right. Seeing that he had agreed so readily, Yi Yi heaved a sigh of relief in his heart. This biggest rival in love had finally been defeated by him. Gu Yi was truly happy as well. Her bright smile hung on her face. She stood up and raised her glass, saying to you two in advance, Happy wedding! Yi Yi also stood up and raised his glass, Young Master Qin is really straightforward. Don't worry, the dowry we prepared for Kersen will definitely be more generous than you imagined. Qin Yu gracefully smiled while Zhang Kersen was absent-minded. The four of them toasted together, chatting and laughing. A meal was considered lively. After a round of toasting, the guests and hosts enjoyed themselves. Yi Yi and Gu Yi brought the two of them to the door and got into their cars, heading towards the old Yi Corporation mansion. Qin Yu looked through the window and saw Gu Yi's still slender body slipping into the car through Yi Ye's protective cord. His eyes were filled with disappointment. He was not the lover she had destined in the end. Don't worry, I won't take those words to heart. It's just for the sake of perfunctory brother-in-law. As long as they don't come from the bottom of my heart, I won't force you. Zhang Kersen sat beside him and looked at everything with bitterness in his eyes. She lowered her face and muttered to herself. After experiencing the great change of almost bankruptcy and losing her father, she was no longer the young miss of the Zhang clan who only knew how to act coquettishly and arrogantly. Even if she liked her, she was unwilling to let go of her pride and beg for mercy from others. Qin Yu smiled indifferently and took the initiative to pull her catkin for the first time. How do you know that I didn't mean it? Actually, I've been thinking about what President Yi said for a long time. It's just that your health has been bad, so you didn't say anything. Today, I happened to borrow everyone's presents, so what I said was all serious. Zhang Kersen raised his head and looked at him in disbelief. Then he was drowned in a burst of ecstasy and exclaimed, Are you telling the truth? Qin Yu stroked her black hair, nodded and said slowly, It's already late today. You still need to have an infusion later. Let's go to your house tomorrow morning and discuss our matters with Aunt OK. Brother Qin, you didn't lie to me, did you? You haven't always been. She still said the things that she was most unwilling to admit in her heart. If she didn't get the answer she wanted, this marriage would probably not be at ease. As you can see, she already has a beloved of her own. I have completely let go of little E. Qin Yu smiled bitterly and looked at Zhang Kersen sincerely. Zhang Kersen frowned slightly and looked at him with displeasure. She coldly said, so she chose me as her second choice. She can at least be related to her sister, right? With that, she pushed the car door hard and wanted to get off, but the car was already locked. No matter how hard she tried, she could not shake it at all. It's not what you think, Qin Yu. I think I've fallen in love with you. Kersen hurriedly explained. Zhang Kersen looked at him in shock and slowly covered her red lips. She could not believe that her dream of so many years had come true so quickly. She leaned back in her chair gently and digested this huge amount of information. For a moment, she couldn't even react. Qin Yu stroked her shoulders and slowly said, I've always been very cute and optimistic about you. Your contact these days has deeply moved me. Kersen, did you know that when you pounced on me and blocked that shot, I couldn't let go of you anymore? It wasn't gratitude, it wasn't compassion, it was love. He paused for a moment and gently wiped the tears off her cheeks. He muttered, I was really scared when you were lying on the operating table and your life was in danger. I don't know how to continue living if I really lose you this time. That kind of peace and tastelessness almost killed me. Only by being with you can I truly feel happy and alive. After these words, Zhang Kersen's emotions had calmed down. She leaned softly against Qin Yu's embrace. Qin Yu circled her body and continued, as for Gu Yi, I admit that I have always liked her. She was like a dream from my college days. Now that she woke up, I let go of it. Kersen, let's enjoy the rest of our lives together, okay? Zhang Kersen sobbed and nodded. This was the first time he had said so much to her since she met him. She was moved, but she hesitated and said, but the Zhang clan has already lost. Will your clan agree? The business giants wanted to be a match for each other, but their Zhang clan was clearly not worthy of Qin Corporation. Qin Yu smiled and gave her a kiss on the forehead. President Yi's sister-in-law, isn't this family not high enough? I'm the one who climbed the ladder, she said softly. Hearing him tease him, Zhang Kersen finally relaxed. The two of them hugged each other and the car slowly drove towards the hospital. 
Chapter 163 A Grand Wedding A week later the Huame Wedding Company's venue was decorated with luxurious flowers hanging at the entrance. The tall champagne tower was translucent and extraordinarily elegant. White roses mixed with light blue snow orchid balls were decorated everywhere. The entire wedding scene was like a dream. Wow, look at how beautiful it is outside. Little Lon looked out of the window at the decorations and said to Gu Yi, who was wearing makeup, pleasantly surprised. Gu Yi then raised her eyes to look outside. Her hair, clothes, and makeup had been fiddled with by the stylists all morning. Before she could finish, she was about to fall asleep when she saw the dreamy scene outside the window. Madam, please wait a moment. We will be ready soon. The makeup artist was still decorating her face, but in a short while she had succeeded. Madam, you are so beautiful today. Seeing her turn her face, little Lon cried out in alarm. The madam's usual plain face was very beautiful. Today, she put on a proper makeup and looked even more outstanding. Her skin was as fair and delicate as congealed fat. Her cherry blossom face was filled with a gentle smile. Let's go out. Gui strode out of the dressing room on her high heels and stroked little Lan's hand. As soon as she appeared, she attracted a burst of exclamations from the people outside the door. Big sister is so beautiful. Zhang Kersen held her hand in an especially intimate manner, and since Qin Yu had shown her her feelings, there had been no hint of animosity between the two sisters. Gui smiled and turned to look at Yi. His cold eyebrows were filled with infatuation as he looked at himself. His deep facial features were filled with affection and honey. He slowly stepped forward and crossed the crowd to embrace Gu Yi into his embrace. A lace wedding dress made her look exceptionally exquisite and dignified. Her red makeup and pearl jewelry made her look even more dazzling. Yi looked at her infatuatedly and suddenly had the urge to hide her in his arms. He did not want to let anyone else spy on such a beautiful bride. Gu Yi leaned against his embrace and looked around. Why didn't you see Xin Yu here? She asked doubtfully. Yi Ye's expression stiffened, then he said indifferently, he's doing an exclusionary investigation for fear that there might be someone who wants to sneak in here. Gu Yi smiled and nodded. She couldn't help but think that they had to be careful. Mommy, I'm going to hug you. A little head popped out from between the two of them and said, Mommy, I'm going to hug you. Shoma blinked his big dark eyes happily, his round bun face exceptionally pleasing. Mommy has a baby in her stomach. I can't hug you now. John Kersen smiled and picked up little Lon, nodding his little nose dotingly. Shoma looked at her beautiful aunt and said, Baby? Is it a sister? Then don't you like Shoma? How could that be? You are our treasure. Gu Yi saw that he was in a low mood and immediately comforted him gently. Yi Yi also smiled and said, Xiaoma will be big brother in the future. You have to take good care of the baby. He stroked Xiaoma's head as he spoke. Xiaoma curled his lips and said, If I take care of my sister, I'll beat him up. The childish words made everyone laugh, but Butler reminded them in a moment, Sir, it's time for you and Madam to go out for the ceremony. Yi Yi held Gu Yi's arm and everyone followed her to the viewing seats in the hall. Xiaoma followed behind with another little girl and walked out along the red carpet with the solemn wedding march. As soon as the rookie appeared, thunderous applause rang out. All the guests below the stage followed E Corporation's lead. On the one hand, they supported the rookie, and on the other hand, they were truly too outstanding. Yi Yi was long and jade-like. She was wearing a black suit and her entire body emitted an aura of gaze. Gui was wearing a pure white lace long-sleeved wedding dress. Her maiden-like dreams and noble and dignified queen-like appearance merged together, causing her eyes to suddenly shine. President E and Mrs. E are really beautiful. Talent and beauty, a match made in heaven. Little Yu scoffed at the flattery of the people around him. He smiled and asked Shin Yu, do I look good or does my new sister-in-law look good? Shin Yu was afraid that she would run around holding her hand and carefully guarding her side. Hearing her childish words, she seemed to be joking and said seriously, in my eyes, you are the most beautiful. Little Yu did not expect him to say this. After a moment of surprise, he simply smiled and said, Brother Shin is the best. I just don't know if Brother Yi thinks the same way. As she spoke, she carefully observed Shin Yu's reaction. She thought to herself, I don't believe that the brotherhood between you and Yi Yi is that deep. Sure enough, the smile on Shin Yu's face froze. After a while, he said, in Yi Ye's heart, only Gu Yi is probably the most beautiful. No matter what you think, Little Yu already has his own family. The brilliance on Little Yu's face immediately disappeared. He turned his head and said nothing more, but his eyes stared fixedly at the wedding platform. 
The priest looked solemn as he looked at the two rookies standing beside him and slowly stated the usual questions. Will you marry the woman opposite you and love her for the rest of your life, rich or poor, healthy or sick, until you die? Iye's cold face carried a faint smile. He held her hand dotingly and nodded sincerely, I am willing. The priest asked Gui the same question again. Gui looked at Iye calmly and nodded, I am willing. As soon as he finished speaking, the cheers and applause from the audience began to fill the air. Tears rolled down Zhang Kersen's cheeks as she looked at their happy faces. Qin Yu comforted her shoulders and said softly, It's a pleasure. Don't cry, you're still weak, eh? Zhang Kersen turned around and buried his head in his arms. He looked straight at Qin Yu and said, We will be so happy, right? Qin Yu circled her and said, Of course, have you seen all the wedding plans I sent home? Have you chosen them? I've already chosen a few sets and will show them to you later. The two of them embraced each other intimately. By the time Zhang Kersen calmed down, Yi Yi and Gu Yi had already started toasting to the distinguished guests at various tables. Little Yi watched as the two of them approached. A cold smile crept up her lips. She had finally waited until this day. Everything had already moved in the direction she had hoped for. Humph, Yi Yi was just the first step of pain. There was still a good show waiting for you. Yi Yi walked slowly with Gu Yi in her arms and whispered in her ear, Is this pair of high heels still fit for the occasion today? Do you want to take a rest first? Gu Yi blushed embarrassedly and slowly shook her head. However, for a moment and a half, although there was some unsteadiness under her feet, she was fine. How could she be so delicate? Even the red wine in her glass was made from fake brown sugar water. President E, Mrs. E, congratulations. Everyone stood up beside him. Little Yu also stood up with Xin Yu and picked up the wine glass. The tenderness and sweetness they had just shown were so dazzling to her. She wondered if Yi Yi had thought of her sister who had died for him when she was pregnant. Xin Yu, why are you sitting so far away? When Gu Yi saw Xin Yu, she walked over with a glass of wine in her hand and warmly greeted him. She and Xioma had received a lot of help from him when they first arrived in Yi Clan, and they had a close relationship. Yi Ye's gaze followed Gu Yi. In the blink of an eye, she saw little Yi standing beside her. She stood there in a daze. She was dressed in the white gauze dress that he had worn when he first met Linger. Her elegant augen gown was exactly the same as the delicate princess head and small white pearl earrings that he had worn before. She was simply the same as Linger who stood there all those years ago. Yi looked at her and his footsteps slowed down. At this moment, little Yu pressed the goblet in his hand into his ear and threw it to the ground. Then, as if he had gone crazy, he pushed it towards Gu Yi who was beside him. Gu Yi stepped on her high heels and did not react for a moment. She fell firmly into a piece of glass on the ground. Blood immediately gushed out, dyeing the white wedding dress bright red. She was half lying on the ground, her hands firmly protecting her lower abdomen. She knocked on little Yu in front of her, but her consciousness had already begun to blur. The lily mixed with the flesh-colored light spot. She only looked at her face hazily, and then her body lightened, and she completely fainted. Sister, he's getting married, but why isn't the bride yours? Where are you now, little Yu's been snatched away? Said brother Yu still mad at the side. Seeing what was happening in front of him, Iya's heart was about to crack. He hurriedly berated Shin Yu, hurry up and catch her. Don't let her hurt anyone. He was afraid that little Yu's frantic actions would harm Gu Yi again. Yi Yi strode forward and immediately circled Gu Yi from the ground into his embrace. He picked her up horizontally and loudly instructed the surrounding people, hurry up and call a taxi to the hospital. Looking at the blood-colored girl in his arms, he didn't even know where to put his hands. Her back was covered in wounds and fine cold sweat kept oozing out of her forehead. Zhang Kersen and Qin Yu followed closely behind them, looking at the sudden situation in front of them with fear. Big sister has so much blood on her body. Could it be that the child has already? She held Qin Yu's hand tightly and was uneasy. The drips of blood on the ground caused little Yu's entire body to surge with blood. Gu Yi's wounds were concentrated on her back. Little Yu could clearly see the blood gushing out from beneath her. This child definitely couldn't be saved. Shin Yu grabbed her tightly and dragged Little Yu into the car. Be good, don't be afraid. Let's go to the hospital. He pressed down on her with heartache. He never thought that she would go crazy at this critical moment. However, the hospital would not be so forgiving about this matter. Yi Yi carried the unconscious Gu Yi into the car. She kept telling the driver to speed up along the way. The person in her arms was as light as a feather. The blood under her body had already drenched his suit. A wave of unprecedented fear tightly gripped his calm heart. 
There was only one thought that kept echoing in her ears. She must be fine. Hurry up. Yi Yi coldly instructed the driver, completely ignoring the speed limit ahead. Brother-in-law, don't worry. Safety comes first. Zhang Kersen grabbed Qin Yu, who was beside her. The speed at which the car was about to fly made her very uneasy. It was important to arrive at the hospital now, but if there was an unnecessary calamity in the middle, wouldn't the gains be more than the losses? At the same time, she also felt Yi Yi's true love for Gu Yi. Chapter 164 Miscarriage after the great cold it was already winter. Outside the window, there was a light snow, and a pure white area was filled with a dense chill. On the VIP bed in the private hospital, Gu Yi slowly opened her eyes. Her flapping fan-shaped eyelashes suddenly rose. What caught her eyes was the fragrant lilies. She saw Yi lying on the side of her bed. Her cold eyebrows were filled with exhaustion. Was he always by her side? She slowly reached out her hand and stroked Yi Yi's eyebrows. She tried to smooth the space between his tightly knitted eyebrows. With a slight movement, she discovered that there was still an infusion tube in her hand. You're awake. What's wrong with you? I'll call the doctor. Seeing her wake up, Iya's expression sank after a moment of joy, and his gaze flickered as he no longer looked at her. Gui held his hand and said in a dry voice, Is our child okay? She gently stroked her lower abdomen, her heart was dead silent, where it seemed to be empty. Yi Yi stopped in surprise and said in a hoarse voice, Gu Yi, we're still young. We'll still have children. Tears rolled down her cheeks silently. Gu Yi's previously agile amber eyes were empty. Then she slowly closed in pain, I know. There was a choking voice and the pain was barely suppressed. Looking at her trembling shoulders, Yi Yi could not walk out. The child was more painful than her without him, but he had to restrain himself and not double the pain to her. Yi Yi sat down beside her and comforted her. What do you want to eat? He said softly. I'll ask Butler to go back and cook. Don't you blame me for not protecting our child? Gui leaned against his shoulder. Her empty voice was somewhat ethereal, causing people to feel empty in their hearts. I don't blame you. I didn't protect you properly. Yi hugged her tightly in his arms. His cold eyes were filled with self-blame. How could he blame her? This was entirely his fault. If it wasn't for the debts he owed her back then, if he hadn't asked Little Yu to attend his wedding because of a moment of softness, there wouldn't have been such a calamity. Be good, the most important thing now is to nurture your body, huh? Yi Yi comforted her gently, barely suppressing the sour feeling in her heart. However, Little Yu had always been fine before. Why would she suddenly fall ill at the wedding scene? Was there anything fishy about it? Gu Yi wiped the tears off her face and looked pitifully at Yi Yi. She recalled what happened before she fainted and said angrily, it was the girl in the white dress next to Shinyu who pushed me. Our child is missing. Where is she? What exactly does she mean? When she was unconscious, she vaguely heard the girl say something about the bride and sister. All of this formed a huge mystery in Gu Yi's heart. Why was Shinyu with her, and why was Iya's attitude so strange at this moment? Be good, lie down first. We'll talk about this later. Iyu remained silent for a while before replying. He dodged his gaze and no longer looked at Gu Yi. Yi Yi subconsciously avoided telling Gu Yi what had happened back then and didn't want her to know about Little Yu and Lingo's existence. He had no way to punish Little Yu for this. The love of the past was still there and Lingo's words still echoed in his ears. She had died for him so he could not make a move on her sister. But this matter must be explained to Gu Yi what should we do? Her pain, her fragility, Yi Yi saw that it was a debt he had owed himself. Why did Gui have to pay back the innocent child? He would rather have fallen on the glass fragment that day, and he would have been able to block the pain for her. Don't move. The wound doctor on your back drugged you just now. It may itch a little when it heals. Endure it. Yi Yi advised softly. Her eyes were filled with heartache. He would never forget the scene when she had just been sent to the hospital. Her smooth back was stained with blood. All the glass fragments, big and small, were stuck into the meat. However, due to the miscarriage, he had to postpone the treatment. He had always been by her side, and in her coma, she muttered in a low voice to herself, all of them children. I'll get them to bring lunch. You must be hungry after lying there for so long. Yi stroked her shoulder, then turned around and left, unwilling to continue questioning her. As smart as Gu Yi, how could she not see through the mysteries behind it? She watched as Yi's tall figure hid inside the door. Her heart grew heavier and heavier. A wave of sour and pain slowly bloomed, making people caught off guard and unable to breathe. 
the tears could no longer be suppressed and fell down his pale cheeks like broken beads. Silent crying is the most sad. How could his performance be so indifferent? Was it all fake to take care of him carefully these past few days? Actually, he did not value this child. What exactly was the background of that white clothed girl? With Iya's temperament, she wouldn't let it go, but why did he feel that he vaguely didn't want to pursue her further this time? Iyi gently closed the door for her and instructed Butler, who was standing by the door, to go back and bring Guyi's things and the lunch prepared in the kitchen. Is Madame all right? Butler was filled with sorrow. The little young master they had been waiting for was gone. Iyi remained silent, not knowing how to answer this question. Recalling how she had just shed tears secretly, endured her sorrow, and kept asking questions, his heart ached. Yi Before they could say anything else, Shinyu rushed over and panted, hurry up, little you is suicidal after waking up. I have to see you. Yi frowned slightly. Before he could think about it, he was pulled over by Shinyu. Butler stood alone inside deeply. One wave had just come down and another wave had arisen. He didn't know how this farce would end. Yi Yi was pulled into the door by Shin Yu, and just as he reached the door, he heard a commotion inside. The sound of porcelain shattering was especially shocking. I don't want to live anymore. I'm a sinner. You guys want me to die. Shin Yu hurriedly ran over and held little Yu's hand tightly. He pointed at Yi Yi and said loudly, he is not angry with you, nor does he hate you. Little Yu Yi has come to see you. Take a look. The doctors and nurses couldn't hold on to little Yu. The moment they saw Yi, they immediately stopped their crazy actions and allowed Shinyu to snatch the scissors from her hand. Then they walked towards Yi infatuatedly. Brother Yi, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to return it to sister-in-law. It's all my fault that she lost her child just like that. It's all my fault. She sobbed as she spoke. Yi looked at her coldly without any reaction. She could clearly see what she had just done, but it was just the little girl's trick. She was pretending. Although the thunder shears were not going to pierce her, her lips curled up slightly. Before her smile reached her eyes, she said coldly, Are you done messing around? Brother E, you blame me, don't you? Little you looked at him infatuatedly and murmured. E looked at her coldly and questioned her, She's my wife. She's my long-awaited child. What do you think? Little you lowered her eyebrows and didn't dare to look at him anymore, but she secretly thought in her heart. She didn't expect that she wouldn't be able to move E at all like this. This enemy was much stronger than she imagined. It seemed that it would be impossible for her not to make some sacrifices. Suddenly, Little Yu lifted his head and pushed the paramedics in front of him. Taking advantage of Shin Yu's carelessness, he grabbed the scissors and quickly pushed them to a corner. He cried, I knew you wouldn't forgive me. I'll pay for my unborn nephew's life. As soon as she finished speaking, Little Yu fiercely stabbed the scissors into her chest. She half closed her eyes and did not hesitate for a moment. In any case, she was in the hospital. She was just resting for a few more days, so her life would not be in danger. Yi did not expect that she would actually do such an irrational act. It was already too late to rush over to save her. The scissors stabbed down heavily Chi. The terrible pain in her imagination did not hit her. Little Yu lowered her head in surprise and took two steps back. Her scissors stabbed into a thick and fair arm and she slowly raised her head. Shin Yu was trying to endure the pain and smiled at her. Cold sweat was already flowing out of her forehead. Yi looked at them with a cold expression and instructed the paramedics at the side, take him to the wound. Little Yu stared blankly at the arm that was almost pierced by him. He couldn't come back to his senses for a long time. Why was he so stupid? Was it worth it for such a woman who was riddled with holes? Shin Yu grabbed his arm and allowed his blood to drip onto the ground. He was still hesitant and refused to leave, afraid that Little Yu would not be able to save him if he did something too extreme. Don't worry, I'll watch. I won't let anything happen to her. Yi looked at him with a burning gaze. He was helpless to guarantee that he had always known Shin Yu's feelings for little Yu. However, he didn't know that he had already used such deep feelings over the years. She would rather hurt herself than hurt her at all. Shin Yu received Yi as assurance and then the paramedics slowly stroked out to treat the wound. In an instant, all the people in the room dispersed, leaving only Yi Yi and little Yu alone. Are you done messing around? Yi looked at her coldly. Since the damage had already been done, what was the point of doing this again? Little Yu looked up at him. Her eyes couldn't help but turn red. Tears rolled down her cheeks. I don't know what happened that day she choked. It was as if a ghost had gone mad and hated him. There was a voice that sounded like an older sister whispering in her ear. 
She said that she was unwilling to let someone take her place, that's why I was like that. Later, she couldn't help but cry. Linger? Little Yu's words obviously shocked Yi. He had never believed in ghosts and gods, but what should he say about Little Yu's attire, words, and expression that day? Seeing that Little Yu was still pondering, Yi immediately said, It's true, brother Yi, I'm not lying to you. Big sister said that she wants that child to accompany your child. Enough. Yi scolded coldly, Don't let me hear these words again. Little Yu was so frightened that he shivered. After a moment of silence, he asked, Is sister-in-law better? I'll go see her and apologize to her face. Yi looked at her coldly. You better not show up in front of her. Brother Yi, you didn't treat me like this when my sister was around. Little Yu lowered his head and said that he was feeling wronged exactly the same as when he had been wronged and complained to him back then. Chapter 165 Send You to Study Abroad Iya's heart was slightly moved and his originally cold face softened a little. He said slowly, I just don't want her to misunderstand and add to her worries. All right, I know. I won't make it difficult for Brother E. Little Yu said calmly, looking obedient and sensible, but he twisted his skirt into a ball in his hand. Humph, but I was just afraid that I wouldn't let you get what you wanted if I told your wife about all the good things you did earlier. Yes. Yi nodded slightly and said slowly, don't do anything stupid. I'll get someone to accompany you. When Little Yu saw that he was leaving, he immediately grabbed his hand and hugged it tightly in his arms. Brother Yi, I beg you, can you spare me some time every day? I really miss you, Chichu said pitifully. Yi pulled her hand away. Standing opposite him, Little Yu did not give up. He immediately wrapped his arms around him and hugged him from behind. He rubbed his chin and leaned against her back. He said in an exceptionally gentle voice, Do you not like me? I know I can't compare to those elegant girls, but as long as you still want me, I will always be waiting for you on the spot. Hearing this, Yi was stunned. His pushing hand also stopped. His body was soft and his voice was familiar. All of this made him feel as if he had returned to that summer evening many years ago. He was forced to accept a business blind date arranged by his father, delaying his appointment with Linger. Coincidentally, the three of them met at the blind date location. Unexpectedly, Linger did not make any noise, nor did he question him. Instead, he left with a gloomy expression. After he chased after her, she hugged herself from behind and muttered these words in a low voice. Brother E okay? Seeing that his move had really moved him, Little Yu immediately pressed on and asked reluctantly. All right. Yi Yi subconsciously nodded his head. The past Linger and the little Yu in front of him were practically one person, and their cold eyebrows were filled with tenderness. Then you can't go back on your word if you agree. Little Yu jumped away and said happily. Yi looked at her in confusion. After a while, he came back to his senses. He looked at her and said, Who taught you what you said just now? The cold voice could not tell whether he was happy or angry, but it was enough for little Yu to be secretly shocked. She looked up at him and smiled innocently. I don't know, she said blurriedly. I subconsciously said it. Is there something wrong? What did I say to make you unhappy? Facing this face that resembled Linger's, Yi Yi couldn't help but say calmly, I'm not angry. All right, then we have a deal. From now on, you will come to see me every morning. You must keep your word. Seeing that the scheme had succeeded, little Yu immediately stopped and smiled, demanding his promise. Yi Yi remained silent for a long time, his cold brow slightly furrowed, his pitch black eyes deep, and he suddenly said, Little Yu, I remember that you used to learn how to perform in movies and television. Little Yu turned to look at him and was secretly alert. He didn't know why Yi Yi would suddenly mention this. He smiled and nodded without answering. All right, I'll send you to New York University in a few days to continue your studies. It's fine if you continue to study abroad after completing your studies. It's also good if you return to China to start your acting career. I have some connections in both areas. Yi Yi said these words indifferently and didn't even look at Little Yu again. Little Yu looked at him in disbelief and said somewhat flustered, Why did you chase me away? Yi Yi turned around and looked at her coldly. He didn't say anything. No matter what happened, he didn't want to get involved with Little Yu anymore. That would be unfair to both Linger and Gu Yi. The pale and delicate face that had brought tears endured the pain and pleaded with him appeared before his eyes once again. Yi Ye's heart suddenly ached. Yi Yi turned around and was about to leave. He had already left for too long so he was afraid that the little woman would have to think too much about it again. Brother Yi, I'm just recovering from my illness. Are you in a hurry to push me away? Don't tell me that you can't even meet such a small request to visit me every day. You promised sister that you would take good care of me. 
As little you spoke, he ran in front of him and stubbornly wiped the tears off his cheeks. Seeing that she was crying in front of him, Yi couldn't help but say, All right, let's talk about studying abroad later. Then what about coming to see me every day? Little Yi sobbed and continued to ask. He had the intention of crying if Yi Yi didn't agree. Yi Yi helplessly said patiently, All right, I promise you that I will accompany you while you are recovering. Only then did Little Yi laugh heartily. He threw himself into Yi Yi's embrace and whispered, I knew that brother Yi was the best to me. I can't bear the slightest bit of grievance. She looked up at him and smiled like a flower. She stretched out her little finger and said, We have a deal. We will pull the hook. After this farce, Yi Yi rubbed his forehead tiredly and stretched out his little finger to pull her. This was a child's trick and Linger often used this hand when little Yi was asking for gifts from him. Looking at the little girl who had grown taller in front of her, her little face, which was somewhat baby fat, had already become thinner. The young girl's figure was exceptionally good, and the person in front of her was little you, not like little you. In the end, they will not be able to return to the past. Seeing Yi turn around and leave, little you sneered and wiped the tears off his face. After confirming that the footsteps outside the door were far away, he walked to the window and knocked on the glass lightly. Li Amo immediately flipped up from under the window. Little Yu looked at him and smiled complacently. He didn't seem to be as pitiful as before. He smiled and said, How was it? Did the scene just now look like it? Of course you are worthy of being a top student in the acting department. Lee Mo smiled and sat by the side of the small table. He poured himself a cup of hot tea and warmed his hands. He continued, You're playing linger now. You're just lacking in charm. Looks like you've already caught that kitty ye. The way I looked at him in the window is obviously sinking in. Poof, he actually sent me abroad. Little you said angrily. He suddenly stopped the quilt in his hand and said unhappily, it's not that easy. I've been confused for so many years. This time, I must avenge my sister. She turned to look at Lee Mo and said seriously, but I need your help. You still want money. Just say it. As long as I can avenge your sister, I will do anything. Lee Mo swore that he would definitely win. He had been planning to avenge Linger for so many years, but he hadn't even touched a single strand of Iye's hair. Instead, he had done all sorts of dirty things in order to be an assassin. In the end, not only did he fail to fulfill his wish, but Iye had destroyed half of his life's worth of accumulations. How could he not hate him? I want you to tell Gu Yi that I have an affair with Iye while no one else is around. Little Yi was pleased with himself and had his plans in hand. Li Mo hesitated slightly when he heard Gu Yi's name. He had interacted with this woman a few times and his impression was not bad. He said slowly this time, you've already taught Yi a lesson and made her lose her child. After all, Gu Yi was also deceived by Yi Yi. Let's avenge Linger. Why do we need to involve people who don't have anything to do with her? Little Yi laughed coldly as if he had heard a great joke. He said in disbelief, why are you sitting up as a benevolent person? If she tries to take my sister's place, she deserves to die. I want to let Yi Yi taste the sensation of important people leaving one by one. Lia Mo didn't say anything. He just nodded and said, all right, I promise you, are you thinking? I told her to drive that woman away so that she could walk into Yi's side and gain control of E Corporation. Don't worry, as long as she's smart, I won't harm her. Seeing that he was still pondering, little Yi said further. Lia Mo nodded and rubbed the hot teacup in his hand, trying to get rid of the coldness in his body. Little Yi was just an innocent child back then. He forced her to wake up and tell her everything before. She no longer had a smile on her face. Until now was he right or wrong to do this? All right, don't act like a woman. Just be more straightforward. Little you picked up a piece of apricot cake from the plate and chewed it carefully. Entering the entertainment industry was a good idea. He had to have a fixed circle and connections to completely defeat Yi. E. The entertainment industry was undoubtedly the industry that dealt with the most businessmen and politicians. It was just right for him. Through the glass window, Little Yu looked at Gu Yi's ward and muttered softly, Everything is about to officially start. I just don't know if you are ready or not. Gu Yi sneezed in the ward. Yi Yi came in and asked with concern, Did you catch a cold? As he asked, he helped her tuck the blanket up a little. Why have you been out for so long? Gu Yi had already adjusted her mood. Her delicate face was indifferent and the sorrow she had felt before disappeared without a trace. The company has some financial matters to deal with and Shin Yu accidentally injured his arm, delaying his efforts. Yi Yi lowered his eyebrows and did not look into her clear eyes. He did not know when he could not lie to Gu Yi. Every time he lied to her, he felt guilty. 
Is Shin you all right? Gui was stunned for a moment, then she asked with concern, Did you encounter any danger? Whose people did it? Seeing that she was anxious, Yi Yi hurriedly comforted her, Nothing. It was just a small accident. Don't worry. After saying that, he looked at the dishes on the small table that hadn't moved at all and said with a hint of reproach, Why didn't you have lunch? It didn't suit your appetite. Gui stammered, It's too cold to eat alone. I originally wanted to wait for you, but now it seems that I can't. I haven't eaten yet. Let's go together. Yi Yi looked at her dim little face and immediately comforted her. As he spoke, he opened the bowl and took out the staple food from the food box and placed it in front of the two of them. Actually, these were all made by servants. However, at this moment, Yi Yi only wanted to be alone with Gu Yi and did not want anyone to disturb their peace and quiet. Gu Yi smiled and took the bowl and chopsticks. She secretly advised herself that what had happened had already happened. There was no point in investigating too much. On the contrary, it would hurt the relationship between the two of them. Perhaps Yi Yi would not be able to pursue this matter. After all, there were many people on the scene. Where did that white clothed girl come from? It must be difficult to find out. Is Xiaoma all right? Did you scare him? Gui suddenly remembered something and asked. Xiaoma is fine. He has already returned to school. Yi Yi's gentle voice made people feel numb as she spoke to Gui with concern. The two of them had a particularly sweet lunch. Chapter 166 Yi Yi has an outer room? The days passed peacefully. Gu Yi and Yi Yi tacitly didn't mention the lost child anymore. It was like a scar. They tried their best to conceal it, but each of them felt pain. Are you going out again? Is the company's business troublesome lately? Seeing Yi Yi get up, Gu Yi leaned against the bed and carefully tidied up his wrinkled tie. Her soft face was full of reluctance. Yi Yi comforted her by stroking her shoulder and softly said, Good boy, come back and have lunch with you. After saying that, he walked out with an embarrassed expression on his face. Gui looked at his silhouette and the smile on her face gradually dissipated. These days, he would go to the company at this time, but he would come back soon. Was he going out to do something or was he tired of himself? Closing the door, Iye's relaxed face immediately tensed up. These days, when little Yu couldn't see him, he was tired of dying, but Shin Yu always indulged her and begged Iyu to accompany little Yu for a while every day. He went downstairs and entered the ward at the corner. He let out a long sigh and pushed open the door. Little Yu smiled as he greeted him. His white woolen dress was exceptionally beautiful. His clear eyes looked at him with indescribable beauty. Yi Yi only glanced at it for a moment before raising his foot to leave. If it weren't for Shin Yu's plea, how could he have obeyed a little girl like this? Brother Yi, can we go out for a walk today? I feel much better today. Little Yu held his hand and said coquettishly. I don't have time. Yi pulled back his hand and said coldly. Every time he came to see her, it was already for the sake of Ling'er and Shen Yu. In two days after Gu Yi was discharged from the hospital, there would no longer be any intersection between them. Whether she agreed or not, Shen Yu had already contacted about going to New York University. Actually, I want to tell you something about my sister. Little Yu tugged at the corner of his clothes, not letting go of anything he said. His clear eyes looked straight at him. Ling'er. Yi Yi turned to look at her, not knowing what the vernacular meant. In the last few days of my departure, elder sister seemed to have a premonition. She left some things in the storage cabinet. It was only recently that my mind cleared up that I remembered. Murmured little Yu as if he had sunk into his usual contemplation. What did she leave behind? Yi Yi grabbed her hand and asked nervously. What did Linga leave behind back then? Or was it because she had some unfulfilled wish that she wanted to help her accomplish? Back then, when he and Linger were studying in the same school, their feelings sprouted very suddenly. The love between boys and girls was sweet and sour. Only when he met Gui did he know that the love between him and Linger was just a mirror image. Even if she was still here, they might not be able to survive the storm and reach the end. The more this happened, the more he wanted to compensate Linger. If it wasn't for his single thought, she wouldn't have died so miserably. He felt more guilt than love for her. I don't know. There are many things that I can't remember clearly now. The doctor said it was a mental problem. I can only remember it once my illness is completely healed. Little Yu lowered his eyebrows and said earnestly, Brother E, I'm also very anxious. Really, I remember that my sister seemed to have something on her mind. She was uneasy for the past few days, but she couldn't remember. She specifically told me about it. As she spoke, she beat her head hard both self-blaming and anxious, tears rolling down her cheeks, making it hard for Yi to tell if all of this was true or if she was acting. 
Calm down. Yi grabbed her hand and stopped her from massacring herself. Little you, I don't want to trouble you, but I feel better only when I see you. That's why I've been pestering you. I just want to remember it earlier. Yi stroked his forehead helplessly and said slowly, All right, I'll accompany you. Shall we simply walk in the back garden? Hearing this, Little Yu happily held his hand and immediately stopped tearing his eyes. He tugged at his sleeve and walked out. Shall we have lunch together again? Yi looked at her coldly and said in a deep voice, I've already made an appointment with your sister-in-law at noon. He emphasized the word sister-in-law, intending to remind her of her identity. Little Yu's smile froze on his face, and he forced his hand down with a smile. I know, he said, as long as you can accompany me for a while longer. She said, gesturing behind the window while Yi Yi was not paying attention. After they left, Li Emo immediately flipped up from under the window, smiled sideways in the direction they were going, and then slipped out of the door. Li Emo tiptoed to Gu Yi's ward. He noticed that the surroundings of the room were filled with dissatisfaction with the hidden guards. It was impossible for him to swagger into the room. However, there was no window in the VIP ward where she lived. How could he send her the news? Thinking back and forth, his constant wandering in the corridor had already attracted the attention of the few hidden guards. Helplessly, he had to leave first and return to Little Yu's ward. As he fiddled with the phone on the table, a spiritual light suddenly flashed in his mind. Then he flipped through his contacts. Indeed, there was Lonnie Ram. This fellow had been developing in France these past few days. Under the suppression of Yi, he hadn't returned home for more than half a year. After a moment of hesitation, he dialed the phone. In just a few seconds, his leisurely voice came from the other end. Hello, who is it? I Lia Mo. Lonnie Ran smiled bitterly. He knew that she would not call him again, but he had always been stubborn and refused to cancel this phone number in order to leave a thought for him. He remained silent. He knew what Lia Mo had to say. This time, this phone call was probably not that simple. I want to know Gu Yi's phone number. Lia Mo thought for a while, but he still directly said what he meant. No comment. When Lan Iran heard Gu Yi's name, his heart softened. He had already done something wrong to her before, so he couldn't bring her any more trouble this time. This is an important matter. About Yi Yi, he has a woman outside. I just want to tell her. Hearing this, Lan Iran sneered and waved away the coffee handed over by his assistant. He said disdainfully, how could you be so kind? Little Yu is Ling'er's sister, how can I not be anxious? When Li Mo named Little Yu, Lan Iran immediately frowned. He had probably heard about what happened before. Why did Yi get involved with that woman again? If Li Mo's words were true, Gu Yi would probably have a headache this time. All right, I'll tell you. Lan Iran loosened his tongue slightly and warned sternly, but I warn you, if you dare to do anything to hurt Gu Yi, I will not let you off. Lan Iran hung up the phone and told his assistant, buy tickets back to B City immediately. The assistant looked at him trembling and hesitated for a moment before finally saying, but President E once said that he won't let you go back. If you go back now, he will probably have to deal with us. I've already decided. The assistant didn't dare to say anything else and could only do as he said. On the other side, Leo hung up the phone and called Gui. He lowered his head to look at the small garden downstairs. Coincidentally, Yi Yi and Little Yu had already arrived there. Little Yu held Yi Yi's hand and refused to let go. It looked like she was acting coquettish towards him. Iya's face was filled with impatience and he didn't want to stay any longer. Liamo knew that she was pestering Iya to stand under Gu Yi's window. Little Yi stood under the window and took advantage of Iya's carelessness to look in front of his ward. He secretly cursed, what exactly is going on with Liamo? He can't do anything at all. I'm almost unable to hold on here. If Gu Yi doesn't look down, I'm afraid Iya will be leaving soon. Lia Mo saw the embarrassment on her face and immediately called Gu Yi. Gu Yi leaned against the hospital bed and looked boredom at the script in her hand. This was the latest script, and it was very sensational. However, she couldn't read a single word. It was almost noon. Why hadn't Yi returned yet? Gu Yi put down the script in her hand and looked at the door in confusion. Gu Yi was shocked by the sudden ringing of her phone. Apart from John Kersen and Qin Yu, who had come to see her for a long time, no one had contacted her at all. The ringing of her phone seemed to be something that had happened in her previous life. Gui picked up her phone and looked at the number. She did not save the number. She hesitated for a moment to connect it, and the suspicious boy immediately rang. Miss Gui, please look under the window now. Who are you? Gui sat up from the bed and looked around vigilantly, not understanding what he meant. 
Don't care who I am. I'm just telling you. Yi Yi has installed an outer room in the hospital and is having a good time with that woman under your window. Gu Yi's expression stiffened and then she harshly said, Who exactly are you and why are you saying such words? Li Mo's voice was full of bewitchment as he said, Don't you have any doubts? Yi Yi always goes out at this time these days. What exactly is he doing and who is he meeting? Don't you doubt it? Look under the window and you will have an answer to everything. Gui was so flustered by what he said that she hung up the phone. Lia Mo listened to the busy tone in the microphone and immediately hung a white ribbon on the window handle. Little Yu raised his head and saw it. He immediately pretended to slip under his feet and fell straight into the flower bushes. His clear eyes were full of schemes. Yi Yu was caught off guard by her. Seeing that Little Yu was about to fall into the thorn bush, he pulled Little Yu hard with his wrist and Little Yu fell into his embrace. Brother Yi, I'm so scared. She whispered in Iya's ear, and in her sister's voice, Little Yu was now more and more proficient. Iya tried to push her away, but she got tighter and tighter. She said softly, I seem to have remembered something just now. Don't move. Iya was annoyed that she had used Linger's relic to threaten him. She immediately pushed away Little Yu's tightly wrapped arm and harshly said, Girls, you must love yourself. Then he left without looking back. Unfortunately, Gu Yi, who was upstairs, did not see the scene at all. She put down the phone and walked to the window. She lowered her eyes and saw Yi Yi hugging a girl in a white dress tightly. She was so familiar with that girl's face. Chapter 167 The Seeds of Doubt Have Been Planted Her slender melon seed face was exceptionally delicate, and her clear and charming brows made Gu Yi's hands tightly knit together. She tried her best to control her emotions. The veins on the back of her hand faintly popped out. She remembered that this girl was the one who pushed her that day at the wedding. Not only did Yi Yi suppress this matter, she was also entangled in this affair with her. Gu Yi suddenly took two steps back. She couldn't hold on any longer. She leaned against the wall and fell down. She sat on the ground, feeling extremely sad. The girl's face kept appearing in front of her eyes. Gradually, it coincided with the photo she saw on Yi Yi's wallet. They seemed to be the same person. How could this be? Could it be that he was the third person? Gu Yi leaned against the ice-cold wall, lost in thought. The phone rang again. Gui fumbled and picked up her phone. It was the same number as before. You've already seen it, haven't you? Who exactly are you? What is your purpose in doing this? Gu Yi's voice was cold. She forcefully controlled the pain in her heart and said calmly, I just want to tell you the truth. Don't you want to know who Ling'er is and who the girl downstairs is? Lia Mo tempted her bit by bit, giving Gu Yi enough time to think so that the seed of doubt would grow deeper and deeper in her heart. I don't want to know. Please don't call me again in the future. Gu Yi forcefully suppressed her desire to explore. Regardless of who the other party was, this call was not made out of goodwill. Stop deceiving yourself. This is what you think. Lia Mo punished Gu Yi's heart with every word. Gu Yi abruptly pressed the hang-up button. She could not listen to the following words. Ever since Yi Chen kidnapped her, she had sworn in her heart that she would choose to believe Yi Yi no matter what happened in the future. Just as he was lost in thought, Yi Yi pushed open the door and came in. Seeing that she was half seated on the ground and leaning against the wall, he immediately strode forward and hugged Gu Yi in his arms. He placed her on the bed and looked at her pale face with pity. He scolded, you just had a baby, why don't you cherish yourself so much? Just now I wanted to drink water, but I didn't stop for a moment. Gu Yi lowered her head and did not look at him. The scene that she saw through the window just now did not stop playing back in her mind. The faint fragrance of the lady's perfume at the tip of her nose continuously stimulated Gu Yi's slender nerves, reminding her that what she had just seen downstairs was true. Seeing that her face was pale and cold sweat was constantly dripping out of her forehead, Yi Yi raised her hand to caress Gu Yi's forehead with concern. Unexpectedly, Gu Yi immediately dodged as if she was unhappy. She turned her head away, leaving only Yi Yi with a side face. The slender streamline made Yi Yi especially tender. What's the matter? Yi Yi grabbed Gu Yi's hand and slowly smoothed the strands of hair on her cheeks. With a bit of persuasion, she said, Are you unhappy? Gu Yi opened her mouth, but in the end, she still did not say anything. How should she say it? Was it questioning or complaining? Since he did not want to tell her, there were a hundred reasons to prevaricate. As a director of the E Corporation, she had seen how he practiced Tai Chi. Don't hold anything in your heart, can you tell me? Seeing that she was worried and uneasy, Yi Yi was worried when he pulled Little Yu along. He didn't know if she had seen anything or if she had heard some rumors. Gu Yi forced a smile. 
Since he didn't want to let her know, why would she ask again and again? She pretended to be relaxed and said, I'm fine, but I was just in a trance. Yi fondly stroked her hair and said to the door, bring the food. Butler and the servants entered in droves and soon the dishes were filled with tonic dishes. Little Lon wanted to stay behind to serve the cloth, but Yi Yi waved his hand and served her a bowl of jujube and tremella soup. He spoiled her and said, drink while it's hot. This is the best tonic. Gui took the bowl and lowered her eyebrows. She did not move for a long time. Yi Yi picked up her chopsticks and saw that she was still in a daze. She stroked Gui Yi's hand and said, did you miss Xiaoma? I brought him to see you this weekend, okay? Gui Lua was unhappy, but when she heard Xiaoma's name, her eyes lit up slightly. She looked at him and asked seriously, where did you just go? Is the company's business still very troublesome? Yi stopped the chopsticks in his hand and paused for a moment. He said slowly recently there was a project being invited for Tinder. There are some things that are difficult to handle, so I... Gu Yi did not wait for him to finish before interrupting, all right, I understand. She didn't want to listen to him continue to deceive her, so she lowered her eyes and slowly drank the soup in her hand. Her expression was cold and stern, as if she was rejecting someone thousands of miles away when she first met him. Yi Yi looked at her and wanted to say something else, but in the end, he did not say anything. The two of them ate silently. Gui put down the bowls and chopsticks in her hands early and sat upright by the side. Yi Yi ordered the servants to pack up the dishes on the small table and sit with her. Tell me why you're unhappy? Yi Yi put Gu Yi into his arms and asked softly. Gu Yi turned to sit on the bed and said coldly, since the company is busy, don't always accompany me. Yi Yi sat there and looked at Gu Yi with a gaze full of scrutiny. He was still fine when he left, but why did she treat him so estranged after not seeing him for an hour? You really don't want to accompany me? Yi Yi suddenly spoke, his mellow voice full of laziness. Gu Yi recognized the teasing in his words and turned her head to say, work is important. The loneliness on her face flashed and she still cared about Yi Yi in the end. All right then. As Yi Yi spoke, he stood up and walked out of the door. Gu Yi's thin lips were slightly pursed, her hands twisted together, but she refused to speak stubbornly. Boom. The door closed, making Gui turn around. Looking at the tightly closed door, her heart ached. In the past, he had always been very careful when he lost his temper, but this time, he left quietly. It could be seen that the woman downstairs had a great influence on him. Thinking of his lost child, the wedding scene kept appearing in front of her eyes. It was because of her that she had lost this long-awaited child. He had not even been three months and he had not had time to see it in this world. The bitterness and concealment in her heart could no longer be described in words. However, Yi Yi was vague about this matter. She connected the past and the future. Gui roughly understood the background of the matter. Linger, the name she had heard several times before, what was the past between her and Yi Yi, and how did it suddenly appear at their wedding? The creaking sound of the door interrupted Gui Yi's thoughts. Yi Yi quietly entered the door and walked to Gui Yi's side. He patted her shoulder dotingly and said softly, It's okay to lose your temper, but don't joke around with your body, okay? A gentle touch on her shoulders, a steady embrace tightly wrapped around her, and a mellow voice sounded from above, All right, how can I be happy? Hmm. <clears throat> Yi Yi hugged the slim girl in his arms, a wave of pity accompanied by a wave of guilt. Gui looked up at him. Her amber eyes were filled with attachment. After a while, she looked at him and buried her head in his arms again. She said in a dry voice, didn't you leave? Why did you come back? Idiot, why would I leave you? Yi Yi comforted Gu Yi gently. He could not get justice for her miscarriage. He was already extremely sorry in his heart. How could he not tolerate her little emotions and willfulness? Her steady embrace made her greedy. Gu Yi remained silent for a long time and said slowly, will you accompany me tomorrow morning? Yi Yi's expression paused. He had already promised little Yi to go out with her for dessert. Looking at the expectant gaze in his arms, he thought for a while and nodded. He tightly circled around Gu Yi and said, All right, I'll accompany you all day tomorrow. There's a new movie recently. Shall we watch it together tomorrow? Yi Yi asked tentatively. He knew that Gu Yi and Gu Yi had always been very attentive to their specialty, and when they heard about the new film, they immediately came to their senses. Go to the cinema tomorrow? Gu Yi raised her head to look at him, and her displeasure was swept away. The expression on his face did not escape her eyes for a moment. Since he was willing to make a choice between herself and the white-clothed girl, there was no need for her to hold on to the matter. She forcefully suppressed the doubt in her heart and deliberately smiled lightly. Yi smiled and nodded her little nose. 
Come back with the plate. You can't go out now. Gui frowned and leaned against his embrace and said coquettishly, It's been half a month since I left this ward. It's very stuffy. As Gui spoke, she tugged at his sleeves. Her sweet voice was almost unbearable. Yi raised her hand and surrendered. She said softly, All right, when the weather clears up and the snow outside melts, you will be allowed to go to the backyard to relax. When Gui heard about the backyard, the smile on her face froze. She asked in a deep voice, Do you like the scenery of the backyard? So you're dating that girl? The hospital was invested by Yi. The backyard was built after the French Royal Garden. It has four seasons of spring, summer, autumn, and winter, but you can't see it outside, the corporation said with a smile, embracing her in his armchair. He was afraid that she would feel bored, so he tried his best to describe the scenery of the garden as beautiful as possible. He thought that if Gui saw a large area of Merlin in the backyard, she would definitely be happy. Gui nodded without saying anything. Yi held her hand and gently stroked her increasingly thin face. She felt sorry for the pain of losing her child, but she was helpless to give her any comfort. This feeling of powerlessness had never been felt in her entire life. Good girl, can I take you to Santorini with me when we're done? Yi Yi circled Gu Yi and gently leaned her chin against her forehead, her face full of affection and honey. All right. Gu Yi nodded and looked at the window from afar. Should she believe him? There was a gentleman in front of her. Which one of them was real, the man who was hugging another woman downstairs? Seeing her silence, Yi Yi deliberately asked, Xiaoma has always praised the European style and Gothic architecture there. Shall we go there for the winter vacation? It's time for us to go on our honeymoon. I hope that the scenery there and the snow can heal the pain in her heart. Xiaoma is about to take the midterm exam. You need to push harder. When Gui thought of Xiaoma, tenderness immediately surged in her heart. She had already lost a child, so she valued Xiaoma more and more. Don't worry, even if I don't urge him, he won't be a problem. Looking at the loneliness on her face, Yi Yi tightened his grip on the girl in his arms. The empty expression on Gu Yi's face made him feel that he would lose her at any moment. Gu Yi, we will still have children. Chapter 168 You're the Third Person The ice and snow melted and the clear weather in the past few days dispersed the haze that had been lingering over B City. In winter, the sky was rarely cloudless and the mood of the Azure people became bright. Inside the backyard of the hospital, Yi Yi accompanied Gu Yi as they slowly walked towards the plum garden. The two of them held hands full of tenderness and tenderness. Are you tired? Yi Yi asked softly, looking at Gu Yi's slightly panting appearance, her heart ached. Gu Yi looked up at him coquettishly and shook her head. I can already smell plum blossom here. It's just a few steps. I'll rest when I get there. Yi Yi nodded, picked up Gu Yi horizontally and strode towards the plum garden. Gui looked at Iya's handsome face, her face flushed red. She constantly refused and said, quickly let me down. Someone will see me. So what if I see it? Iyi hugged her tightly in his arms, his words filled with playfulness. Gui was shy and did not say anything else. She just buried her head in Iya's embrace, afraid that others would see her. Iyi couldn't help but laugh when she saw Gui curled up like an ostrich in her embrace. She deliberately whispered in her ear, we're husband and wife, huh? Gui nodded her head. The bright smile on her face made Iya's mind tremble. She suddenly bent down and her hot lips were imprinted with her cold lips. She tossed and grinded, causing her body to become a little hotter. Gui raised her head slightly and allowed him to do whatever he wanted, but she couldn't catch her breath for a moment. She gently pushed her back and Yi didn't bother too much. After sucking heavily for a few seconds, she let her go. She said in a hoarse voice, why can't we breathe? It seems like we have to endure more practice. However, after taking a few steps, the two of them hesitated for a long time. When they arrived at the plum garden, Gu Yi's face was crimson and she hid in Yi Ye's embrace. She smelled the fragrance of plum blossoms growing colder and colder at the tip of her nose and secretly looked around. In an instant, she was shocked by the scene in front of her. This was not Merlin, it was simply like the immortal dimension. Layers of plum blossoms surrounded them, red, white, pink, scattered all over the place, so lively. Seeing her surprised expression, Yi Yi put Gui on the ground with a smile and said, Do you like it? If you like it, I will often come to take you away for fun in the future. Gui nodded and smiled as she walked to a plum tree. She peeked at the bright red plum blossoms in front of her. She was stunned to see where they had all been transplanted from. There were many varieties of plum blossoms that did not exist in China. They were truly beautiful. Yi Yi smiled and walked to her side. 
He also dyed a flower branch in front of her. With a smile he teased, is it fragrant? Not as fragrant as my wife. Gu Yi shyly pounded his chest and said coquettishly, you always make fun of others, ignoring you. How could this be a joke? What I said is true. Yi Ye's cold face was full of softness. Her pitch black eyes were locked on Gu Yi's face, which was even more beautiful than a plum blossom. The peaceful years in this world were nothing more than this. There's green calyx plum behind you. Do you want to take a look? Hearing this, Gu Yi pulled Yi's hand in surprise and ran backwards. She had only heard of the green calyx, but she had never seen it before. After crossing a corner and layers of plum blossom barriers, the path beneath his feet suddenly opened up. Jade plum blossoms appeared in front of him, reflecting the shadowy snow. They were ice clear and jade clean. This was simply too shocking. Gui cried out in alarm as she was about to walk forward, but she was pulled by Yi Yi. He wrapped her in his arms and patiently said, Your body is just right. There is still snow that hasn't melted over there. It's not a big deal if the cold air hurts your body. We just need to watch from afar. Why are there so many plum blossoms here? Gui was already completely immersed in the beautiful scenery in front of her, and her previous displeasure was forgotten. Hearing her question, he also looked at the layers of green calyx plums in front of him. His gaze grew longer and longer, as if he had fallen into some sort of memory. When he planted this plum blossom back then, he probably never thought that he would be watching it with Gu Yi at this moment. He looked at the person in front of him with a burning gaze and said dotingly, if you like, we can plant a few trees in our hometown. Is that okay? Gu Yi blinked her pair of starry eyes and asked him with a smile. In her heart, she had already started to imagine that she could plant a few plum trees in the backyard of the old mansion. In her spare time, they could cook tea and play chess under the plum trees together. Of course. As Yi spoke, he kissed Gu Yi deeply on the forehead. All of this landed in the beautiful eyes behind a blooming green calyx plum at the corner of Merlin. Little Yu coldly watched as they kissed me and me. His slender fingers deeply cut into the bark of the tree, and at this moment, numerous imprints fell. My sister is sleeping with her unborn child, but you are so sentimental under the moon before the flower. The hatred in her heart surged even more. She hid behind the tree and waited for an opportunity to move. Gu Yi and Yi Yi were joking as they sat on a wooden bench beside them. Yi Yi wrapped her in his arms and asked softly, is it cold? I'll ask them to give you another dress. Oh, the two of you are leisurely. As soon as Yi Yi finished speaking, Shin Yu rushed out, holding a stack of thick information in his hand. He said seriously, this is the final plan for the bidding. Several partners will eat together at noon. You must be there. When Gu Yi heard that Shin Yu was teasing her, she immediately sat down beside Yi Yi and said slowly, if you have something important to do, you can go and do it first. It's no big deal. It's not important to accompany you. Yi Yi patted Gu Yi's hand comfortably. She turned to Shin Yu and said, you can attend for me. This is not appropriate. If you don't show up from beginning to end, it will reduce the trust of our partners. Shin Yu sat beside Yi Yi, trying to persuade him. It's not like I'm a child. Don't worry about me. You go to your job. I'll just sit down and leave. Gu Yi's voice was gentle and unwilling to see Yi Yi delay her business in order to accompany her. Seeing her resolute expression, Yi Yi nodded and said, Don't stay too long. Don't walk around. Don't catch a cold. Tell them to do something. All right, my president Yi, don't you hate to be such a mother-in-law all day long? Shin Yu was getting impatient. He directly went up and pulled Yi Yi away, but he couldn't shake her at all. Yi Yi walked out of the plum garden and said to the servants, Take good care of your madam. Only then did he leave with Shin Yu at ease. As Gu Yi listened to his footsteps gradually walk away, her face revealed a hint of secret joy. Then she got up and walked towards Green Calyx Merlin. It was rare to see such a magnificent scene. Wouldn't it be a pity if he came to see it personally? Walking along the winding gravel road, fresh and cold plum fragrance surrounded her. The beautiful scenery in front of her was accompanied by a faint fragrance. All of this was so beautiful that it made one intoxicated. Do you know why there are so many green calyx plums here? A crisp voice suddenly rang out, and the sound of footsteps was getting closer and closer. However, a moment later, the girl wearing a white coat stood in front of her. The corner of her clothes was embroidered with the exquisite green calyx plum. Her delicate and beautiful face was the same as Gu Yi who had seen her under the window the other day. She looked at her gracefully and moved and remained silent for a long time. He planted it for me. Little Yu looked at her aggressively, his tone impolite. Gu Yi supported the plum tree beside her and frowned slightly as she looked at the girl in front of her. 
She said indifferently, who are you? You know who I am. Little Yu was arrogant and leisurely sitting on a bench beside him. He looked vigilantly outside the courtyard and saw that the servants did not move. He continued, I have known Yi Yi for seven years. I have wasted many years for him and he has never abandoned me. You're Linger? But aren't you already gone? Gu Yi held onto the plum tree, barely stopping, forcefully suppressing the shock in her heart. Are you disappointed to see me? Gu Yi, you were just a resting place for Yi Yi when he lost me. Now that the Lord has returned, you should be more tactful. Little Yu raised his head slightly, and his good face was as charming as congealing grease. Gui looked at her in shock and thought for a while before saying, Is that why you got revenge on me? She looked at Little Yu carefully. This was the first time Gui had seen her up close. Her delicate face was full of youthful vigor, her slender body was slightly thin, and her white woolen overcoat was slightly heavy on her body. It was as if she could not bear the burden. It's her. It's in the photo at the wedding under the ward window. Little Yu leaned back on the bench and looked at Gooey quietly. She wore a purple mink coat with a dignified and luxurious face. Her amber eyes made people's hearts beat. Her tall figure and slender waist made people forget the common customs. She was indeed a beauty. No wonder Yi had forgotten her sister and got married again. That's right. However, you can't blame me. As a third party mixed with others, you don't have the qualifications to question me. Little Yu asked sternly. Gooey was confused by her. She was the third party and the woman in front of her and Yi Yi were a pair? Who do you think he goes out every morning these days? Why do you think he fell in love with you so quickly? Isn't it because you have the same eyebrows as me? Little Yu pointed at Gu Yi and complained. Every word entered Gu Yi's heart. She looked at her eyebrows carefully as clear as ever, as charming as ever. How is it? Do you understand? Little Yu stood up and walked to Gu Yi's side, continuing to ask. Do you still want to be sandwiched between us like this, or do you choose to leave with dignity? Gui looked at her coldly and said coldly, This is a matter between him and me. There is no need for you to interfere. She didn't believe that she would do this to her, and she didn't believe a single word that this woman in white said. You're still deceiving yourself. Little you looked at her sideways and sneered, If he really loved you, why wouldn't he even give an explanation to your dead child? Gui was stabbed to the point of pain by her and suddenly took two steps back. Her amber eyes were ice cold. That's right, this matter had been like a big stone that had been pressing down on her heart for a long time, not allowing her to catch her breath for a moment. He told me to keep you by my side only for moral reasons. He wanted Xiaoma to be his successor. Seeing her sadness, little you continued to press, but we will have our own children in the future. Don't worry, Xiaoma is still yours. Gui fell into her own thoughts and could not hear what she was saying. Chapter 169 Linger's Trick Gui did not know how she walked back to the ward. She felt as if her feet were filled with lead. Every step was exceptionally heavy. The servants did not dare to say anything when they saw her losing her soul. They only followed behind her silently, afraid of any mistakes. Returning to the ward, there seemed to be dots of jade plum blossoms scattered on the white wall. Gui fell onto the bed after a fit of dizziness. Little Lan carefully took off her shoes and said with concern, Madam, what's wrong with you? How long have you been here? Gui did not answer her question. Her amber eyes were staring at the void somewhere, so empty that it was frightening. I've been here for more than half a year. Little Lan answered politely, tucking her in. Do you know Linger? Gui murmured, her voice ethereal as if she was muttering to herself. Every word of Little Yu's words sounded sad. She said that she was Linger, the lover who had been mad for many years because of Yi Yi. She woke up on the eve of their wedding. Because Yi Yi could not bear to let her down morally, she held the wedding according to her promise. At the wedding, Linger was pushed to the ground by the excitement. He has always loved me. You are just a clown among us. But you won't be a clown for long. Soon, Yi Yi will confess everything to you. Her beautiful face couldn't help but shake in front of Gu Yi. Gu Yi struggled to cover her ears and whispered painfully, I don't want to hear it. None of this is true. Little Lan looked at Gu Yi's uncontrollable appearance as she hurriedly sat on the bed and comforted, Madam, what's wrong with you? Who is that linger? After a long moment of silence, Gu Yi slowly put down her hands and calmed down slightly. She said in a low voice, Give me the mirror. Little Lan didn't know why, but he still took the mirror and handed it to Gu Yi. Gu Yi looked at the person in the mirror and carefully sized up the pair of slender amber eyes. Her eyes were very beautiful. Yi Yi had always liked the way those eyes looked when they were filled with emotion and smiles. Gu Yi angrily locked herself onto the small table at the bedside. 
She had never hated these eyes so much at that moment. So it was all because of her. The girl named Linger. Even Yi Yi sacrificed his life to save him was fake. He just didn't want Linger's tragedy to repeat itself. Little Yu's ghostly clear voice sounded in her ears like a nightmare once again. The reason why she tried so hard to save you was because she was afraid that she would owe you too much and that she wouldn't be able to get rid of you in the end. Little Lan looked at her absentmindedly and immediately took the mirror away from her. Afraid that something would go wrong, he walked to Gu Yi's side and slowly asked, Madam, what's wrong with you? I've heard the name Linger before. Do you know her? Gu Yi came back to her senses and looked at Little Lan with a serious expression. What did you hear from Butler? Tell me everything. Little Lan thought for a moment, then hammered himself on the head before stumbling. Butler said that Linger seemed to be Mr. Yi Chen's teenage lover and was later taken hostage by Vice President Yi Chen and gone. He also said that Madam, your eyes are very similar to hers, but she does not have the luck you have to let Mr. Yi Chen treat her with all his heart. Little Lan's unrestrained words caused another storm in Gu Yi's heart. She calmed down and waved her hand to let Little Lan out, trying her best to gather her loose thoughts. That girl did not lie to her. It seems that all of this is true. The knock on the door interrupted Gu Yi's thoughts. She took a deep breath and said in a gentle voice, Come in. Butler smiled as he walked in. He held an exquisite blue and white porcelain vase with green calyx plums in it. He slowly walked forward and smiled, Madam, sir, seeing that you like the plum blossoms in the backyard, you specially instructed me to fold a bunch for you. You can keep it in the vase for a long time. I don't want it. Take it out. Gui looked at the green calyx plum in the bottle and instantly recalled the plum blossom embroidered at the corner of Linger's clothes. A wave of sour feeling immediately bloomed in her heart. Butler didn't know why, so he was stunned. Holding the vase in his hand, it wasn't possible to enter, nor was it possible to retreat. After a long stalemate, Gui said slowly, forget it, let it go. This flower was originally not planted for her, why would she care so much about it anymore? Butler, why did you plant plum blossoms in the backyard of the hospital? Did he like it for someone? Gui looked at Butler, who was placing the vase on the bed, and asked. Butler was slightly stunned and sighed, Madam, don't think too much. Everything is over. As long as you are well, sir's heart will be at ease. Gui smiled and didn't say anything else. She just stared at the green calyx plum beside her in a daze. Seeing that she was thinking about it and didn't disturb her, Butler quietly closed the door and went out. On the other side of the hospital in the pure white ward, the heating was sufficiently turned on, forcing the snow lotus flower that only bloomed in spring to faint. The room was filled with a refreshing fragrance. This is my favorite. Little Yu stood by the window, taking care of the snow lotus in the pottery pot. Lia Mo sat at the side and looked at her. He praised her, your attack made Gu Yi's heart hurt and she couldn't say anything. It's only because that woman is too arrogant and refuses to bow to Yi Yi. She can't blame me for taking advantage of this. Little Yu carelessly pruned the branches of the flower with a handful of exquisite silver scissors. Are you so sure this lie won't be exposed by Yi Yi? Lia Mo stood up worriedly and asked slowly. He was restless at the thought that their lies had been exposed and that there was no way for the play to continue. Don't worry, Gu Yi will definitely not directly ask about Yi Yi's previous affairs. As long as she doesn't ask, Yi Yi will definitely not say anything. No one is willing to tell their old lover to their new lover. If one doesn't ask and the other doesn't tell, our play will never be exposed. Little Yu was complacent and confident. I originally wanted to play for a while longer, but unfortunately, my sister safe in the hospital is about to expire. Otherwise, I would definitely not let that bitch off so easily. Little Yu gritted his teeth, full of regret. What exactly was the note you asked me to sneak into the safe that day? And what did Linga leave behind? Liam Mo couldn't restrain his curiosity and couldn't help but ask. I advise you not to inquire. A layer of cold frost congealed on Little Yu's face as he spoke bluntly. Liamo didn't mind and said slowly, I just want to know what Linger's last wish is. I just want to help her. Of course I will help her fulfill her wish. As for you, you better think of how to get rid of that little one. As long as E-Corporation has this so-called successor, E-Corporation will never belong to us. Little you abruptly cut off a branch, and a branch as thick as a little finger fell on the silver plate, making a crisp sound. Liamo hesitated and said embarrassedly, I know what you mean, but... Speak. Little Yu scolded impatiently. She knew that because she was Linger's younger sister and was 80% similar to her, this was enough for Li Emo to obey her. Therefore, she had never treated the scary boss of gang killers well. 
She hated and looked down on him, but she could only rely on his strength. This made her angry with him and even more so with herself. I don't have enough people under me. That brat has a lot of hidden guards in the school. He's even rushing back to E-Clan. As you know, Iya's subordinates are all experts. It's definitely not a problem to deal with them in one go. Liamo stammered out his difficulties. Ever since he injured Ii last time, his subordinates have been surrounded by the police, and there were very few left. You're not going to look for Yi Chen's original subordinates? They've suffered a terrible defeat. They're definitely willing to help you. Little Yu hid the idea and took out a check from the drawer. Yi gave it to me, he said. If you really don't have enough people, use the money to hire some people. She glanced at the money in the drawer and knew that she and Yi Yi could not afford to touch it, nor could they afford to consume it, so she could only make a quick decision. Liamo held the check in his hand and sighed. I will return the money to you after the matter is over. Little Yu looked sideways at him and sneered, then E Corporation will be ours after that. Do you still care about this little bit of money? After a brief pause, Little Yu revealed a bright face and said, Once Gui leaves, you follow her closely and lock her up while no one is paying attention. It's good that we don't chase her away. Why do we have to make another move? Lia Mo was puzzled. Lan Iran had spoken ruthlessly. That brat was quite powerful. If he were to stalemate with them, his side would be no different from facing enemies on both sides. Stupid. We're holding her in our hands like we're holding Iya's lifeline. If things go wrong, we can borrow this woman to escape, right? Little you explained to him calmly. Liam Mo nodded. Hearing the commotion downstairs, he looked out of the window and whispered to Little you, it's Yi Yi. Do you want to entangle him? Little you pursed his lips and smiled. Then he went out and walked towards the elevator. When she got down from the elevator, Yi Yi frowned when she saw her. Why are you here? Little you, you haven't come to see me for a few days. If I hadn't stopped you here, I'm afraid I wouldn't have seen you. Yi Yi shook his hand impatiently and said to Shin Yu behind him, go and accompany her. Shin Yu stood in the distance and looked at the aggrieved Little Yu and the ashen-faced Yi Yi. He didn't know what to do and could only comfort Little Yu, shall I accompany you to the backyard to see the flowers? Little Yu didn't say anything. He just looked at Yi Yi and choked, I only want brother Yi to accompany me. As she spoke, she opened her arms and blocked Yi Yi's path. What exactly do you want? Yi Yi looked at her coldly, his words filled with displeasure. Shin Yu recognized the anger hidden in his voice and immediately pulled on Little Yu's sleeve, signaling her to put it away as soon as she finished building it. She mustn't really provoke Yi Yi. Little Yu suddenly smiled and leaned into Yi Yi's arms. He hugged his waist tightly and said, Give me a hug and I'll let go. Otherwise, I won't remember where sister put the safe. Yi Yi stretched out his hand perfunctorily, then pushed away the warm nephrite in his arms and strode towards Gu Yi's ward. Shin Yu was left standing awkwardly on the spot while Little Yu smiled complacently and gently twisted the lipstick off his face. Chapter 170 Determined to Go In the afternoon of winter, the sunshine was exceptionally plentiful, shining indoors, and it was warm and ocean-like. Gui leaned against the head of the bed and looked at the green calyx plum on the small table. Her thoughts gradually drifted away, as if she was looking at flowers, or looking at people through flowers. Yi Yi pushed open the door and entered. Seeing that Gu Yi was absent-minded when she looked at the flowers, she lowered her eyes and pondered for a moment, and her heart turned into a haggle. You like these flowers so much? Gu Yi raised her eyes to look at him and remained silent for a long time. Her amber eyes were shocked and then filled with sorrow, like falling flowers that scattered in the air, causing people to feel melancholy in their hearts. The pure white shirt was a little delicate red on her chest. It was especially eye-catching. She had also used that color, St. Roland Cherry Red. It was especially suitable for a little girl like Linger. Gui turned her head away and didn't want to look at Yi Yi anymore. Since she had already found her first lover in her heart, why would she perfunctory herself again? Wasn't it hard to wander between two women like this? Do you have something to tell me? Gui thought of Little Yu's words and was unwilling to wait for Yi Yi to ask. Yi Yi smiled and walked to Gu Yi's side. She pampered her and put her in her arms. She nodded her little nose and smiled, it seems that you shouldn't be a scriptwriter. You should be a half-immortal. You're right. Seeing that she liked Merlin so much, Yi Yi planned to tidy up the backyard of the old Yi clan mansion from now on and build a Four Seasons garden, transplant a few green calyx plums over, and calculate that it would be ready before she was discharged from the hospital. This ghost elf actually found out so quickly. It must have been leaked to her by the servants. Gui was shocked when she heard that he agreed with her. 
He was actually so calm. It turned out that his position in his heart was so light. She turned her face away stubbornly and still refused to look at him. The faint perfume of a woman at the tip of her nose incessantly stimulated her nose. A wave of nausea assaulted her. Gui suddenly retched, startling Yi Yi. He wrapped her half in his arms and his large, gentle palm continued to rub her back, wanting to relieve her pain. Guishu vomited for a long time but did not spit anything out. Guishu leaned uncomfortably against Yi Yi. Yi Yi handed her a cup of water from the side with heartache. Her cold eyebrows were filled with pity and she could not bear the pain on her behalf. Gui looked coldly at the quilt he handed over and pushed it away with one hand. No need, she said coolly. The cup tilted. Yi Yi couldn't hold it. The water spilled out and soaked his chest. The warmth on his face instantly froze. Yi Yi grabbed her shoulder and let Gu Yi face him head on. He slowed down and said sternly, what are you feeling awkward about? Gu Yi twisted her body and asked him to let go of the grip on her. She said coldly, nothing. Why don't you tell me if you're unhappy? Yi Yi hugged Gu Yi in her arms. Her deep tone made people's hearts tremble. Pampering and pity filled it, causing Gu Yi to indulge in it countless times. However, at this moment, this tone sounded extremely ear-piercing to her. He was simply perfunctory. Aren't you tired? Gui looked at him coldly. Her amber eyes did not contain the slightest bit of warmth. She wandered between the two women, Zo so Yufong Yuan. Indeed, only President Yi could do such a perfect job. Yi Yi was slightly stunned, but she could not reflect the meaning behind her words for a long time, so she asked tired. Gui looked at his confused face. A wisp of sour and exhaustion gradually spread in her heart. What right did she have to lose her temper with him here? She was the one who intervened between Yi Yi and Linger. Linger was right. She was the third person and she was the one who should quit. A bitter smile blossomed on her lips. When Gui raised her eyes again, she had already concealed her mood very well. She leaned against Yi Ye's embrace and coveted the last warmth that this embrace brought her. She said slowly, it's my fault. I shouldn't have lost my temper with you. Seeing her suddenly ease up, Yi Yi knitted his brows and said softly, you don't need to hide your emotions from me. Tell me why you're unhappy, okay? As he spoke, he carefully stroked Gu Yi's back and comforted her. Drink a mouthful of water to moisten your lips, okay? Gu Yi took the water from him and paused for a long time before saying, can I go out tomorrow? Yi Yi burst into laughter. So it was because of this. He nodded Gu Yi's pretty nose and pretended to be serious, so it's because I'm depressed here. Why didn't you tell me earlier because I was unhappy? Let's go to the mall with you tomorrow. Shall we buy some toys for Shoma? Gu Yi shook her head slightly. There was no smile on her face, but she said hesitantly, I want to go alone. I don't need anyone to accompany me. Yi Yi paused and thought for a moment, where do you want to go? Jing Fan Cemetery, I want to pay tribute to our child so that he can live a better life there. Gui whispered, her amber eyes staring straight at Yi Yi, not backing down at all. Let's go together to see our child. Yi Yi slowly discussed with her. He knew that the pain of losing his child would not dissipate so easily, but it didn't matter. He would accompany her until Gu Yakin completely opened her heart. After so many years in the mall, Yi Yi had always been a straight-talking person. He was afraid that the only person in City B who could make him speak in such a negotiated tone was the little woman in front of him. I want to go alone. Gui persisted, her burning gaze locked onto Iya's eyes. Inside was a mother's persistence for her child. After a long silence, Iya nodded and said helplessly, All right, I'll let the driver drive you. No need. I'll go myself. I don't want servants or secret guards. I don't want unrelated people to disturb the child. Gui refused to let go at all. She even told Iya what she was thinking secretly and refused. Am I also an outsider? Yi Yi stood up somewhat uncontrollably. The pain of losing his child was not lesser than hers. He could tolerate her bad temper and her blame and complaint, but that did not mean that Yi Yi could endure Gu Yi's neglect and denial. Don't tell me you're not willing to help me with such a trivial matter. Gu Yi's eyebrows furrowed, and her face, which was getting clearer and clearer, was filled with pleading. She could not continue this self-deceiving life, but if she directly asked Yi to leave, he would definitely not agree. The lessons from the previous times were still fresh in his mind, and Gu Yi clenched her hands and secretly reminded herself that she must stabilize herself. Otherwise, she would never have the chance to leave once she was alarmed. As for Xiaoma, his current life is very good. He has to settle down before he can be brought to his side. I hope that the girl named Linger can take good care of him during this period of time. All right, I promise you. 
Can you promise me one thing too? Iyi made a concession and thought for a long time before saying this. God knows how worried he was to leave her alone without any protection. Tell me. Gui put the cup in her hand back on the table and secretly sized up his expression. She was a little nervous, afraid that the request he made would cause her escape plan to fail this time. Let's put this matter aside after we go this time. Let's live a good life together, okay? Iyi held her hand and said affectionately. She had been depressed for a long time and her body had not recovered well. He loved her children, but he cherished her more. He did not want her to torture him like this all the time. Gui turned her head to look at him, her eyebrows filled with shock. He was actually able to say these two words so calmly. Could it be that this child didn't have any weight in his heart? That's right, compared to Lee Anrin, who used to miss him so much, a child who hadn't formed yet was nothing at all. Suppressing the anger in her heart, Gui nodded stiffly and said word by word, I promise you. These few words seemed to have exhausted her strength. After receiving her assurance, Yi Yi felt relieved and asked softly, When do you plan to go? Tomorrow. Gui did not hesitate to say what she meant and said it straightforwardly. But you're not feeling well today. Why don't you wait for a while? Yi Yi whispered to her and looked at her pale face. He couldn't bear to let her run alone outside. If I don't go for a day, my heart will be unstable for a day. Gui Nan said. Her slightly dry voice was filled with unspeakable pity. She could not stand him. She just raised her eyes to look at the void outside the window. The loneliness in her eyes made people see clearly. She was like a beautiful lark that had been trapped in a cage. She looked at her cage sadly and yearned for the blue sky that was beyond her reach. Yi Yi felt a sudden pain in his heart. He pursed his thin lips and couldn't bear to see her continue to feel sad. He compromised, I agree, but I can only go for an hour or two. If I don't come back in two hours, I'll go find you. Gu Yi's eyes lit up and she secretly calculated that two hours was enough for her to find a place to stay, making it impossible for Yi Yi to find her for the time being. She knew that this was already Yi Yi's limit. If she fought for it again, she would probably arouse his suspicions. All right, I know. Gu Yi nodded without saying anything else. Seeing that she agreed, Yi Yi finally let out a sigh of relief and tightened the grip on the girl in his arms. He said softly, as long as you're happy, that's good. But why are you acting so strange these days? Gui leaned against his seat and reached out to rub her face, barely adjusting her smile. She pretended to be relaxed and said, I've been thinking nonsense these past few days. Perhaps it'll be over in a few days. Really? Can I know what you're thinking? Asked Yi Yi probingly, remembering that Butler had reminded him when he first entered that the madam had been inquiring about him and Linger for the past two days. Apart from thinking about that child, what else can you think of? Hearing his question, Gu Yi was stunned and immediately replied. Yi Yi hugged Gu Yi guiltily and kissed her on the forehead. After a moment of silence, he said, I will compensate you. I will compensate this child that we have never met. Gu Yi listened to the soft words in her ear and recalled Yi Yi's affection for Linger when she was downstairs. The lipstick on his chest and the lady's perfume on his body all showed that she was an unnecessary person. However, since he was so unnecessary, why would Yi Yi bother with him anymore? Could it really be that, as Linger said, he wanted to use himself to defend his first lover from disaster? But that day's desperate rescue and today's sweet words were all fake. Chapter 171 Dejectedly Leave The next morning, Gu Yi packed her handbag and left after leaving a letter on the bedside table. Gu Yi sat in a taxi and quickly moved in front of the window. Gu Yi rubbed her forehead exhaustively. The scenes after returning home were played back in front of her like a movie, making her unable to handle it. She and Yi Yi had gone through so many storms. There had been sweetness and misunderstandings. She had originally thought that after the wedding, they would live together happily and sweetly. She did not expect that something unexpected would happen. Miss, why are you going to the cemetery at this time? The driver was chatting like he had nothing to say. Gui smiled and did not reply, but she was the only one who knew the bitterness in her heart. After a while, the car stopped outside the cemetery. Gui looked around and saw that no one was following her before she entered. Standing in front of the tombstone, Gui held back her tears and stroked the small tombstone. Bitterness spread out in her heart. My child, I'm sorry. Mother was unable to get justice for you. Dark clouds covered the sky and the sun could not tear open space. Soon, fine snowflakes drifted down and a gust of cold wind blew people to the bone. Don't wrap your coat around yourself and walk slowly towards the back door of the cemetery. The ghastly iron door was open. The locust trees all around had fallen leaves. 
The swaying branches were accompanied by fine snowflakes and howling cold winds. Gui looked at the rusty door and felt a burst of relaxation and sour in her heart. However, she could not take that step. As long as she stepped out of this door, she would be free. From now on, she would no longer have anything to do with Yi Yi. Madam, at the door, a few bodyguards in black tights stood in front of her, and a few figures appeared behind her. They stood respectfully and said in unison, it's cold. Please go back. Gui took two steps back, her cold expression becoming even darker. In the end, he still lied to himself, saying that he didn't want to send anyone to follow him, but now it was still. Madam, the car has been arranged. Sir will be worried if you return late. The person in front of her said respectfully, but to Gu Yi, these words were used everywhere and every time to suppress her with Yi Yi. Forcefully suppressing the shock and anger in her heart, Gu Yi looked at them coldly and sternly asked, Since you know that I am Madam, you should obey my orders and get out of the way. The few of them hesitated and refused to move. Could it be that the black-clothed man leading them said, Madam, please don't make things difficult for us. If anything happens to you, sir will definitely not spare us. If I go back and complain, Yi will not spare you. Gui looked around at them, her cold gaze was the same as Yi's, causing them to look down and not dare to say anything. Gui saw that they had already been fooled by her words, so she immediately relaxed her voice and said, I just want to go out to relax. I'll be back in a while so I won't make things difficult for you. But sir, the bodyguard hesitated. Was the snow really fine on the rough slate road? If you don't tell me, he won't know. Gui was aggressive and did not relax her deterrence towards them at all. The leader nodded and waved his hand to his subordinates before they dispersed, leaving a path for Gui. Gui walked past them and looked at them coldly. She instructed, turn around and don't look at me, much less follow me. Hearing this, the subordinates turned around and Gu Yi immediately walked towards the winding stone path, disregarding the fact that she had disappeared into the forest for a moment. When they turned around, they had already disappeared from Gu Yi's sight. Boss, what should we do? The leader pondered for a long time before pointing to his phone and saying in half an hour, Madam will not appear again. We will call Mr. Bai immediately. The few of them nodded and waited at the back door for a long time. Gu Yi went up the mountain road. She was very familiar with this area. When she was young, she often came in to play with her friends through the front gate. She knew that there was a pavilion about a kilometer away from here. After crossing the pavilion, she could get on the road and take a taxi. But where are we going after that? There were empty mountains in the surroundings. No one could answer her question. In City B, she had no trusted acquaintances other than Qin Yu and Zhang Kersen. However, they were currently recuperating in Country M and could not be contacted at all. Even if she could contact them, Gu Yi was unwilling to bring them any trouble. The wind whistled in his ears and fine snowflakes hit his body. The coat outside was already half wet and Gu Yi's footsteps became heavier and heavier. The pavilion in his impression was right in front of him. However, she used all her strength to walk over. She leaned against the tall stone pillar. As her heart rate was exhausted, Gu Yi's body slowly slid down the ice-cold stone surface. She was tired on the ground. In her hazy consciousness, she heard a series of complicated and orderly footsteps. Before her blurry vision finally closed, a pair of long boots moved in front of her. On the other hand, Yi Yi rushed back to the hospital after dealing with the company's affairs. It snowed today and he didn't know how the little woman was doing. With some concern and longing, Yi Yi pushed open the door and did not see the delicate face in his impression. There was only a room left that was cold. Looking at the green calyx plum that had already been opened and defeated on the small table by the bedside, he felt a burst of disappointment and fainted from the bottom of his heart. Madam is out? Yi Yi asked coldly as he looked at little Lan, who was standing beside him. She was simply messing around. She had only given a few instructions, and when she went out in this kind of weather, it was clear that she did not treat her body as one thing. Madam left early in the morning. Little Lan lowered his head and answered hesitantly. Replace the flowers in the vase with fresh ones, so as to save Madam from losing her interest. Yi Yi tugged at his tie irritably, feeling that something was going to happen. When Little Lan heard the order to put the fresh chimenanthus in the bottle, he lowered his head and saw the letter left on the table. He immediately took it to Yi Yi and said, Sir, here is a letter. It seems to be left for you by the Madam. Yi Yi took it and immediately opened it. There were only a few words on the thin paper, but it was enough to break through his rationality. Yi Yi, I already know everything about you and Linger. Since she has returned, I won't disturb you anymore. I wish you happiness. 
Yi Yi angrily threw the letter on the bed. His cold face was covered in dark clouds, and his transpiring anger was dense, causing people to not dare to look directly at him. For a time the air in the ward was condensing, making people unable to breathe. Bell 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 broke the stillness in the room. Yi Yi connected, and before he could speak, a hurried voice came from inside. Bell 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 Bell. Sir, madam, she she's gone. The short sentence stuttered. Yi Yi took a deep breath and calmed down his anger. He analyzed the situation in his mind and then told the phone, find her where she is. She won't be able to walk very far on the mountain. After hanging up the phone, Yi Yi didn't care much and called for Shen Yu to leave immediately. What kind of rumors did this stupid woman hear and actually left home for him again? The weather outside was cold and her body had no way to recover. This was simply nonsense. The group rushed to the cemetery under the increasingly fierce snowstorm. As soon as Yi Yi got off the car, he asked the bodyguards who were leading the team today about the situation. Sir, Madam went out through the back door. She said nothing to let us follow her. She originally said that she would be back in a short while, but we waited for half an hour but did not see Madam's figure. We did not look around. He said with trembling fear, not even daring to raise his head. Yi Yi sneered and said sharply, there are so many of you that you can't even look after a single patient. You won't need to come back next month. A casual sentence could be considered as firing the group of people on duty today. They did not complain at all, but their faces were filled with shame. Shin Yu looked at Yi Yi's ashen face and probed, isn't everything all right between you? What's wrong? Did you make her unhappy? Yi Yi paused for a while and said coldly, she doesn't know where she heard it. How is it possible for her to believe that there is an unclear relationship between me and Linger? Hearing this, Shin Yu lowered his eyebrows and thought for a moment before the lipstick mark on Yi Yi's body flashed in his mind. His fox-like eyebrows knitted slightly. Could it be that this had something to do with little Yu? Opening his mouth, Shin Yu still chose to swallow his words back into his stomach. Little Yu valued Yi Yu so much. Regardless of whether it was her or not, as long as he said it himself, Yi Yu would definitely be indifferent to little Yu. He didn't want to see little Yu unhappy. Sir, we found this in a pavilion a mile away. A subordinate walked towards Yi Yi with a ball of hair in his hand and said carefully, Do you think this is Madam's? Yi Yi nodded and asked them to lead him over, leaving Shin Yu to wait for other clues. After arriving at the pavilion, Yi Yi carefully examined the surroundings. A row of fine footprints extended from the stone slab to this place. The silver mirror was almost covered in heavy snow. Other than that, there was nothing else. Where did Guiran go? Why did she disappear after arriving at the pavilion? Sir, there are traces of cars passing by here. Hearing this, Yi Yi immediately rushed over. Sure enough, rows of neat wool marks were scattered among the withered leaves. The fine snowflakes could not conceal them in the slightest. He could only rely on the fallen leaves to conceal them. It seemed that someone was deliberately doing this. Was the other party an enemy or a friend? Gui, where the hell are you? Yi Yi stared blankly at the dark clouds, missing him. Bitterness mixed with anger, making him extremely tired. Why did he leave him? Was it because of the past that he had put down long ago? After returning to the cemetery, Shin Yu greeted him from afar. Looking at his dispirited expression, he couldn't bear it anymore and said in a gentle voice, could it be that a servant mistook little Yu for Linger and said something nonsense to Gu Yi? Otherwise, why would he leave so suddenly and not even Shama? Hearing this, Yi Ye's eyes lit up, as if he was a dreamer awakened by a single word. He hurriedly instructed his subordinates, place a few more hands in little young master's place. As long as it's someone from outside, you have to greet me. Xiaoma was still studying in a noble school, so Gu Yi's temper would definitely not last long before she went to look for him, but she didn't want to alarm him. Did you find him? Seeing that he was in better spirits, Xin Yu immediately asked with concern. Yi Yi smiled bitterly and slapped the iron door fiercely. He said angrily, I don't have a clue. I'm afraid someone will help her leave here. However, who were these people and what were their motives? There were no signs of any struggles at the pavilion. It seemed that they had arranged it beforehand. Apart from Qin Yu and Zhang Kersen, could Gui have other connections in B-City? Sir, we heard that Lani Ran returned home two days ago. I wonder if it has anything to do with his wife's disappearance. His subordinates analyzed diligently. Yi Yi frowned, the veins on his forehead faintly popping up. Gui let me find her this time. Even if she was in prison, you can't leave me for another half-step. Chapter 172 A Complex Background At midnight, in a luxurious villa in the northern suburbs, brightly lit, 
servants dressed in shuttles were busy, and a butler-like maid stood at the side of the sofa, respectful to the old man who was sitting on the sofa, his hair full of white hair. Miss, are you awake? The old man asked. Not yet. The doctor said that young miss just had an abortion and her bones are weak. Yesterday she caught a cold again. That's why she won't be able to wake up from her sleep. Female butler replied, then took out a handbag and handed it to the old man. This is Mrs. Handbag, she said respectfully. The old man nodded slightly and said with a complicated expression what's inside. Apart from our family's token, there are also a few unfinished scripts. Do you want to see them? Butler looked at the old man's expression, put the token and script neatly on the coffee table in front of the sofa, and then retreated. The old man picked up the water blue bracelet and slowly placed it in his embrace. Tears slowly flowed down his cheeks and he murmured with a choked voice, Daughter, you have suffered so many setbacks in your life and are unwilling to admit your grievances to Daddy. We didn't even see the last of them. After sobbing for a while, the old man put down his bracelet and opened the script on the coffee table to read it carefully. The child was as engrossed in these film and television arts as her mother was back then. The old man wiped away the tears at the corner of his eyes and his deep gaze saw the lively and pure only daughter from back then. He had arranged for his daughter to learn all kinds of business knowledge since childhood and had always treated her as his successor. However, she did not love anything except photography. She even insisted on enrolling in the film and television arts major of B-City University, making him, as a father, unreachable and unable to restrain himself. When she was about to graduate, she had already arranged everything in the company for her daughter, and she had even found a young master from an aristocratic family for her to date. Who would have thought that this unfaithful girl would actually fall for a poor and foolish boy, and she was pregnant? With that he broke off the father-daughter relationship with her. I never thought that the separation of that rainy night would become a farewell. After arriving in B-City, he went to Guingi Cemetery and saw that the daughter in the photo had lost her liveliness from back then. Only her pair of amber eyes were as clear as before. Putting down the script in his hand, the old man looked upstairs. His distant gaze was stunned. This child was as bitter as her mother. She had just flown out of the house after giving birth. She must have suffered a great deal of grievance. She was relieved that her grandfather was in charge of everything for you. She would definitely not let others easily bully you. In the master bedroom on the second floor, an orange night lamp emitted bursts of warm light. The decoration of the large bedroom was exceptionally meticulous. It was both quiet in Japanese style and elegant in Chinese style. Just the iron lamp at the bedside could tell that it was very valuable. Gu Yi's long fan-shaped eyelashes kept moving as she slowly opened her eyes. What came into view was such a magnificent and elegant decoration. She gently caressed her still slightly dizzy forehead and looked around. She clearly remembered fainting in the back mountain of the cemetery. Why was she here? Looking at the silk pajamas that had been changed, Gu Yi's expression froze as a chill slowly rose in her heart. She pulled open a corner of the curtain and looked out. The lights were brightly lit and it would not be so easy for her to leave quietly. She was looking out with rapt attention when they were suddenly opened from outside with a creak. Gooey was jumped down and she suddenly shrank back two steps, vigilantly looking at the people outside the door. A few young ladies were stunned when they saw her wake up and stand by the window. One of them walked up to her and tried to persuade her, Miss, you just woke up. Your body is still weak and you can't stand the wind. How can you stay by the window for a long time? Quickly get to bed. The other ran downstairs and muttered, Mrs. Awake, Master, Mrs. Awake. Gooey looked at them with kindness and did not hesitate to sit back on the bed. She carefully sized up the girls standing in front of her. They were all dressed in the same blue cloth with tall ponytail pigtails. She thought of the valuable antiques in this room. It was not hard to guess that they were all the maids of this family. After a slight pause, Gooey probed and asked, Where is this? This is our Gu clan's residence in B-City. A girl immediately walked forward obediently. Gu clan. Gui frowned and looked at the person in front of her in puzzlement. From what she said, this was just a temporary residence in B-City. This family must have a similar residence elsewhere. What a huge sum of money. Gu Yijing was secretly amazed, but she was even more confused by the girl's words. The girl replied as if she was taking it for granted, It's your mother's house, miss. My mother's house? Gui repeated the girl's words and smiled helplessly, you must be mistaken. His mother was an orphan, so how could there be a mother's family? As for his father, needless to say, if Zhang Qishan really had such a good family background, he would not have fallen into this state. They're right. You're my Gu clan's daughter. 
An old man with dazzling hair and a childish face walked over from outside the door and looked at her intimately. Who are you? Under the old man's burning gaze, Gu Yi was really unable to sit still. She stood up and bowed slightly. You may have mistaken the wrong person, she said softly. She didn't know why, but she felt that she was inexplicably familiar with the old man in front of her. The old man smiled warmly and handed her the connection in his hand. Is this chain yours? The water blue cat's eyes glittered with a dim blue light under the light. It was particularly moving. Gui looked at the cold chain on her tentacles and immediately held it tightly. She explained, this is a relic left behind by my mother. Is your mother called Guingji? The old man continued to ask, his kind face full of affection and pampering. Gui was surprised and nodded in confusion. How did you know? She's my daughter. I'm your grandfather. Little E. The old man's deep eyebrows glowed with tears. He hugged his granddaughter who had been lost and regained in front of him emotionally and let out a long sigh. Grandfather finally found her. Grandfather? How do you know my name? Gui stiffened, not knowing how to respond to a friendly old man's embrace. The old man reached out and Butler handed him a yellowed book. He flipped it open in front of Gu Yi and explained, Look, Gu Kuang, Gu Yingji, it just so happens to be the word, Yi in your family tree. And this cat's eye bracelet, it's our Gu clan's family heirloom. It's extremely precious and can't be faked at all. Are you really my grandfather? But why haven't I heard my mother talk about you? Gu Yi took over the family tree. She simply couldn't believe what was happening in front of her. After 20 years of living with her mother, a group of people suddenly came out to recognize her. This was a bit too sudden. The old man's originally happy smile froze on his face and he sighed, she blamed me. Back then, she had to imprison her and not let her decide her own life. She was afraid that you would bear the burden of the entire Gu Corporation like her, so she avoided me all the time. The old man pulled Gui to sit beside him and told her everything that happened back then. His words were filled with regret. After a long time, Gu Yi finally figured out what had happened and tears kept rolling down her cheeks. She was really not worth it for her mother. She gave up everything that was originally beautiful for a scum like Zhang Qishan. Grandfather, Gu Yi Hui hugged the old man beside her, tears of excitement flowing down her cheeks, choking her throat. The old man trembled, his hands gently caressing her sorrow and comforting her softly, Good child, all your suffering is over. In the future, the Outer Guild will protect you and will never let you suffer any grievances, eh? Gui leaned against the old man's embrace and nodded. A warmth slowly bloomed in her heart. In this world, besides her mother, she actually had a grandfather. The warmth of her family that she had not seen for a long time had surrounded her. Perhaps this was the wondrous connection of her bloodlines. Even if she had never seen her before, she could still get along well with her. The female servant butler and a few servants watched as they recognized each other and secretly wiped their tears. Over the years, in order to find their daughter, the old gentleman had hopes and disappointments again and again. He almost fainted when he received the news of the eldest young Miss Death, regardless of his body's insistence on rushing all the way to B-City to personally retrieve a bloodline left behind by the eldest young Miss. At this moment, his wish had finally been fulfilled. Little E, tell grandfather what happened. How did your mother get there? And why did you have an abortion and fainted in that ice and snow? The old man stroked the top of her hair, his words filled with the concern of the elders for the younger generation. My mother had a heart attack and Zhang Qishan played a catalytic role in it. Gui sobbed as she recounted what had happened back then. After so many years of life, she was not a fragile person, but facing her relatives, she was unable to gently recall the painful past. Humph, that scum, I will definitely not let him off. The old man also slapped a few people on the bedside as if he was out of control, wasting all of Inji's time on him back then. He didn't expect that he was actually such a despicable person. After she talked about her life with her mother for so many years, Gu Yi stopped and twisted her hands together, rubbing them carefully. What's going on between you and Yi clan? Why did he let you go to that remote place by yourself? Also you just gave birth, so you have to make sure that you have everything. Grandpa has everything here, so I have to make it up to you. The old man didn't relax in the slightest and asked her what exactly happened between you and E-Clan. Why did he let you go to that remote place by yourself? It's over between him and me. Seeing that she could not dodge, Gu Yi hesitantly said this, unwilling to let the old man worry about her. Did he bully you and let you down? The old man's sharp gaze seemed to see through everything and asked relentlessly. No, it's my problem. Gu Yi smiled bitterly. He and Linger were originally a pair. 
Now that the main body had come, it was normal for her to leave as a substitute. The old man saw that she didn't want to say anything more and didn't force him. He just sighed. His daughter and granddaughter were both beautiful, but unfortunately, this relationship was always not smooth. Master, E. Yi is looking around for information about Mississippi. While they were chatting about their daily routine, a tall and skinny man knocked on the door and reported these words without thinking. Send his men away. Just don't find this place. The old man only said this and his subordinates understood what he meant. Then they went out. Gui, however, clutched her chest tightly and couldn't breathe for a long time. Didn't she say that she wanted to put it down? Why would she still be so throbbing when she heard his name? Chapter 173 Son of an Old Friend Little Lee, what are you thinking? Gu Kuang looked at his granddaughter in a daze and asked with concern. Gui recovered from her sad relationship and pretended to be relaxed, nothing. Gu Kuang stroked her head and laughed, I know, you must have missed my great-grandson Xiaomao, right? Gui nodded her head lonely. She came out in a hurry and didn't care much. If Yi Yi accidentally told Xiaoma about her departure, he might cry. Thinking of Xiaoma's round bun face, Gu Yi was both anxious and distressed. Gu Kuang hurriedly comforted his subordinate, who had just come to report the news, and said, hurry up and arrange for Xiaoma to come over. Remember not to alert the Yi family. It seemed that his granddaughter still couldn't forget about Yi clan, so he couldn't make things too stiff. Grandfather, can you bring Xiaoma out? Gu Yi looked at Gu Kuang worriedly. Yi Yi had a lot of hidden guards on the school side. He would definitely focus on monitoring Xiaoma and try to find clues from him. Wouldn't it be too risky for them to act at this time? Gu Kuang smiled lightly and said, Our Gu clan is also a leading business tycoon in the country. Although his influence in city be as inferior to E corporations, if he wants to touch us, I'm afraid he will have to weigh his weight first. Gu Yi frowned slightly. Although the old man in front of her treated her kindly, the domineering and decisive attitude she had held in high positions for many years could not be ignored. Perhaps that was why her mother broke with her family back then. Little E, don't worry about anything now. Let's focus on nurturing your body. Gu Kuang patted her hand. Her aged voice was filled with the concern of the elders for her juniors. Gu Yi nodded and smiled brightly, unwilling to let this newly found relative in front of her worry about her. All right, rest early. Grandpa will come to see you in the morning. Gu Kuang put the bracelet into Gu Yi's hand with a smile and left with a group of people. The huge bedroom suddenly quieted down. Gu Yi sighed. She leaned against the bed and looked at the slightly floating curtains in front of the window. Her thoughts were chaotic. This was simply too strange. Her mother was actually the daughter of the business tycoon Gu Corporation, and her grandfather was the famous business genius Gu Kuang. Hearing his grandfather's subordinate say that Yi Ye's men were still looking for him, he didn't know if Yi Ye's reaction after she left was more angry or more relaxed. He was willing to help the two of them, so why would he bother with them anymore? She raised her hand to turn off the night light at the bedside, and a beautiful moonlight fell through the window, reflecting the light of a room, no different from her in Yi Ye's bedroom in the old E Corporation mansion. Accompanied by the faint moon shadow, Gu Yi lay on her side on the big princess bed, unable to sleep for a long time. She wondered if the people on the other side also watched the moon shadow unable to fall asleep. She clearly hated him, hated him for deceiving her feelings, hated him for choosing to entertain linger between the child and his first love, and hated him for lying again and again. But why did his heart seem empty after he left? The next morning, the warm sunlight scattered into the room, a warm and peaceful. Gui opened her eyes and saw a brilliant room. She turned around and looked at the empty bed beside her. A wisp of sour immediately bloomed. She secretly spat on herself. How could she be so beautiful? She was just a man. Since she had successfully left, she had to start her own life again. Miss, are you up? The servant's voice came over carefully, afraid that it would disturb her clear dream. Gooey tidied up the bed and opened the door. She smiled and said, I've already got up. The little girl looked at Gui, who had already tidied up the bed and was dressed up, and was slightly stunned. Then, she said in horror, Miss, why did you do all this? This is my due to you. Before the little girl could finish her sentence, Gui interrupted, Don't worry. I'm used to doing things every day, so I don't need you to take care of me. The little girl pursed her lips and nodded. Suddenly, she remembered something and said, Master told you to pack up and go downstairs. He said that there is a visitor. Who is it? Gui was rather surprised. However, just as she returned, her grandfather asked her to accompany an outsider. This was a bit too fast. 
The little girl frowned and thought for a moment before she said uncertainly, it seems that she is the son of an old friend. That family said that she was married to the eldest young miss. Gui nodded slightly, her heart becoming more and more surprised. Just who was it? She was a little uneasy. She slowed down and followed the little girl downstairs. Before she could reach the hall, she heard Gu Kuang's hearty laughter. It was obvious that she was having a good conversation with the person who came. Gui looked from the corridor. The man had his back to her. He was dressed in a silver gray suit and his back was exceptionally straight. She frowned slightly. Why did she feel that this person looked so familiar? When Gu Kuang saw her go downstairs, he immediately introduced her to someone, this is my granddaughter. You two knew each other before, so I won't introduce her anymore. The man in the light gray suit turned around, his handsome face and deep blue eyes. Who else could it be if it wasn't Laniran? Gui took two steps back in shock. Then she smiled and said calmly, long time no see. I haven't been abroad recently. When did I come back? Gu Kuang patted the seat beside him and signaled for Gui to sit over. Gui smiled and nodded, then sat beside him and happened to meet Lan Iran face to face. I only came back a few days ago. As Lan Iran replied, he looked at Gui eagerly and unavoidably. Gui uncomfortably turned her head away and smiled. She did not say anything else. She did not know what kind of attitude she should use to face the man in front of her. He had once used her and helped her before. Now that he had appeared again, or in the name of the son of an old friend, she did not know what his purpose was. Little E, we met at the airport in B-City. After so many years, Iran is getting more and more handsome. If it weren't for his help, I wouldn't have found you so quickly. Gu Kuang smiled and said to Gu Yi, Grandpa, you're too polite. Gu Yi and I have a lot of friendship. This small favor isn't worth mentioning, said Lan Iran humbly, filling Gu Kuang's cup with tea. Gu Kuang raised his glass slightly, his eyebrows filled with satisfaction towards the junior in front of him. Seeing that Gui did not say much, he stood up and said, You young people are chatting. I still have the company's physical objects to deal with, so I won't accompany you here. After saying that, he got up and walked upstairs. He even thought that Butler, who was standing beside him, would give him a glance and ask her to follow him upstairs as well. Master, what are you planning? Butler supported Gu Kuang and looked downstairs with his eyebrows lowered. Gu Kuang stroked his beard proudly and smiled, didn't you see that Lan Iran likes us, little E? Butler frowned slightly, but E Clan hasn't taken care of it yet. Isn't it a bit too urgent to contact Miss so early? This old master was still the same as before. He wished that he could take care of all the matters of this junior in one go. Humph, I don't think that kid E Yi is reliable. When little E mentioned him, he was sad. He must have treated my precious granddaughter badly. In my opinion, it's better to go downstairs. The kindness in his eyes can't scare people. Gu Kuang walked to the corner of the corridor and refused to move. He could not stop looking down at the movements of the two of them. Butler could only accompany him and half squat there, wasn't it sad? Gu Yi sat opposite Lan Iran, her amber eyebrows looking out into the void. After a long moment of silence, she said, What is your purpose in coming back this time? Lan Iran put down the teacup that he had just picked up and looked at Gu Yi with a burning gaze. I was afraid that you would get hurt, so I came back. Li Mo contacted me earlier and I was afraid that they would be bad for you. Gu Yi smiled slightly and said in a gentle tone, Li Mo is wanted by the police now. He can't afford to worry about himself. Lan Iran looked at her increasingly thin and delicate face. His pale face made him feel heartache. He unconsciously said, have you been having a bad time lately? Yi Yi has treated you badly? Why did you come out alone? One sentence after another, Gu Yi was unable to breathe because of his pressing questions. She didn't know how to reply. She lowered her eyebrows and looked at the pure blue and white porcelain tea set on the coffee table. Her hands were tightly twisted together. She only sighed for a while and did not say anything. Forget it, I won't ask even if you don't want to. Lan Iran smiled, picked up a piece of watermelon from the fruit tray and put it into his mouth, then filled the teacup for Gui considerately. I heard that you are no longer working in impression media. It's a pity that I was hoping to have a chance to work together again. Seeing that she was reluctant to talk about her life, Lan Iran picked up the business and told her that the position would make her laugh. You're a good actor. Gu Yi relaxed slightly and looked at him sincerely. Lan Iran smiled cheerfully as she talked about the gossip in the celebrity circle and the unsettled copyright lawsuit in the screenwriter circle. Gu Yi listened quietly and did not say yes or no. The two of them chatted leisurely and exhausted the old gentleman who was spying on them upstairs. 
They reached out to ask Butler to help them up and complained, I don't think Lonnie Ran has any more tricks. You see, little E has nothing to say to him. He sighed regretfully as he slowly stretched out his numb knees. He looked at the two people downstairs and secretly wondered why the silly granddaughter of hers was hanging from the tree named E. Yi. When he was at the airport, he heard Lonnie Ran say that the guy was with some kind of first lover, so he made Gooey lose her child. Humph, <laughs> if E. Yi passes that woman's trial, I'm afraid it won't be that easy for him to pass this trial. Butler looked at him with a rich expression of joy and anger. He tried his best to pull him up from the ground and helplessly said, your children and grandchildren have their own blessings. You don't have to worry too much about them. I owe. A painful cry not only startled Butler, but also startled Gu Yi and Lani Ran who were chatting in the hall. Gu Yi strode upstairs and saw Gu Quang stroking her forehead in a childish manner. She gasped in pain. It turned out that he had stood up too fiercely at the last moment and accidentally knocked on the railing of the corridor. Grandfather, what's wrong with you? Gu Yi saw that her grandfather's eyes were red from pain, so she hurriedly called the servant to bring the ice packing back over. Gu Yi and Lan Iran helped Gu Kuang sit on the sofa in the hall. Gu Yi carefully covered Gu Kuang's forehead with the ice bag and asked with concern, you're not going to the study. Why are you there? Gu Kuang was embarrassed. He pretended to be dumb and smiled. He happily grabbed the hands of the two and placed them in front of him. If only you could take care of me like this all the time. One sentence made Gu Yi's ears turn red and she could no longer remember what she had asked before while Lan Iran smiled from the side. Chapter 174 The Mad Eye Twilight fell in the evening, and the dim sunset gradually faded away. The lights in the old E-Corporation house were bright and quiet. The servants were standing on the sofa with their heads lowered. The bodyguards were standing on the coffee table. All of them lowered their eyebrows and did not dare to breathe. Yi sat on the sofa in the middle, his cold gaze sweeping through the crowd. The air in the room was condensing, causing people to feel a chill in their hearts. Have you heard from Madam? The cold voice cut through the stagnant air, causing everyone present to shiver. Shin Yu stood beside Yi Yi and kindly said in their place, not yet. I've checked everywhere and there's no news at all. As he spoke, he handed Yi Yi the cup on the coffee table. Yi Yi suddenly threw the teacup to the ground, stood up and looked at everyone, go find it. If you can't find it tonight, you don't have to come back. The veins on his forehead faintly popped out and his cold eyes were filled with violence. After a moment of silence, Yi turned to look at the servants and said coldly, Has Madam's room been tidied up? Has the plum blossoms in the backyard been planted? Butler lowered his eyes and stepped forward. Twenty plants were planted and two died, he said slowly. It had been a long time since Sir had been so violent and Madam's leaving without saying goodbye had dealt him quite a blow. He looked at Yi with concern and wanted to say something, but Yi interrupted him loudly, let the gardener plant it again. It must be finished by the year before. The servants listened to the lecture trembling, not a single one of them daring to make a big move. The bodyguards standing in front of the courtroom also went down to look for someone, afraid that Yi Yi would seriously injure them if they left one step late. Shin Yu looked at his frantic appearance and immediately went forward to comfort him. Yi Yi, calm down. Gu Yi has not received any news so far. It is exactly the best news. Yi Yi looked up at him and raised his eyebrows in puzzlement, indicating for him to continue. Shin Yu laughed in his heart. A shrewd person like Yi Yi was also caught off guard when it came to feelings. His IQ, which was as high as 120, instantly dropped to negative. If she was in danger, the kidnapper would have already come to find her. If he didn't have any news, it meant that he was deliberately avoiding you. What was the misunderstanding between you two? Did she leave Xiaoma without saying goodbye? Shin Yu stroked his chin, a pair of fox eyes patrolling his body. Yi Yi frowned and pondered for a moment before asking, is there any news from Xiaoma? Gu Yi cared so much about Xiaoma that she would definitely secretly contact him. As long as he could find clues, she would not let him go. Xin Yu shook his head and said slowly, no, I haven't told him about Gu Yi's departure. Yi Yi nodded and didn't say anything else. His cold gaze swept across the servants and he said coldly, has Madam said anything to you these days? Little Lan subconsciously took a step back. Cold sweat slowly rolled down his forehead. This small gesture did not escape Iya's eyes. He waved his hand at Little Lan and said sternly, Little Lan, speak. Little Lan hurriedly walked forward, his legs trembling nervously, and he stumbled. The lady asked me a few days ago about Miss Linger, and I told her all that I heard from the old man. What did you say? E said coldly. Little Lan's body was almost limp on the ground and he stuttered as he told Iya the whole story. 
Iya's face was ashen with anger and she smashed the teapot at little Lon. The exquisite porcelain smashed onto the floor. With a crisp sound, the tea splashed all over little Lan's skirt. She shrank and begged for mercy, sir, I was wrong. I shouldn't have talked too much. Please forgive me this time. Iya's cold and fierce eyes were locked on her, her eyes narrowed in anger, what else did she say to you? Little Lon took a slight breath and stroked the armrest of the sofa beside him, barely able to stand. Madam said that since the Lord is back, she should be beautiful. I don't know if I should say a few more words. Tell me. Tell me everything you know. Iya's indifferent tone was filled with unquestionable determination. The madam came back from the plum garden that day with a bad complexion and a lipstick mark on her husband's shirt. I think madam might have misunderstood something. The more little Lon spoke, the angrier he became. It was also because Gui wasn't worth it. The timidity in his heart had gone a bit. Hearing this, Yi Yi knitted his brows. He thought about the good and bad emotions of Gu Yi. He understood more than half of them. He said to Xiao Lan in a gentle voice, wait for Madam to come back and take good care of her. Otherwise, we'll settle our debts together. Little Lan hurriedly nodded his head, and Butler immediately brought the servants down, not daring to stay where they were and add to Yi Ye's obstruction. Xin Yu recalled Little Yu's small movements that day, and his face immediately turned a little pale. He lowered his eyes and said, I'll go back first and you should rest early as well. After saying that, he strode away and the car headed straight for the hospital. The large front hall was empty at this moment. Yi looked at the green calyx plum on the small table and thought back to the two of them changing times in the plum garden. Ever since Gui left, he had never returned to the bedroom that belonged to the two of them. He did not want to face the cold double bed that had a corner. The tenderness and charm of his past days had become injuries at this moment. Gui, I love you so much that you actually doubt my sincerity. It's too cold for me. Yi Yi clenched his fists and smashed into the mahogany armrest beside him. The intense pain instantly sobered him up. Why did Gui suddenly ask Linger? From what she said, it seemed that the person she had moved her heart to was Linger. Why did she think that? A spiritual light flashed and Yi Yi suddenly stood up. Could it be that Gui had seen Little Yu in May Day? She mistook Little Yu for Linger? But if no one misled her, how could she be like this? A series of questions made Yi Yi feel exhausted. He stroked his forehead and half leaned on the sofa. Forget it, he could no longer think about it. Right now, the most important thing was to find Gu Yi. The ringing of the phone interrupted Yi Yi's thoughts. Sir, Lan Iran hasn't been moving lately. It's just a villa in the northern suburbs, probably dating a friend. His subordinates dutifully reported the latest information they had. Continued to monitor him, Iyi instructed coldly, then hung up the phone. The bright moon by the window had already slowly risen, sprinkling down a room of clear light. Iyi looked at the crescent moon in the air from afar, his thoughts wandering. Where was that little woman right now? Was she full of food and clothing? Her body had not recovered at all. It was really nonsense to run out like this. Ever since they parted, he had been worrying about her all the time. Was she the same as him? On the other side, Shin Yu left Yi Clan and flew to the hospital. Seeing that Little Yu's window lights were still on, he strode towards the ward area. Today he had to clarify the doubts in his heart. Knock. A knock sounded on the door. Little Yu and Liam Mo were having a drink in the room and finally drove Gu Yi away. Their plan had already been completed. Little Yu, that's really good. Big Brother has convinced you. Liam Mo picked up his glass and lightly touched her. Little Yu smiled complacently and lightly touched him. This woman is quite smart. She'd better not appear again. Otherwise, I definitely won't bypass her as easily as I did this time. He said slowly. Are we going to deal with her son next? Li Mo closed his slender eyes. We'll make our move later. Gui will definitely come back to look for the child. If she takes the child away, we won't make things difficult for them. Otherwise, we'll take advantage of the chaos to cut the child off. Without an heir, Yi Yi can only listen to us. Little Yi drank a mouthful of red wine from his goblet, full of strategy. What a trick! Liam Mo smiled and applauded, then said worriedly, but are you so sure that Yi Yi will follow your will? Of course not. Rather than putting everything on his old love for my sister, it's better to try to make yourself stronger. Little Yi played with the goblet in her hand. The scarlet red wine kept flashing under the lights, causing her to be especially distracted. Liam Mo looked at her doubtfully, took a sip of wine, and waited for her to continue. I've contacted the biggest star agency in B-City and signed a contract with them. It's in Laniran. 
As Little You put down his chopsticks, he paced to the window and looked at the crescent moon outside. As long as I grasp the power of the media and accumulate a portion of my assets, even if I can't take down E Corporation, it will be enough to destroy E Corporation, he said. Liam Mo nodded. The so called three people make a tiger. Companies like EE couldn't see scandals or anything like that. Otherwise, the stock market would definitely plummet, falling, and the company would go bankrupt. While the two were chatting happily, a hurried knock on the door interrupted their conversation. Little Yu panicked and broke the goblet in his hand. He waved his hand to signal Lee Mo to quickly flip down from the window. Lee Mo drank too much and walked to the window trembling. However, he couldn't hold onto the handrail for a long time. When Shen Yu heard the sound of glass breaking outside, he anxiously pushed the door of the locked forehead ward and said, Little Yu, what's wrong? Open the door for me. He listened to the commotion inside in fear that Little Yu would get sick and do something to hurt his forehead. Little Yu pushed Lia Mo seeing his drunken appearance. She fiercely pinched him on the waist. Lia Mo suppressed the exclamation in his mouth and instantly woke up. Then he flipped through the window. Little Yu tidied up his clothes and said calmly to the door, It's fine, I just broke a cup. She spoke to him as she spoke. When the door was opened, Shin Yu saw Little Yu standing in the doorway. It's good that you're fine, he said with a sigh of relief. Little Yu blocked the door and didn't have the slightest intention of letting him in. He said impatiently, it's already very late. I'm afraid it's not convenient for you to come. Only then did Shin Yu recall his purpose of coming here. He put away the smile on his face and looked at Little Yu with a serious expression. I saw your little movements clearly that day. Why did you do that? You drove Gooey away, didn't you? I don't know what you're talking about, Little Yu said coldly as his face darkened. Why did you do those little things behind your back? Do you have any thoughts about Yi Yi? Shen Yu held her shoulder and let her face him. Little Yu waved his hand and said sternly, Yes, I just like him. I can't see Brother Yi with another woman, okay? Shen Yu looked at her and let out a long sigh before leaving in disappointment. Chapter 175 Steal Xiao Mo Out After the evening class, Xiao Ma and his roommate walked in the direction of the dormitory, who knew that Xiao Li would fall down and get up again while walking. Xiao Ma was so shocked that he immediately squatted beside him to check. He breathed evenly, so how could he suddenly faint? Xiao Ma looked at his roommate's slightly large body and was worried about how to get him back when a few figures emerged from the bushes and respectfully stood in front of him. Little young master, we'll take you to see Miss Gu Yi. As the leader spoke, he handed him a note. Xiao Ma looked at them doubtfully. Why did dad suddenly change his men? What's so strange about seeing mommy, why would she need such a big move? Holding the note in his chubby little hand, Xiao Ma believed the few people in front of him as soon as the beautiful handwriting entered his eyes. Just as he was about to leave with them, he suddenly turned back and pointed at his poor roommate on the ground, saying, you must carry him back to the dormitory first. Hearing this, a few people began to act. The leader advised and coaxed, they will send that little young master back. Come with us. Xiao Ma looked at him hesitantly and asked, do you know where we live? The leader smiled without saying a word. This is natural. We have been paying attention to your every move for a few days. All right, let's go. Shoma waved his small fist in relief. This was the first time he had left the school gate during the curfew. It was too exciting. The car drove Shoma away like a flying car. The group of people were silent all the way, but they were carefully examining little young master. Their clear eyebrows had already begun to show their elegance. The concern they had for their roommates just now was the same as their old master back then. It seemed that their future in Gu Corporation was hopeful. Wow, what a beautiful villa. Shama looked at the Edwardian building in front of him as soon as he got out of the car and cried out in surprise. His pair of big eyes flashed like stars, which was especially pleasing. As soon as Shama entered the door, Gu Kuang welcomed him. He immediately held him in his arms and raised him high. Shama looked at the old man with dazzling hair and a child's face in front of him and said happily, Grandpa, who are you? Seeing this, Gui hurriedly walked to the side and held Xiaomua in her arms. She said with concern, Grandfather, put Xiaomua down. This child is quite heavy. Gui still felt a lingering fear when she remembered the way he kowtowed that day. The old man seemed to recall the embarrassment of the other day. He put Xiaomua in Gui's embrace and caressed his head with a smile. He took out a delicate little golden lock from his embrace and hung it around Xiaomua's neck. He smiled and said, This is a greeting gift from Great Grandpa. Do you like it? Xiaoma held the lock on his neck and widened his eyes. He nodded like a chicken pecking at rice. I like it. Heavens, I'm rich now. This is pure gold. 
Gui looked at Xiao Ma in her arms as if he was a rich man, smiled and nodded his little nose. She sat on the sofa with Gu Kuang. Mommy, why are you here? Xiao Ma's attention shifted from the golden lock to the two elders in front of him. Gui smiled bitterly and caressed his shoulder comfortably. She couldn't say a word for a long time. She didn't want Xiao Ma to know about the matter between them. Xiao Ma, mommy only took care of me at grandpa's place for a while. Gu Kuang kindly hugged Xiao Ma from Gu Yi's arms and explained to him. Great grandfather. Xiao Ma finally heard this address clearly. He still remembered that he had been tricked by that so-called grandfather. He looked at the white-haired Gu Kuang with a face full of smiles and vigilantly said, Then what is the relationship between you and my grandfather? Gu Kuang looked at Gu Yi in confusion, hoping that he could give some hints. Why was the little fellow suddenly unhappy? Gu Yi knew the cause and effect and explained, It doesn't matter. This is great grandfather. He will treat Xiao Ma very well. Mommy, when are you coming home? Xiao Ma wants to eat your coke chicken wings this week. Xiao Ma shook Gu Yi's arm coquettishly, wanting to help her father coax Mommy home quickly. Gu Yi looked at him awkwardly and urged, Mommy has to take care of her great grandfather here. She probably won't be returning to the old mansion anytime soon. Xiao Mo rolled his eyes and said, I don't believe it. It's definitely not that simple. Mommy, did you quarrel with Daddy? Gu Kuang did not expect this kid to be so unfoolish. He smiled complacently and said, He is indeed the descendant of our Gu clan. He has such insight at such a young age. He waved at Butler, signaling her to bring up the pastries that had been prepared. Before meeting this great-great-grandson, he had done a good job of understanding his preferences. Xiaoma looked at the dishes on the coffee table and immediately forgot about the awkwardness. He concentrated his attention on the direction of the food. Rose flower cake? durian cake, osmanthus cake, grass cake. The delicious food dazzled his eyes. He raised his chubby little hand and didn't know which to eat first. Gu Kuang looked at his cute, fleshy appearance and happily picked up a durian crisp and placed it on his small hand. This is delicious. It's covered in a layer of crisp skin and wrapped in durian and milkshake. It's delicious. Hearing that, Xiao Ma couldn't wait to put a small piece of pastry into his mouth. In that instant, his eyes narrowed and his face was filled with enjoyment. After a while, he said, it's really delicious. If you like, can great-grandpa send someone to deliver it to you every day? Gu Kuang said indulgently. Xiao Ma immediately nodded, but then said with a grim expression, but the school has a rule that parents can only visit once a week. Gu Kuang sighed at the child's sensibility. Looking at his wrinkled little bun face, he said in relief, well, great-grandpa sends someone to deliver it to you every week, eh? Hearing this, Xiao Ma happily jumped onto the sofa and threw himself into Gu Kuang's arms. He hugged his neck tightly and said, Great Grandpa is the best. Great Grandpa's home is also beautiful. Then why don't Xiao Ma come visit Great Grandpa often in the future? Gu Kuang took advantage of the temptation and placed another rose cake on the plate in Xiao Ma's small hand. Xiao Ma looked down at the exquisite pastries in his hands, swallowed his saliva, and hesitated for a moment before saying, But what about Daddy? And why did he secretly bring Shama out? Gui smiled and stroked Shama's clothes. She tidied up his clothes and said helplessly, Shama, don't think too much. You just need to know that we all love you. Shama nodded and looked at the pastries in his hand. For a time, the three of them talked happily and Gu Kuang doted on this great grandson. Master, it's almost time. If it were any later, I'm afraid President Yi's subordinates would have discovered it. The man who brought Xiao Ma over hesitated and interrupted their conversation. Gu Kuang groped the Xiao Ma in his arms, the little man carved with pink jade. He liked it as much as he could, but it was a pity that some messy things had not been settled yet. All right, bring little young master back. Be careful on the way. Gu Kuang reluctantly pinched Xiao Ma's round face and instructed his subordinates. Gu Yi looked at Xiao Ma and a stream of water vapor immediately enveloped her eyes. She hugged Shama tightly in her arms and said worriedly, study hard at school, pay more attention to your body, and don't tell your father what happened tonight. Today, why did she still feel sad when she mentioned Iya's name? With a knot tied at the tip of her tongue, she still couldn't let go of the man who hurt her the most. Shama nodded solemnly. Although he was slightly uneasy in his heart, he was always on mommy's side. Gu Kuang and Gu Yi followed Shama out. They watched as he got into the car and saw the car disappear into the distance before turning around and returning to the room. 
Gu Kuang sat upright, twisted a dessert on the table, tasted it carefully, and looked at the somewhat sad Gu Yi, explaining, Little Yi, don't worry, I will bring Xiao Ma to my side. Gu Yi nodded her head and said with relief, Xiao Ma is very comfortable with his current life. For the time being this is good. It wasn't hard for her to tell from the words just now that Xiao Ma was reluctant to part with Yi Yi. Her round face was filled with childish embarrassment, which made her heart ache. Gu Kuang shook his head in disagreement and said slowly that won't do. I think this child is a good seedling. Taking advantage of this opportunity to nurture him, Gu Clan's burden will be borne by this child in the future. Hearing this, Gu Yi frowned slightly. Just as she did not agree that Yi Yi had nurtured Xiao Ma as his successor so early on, she also did not agree with old Grandpa Gu's idea now. The child was still young and having a happy childhood was more important than anything else. Grandfather, let's talk about these things later. Gu Yi could not refuse directly so she could only change the topic. Gu Kuang didn't think so. He looked at Gu Yi warmly and smiled, Little Yi, you have to take care of your body these days. You're idle. I'll let Butler teach you the scale of our family business. You have to be familiar with this. After all, Xiao Ma is still young. Grandpa may not be able to accompany you for long. Gu Yi nodded her head sadly in response to Gu Kuang's words, expressing her willingness. How could such a large family business learn management overnight? She looked at Butler, who was standing by the side with some apprehension. She knew nothing about business management, and there seemed to be a lot of challenges ahead. Gu Kuang patted her shoulder with a smile and said confidently, Don't worry, our people in Gu Clan have extraordinary talent in business. You will definitely learn it in one go. Besides, if you get back together with Yi Yi in the future, you can't be ignorant of the business world. You have to help your husband's family in the future. Gui smiled bitterly. When they were together again, they would probably have fewer chances to see each other again in the future. All right, I'll let Butler show you the scale and mode of operation of Gu Corporation tomorrow. Seeing that she was beginning to feel sad again, Gu Kuang immediately changed the subject. What did this Yi Yi do to his precious granddaughter? It made her so sad. From the investigation results of her subordinates, it seemed that Yi Yi had formed a new relationship with Gu Yi. But since it was like this, why would he bother to find Gu Yi's whereabouts everywhere? Since his precious granddaughter had already chosen to leave, why was she still worried about him like this? After a long sigh, Gu Kuang looked at Gu Yi, who was lost in her thoughts, and helplessly stroked her beard. He was already old, and he really didn't understand the world of these young people? Chapter 176 Xiao Emo Leaked the Secret The afternoon sun was exceptionally warm. It shone through the large French windows. The tea fragrance of the tea house on the second floor of the Gu Clan villa curled up, and the moisture was dense. Gu Kuang, Gu Yi, and Lan Iran sat at one end of the tea house and tasted the newly arrived poor. Iran, I saw your latest film. It's very good. Gu Kuang was the first to speak, and his words were filled with admiration. Lan Iran humbly bowed and looked at Gu Yi with a smile. That's the classic movie that you didn't watch when I worked with editor Gu. Gu Kuang looked at the young man in front of him with satisfaction. His reputation was humble and respectful. It was not bad. The more he looked at him, the more he could match Gu Yi. It was just the regret of their previous generation. Iran, have you been alone all these years? Lan Iran was slightly shocked. He didn't expect this question to come up, and then he said gently, always. I've been out filming all year round, so I can't care less about this. Gu Yi listened to their conversation from the side and watched her nose, nose, and heart as she drank the cold tea in the cup without moving at all. It was not that she did not know what her grandfather was planning, but it was just that it would probably be impossible for her to meet other people in this lifetime. Lan Iran looked at her indifferent face and tactfully stopped talking. He just talked to old Grandpa Gu about some interesting things in the entertainment industry to relieve his boredom. Just as the two of them were talking, Butler walked over and inserted a Confucius into the food box. Master, this is the dessert you ordered for little young master, he interrupted. Gu Kuang looked carefully and said with satisfaction, very well. Send it early so that you don't run into people from E-Clan. Female butler nodded and carefully carried the food box out. This time it was as if she had pressed the pause button on the rippling lake surface. For a moment, the three of them fell silent. Xiaoma is still in E-Clan? Lan Iran was the first to break the silence. Gui frowned and remained silent. A trace of melancholy appeared on her thin and delicate face, and her entire body became even more ethereal. Gu Kuang sighed and said somewhat helplessly, that child is very emotional. I'm afraid that he won't be able to leave Yi Yi for a while. 
Furthermore, I want him to transfer to S City after this semester. Lan Iran nodded. He put down the teacup in his hand and said uneasily, It's better to bring the child back as soon as possible. The people in EE are messy. As for men, they are always not as thoughtful as women. He said his thoughts implicitly. Neither little you nor Liamo was a fuel efficient lamp. If the child fell into their hands, it would be very unlucky. Gu Kuang suddenly clapped his hands. Lani Ran's words had touched his heart. He was always worried about his precious great grandson outside. At night, it was as if his chest was blocked by a big rock. He was hanging unsteadily, that's what I meant. It's just that little E wanted to give the child some time to get used to it. Lan Iran nodded, but Gui stubbornly remained silent. Shama had finally accepted this father. She did not want to deprive the child of his hard won father's love. Seeing that, Gu Kuang did not say anything else. He sipped the new tea in his cup carefully and smiled. Little Yi's recent book is almost finished. You two can cooperate again. He paused for a moment and looked at Gu Yi affectionately. Grandpa is here to invest in you. You can do whatever you want. Grandpa, you continue to support me as a scriptwriter? Gu Yi was rather surprised and raised her delicate eyebrows slightly. Looking at her raised eyebrows, Gu Kuang thought absentmindedly that Ying Ji had the same expression back then. After a long pause, he said in a deep voice, Of course, Grandpa supports you in doing what you like, but you have to shoulder the responsibility of the family. Gu Yi pursed her lips and nodded, I know. No matter what, she could not escape from this career. She only hoped that Xiaoma could help her take on more time before she was able to. When she thought of Xiaoma, Gu Yi's thin face glowed with gentleness, and her maternal love was undoubtedly revealed. This week is home week. I wonder if Xiaoma will think about himself and tell the secret of that day when he gets home. Unknowingly, the sun's shadows had already begun to tilt westward. Butler came in from outside the door and respectfully reported to Mr. Gu, the snacks have been handed over to little young master. We only left after watching the people in E-Clan pick up little young master. However, she lowered her eyebrows and hesitated, hesitating whether to say anything else. Don't hesitate. Gu Kuang could tell that something was going on and his voice was cold and fierce as he instructed. Seeing this, Lan Iran immediately stood up and humbly said, This junior won't disturb you much. I'll take my leave first. He knew that Gu Clan was a high-ranking family and there were some things that he couldn't easily know as an outsider. Gu Kuang, contrary to his usual enthusiasm, smiled and stood up, signaling the servants to send him away. Only the three of them were left in the tea house. Gu Kuang put down the teacup in his hand and questioned in a deep voice, Speak! Gu Yi also frowned at her and nervously twisted the napkin in her hand. Could it be that something had happened to Xiaoma? I watched President Yi pick up little young master with my own eyes, but there was a woman by his side. She looked very intimate. Butler said cautiously as he sized up Gu Yi's expression. Oh, what's there to care about? Gu Kuang pretended to be relaxed and then changed the subject. As long as Xiao Ma is fine, it's better than anything. Gu Yi's face was deathly silent. She could not tell whether she was happy or angry. Seeing this, the two of them did not know how to comfort her. A moment of silence floated in the air, leaving only the curling fragrance of tea in the room. It doesn't matter to me. I haven't finished reading today's proposal. I'll go read it. Gui smiled and walked out of the tea house, leaving Gu Kuang and Butler looking at each other. Look at you, talk too much. This child is worried and doesn't say anything. Seeing Gu Yi leave, Gu Kuang began to complain. Butler lowered his eyebrows and looked at him in grievance. He clearly didn't want to say anything he had to know. After pondering for a moment, Gu Kuang took another sip of tea and said with some anger, What does that woman look like? Butler said helplessly, It's pretty and pretty. Its big eyes are watery. It looks like it's only in its early twenties. This flower heart radish. Gu Kuang slapped the table and angrily reprimanded him. No matter what kind of woman he was, she could be as beautiful as his granddaughter. Even if she was as beautiful as his granddaughter, she wasn't as talented as her. Tell them to investigate the relationship between that woman and Yi Yi. Is Yi Clan still looking for Gu Yi? Gu Kuang's eyes were filled with anger and coldness. He ordered in a clear and organized manner that this fellow was bullying others too much. He must help little Yi obtain this justice. She was no longer an orphan without a family. They were having a lively discussion here. Xia Ma, the trigger point of this incident, was very happy the moment he saw Butler. The snack feeding over the past few days had already allowed him to establish a very close relationship with the broad-minded female butler and her great-grandfather. 
Unfortunately, in order to avoid E. Yi and the others, Butler left before they could say a few words. He stuffed the snack box in his bag and waited for E. Clan's car to pick it up. From afar, a silver-gray Cadillac was especially dazzling. It was heading towards the school. Xiaoma looked forward to it. He knew that it was his father's car. Before Yi could get out of the car, Xiaoma jumped up to meet him. As soon as Yi got out of the car, Xiaoma jumped up and said happily, Dad, haven't you seen Xiaoma in a week? Yi hugged him tightly in his arms, half of his body soaring into the air. He lifted him up and circled around, causing Xiaoma to giggle with delight and shout, Dad, Xiaoma missed you so much. The father and son were having fun when the other side of the car door was suddenly opened. A girl wearing a white coat got off from above and walked to Yi. She smiled beautifully and looked at Xiaoma and said softly, You must be Xiaoma. I meant Little Yu. Yi frowned slightly as he looked at her. Just now, Little Yu had insisted on pestering him to come with him, which was enough to make him annoyed. Now that he had appeared here again, Yi felt even more annoyed. Xiaoma raised his head from Yi's embrace and looked at Little Yu vigilantly. The little bun's face was wrinkled and he said unhappily, Why did you come with Dad to pick me up? Because Auntie lives in your house right now. Little Yu explained with a smile. The two sweet dimples looked exceptionally attractive. She approached Yi bit by bit and smiled, Xiaoma is so cute. If my sister's child was still here it should be the same. Yi dodged her leaning over. He had heard this more than a hundred times. He walked towards the car with Xiaoma in his arms and ignored her. Xiaoma lay in Yi's arms and made a grimace at Little Yu. Humph, she looked good looking and wanted to rob her father. She really overestimated herself. As soon as he got in the car, Xiaoma pulled Iya's hand and rubbed it. He smiled and froze with him the interesting things he had been doing in school these past few days, as well as the good news that he had taken the first place in this month's exam. Iyi stroked Xiaoma's hair and said softly, What kind of reward does Xiaoma want? Hearing this, Xiaoma immediately came to his senses and said, Pearl balls, cola chicken wings, salmon, crab chicken, red wine steak. Iyi listened to her chatter for a long time, but it was all meat not a single dessert. He said curiously, why has your temper changed during this period of time? You don't like sweetness anymore. Xiaoma was shocked and hurriedly covered his mouth. He lowered his head guiltily and said, there is too little oil and water in the cafeteria. Didn't I say dessert yet? Obediently, during this period of time, he was fed too well by the dessert from his great-grandfather's family, and he almost revealed a flaw in front of Dad Bai. Yi looked at him with a frown and asked in a deep voice, Is there something you're hiding from me? No, no. Xiaoma waved his hand repeatedly, his pitch black eyes constantly flashing. Really? Yi's burning gaze was locked onto Xiaoma, full of pressure. Then of course. Xiaoma swore an oath, but he didn't dare to raise his eyes. Looking at his appearance, Yi knew that he did not want to say anything, nor did he reluctantly, so he simply skimmed over the page. Little Yi smiled as he approached and patted Xiaoma's head comfortably. Xiaoma, don't be afraid. There's an ant here. But Xiaoma didn't buy it. The meat bun waved her slender wrist and stroked her hair. Don't touch my hair. Little Yi retracted his hand resentfully. Seeing that Yi Yi didn't have the slightest intention of helping him, he sat back in his seat. The three of them were speechless for a moment. They could only drive along the highway at high speed, heading in the direction of the old Yi clan mansion. Chapter 177 Who Gave You the Snacks? It was already dusk when they returned to the old e clan mansion. The servants looked at Xiaoma carefully, afraid that he would ask where Gui was. E Yi was not in a hurry to urge him to do his homework this time. He sat on the sofa with a friendly expression and signaled the servants to follow the arrangements they had agreed to. Seeing that they were all staring at him indifferently, Xiaoma's scalp was numb as he picked up his school bag and ran towards his bedroom. Yi looked at his panicked expression, his cold brows thoughtful. This child must be hiding something from him. In the past, Gu Yi was busy at work and didn't pick him up at school. She had to coax him when she came back. This time, she didn't see Gu Yi at home and didn't even ask him a question. Brother Yi, Xiaoma is really sensible. He is not like sister-in-law. He is so big that he can easily run away from home. I made you so worried. Little Yi leaned against the armrest of the sofa his clear eyes looking at Yi Yi innocently like a deer. Yi Yi pursed his lips, looked at her coldly, and said indifferently, this is between me and her. You don't have to say anything else. Also be careful when you speak in front of Xiaoma in the future. Just because I agree that you live here doesn't mean you can do whatever you want. Little Yi frowned slightly and stood up resentfully. 
Was this still the Yi Yi she knew before? She was so cold and solemn. She originally thought that living mainly in the old Yi clan mansion would soften Yi Yi. Now it seemed that this method would not work. Go back to your room. Yi Yi instructed coldly, not wanting to look at Little Yu again. Little Yu clenched her teeth and pretended to be pitiful as she walked towards her guest room. Damn it, she had already been here for so long yet she still let her stay in the guest room. It was obvious that she didn't want her to stay for long. Yi Yi sat alone in the living room. He picked up Gu Yi's favorite teacup and took a sip. He recalled the situation his subordinates had reported to him over the past few days, as well as the various possibilities Xiaoma had today. All sorts of clues were linked together. He looked towards Xiaoma's bedroom with a deep gaze. When Xiaoma returned to his bedroom, he couldn't wait to take out the snack box that Butler had given him. After opening it, he was pleasantly surprised. It was simply amazing. Shuefu Ron, Yun Pian Kao, and Tricolor Brocade were all his favorites. He couldn't wait to pick up a piece and stuffed it into his mouth. After eating it, he licked his fingers contentedly, then drank a mouthful of water and sighed comfortably. After his addiction, Xiaomo looked at the half of the snacks left in the box. His heart ached and he was conflicted. Why did he eat so fast? And should he give some to his father? Monoculture was not a good child, but his great-grandfather had told him not to tell his father. The little bun's face was tightly knitted together. He smacked his lips and stood there, wondering who the hateful woman beside his father was. Was that why mommy went to live at his great-grandfather's house angrily? Anyway, there must be something wrong between them. Otherwise, mommy wouldn't be so sad and skinny. The more Xiaoma thought about it, the more he clenched his fists and waved them. He had to help mommy defeat that bad woman. At dinner time, the three of them sat at the same table. Yi Yi and Xiaoma were still in their original seats. Little Yu sat in front of Gu Yi and pointed at the dishes on the table with a gentle look. This was specially prepared by Aunt. I heard that you like cola chicken wings. Have a taste. Xiaoma curled his lips and looked at her provocatively with his big dark eyes. That's my mother's seat. You can't sit there. Also, why are you so close to my father? Hurry up and take a seat beside her. He said discontentedly. He already owns a famous flower and belongs to my mother. Don't you know? The smile froze on his face. Little Yu looked at Yi Yi wrongly and said pitifully, Brother Yi, this child doesn't have much tutoring. Although she had always been dependent on her elder sister, she had suffered such grievances before and was ridiculed speechless by a child of half age. Yi Yi raised his eyes and looked at Xiaoma. You mean I didn't teach him well? He said coldly. Little Yu's expression changed and he didn't know how to proceed. I didn't mean that. I just wanted to get closer to this child, he argued. I think Xiaoma is right. It's already inconvenient for you to live here. We should avoid suspicions. Yi Yi looked in the direction that was one seat away from him and secretly signaled. Little Yu gritted her teeth and took advantage of Yi Yi's carelessness to glare at Xiaoma. This was the first time she had dined with Yi Yi at the old Yi clan mansion. During this period of time, he was busy looking for Gu Yi and didn't even return home. This time with great difficulty she thought that her chance had come. She didn't expect that it would be ruined by Xiaoma. Xiaoma watched her put the bowl aside proudly and reluctantly changed seats. She sweetly said to Yi Yi, I knew that dad loved me the most and loved mommy the most. He purposely said the word love very seriously and looked at little Yu opposite him like a demonstration. Little Yu was furious and didn't say anything, but his face didn't react at all. He was so angry that he almost broke the chopsticks in his hand. Emil was speechless. Surprisingly, Xiaoma, who used to be exceptionally greedy, had only eaten half a bowl of rice and was already full. Yi Yi looked at him with a frown and saw that he was about to slip away and said, Sit down again and come to your room later. Xiaoma looked at him in shock and stammered, Well, well, Dad, if there's anything you need to tell me here, Xiaoma will definitely help you with it. He drummed in his heart and his little hands kept twisting together. Heavens, his dessert was still scattered on the desk. If Dad saw it, how would he explain it? Yi Yi looked at Xiaoma's silent howl and became more and more certain of what he was thinking. He put down his chopsticks and stared fixedly at Xiaoma. Xiaoma lowered his head and did not dare to look at him, nor did he dare to leave. He just sat there upright. Let's go. Yi Yi got up and walked towards Xiaoma's bedroom. Little Yu also saw the meaning behind this. He hurriedly stopped in front of Yi Yi and said slowly, The child is still young. If you have anything to say, please go back to your room first, Xiaoma. Xiaoma hesitated and didn't move. 
Although he didn't like this woman, he still wanted to go back to his room, as she said. Yi Yi turned around with an indifferent expression. He looked at Little Yu and said unhappily, This is my family matter. You go back to your room. Little Yu frowned and secretly competed, but there was nothing he could do. He could only return to his guest room. Come here. Yi Yi's solemn voice made Xiaomo stand in front of him. Xiaomo rubbed his way, his head drooping. Yi Yi held his hand and walked to the bedroom together. Xiaomo shrank and retreated backwards. If it weren't for Yi Yi holding on to him, the little fellow would have disappeared all of a sudden. Squeak! As soon as the door opened, Yi Yi noticed the exquisite pastry box on the desk. The snack brother inside was exquisite, and it was obvious that it had taken some effort. Seeing that the situation was irreversible, Xiaoma followed him into the room as if he was dead. Yi Yi sat on an armchair and felt a headache as he looked at Xiaoma with his eyes closed in front of him. Your mother is working overtime this weekend. Did she visit you at school recently? Yi Yi thought. Xiaoma rolled his eyes and looked at Yi Yi's face. Didn't mommy get mad at you and leave? Why did she say she was going to work again? He asked doubtfully. Yi Yi's eyes darkened as he looked at Xiaoma and said anxiously, How do you know that it was Gui who told you? Xiaoma covered his mouth and was shocked to find that he had spoken. His brain was spinning rapidly. He said, No, no need for others to say it. I guessed it myself. If I were a mother, I would be unhappy to see another woman around you all day long. Look at me. Why are you so guilty? Yi Yi squatted on the ground and stroked Xiaoma's shoulder. His words were filled with unquestionable strength. Gui, could it be that you are so heartless that you don't even want our child? Xiaoma thought of something and pointed to the snacks on the side. I feel guilty because I secretly took the snacks from the girl who admired me. Granny Butler, Xiaoma is also trying to save his life. You can't blame me. Yi Yi was not a woman for a long time. He tightly hugged Xiaoma in his arms. His cold face was filled with loneliness. Xiaoma's face was filled with innocence. Could it be that he had guessed wrongly? It had been almost three weeks, but Gui still hadn't heard anything. Xiaoma leaned softly against Yi Yi with a milk fragrance. Looking at his sad expression, Xiaoma stretched out his chubby little hand and rubbed his shoulder. Dad, don't worry. As long as Xiaoma is by your side, Mom will definitely come back. It's just that you need to get rid of that ant quickly. Little Lord Xiaoma's appearance instantly made Yi Ye's mood much better. He stroked Xiaoma's head and explained, Her name is Little Yu. She is Dad's sister. When the new house is finished, she will move out of our house. He didn't want to quickly solve the problem before him, but Little Yu still hadn't remembered Linger's last wish. Their old house had been renovated and renovated, and she was homeless as a girl, and she didn't want to get along with that bachelor Xinyu, so she could only live here. Seeing that he was in a better mood, Xiaoma immediately ran to the desk and picked up the snacks in the food box. Dad, try this. It's delicious. Yi Yi smiled and nodded his little nose. I knew it. A little girl bribed you with a little snack. As he spoke, he took the snacks, put them in his mouth, and tasted them carefully. Xiaoma leaned against him and finally heaved a sigh of relief. Fortunately, he was smart enough to cover up this matter. Otherwise, Mommy would be in danger. No, he had to take care of this bad woman at home and pave the way for Mommy. Dad, you don't blame me anymore? Xiaoma asked flatteringly. At your age, there are more little girls chasing after me, and there are a lot of tricks. Yi Yi smiled and held him in his arms. His words were filled with love and deep longing. Chapter 178 Let's go to see the Madam's movie. The early morning sun was woken up by the crisp bird singing. As the new year approached, the Gu Clan courtyard was renovated. The tall Christmas tree in the courtyard was filled with small gifts of various colors. The servants were busy in the morning counting the items needed for the new year. They planned to report to Butler in the morning and go shopping. Gui looked up from the numerous business data on her desk and looked at the colorful Christmas tree outside. Her thoughts drifted into the distance. Yi Yi once told her that they would bring Xiaoma to Santorini with them by the new year, but it was probably impossible for them to do so now. Dong 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 knocked on the door accompanied by Butler's low female voice. Miss, Master asked you to go down to breakfast. Gui answered and went downstairs. As soon as she entered the dining room, Gu Kuang pulled her to sit beside her. Little E, let's see if the food this morning is appetizing. If you don't like it, I'll let them cook it again. During this period of time, Gu Kuang had pampered this precious granddaughter that he had found with great difficulty to the heavens. He thought of ways to make her happy every day, but Gu Yi was still getting thinner and thinner, and her face was filled with no joy. I like it very much. 
Grandfather, there's no need to bother. Gui forced a smile. She had been reading the annual summary of the Gu Corporation Group from last night until she had just finished reading it. A strong sense of tiredness made her unable to recover her spirits. Grandfather, I've finished reading the annual summary. I'll give you the draft annual plan later. Gu Kuang put down his chopsticks in shock. He looked at Gui with concern and distress. Why don't you take care of your body so much, kid? It took me three days to read such a thick report. Did you stay up all night last night? Gui smiled. She didn't know whether to accept or not. During this period of time, she only knew how shallow her understanding of business was. Gu Corporation mainly operated electronic network information technology. In recent years, there was a faint trend towards the development of film and television media. The ways and skills inside were far more complex than she thought. She had to consider many aspects of the situation. Grandfather, I still have a lot to learn. Gu Kuang patted her shoulder with a smile and said softly, Little E, it's good that you work hard, but you should also learn to relax. In this way, Grandpa has arranged for you to meet Iran. The new film you filmed a while ago will be released tonight. You young people should go and watch it together. Gu Yi restrained the smile on her face and shrugged apologetically, Grandfather, I still have some accounts to settle. At night. Before he could finish speaking, Gu Kuang interrupted him. He smiled and gave Gu Yi a piece of chicken wing. Just give Grandpa face. Go and relax. Gu Yi remained silent as she drank the porridge in the bowl. Gu Kuang sighed and said gently, Little E, when it's over, it's over. Although that guy named E has been looking for you, you heard what Butler said the other day. He has been entangled with other women. He might just be looking for you for show. Gui lowered her head and her amber eyes immediately dimmed. Why did she still have a sliver of hope for him? She actually forgot that E. Yi was the best at acting. That's right, their relationship would have some negative effects on E Corporation more or less. She thought that he had to lay the groundwork well before he could announce his separation. A cold smile blossomed on her lips. Gui nodded at Gu Kuang and agreed. She didn't want her grandfather to worry, but on the other hand, she needed to explain some things to Lan Iran in advance. Gu Kuang smiled heartily when she agreed. That's right. You young people don't always say that you can only meet the right person by saying goodbye to the wrong person, right? Little E, you have to look away. I've seen little by little how Iran treats you these days. Grandfather, I have my limits. Gu Yi helplessly smiled bitterly. The old man was always eager to be her matchmaker, but she had no mood to think about this kind of thing now. She had already left hers with him and could never find it again. In the old e clan mansion, the servants were busy with the arrival of the new year. Butler was powerless and could only buy supplies from the servants' budgets. He also reminded them that little young master and his wife were here this year, so they should pay attention to buying more fruits, snacks and things that children liked. At this moment, Little Yu came downstairs and looked at Butler with an unfriendly expression. Am I not a member of this family? Why don't you ask me what I need? He said sharply. Butler's slightly wrinkled eyebrows wrinkled slightly, but his face was still the same. He said politely, yes, miss, you ordered. Facing this inexplicable coquettish guest in front of him like Jiang Xinye was a headache, but the identity of the servant here was not good enough to offend her. The guest room she stayed in yesterday to dress up was already exhausted. It was not enough, but now it was going to be troublesome again. Seeing that he was still respectful, Little Yu walked around him and headed in the direction of Yi Yi, who was sitting in the hall. Brother Yi, why are you sitting here early in the morning? Her crisp voice was exceptionally pleasant to the ears, but it made the servants at the side extremely cold. Previously, the madam had never spoken in such an arrogant manner when she was around, nor did she make things difficult for them. Iyi's expression was calm as he stared blankly at the newspaper in his hand, ignoring the attentive little you. The newspaper was filled with Gu Yi's screenplay, the director's new movie, and a long story with an abstract of her script. He still remembered that they were so close when they made this film that she had to read him a part of her story every night before she fell asleep. At that time, they were always arguing about bedtime. She was a scriptwriter and liked to write at night. He was different. He wanted to maintain good health and had to be settled from 1 to 11 o'clock. It was a pleasure for them to snatch a thick notebook. If they snatched it, they would throw it aside and push her down on the bed. Brother E, did you listen to him? Little Yu whined discontentedly, leaning closer to him as he spoke, curling the newspaper in Yi Ye's hand with the corner of his eye. When she saw the words, gold medal screenwriter Gu Yi set another high rating on the title, her expression immediately changed. Her clear eyes were filled with resentment. 
Why was this damned woman still like a ghost? She was forced out of E-Clan with great difficulty, but her shadow was everywhere. If this continued, when would her plan succeed? Little Lon, who was tidying up the shopping list, coldly looked at Little Yu's shriveled appearance and secretly cried out in delight. He lowered his voice and said to the servant beside him, I really have never seen such an unwise person. He stays at home and doesn't leave. That's right. No wonder Mr. doesn't like her. She is far inferior to our madam. Another sincerely agrees. Butler, listening to their conversation, coughed reminiscently, and though they agreed with him, it was not good for outsiders to hear the servants talking about their masters. Seeing little Lon pacing over, Butler immediately greeted him and stood in front of him. Uncle Lee, he whispered, I want to take a night off to see Madam's new movie. Please excuse me. Seeing her speak, the servants at the side also followed her, pleading and fawning over Butler, wanting to see Gu Yi's new film. Butler looked at them. His expression was ugly. To be honest, it wasn't that he was unkind, rather it was the new year, and there was not enough manpower. Sir, you have been in a low mood recently, and it is inevitable that there will be another disturbance at that time. So many people taking leave at the same time will definitely ask for a treasure. But now Madam's name seems to be taboo in this old E-Clan mansion. No one dares to mention it so easily for fear of provoking Iye's attack. All right, I'll go ask Mr. for instructions, but you'd better not hold out too much hope. Butler pondered for a moment before walking towards Iye. He saw that he was absentmindedly reading the newspaper and was standing by the side. Iye rubbed the paper in his hand and looked at the date on the corner. The premiere date was today. Unhappily putting down the newspaper in his hand, could it be that he could only get news of her from the newspaper in the future? Speak, what is it? Iyi leaned against the sofa and said to Butler, Sir, there are a few maids who want to take leave tonight. I wonder if you'll approve or not. Butler said carefully, Half of them were going out at night. This was no small matter. Iyi looked up at him, then looked at the newspaper on the coffee table and asked, What are they doing out there? It's busy time next year. Make arrangements inside and outside so that Madam doesn't get upset when she comes back. Butler looked embarrassed. It seemed that the gentleman already loved his wife. He probed and said, they want to see her new movie. E. Yi suddenly raised his eyes and his sharp gaze swept over Butler, causing him to shrink. If you don't agree, I will immediately return to them, he said. Wait. E. Yi stopped Butler, who was about to turn around and run away, and asked with some interest, do they like Madam's movies? Butler hurriedly nodded and explained, that's right, since the last movie went online, the servants have watched it more than ten times. The story is well arranged and the actors are beautiful. In short, it's indescribably comfortable. A light smile bloomed on Iye's lips. Yes, although Butler's words were simple, they also expressed the feelings of most people. Gui did not only treat this as a profession that earned a living, but also as an ideal. All right, let them go. Iye waved his hand and said in relief. Butler laughed until the wrinkles on his face spread out. He hurriedly nodded, but he hesitated and refused to leave. After a while, he said boldly, Sir, I want to go too. Iyi looked at Butler, who was more than half a century old. He had always hated these acoustic and photoelectric things. He said that he would play with things, but now he had fallen. Butler was like a child standing in front of Iyi, no longer as calm and serious as he used to be. He just waited quietly. Seeing that he was like this, Yi Yi could not disappoint him, so he nodded and said slowly, then let's give everyone a night off. Butler nodded happily and strode towards the back hall but was stopped by Yi Yi's cold voice. Wait, book me a ticket for tonight too. Butler shook his head and realized that he had not heard wrongly. He immediately nodded and told everyone the good news. A burst of cheers came from the back hall and the noise was so loud that the roof was about to be lifted. Yi Yi ignored them and allowed them to make a fuss. If Gui knew that her painstaking film was so popular, she would definitely be very happy. Little Yu sat by the side and looked at Iya's gentle face, but it wasn't facing him. He was so angry that his delicate face turned pale. Chapter 179 The Cinema Brush Past Brother E, why are you ignoring her? Little Yu affectionately clung to her, her soft body clinging to Iyi, deliberately rubbing the newspaper with Gu Yi's message on the coffee table onto the ground. Iyi got up impatiently, pulled the distance between them, and said in a low voice, Didn't you say that you were going to work in the Star Sea? Aren't you leaving at this late hour? As he spoke, he picked up the newspaper from the ground and held it in his hand. The cold words came to an ear-piercing halt. Little Yu's face darkened. He sat on the sofa opposite him angrily and said, Today is the weekend. 
which one of you is going to work? Humph, even if he refused to leave, he would treat that woman as a treasure. Back then, when his sister was alive, she had never seen him admire her so much. If he treated her half as well as Gu-E, perhaps she wouldn't have died back then. Then go back to your room and rest. Yi Yi suddenly realized that she had been busy looking for Gu Yi everywhere these past few days. Even her life had been muddled. Where did this little woman go? Why can't I find her even if I used all my connections? Could it be that you've been so ruthless for so long? Don't you miss this family at all? Don't you? Don't you want me? Little Yi was so angry that his face turned ashen. He forced himself to pretend to be aggrieved. Chu Chu said pitifully, Brother E, I've come these days either to ask me to go back to my room or to go out to work. In short, you just don't want to see me in this old E clan mansion. Since you hate me so much, just let me die by myself outside. Even with my sister's last words, I don't want to be in your way here. As she spoke, she squeezed out a few tears and strode out. E Yi stroked her forehead with a headache. The scene before Linger's death appeared. She wanted to take care of little you herself. Although she was helpless, he still said, Little Yu. Hearing the cold voice coming from behind, Little Yu's lips curled into a smug smile. He immediately stopped but did not turn around. He just waited for him to persuade him. Yi Yu walked slowly to her and said in a gentle tone, You don't have any other relatives in B-City, and your new house hasn't been properly decorated. You can stay here peacefully. I'm in a bad mood because of your sister-in-law. Sometimes it's hard to avoid saying too much. Don't take it to heart. He tried to weigh his words. The child had been delicate and sensitive long ago. He had been ignoring her these days and felt a little guilty about Linger. Although his love for her was gone, his classmate's friendship was still there, and it was difficult for him to refuse her dying will because of the guilt in his heart. I don't care. You have to take me to the movies tonight. Otherwise, I'll leave, little you said as soon as he softened. When Yi Yi heard that she was also interested in Gu Yi's movies, she smiled and said, Are you also interested in her movies? Little Yi pursed his lips and rolled his eyes reluctantly saying, Although I don't understand, I still want to see this movie. After all, this movie is produced by the Star Sea. Since I work there, I should take a good look at their paths. Yi Yi nodded. That's good. This way he could create another audience for Gu Yi's new film. He didn't expect that the girl who bumped into his arms in panic would actually become so dazzling today. At that time, her charming amber eyes were deeply imprinted in his mind. It had been almost a month, but she did not have the slightest bit of information. Just how long was she going to be angry? Brother E okay? Little Yi tugged at his sleeve and kept shaking. E Yi nodded and signaled for Butler to buy another ticket for Little Yu. Butler nodded from afar, but Little Lon, who was standing beside him, muttered in displeasure. This so-called young miss only used this move to threaten Mr. Every time, she always acted with discretion. If you have the ability, then leave. I really don't know what Mr. is thinking about letting her go again and again. Little Lon, didn't you suffer enough in front of your cousin last time? Butler could whisper a reprimand from the side. This girl is good everywhere, but she is straightforward and easy to cause trouble. Little Lon stuck out his tongue and stopped talking. He only glared at Little Yu angrily with his eyes. What a misfortune. It would definitely be hard to watch a movie with this woman. The maid at the side bit her ear and said, Don't worry, sir and miss will definitely go into the private room and won't ruin your fun. Little Lon looked at her in surprise. How do you know what I'm thinking? The maid smiled and pinched her nose. Because that's what I thought. The back hall was bustling with activity. Everyone was discussing tonight's movie. The movie that Gu Yi made with Lon Iran last time was filled with dense fireworks. In contrast, the front hall was completely silent. Yi Yi looked at the blue and white porcelain tea set that Gu Yi liked on the coffee table and thought about it. Little Yi was on the side thinking about how to proceed with his plan. These past few days, Yi Yi had not responded to her hints in the slightest. She was completely unwilling to pay attention to her. Pervert was probably not feasible. However, apart from the relationship between husband and wife, there was another kind of property that could inherit his name. If it was a brother-sister relationship, she could only get rid of Xiaoma. Humph, Yi Yi, you can't control me. At night, the night was icy cold and the crescent moon hung in the sky exceptionally bright. The crowd in front of the Hundred Flower Cinema was bustling with noise. For Gu Yi's film, people lined up early and waited here, including Butler and Little Lan. Aya, ah, there are too many people here. It's so crowded that I'm covered in sweat. No, Madam's film is too popular. There's nothing I can do about it. Wait. 
as they were speaking, a silver Cadillac was coming this way. On the other side, a dark blue BMW was also gently driving this way, but in a moment, both cars stopped at the entrance of the cinema at the same time. The driver opened the car door and respectfully said to Yi President, we're here. Yi got off the car slowly and little Yi got off from the other side. Coincidentally, the people in the BMW got off the car as well. Lan Iran walked slowly beside her with a bag of snacks in his hand. Little Yi turned around and saw Gu Yi's slender figure. Because Iya's back was facing them, she immediately ran over and grabbed Iya's hand, not letting him turn around. If you don't want to watch today's movie, then go back. Iya refused unhappily. I just want to buy some snacks and ask you to accompany me. Why are you so fierce? Little Yu smiled apologetically. Iya softened his expression and pushed away her entanglement. He walked towards a place selling food to the side. Lan Iran accompanied Gu Yi. Seeing that she suddenly stopped, she also stopped and looked in the direction where she was distracted. In between, Yi Yi and a petite woman were selling snacks on the street. Their expressions were rather intimate. He was slightly stunned, then looked at Gu Yi with concern and said slowly, why don't we go back? Gu Yi came back to her senses. Her thin face was filled with no sorrow or joy. It was only silence. She smiled coldly and said, why do you want to go back? I'm dignified and upright. I have nothing to hide from. Lan Iran furrowed his brows and looked in Iya's direction. He was furious. This fellow was simply too outrageous. Gu Yi treated him wholeheartedly. He was good. Gu Yi had been out there for nearly a month and he seemed to be fine. He was still with other women as usual. Let's go in. Lan Iran carefully used her body to shield her from the cold, afraid that her slender body would freeze. Gu Yi nodded and slowly followed him into the VIP box. Little Yu looked sideways on the other side and saw that they had already entered, so he no longer found it difficult. Not long after, he picked up the food and smiled as he held Yi Ye's hand and walked towards the cinema. Brother Yi, I'm so happy today. Yi Yi pulled her hands out of her arms, pulled them away from each other, and said in a low voice, Little Yu, you're not a child anymore. You can't keep pulling me around like this. He patiently explained, forgiving Little Yu for his years of insanity and childishness. Little Yu pouted. He didn't care. He looked around and saw that Gui had really disappeared. Only then did he feel relieved. However, he looked at Lan Iran, who seemed to be famous recently. Humph, it seemed that this woman treated Yi Yi as nothing more than that. In just a few days, she had fallen into someone else's embrace. Yi Yi was retribution. They each walked towards their own VIP room and missed out on the entrance of the Hundred Flower Cinema. In the private room, the movie had begun slowly, but the people outside were still waiting in the cold wind. Lan Iran put the cushion for Gu Yi, looked at him infatuatedly, and said softly, You lean against it, so as not to feel uncomfortable. Gu Yi smiled and thanked him, but Lan Iran said, You and I don't need to thank each other. I'm willing to do anything for you. Hearing this, Gu Yi was stunned. She didn't even notice that the movie had already begun. What familiar words did that person once say to her, you don't have to thank me forever? Remember, she was just a substitute, and Yi Yi treated her so well. Now that the Lord was in her arms, she was even more affectionate and loving. A burst of sour in her eyes, Gu Yi tried her best to raise her head, not letting the sparkle in her eyes drip down. Lan Iran looked at her lonely appearance and couldn't bear to puncture it. So she wholeheartedly turned her head around and pretended to be concentrated on watching the movie. Gu Yi's amber eyes were empty and she could not see clearly what was on the screen in front of her. Lan Iram was also sitting by the side lonely. Why can't you forget about him and accept me? He secretly sighed and thought to himself, whatever, I will always be willing to wait for you at any time. In the private room next door, Little Yi was eating with a bag of puff food in his arms. Yi Yi frowned and turned up the voice on the screen. He carefully looked at the story inside. He had discussed every plot with Gu Yi, and now it seemed that every scene contained his and Gu Yi's memories. It was especially heartwarming. His cold and deep eyebrows were ethereal. He was afraid that he already had some sort of demonic barrier. Why did he just turn around at the door and seem to see Gu Yi's back? She seemed to have lessened a bit since then. After leaving for a month, he didn't know how her body was recovering. Chapter 180 In the end, they were strangers. The VIP room was very spacious. Gu Yi and Lan Iran sat by themselves and quietly watched the constantly changing screen. As the storylines and the protagonist's emotions changed in the movie, Gu Yi's heart rose and fell. Her mind was filled with scenes from when she created the script. 
When she was writing and drawing on a small desk in the bedroom, E would always quietly enter the room and take advantage of her carelessness to suddenly give her a hug or gently pour water for her and deliver fruit plates. However, most of the time, he was mocking her for writing such an illusory plot that it wasn't real life at all. Or perhaps he was the one who took away the script in her hands tyrannically, and then the two of them were in bed. With a light sigh, Gu Yi tried her best to delete the fragments about Yi Yi from her mind, but the more she wanted to forget, the more she was entangled in those fragments. Since she was already at the side, why would she continue to look for her hypocritically? Gu Yi, drink a mouthful of water. Lan Iran thoughtfully handed her the bottle of untied drink. Gui came out of her thoughts and took the drink. She thanked him lightly. She really needed to drink water to calm her emotions. Lan Iran smiled bitterly as he sat down beside her, maintaining a courteous distance. Do you have to be so polite with me? He said helplessly. Gui lowered her head and pondered for a moment before saying calmly, I hope we can maintain our current friendship. Could it be that as a friend, I can't be the special one? Lani ran said anxiously and stumbled. Gui remained silent. These days, she had seen all the good things she had done for her. All kinds of small gifts were deliberately flattering and amusing to make her smile. Right now he was shooting a big show, but for her sake, he worked tirelessly to travel back and forth between the production team and B-City. However, apart from being apologetic, he could not give him any response. Iran, don't waste any more time on me. Gui put down the drink in her hand, her gentle voice carried a hint of helplessness. She had once delayed Chin Yu for such a long time and did not want to owe Lan Iran. Hearing this, Lan Iran pursed his lips and smiled. His dark blue eyes stared at Gui without blinking. His soft voice muttered he has already moved on to someone else. Could it be that you can't let go of him? Gui turned her head to look at him. Her amber eyes were quiet and she nodded lightly. Why are you so stupid? Don't you know that he doesn't care about you anymore? Do you want him to hurt you again and again? Do you know how much I feel? Every word of Lan Iran was filled with pity and complaint. He uncontrollably grabbed her shoulder and brought it into his embrace. Iran, if that's the case, we can't even be friends. Gui neither struggled nor resisted, but stiffened her body. After saying this coldly, Lan Iran immediately stopped the movement in her hand. He looked at Gui who was right in front of him and felt a wave of powerlessness in his heart. Because he loved her, he would never be her opponent. Forget it, as long as she was willing, it would be good to stay by her side like this. As long as she stayed there for a long time, he believed that one day, his good fortune would make her moved. All right, I understand what you mean. Lan Iran said hesitantly, but his eyes were still burning as he looked at Gu Yi. Gu Yi smiled lightly and did not say anything else. She turned her attention to the story on the screen again. The movie was halfway through, and the relationship between the hero and the heroine had finally reached a point of no return. Breaking up was already an irreversible ending. In the private room next door, luxurious flashlights were constantly on the screen, adding stereoscopic light to the images inside, allowing viewers to enjoy the 4D effect without wearing glasses. Yi Yi concentrated on reading the story inside and secretly thought that next time, Gu Yi must write a story that was not so tortuous. It would be best if there was only sweetness and happiness between the male and female masters, without any misunderstandings or misunderstandings. Don't be like them. Brother E, this film is not good at all. Shall we stop watching it? Little Yu looked at the time on his wrist and said coquettishly. The movie was almost finished. They wouldn't meet Gooey after the show. The only safe way was to leave early. E Ye's cold eyebrows flashed with displeasure. He said indifferently, go back with the driver first if you don't like it. What about you? Little Yu shook his arm and asked. I want to be alone. Yi Yi coldly pulled back his arm and wanted to sit on the sofa on the other side. Little Yu frowned. He couldn't think of an idea for a long time, let alone leave him here. If he was here, he could at least cause a stumbling block for them. All right then, I'll accompany you. She accepted her fate and sat down. She no longer talked about leaving, just thinking about how to deal with it if she encountered it. It was already 10 o'clock in the evening after the film was broadcast. However, Yi Yi and Gui had tacitly come out early. They couldn't bear to see the male and female hosts resolutely parting ways. There were very few people on the streets. Most of the people were still immersed in the film. Little Yi walked beside Yi Yi and slowly breathed a sigh of relief. For some reason, it was almost the end. Yi Yi suddenly said that she didn't want to watch it anymore and wanted to leave the stage early. Although her interest had been aroused and she wanted to watch the ending very much, 
since Yi Yi said she was leaving, she was happy to not be scared anymore. Unfortunately, not long after she let out a sigh of relief, she saw Gu Yi and Lan Yi Ran coming out of another private room. Seeing that they were heading in their direction, Little Yu pulled Yi Ye's hand and ran out of the room. Yi Yi did not know why, but if she wanted to throw her hand away, she was afraid that she would get hurt, so she could only follow Little Yu out. Gu Yi naturally saw everything clearly behind them. Humph, dignified President Yi, I'm afraid that only people who truly love her in their hearts would behave in such a childish manner. Running hand in hand with their beloved woman is truly romantic. Unfortunately, that person will never be me. Lan Iran looked at her disappointment and walked to the door. Gu Yi stood in the corner and looked at the people tightly hugging each other in front of the car. It was especially eye-catching. His hand was on the girl's shoulder as usual. Gu Yi clenched her hands tightly and almost made a fingerprint at the tiger's mouth. She had thought that eternal love was so weak. In Yi Ye's eyes she might be a joke, a substitute, a fool addicted to the lies he had woven. A miserable cold wind blew straight towards them. It was cold in the heart and cold in the lungs. Gui stared in that direction, wrapped in her clothes. She was really cold. Her heart felt as if it was frozen. It was cold and painful and she could hardly breathe. The night is cold. Put some on. Lan Iran carefully covered her coat and looked at Yi Yi and Little Yu in the distance. Do you want to go up and say hello? There might be a misunderstanding between you two. Gui laughed mockingly and said coldly misunderstanding. If I treat this as a misunderstanding, then I'm too good at deceiving myself. Lani ran side and reached out to hold her in his arms. His hesitant palm finally stopped on her shoulder and comforted her gently, it's all over. Don't make things difficult for yourself. He had never seen Gui like this before. She had always been knowledgeable, graceful, and capable in front of her. However, in the night breeze, under the neon lights, her face was pale and her eyes were empty and sad. She was like a paper doll that would leave with the wind at any moment. It made people want to bring the best things in the world to her and take good care of her. I didn't expect that we would still be strangers in the end. Gu Yi whispered to herself as the wind drifted through the cold night. She returned her clothes to Lan Iran and got into the car. Lan Iran followed closely behind her. As soon as the two of them sat down, Gu Yi coldly instructed the driver to drive. The blue BMW drove past Yi Yi, but Gu Yi didn't even turn her head. She stared fixedly at the bustling traffic ahead. Yi Yi used this as a boundary and from now on we have nothing to do with each other. Yi Yi looked at the passing BMW and was slightly absent-minded. In his memory it seemed to be Lani Ran's car. Brother Yi then we have a deal. Little Yi tugged at his sleeve and told Yi Yi to focus on himself. Yi Yi turned to look at her and nodded with a smile. Just as they left the theater, Little Yi told Yi Yi that he had something important to tell him. Seeing her heavy expression, Yi Yi thought that little Yi remembered Linger's last words in repository and allowed her to drag her to a corner next to the theater. The two of them stood still. Yi Yi just happened to be facing the door of the cinema. Little Yi adjusted the seats for the two of them and made Yi Yi stand in the dark light with his back facing the door of the cinema. After fiddling with it he slowly said, Brother Yi that's the only way I dare to open my mouth. Actually I've always liked you. I started to like you when my sister was still alive and now it's even more so. She grabbed his hand eagerly. Her clear voice was exactly the same as Linger's back then. It was as if she had confessed to him after class that day. She was eager and sincere. Yi Yi instantly lost his memories of the past. Those innocent years were extremely precious to him. Looking at the beautiful face of the girl in front of him, Yi Yi regained his senses and pulled back his hands. He coldly said, I only treat you as a sister. You were, are, and will continue to be. Little Yu looked at him sadly and murmured, I know. You've been searching for sister-in-law all these days. I've already seen it. Even if sister-in-law makes up for it forever, I won't have any chance, right? Yi Yi opened his mouth. In the end, he couldn't bear to say such cruel words to the girl he had always regarded as his own sister. He just said indifferently, Little Yu, I don't want to hurt you. I know, but I just can't let you go. I have no choice. Little Yi said in a loud voice out of control. After she finished speaking, she hugged Yi Yi fiercely and didn't let go of anything. Yi Yi did not comment on her childish actions. She lowered her hands to her side and sighed, Little Yu, with your current state, it would be better for you to study abroad. I want to force myself to give up on you, so, Brother Yi, can you accept me as your sister? Tomorrow, we will go to justice. From now on, I will only treat you as my brother, okay? Little Yu leaned against his embrace and spoke sincerely. 
Iyi smiled comfortably and nodded. It's rare for you to be so thorough. I just don't want to make things difficult for you. Brother E, can you hug me? Just treat it as an encouragement from your brother to your sister. Little Yi watched as Gu Yi and Lan Yi Ren walked out of the door and the complacency on their faces could not be concealed. Yi Yi could not bear to refuse, so he gently placed his hand on her shoulder. Chapter 181 The Contingency Plan Was Commended In the warm and beautiful study room, both sides were tall bookcases filled with books related to economics. Only a miniature bookcase near the desk had some art photography items. This was Gu Yingji's study room. In order to coax his granddaughter into moving it to the courtyard in B City, Gu Kuang could be considered a comfort to his mother and her mother. On the European-style iron art desk, Gu Yi sat at her desk and watched the progress of Butler's new annual plan. She had been looking at all kinds of data for a morning, causing her to have a headache. However, she had no choice but to continue reading with patience and interest. Grandpa was getting old, so it was not good for him to bother with all this anymore. Seeing that she had only flipped through one-third of the thick files, Gu Yi's slightly warm cheeks secretly cheered her on. In fact, this harmonious script was the same. You must be able to stay calm and sit on the bench. I believe you will definitely be able to do well. After waving her slender fist twice, she continued to immerse herself in various complicated data. The sun's shadow gradually tilted westward from the center. Gu Yi finished reading the book in her hand and was about to pick up the file on the other side when she was interrupted by a knock on the door. Little E can grandfather enter? There was a hint of joy in Gu Kuang's deep and aged voice. Hearing this, Gu Yi immediately stood up and opened the door. She smiled and said, Grandfather, I'm afraid I won't be able to finish reading the file until tomorrow. What are you afraid of tomorrow? You're as strong as your mother was when she was young. Gu Kuang sat on the armchair across the desk, half doting and half reproaching. He raised the plan in his hand and said, It's really good. I'm very satisfied with your plan. Let's follow it. Gui sat beside him and did not react for a long time. This was the first time she had made an annual plan for the enterprise. She expected that there were many plans that were not mature enough, but Grandpa actually made a decision just like that? Grandfather, would you like to reconsider? Gu Kuang waved his hand proudly and slapped the plan on the table. He smiled and said, I understand what you mean. Don't worry, this plan is indeed good. Of course, some small loopholes are inevitable. However, the shopping mall is like a battlefield. You have to go in and scramble to find out what it feels like. Let go and do it. Grandpa will be behind you. Full of trust and encouragement made Gu Yi's nose ache. Tears almost burst out. Because of her mother's departure from home, she had always felt that her grandfather said that he might be a cold and somewhat ruthless business tycoon. However, he did not expect that during these days of living together. He was full of concern for her granddaughter, who had only recently recognized her. Normally, she would remember what she liked to eat and what grandfather she used. He did not force her on company affairs, but instead expanded her field of study according to her liking. She tried her best not to return the tears in her eyes, leaned into Gu Kuang's arms and muttered, Grandfather, you are so kind. Gu Kuang stroked the top of her hair and smiled, Silly child, you are grandfather's only relative in this world, the only granddaughter who did you not treat well? Gu Yi sniffed and raised her head from Gu Kuang's embrace to look at him. She said seriously, Grandfather, don't worry. I will definitely try my best to run a good Gu Corporation enterprise. Gu Kuang didn't seem to hear what she said. He was dumbfounded. Then he embarrassedly smiled and patted Gu Yi on the shoulder. Laughter, that's why Grandpa remembered that you're not the only one in my heart. Haha, there's also Xioma. Gu Yi didn't know whether to laugh or cry when she heard this. During this period of time, she had truly experienced Gu Kuang's cute and dumb appearance. Who would have thought that a tycoon who usually dominated the business world would actually be this cute at home? She turned around and sat to the side, purposely pouting and not looking at him. Gu Kuang got up, approached the side she was facing and coaxed, I'm really angry. At worst, if grandfather wants the kitchen to make you a snack, I'll make the only one, okay? Humph. Gu Yi turned her head to the other side and said, the one who likes snacks is Xiaomu, not me. Look, how can such a big person compete for favor with a child? Then grandfather will be happy if he asks the kitchen to make a durian halberd for you, right? Gu Kuang tried to persuade her while smiling, fearing that she would offend her hard-earned granddaughter. All right then. Gu Yi no longer held back and returned home to smile sweetly at Gu Kuang. It's been a long time since I last saw her. This feeling of playing coquettish with her relatives was something that only happened when I was young. At that time, she lived a carefree life. 
Although her family's life was not rich, her mother always tried her best to fulfill her wishes. Playing coquettish was the privilege of the people who cared about her. Seeing that Gui was absent-minded, Gu Kuang kindly stroked her shoulder, letting her lean on her shoulder and said slowly, Did you miss your mother? She was so spoiled with me back then. Gui nodded. She knew that she shouldn't lead the old man to think about those sad things, but she couldn't help it. She felt her heart twisted when she thought about how she hadn't even seen her mother before she died. Good child, do you like this study? The books here are all from your mother's years ago. Gu Kuang scanned his surroundings and said emotionally. Her woman had spent her happy and carefree teenage days here. The father and daughter finally broke up here, but she did not expect that it would be their last time. You mean mother has read all the books here? Gui raised her head and looked at the tall wall of books in disbelief. Naturally, I have treated her as my heir since childhood and raised her like a son. When she was 10 years old, she had already read the economics manuscript, said Gu Kuang, stroking his beard proudly. Back then, his daughter's talent and intelligence were well known in the industry. But I've never heard anything like that from my mother, who has always worked in a textile mill and has never done anything related to business. Gui frowned as she spoke of her doubts. Indeed, her mother had an indescribable gentleness, but she would never associate her mother with the eldest young miss that old Gu clan once spoke of. Perhaps she wants to completely sever her connection with this family. She even wants to give up all of the intelligence that she had merged into her bones and blood in the past. He rubbed his wrinkled eyes and his aged voice was filled with sorrow. Gui comfortably approached Gu Kuang's embrace and blamed herself. Sorry, Grandpa. I shouldn't have brought this up to make you sad. Gu Kuang shook his head and said gently, it's fine. I also want to know how Ingji has lived all these years. She even changed the name I gave her back then. Otherwise, with our Gu clan influence, how could you two suffer so much outside? He lowered his head and looked at Gui in his arms. He was old but his wise eyebrows were filled with worry. This child was exceptionally intelligent and talented. Compared to Ingji back then, he was even better. Unfortunately, his temperament was no different from hers. He was just as stubborn as she was and he recognized death. It would be fine if he had such a temperament, but they both had such bitter lives. Good child, promise grandfather that you won't think about Yi Yi anymore. Can you live a good life? Yes. Gui nodded seriously and pretended to be relaxed. Grandfather, don't worry. The relationship between me and him is over. The first task that is placed on your granddaughter scroll is to learn and manage Gu Corporation as soon as possible. Seeing her open-mindedness, Gu Kuang said happily, All right, I'll call the directors over a year ago. We'll have an annual meeting in B-City and familiarize ourselves with the business circles of B-City to prepare for our advancement to film and television next year. Then what do I need to do? Hearing this, Gui rubbed her fists and was filled with confidence. She had participated in similar cocktail parties several times with Yi Yi, which was her specialty. When she thought of Yi Yi, the smile on her face could be withdrawn. What was going on with her? Didn't she already say that she wanted to put it down? Why did he still involuntarily recall it? What do you say? Gu Kuang did not answer. Gui recalled her thoughts and looked at Gu Kuang in puzzlement. She forced a smile and said, I'm responsible for following grandfather. I'll bring tea and pour water. I'll beat my back and hug my legs. Seeing what she said was interesting, Gu Kuang couldn't help but laugh heartily. After a while, he took a deep breath and said, No, I only plan to show my face at the annual meeting. You will be in charge of the rest. Grandpa is going to step back. Ah. Gui frowned timidly and said nervously, I'm afraid I have a problem with this. It's not as long as everyone chats and eats together. This was the way she had attended the annual meetings and cocktail parties before. Gu Kuang laughed and patiently explained, it's not that simple. You have to accept Gu Corporation. You have to be justified. The purpose of this annual meeting is to give you a proper name and tell everyone that you are the young master of our Gu Corporation. He pondered for a moment, then paused for a moment before continuing, the directors and members of the B-City Business Circle are attending this meeting. Some of them really want to cooperate with us, while others will probe and provoke us. During this period, you should also observe their words and see where their trump cards lie. Gui was dumbfounded when she heard this. Yi Yi had never told her this before when she usually went to similar events. It turned out that the path inside was so complicated. Thinking carefully, she did not know how many mistakes she had made before, and it was rare for Yi Yi to always be so tolerant of her. After thinking for a while, Yi Yi's name appeared again. Gui could only smile bitterly. 
This poison called Yi had already penetrated deep into her bone marrow, and there was no cure. Gu Kuang looked at Gu Yi secretly worrying and quickly comforted, don't be afraid, this is just a test. In the future, grandfather will have to give you all of his skills bit by bit. Gu Yi nodded her head, not daring to be careless. This annual meeting was the first time the stock market had entered B-City's business circle. Many relationships would be decided at this meeting. Why was it so simple to test the waters? Grandfather, I really want to become as wise and capable as you one day. That way you won't have to work so hard. Gui said apologetically, her words filled with self-blame. Silly girl, what are you talking about? It's already my greatest pleasure to have you by Grandpa's side. It doesn't matter. We have plenty of time to learn. Grandpa will definitely teach you to be a business genius, okay? Gu Kuang rubbed her back and comforted her gently. He couldn't wait to see his successor in the business world as if no one was doing anything unbridled and happy, but if Ingji didn't achieve it in, little E would complete it one by one. Chapter 182 Iran Yaju In President Yi's office, there were thick files piled up in front of a spacious desk. Some of them were annual summaries, while the other were preplans. During this period, Yi Yi had almost pounced on them day and night, hoping to win the film and television bidding project to be held in B-City next year. The knock on the door called Yi Yi out of the complicated files. Please come in. The clear and cold voice was a little tired, making people feel heartache when they heard it. Shin Yi opened the door and came in. He looked at the dark green in his eyes and said slowly, I heard little you say that you haven't returned home these days. President E, you're already in charge. Do you want to fight like this? As he spoke, he picked up the approved plan and scanned it. E, Yi, your appetite is too great. The villas and high-rise buildings are built together, and you have to win the famous film and television bidding project. Can we eat such a big project? E, Yi glanced sideways at him and placed the pen on the table. I know what to do, he said. Ha, huh, then what's the name of this construction project, province in winter? Looking at the plan for the second phase of the summer Roman project, Shin Yu smiled and teased. Iran Yaju. However, a name was actually said by Yi Yi to be incomparably tender, and his cold face carried a hint of warmth. When he thought about how Gu Yi had done all of this, he felt that the fatigue in front of him was nothing at all. Gu Yi had sighed with emotion when she was publicizing Roman summer. This kind of luxurious villa was not something that a working class like her could afford without food or drink, and could not afford to save her entire life's worth of money. Looking at the excellent greening and public facilities in the villa area, the loneliness on her face pierced straight into his heart. She said that when she had the ability to let ordinary people enjoy such excellent treatment, he still laughed at her kindness and innocence. As for the film and television project, when he took over the right to organize it, he would give the little woman full responsibility. As long as it was her dream, he would help her realize it one by one. Iran Yaju? Good name. Shin Yi thought for a while and suddenly remembered something. He sat down on the table and teased, you can't have such a bold idea for sister-in-law, right? Isn't the E character in Iran her sister-in-law's name? E Yi smiled indifferently and pulled the plan out of Shin Yu's hand. He nodded and said indeed. Ha, huh, there was a time when the Dukes of King Yu of Zhou's Beacon Flame play smiled for the beauty. Today we, President Yi, smiled for Madame Bo. We didn't hesitate to build a project for the benefit of the people. As expected, love is crazy. Shin Yu raised his neck and sighed with emotion. He played with Yi Ye's pen container in his hand and paused for a long time before saying, But why can't we get any news about sister-in-law when we sent so many people? Perhaps she is no longer in B-City. Yi Ye stood up and looked out of the window. I called Qin Yu and Zhang Kersen yesterday. They said that Gui had a good friend in City A. I think since I can't find her in City B, I'd better go somewhere else. You told them. Shin Yu looked at Yi Ye doubtfully. No, I just chatted for a while, but Gui didn't contact them. Yi Ye said calmly, but the four years in his cold eyes were not concealed at all. Shin Yu jumped off the table, he sighed, he said helplessly, sister-in-law is really determined this time. There are no flaws on Shioma's side. It looks like the new year is coming. You guys may. He thought for a moment and said it was better to swallow the last words. During this period of time, he had seen Yi Yi go berserk. He was even crazier than when Ling'er died. Seeing him torture himself like this, Shin Yi thought that he and Gu Yi might not be suitable at all. One was a business tycoon who ran through the mall and the other was a simple-minded gold medal scriptwriter. The two of them clearly weren't on the same level of life. If they were forced together, they would probably only be in pain. All right, don't stand here. Go get busy. C. 
Seeing that he was worried for himself, Yi Yi said calmly, wanting to send Xun Yu away. This good brother had already helped him too much these past few years, so how could his personal matters hurt him anymore? Xun Yu stumbled out of his chair and hesitated for a moment before saying, Yi Yi, there's actually something else I came to talk to you about today. Seeing him put away his sloppy look, Yi Yi's expression became serious. Do you have any suggestions for a new plan? He said seriously. No, it's about little you. Shen Yu stared fixedly at Yi Yi, his face full of struggles. Little you? What are you thinking? Don't hesitate. Seeing his appearance, Yi Yi made a rough guess and deliberately led him on. Shen Yu clenched his fists tightly behind him, pursed his thin lips, and said after a long while, if you are interested in her, treat her well. Don't think twice about doing so. As for Xiao Ma, you don't have to worry. Little you is so kind, you must treat him well. If you have no intention of dealing with her, make yourself clear as soon as possible, and do not make her sad, for she is just fine and cannot bear to be tormented. After saying that, Xin Yu suppressed the sour feeling in his heart and secretly heaved a sigh of relief. God knew how much courage it would take for him to say those words in front of Yi Yi, and God knew how painful it was when he pushed his beloved girl to another man. I understand what you mean. Little you and I have already made things clear. She is only my sister. After a period of time, after finishing the annual summary and budget, I will hold a simple reception and officially introduce her to the B-City business circle. Shin Yu took two steps back in surprise. The joy of losing and regaining gripped his chest tightly. He stared at Yi Yi and couldn't help but say excitedly, are you telling the truth? Of course, but you have to work harder. In the future, little Yi will be my Yi clan's eldest young miss. There will definitely be many people pursuing her. If you want to stand out, I'm afraid you'll have to put in some effort. Seeing that he was happy, Yi Yi curled his lips and spoke with a hint of playfulness. That's right. How can you want to be two brushes that your brother-in-law Yi Yi doesn't have? Xin Yi was suddenly enlightened. He smiled and patted Yi Yi on the shoulder. Did you really put it down? He said slowly. Yi Yi leaned against his desk and looked out of the window at the blue sky. Naturally, right now, I just want to live a good future. Then there must be Gu Yi inside? Xin Yu listened to him and smiled as he hammered Yi Yi's shoulder, not forgetting to tease him. Naturally, Yi Yi did not deny it and nodded in agreement. Xin Yu stood up and stood opposite him. He patted his chest and promised, Brother, don't worry. No matter where you go, I will help you find your sister-in-law. Yi Yi smiled and nodded. He randomly handed Xin Yu a copy of the ingredients in his hand and rubbed his chin. What do you think of this? Xin Yu took the ingredients and looked at them carefully. He frowned slightly after a moment and said in disbelief, didn't Gu Clan live in the six southern provinces? Why did he suddenly have plans to enter B City? He said this hastily, then immediately looked down, looking at the thin pages for a long time. After putting the materials back on the table, Xin Yu smacked his lips and thought, Gu Clan is doing the electronic network. Previously, he also took over the post-production of some film and television groups. I'm not surprised that they want to expand their territory into the film and television industry. However, they are too overestimating themselves. They actually came for the bidding we are looking for. Gu Kuang is very cunning. He has come to be city quietly this time. I wonder what he is planning. Xin Yu looked at Yi Yi and made his final appraisal. Yi Yi looked at the ingredients on the table and sneered, Humph, whatever he wants, it's doomed to fail. In a few words, he was overbearing. Regardless of whether it was for Gu Yi or E Corporation's future development, he was determined to obtain it this time. Seeing that, Xin Yu did not say much. He picked up the files that had already been processed on the table and walked out the door, saying, Well, laugh till you're busy with your big business. The moment Xin Yu opened the door, he saw Little Yu standing outside. He was really shocked. After he realized it, he hurriedly said to Little Yu, Little Yu, I didn't scare you when I rashly came out earlier, did I? His voice was filled with emotion, and he jumped out of the way he used to be. Little Yi silently shook her head. She had heard their words through the half-open door. She never thought that Yi Yi would be so affectionate towards that bitch. She felt sorry for her sister, who was now underground alone. Little Yu, what's wrong with you? Are you unhappy? Shin Yu asked nervously, looking at her lowered eyebrows and unhappy expression. Little Yu shook his head and didn't even look at Shin Yu. He said, I have something to do with Brother Yi you can get busy with your own business first. Humph, it's not that easy to push her to Shin Yu. Shin Yu concealed the loneliness on her face, but her infatuated gaze could not be withdrawn from Xiao Yu's body. She watched as she entered Iya's office, closed the door, and disappeared. 
As soon as Little Yu entered Iya's office, tears fell down. The broken string of pearl sorghum fell down, but he just sat on the sofa and didn't say anything. Seeing her grievance, Iyi got up and walked in front of her, patiently comforting her, What's wrong with you? I heard all of your words. You are so kind to sister-in-law, but I am a person who no one cares about. I am just lonely and allow others to bully me, said she, sobbing, crying, red eyes, red nose, how pitiful she looked. Who bullied you? Iyi was good-natured and sat beside her with a bit of helplessness. Little Yu was still the same as before. When he was wronged, he would only sob. I, I went to the company today and was ridiculed by an arrogant female celebrity. She laughed at me, laughed at me for being so rustic and was a poor person. If I wanted to be a celebrity, it would be a fool's dream. I had no qualifications at all. Little Yu sobbed as he stuttered. Who is it? Iya's cold face was tainted with anger. The entertainment industry had always been unclear. He had never known this, but he never expected Little Yu to be bullied on his first day at work. Yes, it's the actress from the movie we saw that day, said Little Yu, lowering his eyebrows with a look of grievance that he did not dare to speak of. Yi frowned and pondered. When Gu Yi worked with her before, she had told him about this person, saying that he was humble and courteous. She, she said, she said, seeing that he was deep in thought, Little Yu continued, said that she had a good relationship with her sister-in-law. Tell me to be sensible and not provoke her. Yi Yi was instantly enraged. He was actually using Gu Yi's name to make a fuss. He was truly enraged. Then he took out a gold card from the drawer and handed it to Little Yu. It was my negligence. Don't worry, I will ask someone to teach her a lesson. This little woman was just too easy to fool, so she asked the people outside to make fun of her. Thinking of Gu Yi, Yi Yi felt a burst of sour sweetness in his heart. Chapter 183 Preparations for the Annual Session the Gu clan courtyard had been decorated before the Gregorian New Year, and the tall Christmas tree set off the red lanterns in the lobby. A few dignified middle-aged men in suits and shoes got off the car and headed straight for the courtyard. Chairman, you really call us easy to find. A man in a silver-gray suit entered the hall and spoke first. The place. The taste of the chairman is beyond our reach. The man in the black suit looked a little older and quietly answered. Gu Kuang sat vigorously on the sofa, bowed slightly, and waited for them to sit down before he slowly said, This time, I have called everyone to come home specifically for a banquet, on the one hand, and to introduce my granddaughter, little E on the other. The three people present looked at each other, their faces clear. The man in black suit took the lead and said, No matter how the chairman decides in the future, the three of U.S. will follow your lead. Hearing this, Gu Kuang stroked his beard and laughed loudly. He said angrily, You are all trusted trusted generals promoted by me. If I cannot trust you, I will not invite the three of you here alone today. He waved his hand to the maid standing beside him to pour tea, then turned to Butler and said, Call Miss Down. A few people were chatting about the affairs of the company. Gu Kuang sat at the side and listened quietly. However, a moment later, faint footsteps came from upstairs. Gu Yi slowly walked towards the front hall. Seeing her show up, the three directors all stood up at the same time. Gu Kuang patted the seat beside him and smiled, Little E, come and see your three uncles. They will all be your right-hand men in Gu Corporation in the future. You need to learn more from them in the future. Gu Yi smiled and bowed, greeting them one by one. After the three directors sat down, she sat beside Gu Kuang. This is Little E, my first-in-law's granddaughter. Now I have decided to hand over Gu Corporation to her. Gu Kuang looked at what the directors had said, and his experienced eyes stared at their actions without slacking off. The three of them had different expressions. After pausing for a moment, they all stood up and nodded to Gu Kuang, we understand what the chairman meant. We also know what to do next. After saying that, they each took out their prepared greeting gifts from their bosoms and gave them to Gu Yi. Their words were filled with respect and admiration. Gu Yi received them one by one and thanked them. For a moment, the front hall was lively. Little Yi looked so much like Ingji back then. The chairman is relieved. The man in the black suit was gratified, and even the other two sighed. However, Gu Kuang's face was still calm and unaffected by them. He smiled indifferently and said, Look at me, I'm really stupid. I forgot to introduce these people to you. Gu Kuang introduced the three group directors sitting opposite Gu Yi with a smile. The black suit is Uncle Li, who is in charge of electronic development. The gray suit is Uncle Zhao, who is in charge of cybersecurity and the maroon suit is your Uncle Zhang, who is in charge of the movie and television field we are going to enter. Gui smiled as she bowed and said softly, I often hear Grandpa talk about uncles. 
in the future I will have to rely heavily on you in the group. According to what Gu Kuang had taught her, she didn't miss a single word. The main reason I handed you over today is to discuss the annual meeting that will be held in B-City a year ago. This time, little E will be in full charge of it. You must cooperate with her. Gu Kuang said unhurriedly. Young Miss has just taken over the group. You are still old and strong. Isn't it too early for you to tell Young Miss to take charge of the group now? Uncle Lee said hesitantly. The other two had the same intentions as her. Gu Kuang smiled heartily and said indifferently it doesn't matter. With me at the back, Gu Corporation's rudder won't deviate. Yes. The three of them said yes one after another and no longer had any doubts. Gu Kuang handed the file in his hand to them and said in a low voice, this is Little Yi's initial arrangement. Take a look. If there is anything inappropriate, we will discuss it. The three of them took it and looked carefully. Gu Kuang leaned back on the back of the sofa and leisurely sipped the new tea in the cup. Gu Yi sat upright and carefully looked at their expressions as if she was a primary school student waiting for the teacher's comment. After a long time, only the faint sound of breathing and the sound of paper moving could be heard in the large front hall. Gu Kuang looked at Gu Yi nervously and patted her hand comfortably, signaling that she could sit down. Uncle Lee took the lead to put down the file and said with a sigh of surprise, no wonder the chairman thinks highly of it. Young Miss really is something that people can't underestimate. This plan is very good. Not only can it be operated well, but it is also cost-effective. It is truly praiseworthy. After a while, the other two also put down the file in their hands. One of them hesitated for a moment and said, the whole thing is good, but why didn't you see E-Clan on the guest list? When Gui heard him suddenly mention E-Clan, she was stunned. How familiar and unfamiliar she was. The entanglements between her and E-Clan seemed to be from her previous life. That's right, I noticed that too. E-Clan is quite influential in B-City. We've only just arrived, so it wouldn't be good for us to make enemies before we have a firm footing, right? The other suggested in a low voice as he looked at Uncle Lee meaningfully. After a moment of silence, Gu Kuang saw that they were all too late to express their opinions and said, this is what I mean. Not only this time, but in the future, He Gu Corporation will not be on the invitation list for our E-Corporation event. The three of them looked at Gu Kuang in astonishment. This veteran of the mall had always been ruthless. This sudden action was probably an internal affair. They didn't know about it, so they naturally chose to shut their mouths tacitly. Since that's the case, I think we can follow the plan. Uncle Lee smiled and picked up the plan. He smiled at Gu Kuang and said, it's better to be early than late. We'll go prepare first. Gu Kuang smiled and asked, let's have a simple meal before we leave. It doesn't matter if we let go of the annual meeting first. Chairman, don't you know old Lee's temper? As long as he has something to do, he will stop. Not letting him act quickly is worse than killing him. Uncle Zhao laughed mockingly and stood up. Gu Kuang did not stay any longer and said to Gu Yi, little E, send your uncles off. Hearing this, Gu Yi immediately got up and followed them out. Gu Kuang was left sitting alone in the front hall deep in thought. Gu Yi carefully escorted them away. When she returned to the front hall, she saw old Grandpa Gu twirling his beard with one hand and the teacup with the other. Grandfather, they have already left. As Gu Yi spoke, she sat beside Gu Kuang, and her soft voice unconsciously carried a hint of spoiling. Gu Kuang scratched her head and asked slowly, Did you see anything from this meeting? Gu Yi rubbed her smooth chin and thought for a while before slowly saying, Uncle Zhao and Uncle Zhang seem to be able to handle things in a down-to-earth manner. They seem to listen to Uncle Li very much. Uncle Li seems to be quite deep in the city, but I don't understand why he didn't even notice that he didn't even treat E Corporation to a banquet. He did it on purpose. Gu Kuang put down the teacup in his hand and let out a crisp sound from the coffee table. These old foxes, could it be that it was not so easy for those small measures of theirs to conceal themselves from him? Deliberately? Gu Yi's eyebrows widened as she looked at Gu Kuang in puzzlement. That's right. I relied on him in the group. Ingji hasn't seen him for a long time. It was hard to get news of him. I was disheartened after hearing the news of your mother's death. He was in charge of the group during that time. At the same time, there were rumors that he would be the second chairman after me. Hearing this, Gu Yi's heart trembled. In other words, his coincidental appearance on a certain level also obstructed the path of others. Grandfather. Gui frowned as she approached Gu Kuang's embrace. Facing another inexplicable fear of the future, she was extremely disgusted with the tricks of the mall, but now she had no choice but to compromise. 
Gu Kuang rubbed her hair intimately and said softly, Don't worry, with grandfather around, I won't let them bully you. Gui nodded and got up. She looked at Gu Kuang seriously and said, Grandfather, don't worry, I won't disappoint you. Silly girl, you don't need to be nervous. With grandfather here, half of my worries have been released after this test. Li Hao doesn't look like he's still ambitious. Seeing her frown, Gu Kuang hurriedly comforted her. Does that mean you can use him without worry? Gu Yi asked in confusion. She was almost confused by Gu Kuang's words. Gu Kuang smiled and filled Gu Yi's cup of tea. Silly child, no one is someone you can trust. Do you know why I only hired three of the directors? She smiled. After thinking for a while, Gu Yi said slowly, the three of them were promoted by grandfather, and they are the closest to you. This was what he had just told himself this morning. There must be nothing wrong with it. Gu Kuang laughed and sentenced her to death. Wrong, the three of them are obedient, but it's a mystery how long they can last in the face of real interests. Gu Kuang sighed as he spoke, then continued, Little E, remember if a group wants a growth they cannot be left to one side alone. A wise decision maker wants to see them argue and get the benefit of the fishermen. Gui nodded thoughtfully then said, Then this year's meeting will really follow my plan? What should I pay attention to, grandfather? I always feel panicked. Gu Kuang smiled and nodded her little nose, patiently explaining what she had to and could not do. The grandfather and grandson surrounded the warm fireplace, chatting intermittently, full of warmth and harmony. Outside the door, Li Hao got into his car, the smile on his face disappeared. Instead, it was filled with seriousness and ruthlessness. He looked forward to seeing the old man's health deteriorate day by day. Seeing that his short-lived daughter had gone, Gu Corporation's excitement that was going to belong to him had been overflowing in his heart these days. Who would have thought that he would actually kill such a chung-biting gene halfway? He was truly unwilling. However, there was still a long way to go and they would see who would win. Chapter 184 Isher was the only one who didn't have an invitation. The winter sun was rarely bright, not blocked by the thick smog, shining into the room. In the study, Yi Yi was immersed in his subordinate's investigation from City A. After a week of thorough search, they still couldn't find Gu Yi. Where exactly did his little woman go? The information in Yi Ye somewhat out of control was thrown fiercely at the door. They were all useless trash, not even able to find a single person. The paper scattered all over little Yu who had just entered the room. She was holding coffee and dessert in her hand. She was stopped by the flying pieces of paper. For a moment, she put her head in her pocket and threw the tray on the ground with an instability. Brown coffee splashed on the hem of her white skirt. Unfortunately, it was an expensive dress. Brother E, are you losing your temper over sister-in-law again? Little Yu walked to his side with a look of anger and sat across from Yi, full of concern. Why did you come in without knocking? Yi gasped for breath, but before he could calm down from his rage, his words carried a hint of reprimand. Little Yu lowered his eyebrows and stroked the tassels on his body. He said wrongly he is holding a tray in his hand and can't get out to knock on the door. Besides, is there anything you need to hide from me? Yi's face was still frozen and his saber-like brows became even colder. He turned to look at Little Yu and said, In the future, I'll just let my servants do these things. You don't need to pay attention to these trivial things. Seeing that he no longer wanted to pursue the matter further, Little Yu boldly sat down on the armrest of the armchair he was locked in and pointed at the clothes on his body. Brother E, do you look good? This is Chanel's new model this winter. It looks good. E Yi said impatiently, then opened the file in his hand. Brother E, you didn't even take a good look. But I still have to thank you. The bad woman who bullied me left the company and even paid a huge penalty. Now that you haven't even found the next house, you're venting your anger for me. Little Yu held Yi Ye's hand as he spoke, his delicate face full of pride. You have to spare people and spare them. You have to know that you can stop there. Yi Ye frowned and felt a little unhappy. When did her subordinates become so ignorant that they allowed her to play around and force her to such a pitiful state? Little Yu stuck at his tongue and said coquettishly, I know, so I didn't pay any attention to her anymore. Humph, actually, I just want to show off in front of the company and your subordinates by taking care of him. Who told her to get involved with Gu Yi? Yes. Yi Yi nodded, took the pen next to the file and drew on it, continuously writing instructions. Seeing that he was serious, Little Yi stopped talking. He just tilted his body and wanted to take a look. Oh, so it was the famous movie and television project in B-City and D Corporation was actually interested in it? What exactly was he planning to do? Brother E, are you also staring at this piece of fat meat? Didn't E Corporation always focus on industrial real estate? 
Little Yu deliberately pretended to be stupid. Yi Yi did not raise his head, but explained, of course, this project is now in the national spotlight, and your sister-in-law is engaged in this profession. If I can take it down, she will definitely be very happy. Thinking of the smile on Gu Yi's face, Yi Ye's cold eyes became warm. Her fair and exquisite little face was as warm as the spring breeze. Her amber eyes curved like a spring. The corners of his mouth hooked slightly and he actually started to laugh. Little Yu looked at him and sneered. The disdain in his heart slowly rose. What a loving president, E. However, he didn't know if he could think of Linger, who was lying in the ice-cold cemetery forever. Yes, sister-in-law will definitely be very happy. Little Yu restrained his bitterness and smiled, this project will definitely be popular. Brother Yi must arrange a role for Little Yu in it, even if it's a runway. Yi Yi looked at her and waved his hand helplessly. I can't make the decision. Your sister-in-law has always been very demanding of actors. Even the crowd of actors are for her own use. She has to go through several rounds of selection beforehand. Little Yu shook his head in disobedience, I don't care. Anyway, I'm going to go through your back door. Your sister-in-law's husband. Could it be that she won't listen to you for such a trivial matter and won't give you face? Her words contained a hint of sarcasm, indicating that Yi Yi did not have any face or status with Gu Yi. Unexpectedly, Yi Yi wasn't angry with Gu Yi. Instead, he smiled helplessly. His thoughts drifted back to a certain previous scene. That little woman was so stubborn and strong. Whether it was doing something or being human, she had always had her own set of rules. She probably never had anything special about her. Actually, this was exactly what he admired. Brother E, did you listen to him? Little Yu shook Yi Ye's arm impatiently. He was actually distracted when facing him, but he didn't know if he was thinking of Gui or Linger. Little Yu, go prepare some. I asked Butler to customize a few dresses for you to see if there's anything inappropriate. I'll let them modify them. Yi Ye's voice became cold again, indicating that Little Yu could go out if there was nothing else. When Little Yu heard that there was a custom-made dress, he immediately became happy and smiled sweetly. Why did you suddenly remember to customize my clothes? As far as she knew, Gu Yi was the only woman who enjoyed this treatment, not even her sister Linger. In the end, the girl was somewhat vanity. Little Yu's smile was 3% fake and 7% true. This made her look a little more delicate than before when she faked her smile. In a few days, I will hold a reception for you to officially announce our brother-sister relationship. Yi Yi raised his head to look at her, his indifferent eyes filled with a trace of longing for the past. No matter what Little Yu thought, he would always treat her as his sister. Little Yu jumped down from the armrest and sat down on the chair opposite Yi Yi. The smile on his face subsided and he pursed his lips slightly. Are you so impatient to get rid of me? How can this be considered to be putting aside the relationship? It is clearly to establish a relationship. Shin Yu casually walked in from outside the door and picked up the conversation. No matter how you enter, you don't know how to knock on the door. Little Yu's face turned red from being snatched away by him, and he rebuked him unhappily. Shin Yu shrugged his shoulders and turned around to point at the door. The door is open. Little Yu got up indignantly, took a detour around Shin Yu, stood on tiptoe and looked at him, and said word by word, My matter has nothing to do with you, at least I am about to be E Clan's eldest young miss, don't pretend to be kind. Little Yu. E listened to her and stopped her. Shin Yu smiled and waved his hand at Yi. it's fine. I know she's just joking. Yi looked at them and didn't say anything else. He just said to Shin Yu, why are you looking for me? There is indeed something wrong. Shin Yu straightened his attitude when he spoke of business. He no longer smiled playfully and said to little Yu, little aunt, hurry up and try on your own dress. Your brother Yi and I are going to talk about business. Seeing that there was no possibility of him staying and that he was really anxious to see the new clothes, Little Yu smiled and left the house without stirring them up. When he walked to Shin Yu's side, he even pinched his waist angrily. I owe you want to murder me. Shin Yu's exaggerated pig slaughtering cry sounded in an instant. Before he could react, Little Yu had already left the house. Shin Yu looked at her beautiful back. He couldn't look back for a long time before he got up and closed the door. He sat across from Yi Yi and took out a thin piece of paper. He said cautiously, this is the invitation list for Gu Corporation's annual meeting. Their invitation cards have already been sent out. The boss of City B is invited, but he didn't invite us, E Corporation. Don't you think there's anything strange about it? Yi Yi pondered for a while, rubbed his chin, glanced at the sheet of paper in his hand, and asked Shin Yu, what is the purpose of their annual meeting? 
It's said that old man Gu Clan has finally found his granddaughter who has been separated for many years. It could be considered a meeting. Furthermore, according to rumors, he intends to leave Gu Corporation to this granddaughter to take care of. On the one hand, he wants to test the attitudes within Gu Corporation, and on the other hand, he wants to open up the business circle of B-City. It could be considered as a preliminary test. Granddaughter. Yi Yi raised his eyes. He was very interested. Gu Kuang was a shrewd person. He had actually handed over the land he had just defeated to a granddaughter who had just recovered her talent. She was truly inquisitive. There must be a big article in this. That's right. Miss Gu Clan is really mysterious. It is said that no one has seen her true colors except for a few internal directors. However, this is nothing. Gu Clan has always been cautious. Isn't there anyone who can tell where the Gu Clan mansion is after all these years? As Shen Yu talked about what he had learned, he suddenly smiled mysteriously with a hint of mockery. However, some people said that old man Gu Clan held this annual meeting to choose a smart and capable grandson-in-law for his precious granddaughter. I think you can give it a try. When the time comes, you can take down Gu Corporation as well. Isn't that beautiful? Yu looked at him coldly. There was no smile on his face. He said indifferently, don't say this kind of joke again in the future. After leaving his little woman, no matter what kind of money he had in Gu Corporation or the Lee clan, he wouldn't put it in his eyes. Shen Yu's smile froze on his face. This was the case with his brother. As long as the issue involved Gu Yi, he would definitely not discuss it. It's just a joke, you're serious. But they didn't invite us this time. They clearly hit our Shen Yu in the face in B-City. What do you plan to do? E Corporation smacked himself helplessly and said sternly, but they didn't invite us this time. It's obvious that they beat our E Corporation in the face in B-City. What do you plan to do? Shin Yu frowned and pondered. This matter could not be put on the surface. That way, E Clan would have a reputation for being narrow-minded. After all, it was someone else's annual meeting. There was no fixed rule as to who would not be invited. However, if he let it go quietly, E Corporation's reputation would be greatly reduced. This was truly a dilemma. Place me and Little Yu on the day of the Gu Corporation annual meeting and post according to their list. After a long while, Yi Yi suddenly spoke, his cold face showing a trace of indifference. Hearing this, Shin Yu clapped his hands and cheered. How tall? Not only did this embarrass Gu Corporation, but it also made the B-City business circle stand in line once. This is really wonderful. Shin Yu patted his shoulder excitedly and suddenly stopped for a while. But I'm afraid little you will be on Chapter 185 A Showdown Between the Annual Meeting and the Cocktail Party A deep winter snow covered the entire bee city into a silver-white world. The temperature had dropped to a record low. If it wasn't necessary, people would have gone out less often. The normally bustling bee city had actually calmed down for a moment. However, the business circles were unable to calm down together. With the issuance of the invitation letter from E-Corporation, the entire business circles boiled. A faint trace of tension and smoke pervaded between E Corporation and Gu Corporation. The others felt uncomfortable as well. It was really difficult for them to be sandwiched between the two great clans. During this period of time, the business leaders gathered together to discuss whether to go to Gu Clan for the annual meeting or to E Clan for a cocktail party. After all, this involved standing in line, so they were really careless. In Gu Clan's study room, Gu Kuang stood by the window and looked at the sparkling white outside. He was thoughtful. A heavy snow that hadn't happened in the past 10 years had suddenly fallen on B-City. It seemed like the heavens had joined in the fun. Little E, what do you think of E-Clan's reception? Gui stood up, picked up a coat from the side and put it on Gu Kuang. She said softly, Grandfather, it's windy at the window. You'd better sit over here. As she spoke, she closed the window. The cold snow outside was indeed comfortable, but Grandpa probably couldn't stand it anymore at his age. Both of them sat upright on rotan chairs in front of them. Gu Yi poured a cup of hot milk tea for Gu Kuang before slowly saying, first, they came to demonstrate to us in order to gain face. Second, they might also want to give a warning to the B-City business circle so that they can understand the current situation and understand their attitude towards us. She thought carefully and explained in detail. Gu Kuang nodded in satisfaction. She took a sip of the milk tea in her hand and said, yes, you're right, but you missed out a little bit. Ah, Gui looked at Gu Kuang in surprise. She thought that she had everything, so how could she miss out on something? Seeing that her large, misty eyes were looking at her curiously, Gu Kuang stroked her hair affectionately and said, You didn't anticipate the reaction of City B's business circles. Reflect. 
Gui Wei frowned and thought for a long time, but she couldn't figure out why. At that time, it seemed that the list of people would naturally know their choice. Some of them will come to our place and hold the annual meeting until the end. This means that they have given up e-corporation or are simply at odds with them. They are suppressed. If they want to find our Gu clan as a new backer, they need to give them some sweetness to stabilize it. Also, try to analyze it. Gu Kuang only gave a slight nod and asked Gui to continue with her words, intending to see if her granddaughter's calculations towards the people had improved during this period of time. Gu Yi's amber eyes turned slightly. He said, there are still some who will not come to us at all. They chose E Clan. We should be vigilant towards this group of people in our future activities. In addition, there may be people who will finally leave from our side and rush to E Clan. There will also be people who will leave from E Clan and rush to our side. There is no need to pay attention to this part. When the wind is clear, they will naturally lean over. Gu Kuang smiled and nodded his head. He smiled heartily and said, as expected of my granddaughter, she has improved during this period of time. But little E, you must remember, these are all small matters before you. The most important thing in the business world is that there are no eternal enemies, only eternal interests, he said earnestly while supporting his beard. Hearing this, Gu Yi's bright smile suddenly dimmed. During this period of time, she had studied a lot of business knowledge and analyzed a lot of actual business battles. She understood that what her grandfather said was the golden rule of the shopping mall. But why did she feel a chill in her heart when she remembered that Yi Yi had used these schemes against her? Little Yi, have you thought it through? Someone will definitely recognize you as Yi Yi's wife at the annual meeting tomorrow. Sooner or later, Yi Yi will find you according to the clues. Seeing that she was absent-minded, Gu Kuang gave her a rough guess and said earnestly. Gu Yi lowered her eyebrows and remained silent for a long time. Her hands were tightly twisted together. When she looked up again, her eyes were as calm as an ancient well. She said calmly, I have nothing to do with him anymore. Don't worry, grandfather, I will put down the past and start over. She was only Gu Yi, the eldest young miss of Gu clan, the future leader, and had nothing to do with Yi Yi. That's good too. It's always on the verge of being interrupted. He looked at Gu Yi and said slowly, Grandpa can be at ease like this. She turned to her subordinates outside the door and said, Go and find out where Iya's god sister came from and see if he can find us uncomfortable or if he really recognized her. The subordinate standing outside immediately nodded in agreement, but Gui turned her head uncomfortably. Today she did not seem to have heard any news about him. On that day at the cinema, Yi and the girl hugged each other tightly, and the last bit of hope in her heart had been extinguished. I know you don't want to know about him, but knowing yourself and knowing your enemy is the only way to survive a hundred battles. Child, what you have to face is no escape. Gu Kuang patted her shoulder affectionately and spoke slowly. Yes. Gu Yinan nodded. During this period of time, she had been working hard to paralyze herself with the work and script on hand. However, she did not expect that she would still be defeated when facing the name Yi Yi today. Heh, as for Yi Yi, aside from spending time on the surface to search for her, I'm afraid I've long forgotten that she's someone else. It's not enough to have Linger, but there's actually another god sister. Ever since she left, it's really not very clean to stay by President Yi's side. Grandfather, how many people do you think will choose us in City B's business circle this time? Gui pondered as she spoke. She had participated in many similar events with Yi Yi before. The directors and presidents of the major groups treated her with courtesy. She was really afraid that Gu clan's annual meeting would end badly. Probably at least half. Gu Kuang replied after pondering for a while. His words were filled with confidence. He explained in a deep voice, We Gu clan dare not say that we are the leader in the country. We are also ranked in the top three. Although E clan has astonishing influence in B city, its influence is much lower than ours in terms of the bidding project. As Gu Kuang spoke, she picked up the milk tea on the table and took a sip. Gu Yi then added it to him. He continued, Yi Yi has acted swiftly these past few years and secretly offended quite a few people. Everyone dares to be angry. Now that we are willing to stand up and let everyone have a second choice, they will naturally be happy to get rid of E-Clan's control. Gui nodded. It turned out that Iya's situation this time was even worse than she had imagined. She secretly analyzed the current situation and felt a little worried for Iyi. She tried her best to suppress the worries in her heart. She looked up at Gu Kuang and said slowly, Grandfather, if there's nothing else, I'll go to the company first. Gu Kuang nodded with a smile and said slowly, come back early in the evening. I'll get someone to bring Xiaoma over. Let's have a good reunion. 
Gui smiled and waved her hand at him before pushing the door open and leaving. During this period of time, in order to familiarize herself with the operation mode of the Enterprise as soon as possible, she had been directing the work of Gu Clan's branch headquarters in B-City. Now it was like a fish in water. Gu Corporation Group's words were especially dazzling under the bright sunshine. The skyscrapers under the new building were towering and dignified. Gu Yi asked the driver to park the car downstairs. She stood outside the main building and looked up for a long time. This was only the beginning. She was sure that Gu Corporation would shine even more brilliantly in her hands. Gu Yi strode into the vice president's office that Gu Kuang had specially arranged for her. According to her habits, she first turned on the computer and made herself a cup of coffee. Afterwards, she followed her usual habits and began to check the recent stock market movements. Not long after, Secretary knocked on the door. Please come in. President Gu, this is the document that needs to be reviewed today. Also, this is the final plan for the annual meeting next week. If you feel that there is no problem, I will ask them to go down immediately to execute it. The man who came in, secretary, was dressed in a suit and shoes. He routinely reported to her on his main work today. Gui nodded and smiled. Sorry to trouble you, Secretary Sue. Secretary Sue's face flushed red. All her words had disappeared. She stared blankly at Gui, who was standing right in front of her. Under her clear eyes, she stumbled nervously and said, These are all mine. He paused for a moment, as if he had gathered his courage. He pointed to the pile of documents he had just put down and said, Annual meeting plans are more important. I use red folders for documents that need to be processed quickly. I use green folders for documents that are not in a hurry. If you don't have any other instructions, I'll go down first. Without waiting for Gui to reply, he hurriedly ran out. Gui looked at the tightly shut door in surprise. On the one hand, she was grateful for his care over the past few days. On the other hand, she felt that he was a little puzzled. On the other side, in the executive director's office, Li Xiangnan sat behind his desk and looked at secretary, who was standing in front of him with a gloomy expression. That day, I went to Gu Clan and was unlucky. How did I feel about that girl? Now it seems that I have underestimated her. How did the things I told you go? This is the result of our investigation. It's a big surprise. Secretary respectfully placed a stack of materials in his hand on the desk. Li Xiangnan's face stiffened after a slight flip and he muttered to himself, She's actually Yi Ye's wife? I really didn't expect that old man Gu to be so ruthless and let the young couple fight against each other. Can we make good use of this? Secretary said flatteringly. Li Xiangnan glanced at him and said with a trace of evil intent, But how do you know that this is not their trap? If Gu Yi is followed by Yi Yi, then it will be more difficult. Otherwise, she will be the only orphan who will still be at my mercy when the old man dies. As he spoke, he turned his back to look at the information in his hand and marveled, I didn't expect that not only did she look fancy, she also had a lot of gossip. No wonder Yi Yi wanted to kick her out. Such an uneasy woman was just like her mother. As he spoke, his gaze drifted, as if he remembered something. Boss, how about we just let them go? Secretary asked worriedly. Li Xiangnan's eyes shone brightly for a moment and he smiled sideways, we'll see. As long as he keeps drinking the milk tea we gave the old man, we won't be far from turning over. He clenched his fists, scheming, and his words were full of schemes. Chapter 186 Gu Clan Xiaodong is Mrs. E. At the end of winter, Gu Corporation Group had booked a brocade clubhouse in downtown B to hold its annual meeting. At night, when the lights were lit up, lights flickered outside the clubhouse, and the rainbow gate that had been set up beforehand was exceptionally gorgeous and magnificent. Hi, we haven't seen each other for a long time. President Qin greeted President Song, who was about to walk inside at the door. You're here for the annual meeting in Gu Clan? President Song carefully pulled him to a corner and asked in a low voice. That's right. This is the young master and Yi Clan is just a foster sister who can't be defeated easily. Which one do you think is more important? President Song said proudly while playing with the lighter in his hand. President Qin nodded in deep understanding. As the two talked, they walked down the small path towards the hall. A white limited edition BMW drove past the two of them and stopped at the door. A thin, mint green figure plunged into the door. The attendant opened the door for her from afar. Her graceful figure swayed and disappeared into the door. The two of them were stunned. After a while, President Qin pinched his cheek and said to President Song, Old Song, did my eyes go blurry just now? Why does it look like Mrs. E went in? President Song's eyes were still staring straight at that place and he said in a daze, I look like her too. No, what's going on? 
Why don't you put away your family's party and come to another family's annual meeting? I heard that President Yi has been looking for his wife all this time. She seems to have run away from home. President Qin lowered his voice and whispered in President Song's ear. President Song smiled and said, This makes sense. This godsister, I is actually my godsister. Mrs. E is not stupid. How can she let this go? As they entered the hall, they found a seat to sit down. Unexpectedly, these words fell into the ears of Gu Yi, who was sitting beside them. Humph, isn't she stupid? She's a complete fool. God sister, little sister Ching, I actually chose to let go, so I won't interfere with his little sister's business anymore. Gu Yi was deceiving herself, but the pain in her heart could not deceive her. She looked at the familiar figures of the two of them, and a mocking smile bloomed on her lips. The two of them had seen each other at banquets in Yi clan, but they had also come to Gu clan this time. Sitting upright in the corner of the backlight, Gu Yi gently smoothed the lace gloves on her arm and carefully observed the people around her. Under the multicolored neon lights, the guests were all kinds of. Some of them had been received a few times before, some were new faces, and this group of people was mixed with some small stars, tender models, and the like. While she was deep in thought, the host's subwoofer-like magnetic voice rang in her ears. After the opening speech was finished, it was grandfather's toast. Then it was her turn to go on stage. Gui slowly stood up and walked towards the front desk. The large hall was brightly lit, decorated with flowers and filled with wine. Nearly half of the elites from all walks of life in B-City were gathered here. Nearly a thousand people remained silent and listened attentively to Gu Kuang's aged and vigorous voice. Thank you all for coming to attend our Gu Corporation's first annual meeting in B-City. This meeting was planned and hosted by my granddaughter, Gu Yi. I have already entrusted all of Gu Corporation's properties in B-City and its surroundings to her. Everyone who has a business partner can communicate and discuss with her. I hope that our guests and hosts will have a good time today. Gu Kuang's speech was very brief and did not go in circles at all. He directly stated his purpose and purpose. With that, he turned his body sideways and gave up the seat in the center. He smiled at the microphone and said, This is my granddaughter, my future head of Gu Corporation. As soon as Gu Kuang finished speaking, the sounds of breathing rose and fell. Following the spotlight, a dark blue figure slowly appeared in everyone's line of sight. Its tall figure, graceful figure, and a yarn blue dress made Gu Yi look even more refreshing and refined, like a dream. Half of her long hair was wound up, half of it was made big the waves scattered behind him, Amber's eyes sparkled under the light. A domineering aura and elegance on his thin and fair face made people faintly afraid to look straight at him. Gui walked to Gu Kuang in a few steps. Shu sure, Shu sure Ran, who was standing in the middle of the stage, bowed and smiled. Thank you for coming. This is the first time our Gu clan group has fired a cannon in B-City. I'm new here. I hope to have more opportunities to cooperate with you in the future. I, Gu clan, will never be stingy with my friends. Her words were neat and beautiful. Just as Gu Yi's voice fell, thunderous applause rang out. All the men present were subdued by her beauty and bearing. In the back rows of the stage, President Qin and President Song sat side by side. President Qin looked at the fresh and capable Gu Yi on the stage and whispered, Do you think this is Mrs. E? President Song shook his head. There are similarities in people and names, but judging from their temperament, I don't think it's Mrs. E. It's said that Gu Corporation Xiaodong is a top student who just returned from studying in France. You look so domineering and dignified. He's clearly the same as that old Gu clan. This is not something that the madam who only knows how to dream can compare to. You're right, but... President Qin hesitated and eventually said, Do you think we should tell President Yi about this? President Song punched him angrily and said in a deep voice, Are you stupid? Let him know that we will come to Gu clan first and then perfunctorily deal with him. It will be better than ours. Besides, this doesn't look like Mrs. Yi at all. If we make a mistake, this is not something we can afford. President Qin nodded his head hesitantly and didn't say anything else, but his eyes followed Gu Yi's figure as she shuttled through the banquet hall. Pa! President Song gave him a brainchild, banner, and scolded with a smile still look. Let's hurry up and leave while no one is paying attention. After saying that, the two of them walked towards the back hall with their cats. Gu Yi stood in the light and saw their movements clearly. As she had expected, there was no lack of people who were on the right side of the river. Little E, how did you talk to them just now? Are you still used to it? Li Xiangnan walked towards Gu Yi with a glass of wine in his hand, his calm face filled with concern. Gu Yi held the goblet in her hand and was just about to leave for another real estate developer when he stopped her. 
She turned around and saw Li Xiangnan. She immediately smiled and said, Uncle Li, luckily, there are some acquaintances mixed in. Everyone is surrounded by them and they talk a lot. Li Xiangnan scrutinized her carefully and smiled, that's good. As expected, you have the demeanor of an old director. Not bad. Li Xiangnan observed Gu Yi until now. She had done everything perfectly. Obviously, Gu Kuang had already told her about the routine and unexpected events that needed to be paid attention to at the annual meeting. All right, you're busy. I'll go over there and drink with a few old friends. If there's anything you can't handle, you have to tell Uncle Li. Li Xiangnan said earnestly, then walked towards the old directors. Gui smiled as she bowed and walked to the other side. As her grandfather said, she was new here now. Whether it was her family or outsiders, even if she couldn't see through their intentions, she had to make sure that she didn't carry others to see through the flaws. Looking at the distant groups of business tycoons gathered together to chat, she frowned and felt troubled in her heart. She had been quiet since childhood and was not an exquisite expert in all aspects. But now she was on the verge of arrogance. On the surface, she always smiled and talked with a group of strangers, but in reality, she was testing each other. It was really hard to endure. Editor Gu? A pleasant female voice came from the side. The long-lost address made Gui relaxed, and even her eyebrows relaxed. A tall, beautiful woman in a pink chong sem walked over slowly. She looked at Gui with surprise and emotion. It's really you. I was afraid that I recognized the wrong person just now. Gu Yi immediately recognized the woman in front of her as the heroine of her last play. She grabbed her hand and said in surprise, but I haven't seen her in months. Why are you so haggard? Lu Su wanted to say something but hesitated. Gu Yi pulled her to a secluded place and sat down. The two of them chatted in detail. I didn't expect you to be the young master of Gu Corporation. I only looked at you from afar. That aura of yours is indeed different from before. It's truly unrecognizable. Gui waved to the attendant and asked them to bring over some snacks and drinks. She helplessly said, it's just a coincidence. What about you? How have you been recently? Lu Su let out a long sigh. Her beautiful face was filled with sorrow. She said sadly, not good, I'm having a very bad time. She grabbed Gu Yi's hand, her eyes sparkling. Finally, she gritted her teeth and said, a few days ago, a new actress came to our galaxy. The little girl looks very thin and weak, but her wrists are very domineering. In order to stand firm, she took advantage of me in the company. Not to mention flaunting my clothes and accessories, I even had the higher-ups drive me out of the sea of stars. I can't afford the penalty at all, so I can only come out to run around and be my female companion. Gui frowned slightly and smiled coldly. This kind of thing was no longer strange in the film and television circles. Editor Gu, although some words are not good to hear, I think you should know. Lu Su pondered for a moment and said slowly, later, I found out that the patron behind that girl was President Yi. He gave me the gold card, and she also pressured the higher-ups to expel me. The reason why that girl targeted me was because we were familiar. Every word Lu Su said was like a sharp knife, stabbing straight into Gu Yi's chest, reminding her of what she saw in the cinema that day. He actually stood up for that woman to an indiscriminate degree. Gu Yi's heart had gradually become numb from the repeated injuries. Editor Gu, sometimes men can't believe it. You have to be on guard. Seeing her indifferent appearance, Lu Su grabbed her hand and spoke diligently. Gui pulled her hand back and picked up the red wine on the table. She said coldly, there is no relationship between me and Yi Yi anymore. There is no need to tell me anything about him in the future. Lu Su was shocked and almost couldn't hold the wine cup in her hand steadily. After calming down, she thought about everything that had happened recently. Yi Clan and Gu Clan's match, Gu Corporation Xiaodong understood the mystery behind it and didn't say anything else. Forget it, I'm busy. Goodbye. Wait, you go to Chung Clan tomorrow. We are very good friends. If you are willing, go to his studio. At the very least, no one will bully you anymore. Gui stopped her. As a director, she really couldn't bear to let such a good actor die because of a man's foolishness. Chapter 187 Relinquish Your Hand to the Gu Clan Annual Meeting Hurry up! President Song and President Qin instructed the driver to park the car on the path opposite the E-Corporation building, and then got off the car and ran towards the lobby. You see, there are too many cars here, and we still have to walk such a long way. President Qin complained as he ran. The two stumbled into the hall. When they arrived at the door, they slowed down and sneaked in quietly. They pretended to find a seat in a corner. After sitting upright, they let out a sigh of relief and slowly wiped the sweat off their foreheads. 
Forget it, my heart has always been hanging. President Song lowered his voice and complained to President Chin, these giants are competing for the limelight. It's not like we shrimp and crab generals are suffering. Neither side dares to offend them. Stop. President Chin shook his hand slightly and glanced at the group of people walking towards them. The leader was a woman. She wore a pure white chiffon tuxedo. It was Prada's latest style. The price was not cheap. Her exquisite makeup was accompanied by a beautiful face. She was thin and small. She was especially adorable. Yi trusted aide Shen Yu, followed behind him and escorted him. Not bad. Soft and weak. No wonder he was able to enter President Yi's eyes. President Song's small, lustful eyes couldn't help but slide out of Little Yu's white bra. Before he could speak, Little Yu had already walked in front of them. Shen Yu looked at the sweat stains on their collar and smiled. President Song, President Qin, may I know which dish is more suitable for you too? The smile on their faces froze, mixed with a few teasing questions that made them not know how to answer. They stood up embarrassedly and tied their hands. It was Little Yu who broke the deadlock first and greeted them with a sweet smile, President Song, President Qin, it's my honor for you two to be here. Little Yu toasted you. A light sentence dispelled their awkwardness. They walked down the stairs and deliberately ignored Shen Yu's words. They smiled and praised Little Yu for a few words. Then the group of people walked forward. President Song and President Qin took their seats and heaved a sigh of relief. This Shen Yu was still as cunning and sinister as before. He had to be unforgiving. However, Yi Yi took this sister seriously and actually sent her his confidant general. He won't complain to Yi Yi about our neglect, will he? President Song seemed to suddenly recall something as he nervously grabbed President Qin's hand. President Qin was open-minded. There are so many things going on. When that brat is done, he will have forgotten about us. However, in a dark corner not far away, Yi Yi leaned lazily on an armchair and slowly shook the goblet in his hand, listening to their conversation clearly. Humph, their calculations are quite shrewd. It looks like two more will be removed from the list of cooperative enterprises in E Corporation next year. The cold red wine slowly slid past the crystal goblet. The rich wine fragrance was dense in the air and the tip of his nose moved slightly. Yi Yi inexplicably remembered the smell of a grapefruit that he had not seen for a long time. What do you think is the origin of this young miss? Where is she from President Yi? Why haven't we seen him? President Song looked left and right TSK 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 TSK. She's just a loving sister. It's already worthy of her name to hold a ceremony. It would be too flattering for her to personally show up. President Qin took a sip of the red wine in his glass, revealing his greed. President Song looked at the beauty who had already gone far away and pushed President Qin. Which one do you think is better, Sister Qin or that daughter of Gu Clan? He said lecherously. Little Sister Qin? Yi Yi frowned slightly and his cold eyes looked over there sharply. It seemed that if the two of them didn't suffer some pain today, they wouldn't be able to learn properly. President Qin thought about it and frowned, I don't have the heart to think about it. Then he looked around and deliberately lowered his voice. Is that Gu Clan daughter Mrs. E? I think they look alike. If she really is, then I don't understand what she's singing in this play today. No, I'm also muttering in my heart. This is not a trap that the two of them have set up for us. Before President Song could finish his words, he choked on his throat and stood up trembling. President Qin looked at him strangely and smiled, Why are you still standing up? Why are you just saying that? A cold and sharp sound line descended from above his head. President Qin turned his head in disbelief, and Iya's cold and fierce face magnified in front of him in the neon light. What did you say? President Qin suddenly jumped in fright. He shrank back and turned the chair behind him. A putong sound attracted the attention of everyone present. He was half lying on the ground, the chair pressing on his leg, making a round face look like a pig's liver in embarrassment. President Song looked at Yi Yi's faint anger and his face turned pale. He felt as if he was about to be burned. President Yi, just now we were just spouting nonsense. You, you must not take it to heart, he said incoherently, lowering his eyebrows. Yi Yi's gaze was sharp as he stepped forward and grabbed President Song's collar tightly. Have you seen Gu Yi? Where is she? He growled. President Song hesitated as if an egg was stuck in his throat. His face was purple and he didn't know how to answer. If he said it wrongly, the baleful god in front of him would probably not spare him. Speak! Yi Yi roared as his hands tightened. The veins on his forehead started to pop out. President Song choked with difficulty and said, Don't get excited. Let go first. I, I can't breathe. 
Yi Yi threw away his sleeves and let go of his hand. His cold eyes were filled with sharpness as he stared at the two of them. President Song took a deep breath and said, We saw Gu Clan Xiaodong and Mrs. Yi at the annual meeting. I just don't know if she is. President Qin on the ground hurriedly nodded in agreement. Yi frowned and thought for a moment. He immediately figured out the joint stronghold. That's right. Who else could hide under his nose other than Gu Clan's forces? The results of the previous investigation had been unknown. It seemed that Gu Yi and Gu Clan really had a deep relationship. Without waiting for the crowd to respond, Yi Yi strode towards the door and coldly instructed the driver, go to the Gu Clan annual meeting immediately. Everyone was still shocked by President Qin's comical fall when President Song brought them into another wave of shocking news. When they reacted, how could they see the people of Yi Yi? What? Gu Clan Xiaodong is Yi Yi's wife. As the host of this banquet, Yi Yi actually went to the Gu Clan annual meeting. A series of accidents caused everyone to lose interest. Originally, they wanted to talk about the cooperation with Yi Yi in the coming year. Who knew that he would leave after saying a few words from the beginning to the end, and now he had completely left. A group of business elites and celebrities took their leave one after another. A fame banquet began with a grand opening but ended with a bleak ending. Little Yu stood at the door and welcomed the guests. Although his face was filled with displeasure and grief, his heart was filled with hatred. What a Yi Yi! The banquet was something he wanted to host. It was fine just to use his name to demonstrate towards Gu Clan. Now he actually left quietly. What did he mean? Could it be that she by Little Yu is so cheap that she can't be needed? Shen Yu stood beside her and knew that she was feeling uncomfortable. He said slowly, I'll take care of this. If you're tired, you can go back first. The Little Yu committee shook its head in grievance. Brother Yi has already left. If I leave again, this banquet will be reduced to a complete joke. That's not good. Shen Yu looked at her pitifully and took a coat from the side to drape over Little Yu. He said angrily, Yi Yi has gone too far this time. He hastily rushed to Gu Clan without even figuring out what was going on. This wasn't embarrassing Little Yu. It was hard for Little Yu to be so sensible, but also for him, for the sake of E Corporation's reputation. Don't be sad. When he comes back, I will definitely help you get justice. The guests were all sent away, and Little Yu sat stiffly on the chair, looking like he was about to cry, which made people feel sad to see him. Shen Yu said this without hesitation. Little Yu endured the sparkle in his eyes and shook his head. No, big brother Shen, you work for brother E. Don't be unhappy with him because of me. After all, you don't have real power in E Corporation's hands, so what justice can you get for me? He whispered. As she spoke, she used the corner of her eyes to look at Shen Yu's face. The expression on Shen Yu's face froze. He who had always been as smooth as a fox was speechless. After a moment of confusion, he looked at Little Yu with his refined eyes and said seriously, is this your true words? Of course, as you can see, Brother E is only using me as a cover today. Who hasn't been a chess piece in his eyes all these years? If you really want to think about the future of the two of us, you should plan for yourself. Little Yu grabbed his hand and spoke earnestly. His charming eyes stared at his pitch black eyes all the time. Shin Yu looked at himself in Little Yu's eyes. His hands were tightly held by a pair of slender hands, and his delicate touch could not help but slide, causing his heart to itch. After a moment of obsession, a struggle flashed in Shen Yu's eyes. He supported Little Yu's shoulder and said, If you don't like me following behind Yi Yi all the time, how about we start a company on our own? Although it won't be too big in the beginning, believe me, I won't let you suffer. Little Yu looked at him in disbelief and asked in surprise, You mean you want to let go of your years of fighting in E Corporation? Why? You've clearly given so much. This fool, if he really withdrew from Yi e Corporation, wouldn't his plan be completely shattered? Yi e Yi and I have been brothers for many years. I am willing to help him. I will do anything to Yi e Corporation. Shin Yu said sincerely, his refined eyes calm, Little Yu, believe in my ability, okay? Little Yu hesitated, knowing that he couldn't convince him for the time being, so he nodded indifferently. You just said our future? Our future. Shin Yu grabbed Little Yu's hand and danced with excitement. Little Yu turned around and said coldly, I haven't figured it out yet. It depends on your performance in the future. Shin Yu hurriedly pulled her body and said urgently, How should I behave? What if I told you to keep a corporation in your pocket? Little Yu said half seriously and half jokingly. The smile on Shin Yu's face froze as he lowered his hand and remained speechless for a long time. I'm just teasing you. I'm serious. Little Yu chuckled, causing Yi Yi to laugh as well. Little Yu's clear eyes looked at Shin Yu's smiling face. 
a bright light flashed and disappeared. He thought that it would hurt the hearts of the people to obtain it and then lose it again. Chapter 188 The Dear One is Gone and the Chamber Remains Deserted Get to the annual meeting in Goo Clan within half an hour or you'll leave. Iyi got on the silver Cadillac and coldly put down this sentence to the driver. He then turned on his phone and dialed the unanswered number again. Ever since he left, Guyi's phone had never been answered. The driver looked at Iya's frightening expression through the reversing mirror. He immediately kicked the accelerator to the bottom, afraid that he would be fired by Iyi a step later. He only reacted after the car was speeding out. The president was going to Gu Corporation? What kind of situation was this? Iyi sat upright, his slender fingers constantly pressing down on his temples. The situation before him had already exceeded his expectations. If Gu Yi was really Gu Kuang's granddaughter, the materials in his hands would undoubtedly be confirmed. Then Gu Yi's current situation would be extremely dangerous. There were no lights on in the car. Yi Yi was used to thinking in the dark. A road light. The neon light suddenly hit his face through the window. His cold face was somewhat tired and worried. He looked angrily at the streets outside the window, his eyes shining profoundly. President, we're here. Seeing the minute hand approaching the last minute, the driver anxiously parked his car at the entrance of the embroidered club. He heaved a long sigh of relief, and his rice bowl was finally preserved. Yi Yi pushed open the door and got out of the car. He hurriedly walked towards the front hall. Sorry, sir, our annual meeting is over. The security guard at the entrance reached out to stop him. His stiff voice was filled with displeasure. Move aside. Yi Yi coldly raised his eyes and looked straight ahead. Sir, please the two of them did not have the slightest intention of moving aside. Iyi did not wait for them to finish their sentence. He raised his foot and turned around. In the blink of an eye, two security guards with big arms and big waists fell to the ground. Ayo, he could not get up. Iyi strode into the front hall and scanned the surroundings. The waiters were collecting the dishes and chopsticks. The gorgeous ones had been removed and placed aside. In twos and threes, men and women dressed in suits and luxurious clothes walked towards the hall. This was clearly the last batch to leave. There was no Gui inside. Yi Yi strode forward and grabbed a random person and asked, Where's Gui? Yi e President Yi Yu, why are you here? The captured man was dressed in a black suit and looked like a successful entrepreneur. He collapsed in front of Yi Yi and couldn't even speak properly. Speak! Yi Yi grabbed his collar and his cold voice caused everyone present to tremble at the same time. They all put down the work in their hands in shock. Miss Gu Clan left long ago. She said that the old man was a little uncomfortable and the annual meeting ended early. The man hurriedly spat out everything he knew. Hearing this, Yi Yi was stunned and let him go. The man immediately ran away, afraid that he would be affected. This is weird. Isn't President Yi hosting a party for her godsister? Why are you here? Yi Yi secretly looked around. There was no trace of Gu Yi. Her cold and solemn brows were filled with loneliness. Was that person Gu Yi? What kind of conspiracy was Gu Clan hiding this time? President Yi, why are you here for our annual meeting? It's a pity that you're too late. A mocking voice sounded from behind him. Yi Yi turned around and saw Li Xiangnan slowly walking towards him. His shrewd face was filled with a faint smile. Li Xiangnan. Yi Yi called out his name easily, his brows full of disdain. He had already fought Li Xiangnan when he first took over E Corporation Enterprises. Whether it was EQ or strategy, this person could not be underestimated. However, in the end, he was still defeated by his subordinates. However, if his previous adjustment was true, then Gu Yi would definitely not be his opponent. President Yi, according to seniority, I can afford to call you Uncle Li. Li Xiangnan walked to his side, holding a faint smile on his knife-like face, speaking for granted. I will never be polite to a defeated general. Yi Ye's cold words caused Li Xiangnan's expression to instantly change. He stared fixedly at Yi Yi, his deep gaze filled with anger, almost piercing through Yi Yi. Yi Yi stared straight at him, not letting go of his gaze at all, and for a moment, the two of them were at loggerheads. After a while, Li Xiangnan suddenly smiled and looked down at Yi Yi. President Yi is like this, but Gui keeps calling me Uncle Li for attentiveness. Hearing this, Yi Ye's eyes lit up. His brows knitted together and he asked, Miss Gu Clan is Gu Yi? Have you seen her already? Li Xiangnan looked at him proudly, rubbed his chin and said, President Yi is so anxious to know our identity as Xiao Dong. Could it be that he has cowed out under her pomegranate dress? Yi looked at him coldly and didn't say anything else. He turned around to leave. 
He knew that he couldn't get any information from Li Xiangnan, so he didn't want to waste any more time here. If they don't go far, he should be able to find them by following the signs of the driver. Li Xiangnan hurriedly stood in front of him and said in a gentle voice, but just joking, why is President Yi so anxious? Come and sit over there and have a good talk, all right? Yi Yi coldly looked at the smile on his face and pondered for a moment. After Li Xiangnan bowed, he followed him. Gu Corporation's whereabouts had always been mysterious. If he didn't find out from him this time, it was unknown how long the next time he saw them would be. The two sat upright in the private room, and Li Xiangnan ordered coffee and dessert for the two of them. President Yi hurry over. I'm afraid we haven't had enough time to eat yet. Let's make do with it. As Li Xiangnan spoke, he made a gesture of extending his hand to invite him. Yi Yi glanced at the dessert on the table with a cold face and said straightforwardly, I'm afraid President Li isn't just treating me to dessert, is he? President Yi is really straightforward. Li Xiangnan took a sip of the coffee on the table and said with a shrewd expression, I know what President Yi wants. President Yi can probably guess what I want. How about we go in circles and work together? Yi Ye's cold face did not understand at all. He leaned back in his chair and smiled disdainfully for a long time. There is nothing to cooperate with a defeated general. Li Xiangnan was not annoyed. He took out a photo from his bosom and handed it to Yi Yi. President Yi is not interested in me. I wonder if he is interested in the person in the photo. Yi Yi leaned forward slightly and looked at the picture Li Xiangnan was pushing towards him. With a single glance, his eyes changed. He picked up the picture and examined it carefully. The picture was very blurry. It was obvious that it was a sneak shot, but the slender figure he could clearly distinguish was Gu Yi. The old man she supported was Gu Corporation's helmsman, Gu Kuang. Suppressing his desire to put the photo in his arms, Yi Yi put it back on the table with an indifferent expression and said calmly, Presidently, what do you mean? Li Xiangnan put away the photos, rubbed the exquisite silver spoon on the table and smiled, Don't tell me President Yi doesn't want to embrace her again? I can help you. Yi Yi glanced sideways at him and sneered, You have such good intentions? After this is done, the person will be yours. How about we split it in half, Gu Corporation? Li Xiangnan paused word by word. He believed that this condition was enough to tempt people. Yi Yi smiled coldly and stared straight at him with a sharp gaze. President Li has finally spoken his mind. Li Xiangnan was slightly stunned then smiled. He pretended to be relaxed and leaned back. People die for money, birds die for food. President Yi chose to cooperate with me today. I will definitely not treat you badly. Yi Yi raised his eyes to look at him and smiled playfully. Do you think I'll need you to treat me well? His cold brows were filled with disdain. Li Xiangnan was speechless. He smiled embarrassedly and said, President Yi doesn't love rivers and mountains. Don't blame me for not reminding you. Master Gu is quite optimistic about the young master of the Lan family. He intends to recruit him as his son-in-law to make up for the regrets of the previous generation. Miss is also very close to him now. She is very busy eating, watching movies, and enjoying herself. Enough. Before he could finish speaking, Yi Yi interrupted. His words were filled with anger. This woman had only left for less than a month before she could endure such loneliness. She knew how she had managed to survive this period of time. She knew that she had been looking for her for a while and was about to go crazy. She, on the other hand, was at ease on the side, as if Miss Gu Clan had not said anything, and there were people who were gallanting about her, and that was indeed a good skill. Why can't President E take it anymore? Oh right, you know this young master of the Lan Clan, it's Lan Iran. Li Xiangnan proudly watched Yi Ye's expression change. He slowly said Lan Iran's name. He had once frantically pursued Gu Yi, causing a storm in the city and making Yi, Yi jealous. He didn't believe that Yi, Yi would be able to calm down if this powerful medicine continued. Hearing Yi Ye's name, Lan Iran's cold eyebrows narrowed slightly. It was filled with the dangerous aura before the storm. Very good, he had expended all his effort to drive Lan Iran out of the country. He didn't expect that they would get together again so quickly. President Yi, you've been thrown into chaos. Master Gu Clan has some complaints about you. If you want to win back the beauty again, I'm afraid you'll have to cooperate with me right now. Li Xiangnan tried to persuade Yi Yi further. Yi Yi laughed furiously and calmed down. How can you help me? As long as we take down Gu Corporation, Gu Yi will naturally let you do as she pleases. I have experienced President Yi's methods before. Li Xiangnan smiled maliciously. His slightly raised eyebrows were filled with schemes, as if he had already seen his own future as the master of Gu Corporation. 
Yi Yi understood what he meant and confirmed his previous conclusion. It seemed that Gu Yi's mother's death, Zhang Qishan, had only served as a final stimulus. There must be someone else among them who had played an unknown role. I will settle the matter between Gu Yi and me. I won't trouble you. Yi Yi stood up and left after leaving such a cold sentence. Li Xiang Nan was left sitting on the spot, gnashing his teeth angrily and cursing softly, Yi Yi, you won't join me today. I will definitely make you regret it tomorrow. Seeing Yi Yi's tall back disappear from the front hall, he took out his phone from his pocket and slowly pressed the dial button. Yi Yi got on the car and signaled for the driver to return to the old Yi clan mansion. Although he couldn't find Gui today, a big stone finally fell from his heart. At the very least he knew that she was safe now. With Master Gu Corporation taking care of her in Gu Clan, his life should not be bad either. However, when he thought of Lan Iran, his relaxed brows instantly turned cold and fierce. Chapter 189 Illness is Fake After hurrying out of the clubhouse, Gui supported Gu Kuang, her face full of anxiety. Grandfather, do you feel better now? Gu Kuang stroked his chest and suddenly laughed loudly. He adjusted his posture comfortably and leaned back on the back of the car seat. His aged face was warm and he didn't feel the slightest bit sad just now. Gui was stunned. Her hand stopped in midair and she was puzzled, Grandfather, you? Gu Kuang looked at her proudly and smiled, how is Grandfather's acting? Did he scare you, a director? Grandfather, you're just pretending. Gui breathed a sigh of relief. She shook Gu Kuang's arm coquettishly and acted coquettishly. The driver at the side also chuckled softly and interrupted, Miss, you don't know that this is the chairman's specialty. Gu Kuang rolled his eyes at the man and held Gu Yi's hand. Guess what grandpa wants to pretend to be sick and leave? He said happily. Gu Yi shook her head helplessly and thought, ever since you picked up Butler's phone, you've been feeling unwell. Could something have happened at home? Thinking of this, Gu Yi frowned again with great difficulty. It's Xioma, Gu Kuang said happily, dancing like a child. Gu Yi was shocked. Her amber eyes were filled with disbelief. She hurriedly asked, why did he come? Did the public send someone to pick him up? It was that brat who jumped out of the wall and found his own home, said Gu Kuang, stroking his beard with delight. As expected of my descendants of Gu clan, he said, he is indeed a capable man. Gu Yi's eyebrows relaxed and she was secretly afraid that this child was really messing around. She came out alone in the middle of the night. What should she do if she encountered danger? The car stopped outside the Gu clan courtyard. When Xiaoma heard the sound of the engine shutting down, he ran out of the hall anxiously. He raised his head proudly and threw himself into Gu Kuang's embrace. He puffed his bun face and said, Great grandfather, is Xiaoma smart? Gu Kuang bent down and hugged Xiaoma in his arms. He pinched his round little face and pointed at the tall Christmas tree in the courtyard and the vegetable lanterns hanging around the fences, corners, and eaves. Do you like it? He spoiled. Grandpa told them to prepare these for Xiaoma. Xiaoma looked around. The lanterns were all over the eaves. They were all different colors, making people's faces look colorful and interesting. Finally, his gaze stopped on the Christmas tree full of gifts. He pointed his chubby little finger over there and said, Grandpa, Mommy, are those also for Xiaoma? Gui looked at Xiaoma's pitch black and shining eyes. Her heart was soft. The warning she had thought of just now could not be said. She just quietly looked at the little person who was connected to her bloodline. Her eyes were filled with love. Of course it's all for Xioma. Gu Kuang carried him to the tree and pointed at the delicate gift box on it. Whichever Xiaoma likes, great-grandpa will take it off for you, he said. Xiaoma rolled his big dark eyes and looked at the tree full of gifts. Grandpa, Xiaoma wants chocolate and macaron. Which one of them is it? Gu Kuang nodded Xiaoma's forehead and scolded, you little ghost, I'll ask them to prepare it for you. As Gui spoke, she carried Xiaoma into the front hall. Gui followed closely behind while the servants stood at the side, waiting for orders at any time. Xiaoma, come and tell great-grandpa how you got out. Has anyone from dad noticed you? Gu Kuang put the hibiscus cake in Xiaoma's hand. Xiaoma took the cake and chewed it into his mouth. He squinted his eyes comfortably and said, of course not. Xiaoma threw them away at school. After a piece of cake was eaten, Xiaoma's mood suddenly fell. The round bun's face was wrinkled into a ball. He turned around and leaned against Gu Yi's embrace. Mommy, when are you going home? Don't you like the feeling that there's no mother at home? That bad woman will bully Xiaoma. Bad woman? Gu Yi said apologetically as she gently stroked Xiaoma's head. It's that little you. Dad threw a party for her today. She lives at home and orders her around. 
Uncle Butler and Aunt Little Lon don't like her, but Dad insists on taking her as his sister. I don't want such an unreasonable aunt. Little you? Isn't it Linger? Gu Yi straightened Xiaoma's lazy posture and asked seriously. Hearing this, Xiaoma immediately exploded, what? There's another Linger. A little you has already made his family run wild and he loves another Linger. Isn't he going to run away? Seeing that he didn't know what was going on, Gu Yi didn't say anything further. She just asked a few common questions. Xiaoma answered hesitantly one by one, but she was still worried about when Gu Yi would return home. Don't worry. After this semester is over, mom will help you transfer to another school. After that, we will live here with great-grandfather, okay? Gu Yi said carefully as she carefully sized up Xiaoma's expression, afraid that the only child would suffer any harm. Oh, Xiaoma knows. But what about dad? Xiaoma raised his head and worriedly asked the question in his heart. Mom left. Dad was already sad enough. If he left too, how boring would dad be alone? And that wicked woman, if she hadn't watched over there, she would have eaten her father. Dad doesn't need us anymore. Someone will take care of him. The sadness and loneliness in Gu Yi's words made people's hearts ache. Seeing her sadness, Gu Kuang immediately carried Xiaoma over and changed the topic. Does Xiaoma like the snacks from his great-grandfather? I like it. Xiaoma immediately put down his previous caution and looked at Gu Kuang with his star eyes in a flattering manner. Gu Kuang took a piece of thousand-layer durian crispy from his plate and said, Then tell me, Xiaoma, how did you find this place? Xiaoma took the durian crisp and smiled sweetly, I remembered the way I came last time and sneaked out while the bodyguards weren't paying attention. Gu Kuang stroked his beard and was filled with gratification. The journey from here to school was not far. The child had actually been able to find it in the same way at night the last time he came. It could be seen that his mind was extraordinary. Seeing that Xiaoma is so capable, great-grandpa is relieved. Xiaoma listened to the compliment and smiled embarrassedly. Actually, I didn't remember everything. The driver spared me for a long time before finding the gate. Strangely, I clearly remembered the road, but I still spared it for a long time. Gu Kuang smiled and stroked the top of his hair, explaining carefully, of course. Although this is a monastery, it has some reputation. Otherwise, wouldn't we allow those annoying journalists and celebrities to disturb us? Xiaoma nodded and said, no wonder daddy sent so many people but couldn't find mommy. Mommy, are you really not going to have a father? If you still want one, you have to go home quickly so that that bad woman doesn't occupy the nest. Xiaoma wiped the refuse from the corner of his mouth and ran over to Gu Yi with a serious expression. A small glutinous rice dumpling waved its fat arm and spoke like an adult. Gu Kuang was both gratified and distressed to see it. Gu Yi was stunned by the question. She asked herself, she really couldn't let go of Yi Yi right now, but it was only a matter of time. Where else could Yi Yi have her own seat beside her now? Good Shama, you still don't understand all of this. Gui smiled and held him in her arms. Her soft voice carried a trace of loneliness, causing people to feel cold in their hearts. Shoma's round face also dropped, and he muttered with a sad expression, but Shoma wants a father. His milky voice was filled with heartache and hope. Gui slowly rubbed his back and comforted him, Xiaoma, don't worry. Daddy will always be your father, eh? Xiaoma nodded obediently and shrunk his mouth. He did not say anything, but his round face did not rise again. Seeing his sad expression, Gu Kuang felt his heart melt. He stretched out his hand and instructed Butler, who was standing beside him, go and fetch the chocolate that has just been flown in from France. As he said that, he took Xiaoma into his arms and coaxed, good boy, we're not sad. Can you eat the chocolate grandpa gave you later? Xiaoma's round little face immediately turned cloudy and clear. His dark little eyes stared in the direction where Butler had left. He was so greedy that his saliva almost came out and he waited eagerly. Seeing that he was happy again, Gu Kuang's expression also softened. He handed Butler the chocolate in his hand and smiled, how about going to the room to eat? Also, take a look at the toys and books that grandpa prepared for you. Is it all right? Xiaomar nodded and took the chocolate and went downstairs with Butler. Gu Yi leaned forward slightly, knowing that Gu Kuang had something to say to her when he pushed Xiaoma away. Gu Kuang sighed and slowly said, Little Yi, since you still can't let go, ask him clearly. Your identity in B-City is no longer a secret after today's annual meeting. If Yi Yi has the intention to find you sooner or later, you will meet face to face sooner or later. It's better to take the initiative to meet the enemy instead of being passive. Grandfather, the relationship between me and him has already passed. Don't worry, if we meet in the mall one day, I won't be soft-hearted. Gui said it was difficult. 
Through tonight's annual meeting, she already knew that E.E. E. was also interested in bidding for next year's movie and TV IP. If they did not change their minds, it would be a matter of time before the two families met. Was this the reason why he had been looking for her again? But did E.E. E. really think that she would be tricked by him again and again? What President Song and President Chin said at the annual meeting is still in my ears. Not counting a linger, I actually let little you live in an old E clan mansion. Hearing what she said, Gu Kuang nodded his head in relief and said slowly, It's good that you know. E Yi is a very deep person. Grandpa is always afraid that you will suffer in front of him. I'm afraid he's not as simple as they imagined. I'm afraid that Li Xiang Nan will continue to be lacking in that matter. I'm not afraid of him unless you're watching from behind me. Gui leaned against Gu Kuang's arms and acted coquettishly. At this moment, she didn't want to think about anything anymore. She just wanted to pause for a moment. Chapter 190 Together with Li Xiangnan? The afternoon sunshine carried a bit of lazy warmth, directly sprinkled into the window. Shining on people's body is also warm. The old E clan mansion was in a miserable state. Butler was pacing up and down outside the study. He was full of unease. The servants did their jobs and did not dare to slack off. The breakfast and lunch on the table had been warmed up several times, but the master did not go out. When Yi Yi returned to the old mansion, he locked himself up in the study room. No one was there and he hadn't come out yet. So was Little Yu. Ever since he returned from the reception last night, his face had been filled with displeasure. He had been locked up in his room alone, and no one had been seen. Inside the study room, the doors and windows were tightly closed. The thick curtains were stretched out, and the gorgeous tassels hung straight to the ground. The sunlight outside did not penetrate at all. Yi Yi looked at the information on the table with a cold and gloomy expression. There was a shocking description of the complicated internal relations of the Gu Corporation group and the entanglement between Gu Yingji and them when he was alive. Yi Yi's deep brows were filled with contemplation. He suddenly stood up and found the agate necklace that Gu Yi had left on him from the hidden compartment in front of the bookcase. Compared to the information, it was exactly the same. In other words, Gu Yingji had once tried to return to Gu clan, but was obstructed from doing so and ended up with hatred. He thought about it and quickly went through those people in his mind, locking onto a few possible targets. Among them, Li Xiangnan must be playing an insidious role. Knock. The knock on the door interrupted Iya's contemplation. His cold eyebrows furrowed slightly and he said in a deep voice, What's the matter? Sir, Miss Yu is trying to run away from home. We can't stop him. Come out and take a look. A somewhat helpless voice came from Butler's old age. Yi Yi stroked his eyebrows, got up exhausted, and strode out of the door. Before they could reach the front hall, they heard Little Yu's crying accusations and the servant's trembling persuasion. The wheels of the suitcase were rubbing against the smooth floor, producing a thud that made them feel extremely impatient when they stopped in their ears. Little Yu, what are you doing? Yi Yi reprimanded him. The complicated affairs of the past few days had already worn away his patience. Moreover, Little Yu had caused a small disturbance in the past three days and a big disturbance in the past five days, which really made him angry. Little Yu was unusually calm and did not look at him. He did not make trouble or retort loudly. He only pursed his lips, which did not have any blood, and silently shed tears. Seeing this, Yi Yi frowned and walked to her side. He softened his tone and said, What's wrong with you? Little Yu raised his eyes to look at him. His large watery eyes were bloodshot. He stared fixedly at Yi Yi. He was pitiful, as if he had suffered an unbearable grievance. Yi Yi shook her head helplessly. In the end, she was still a child. She was too impatient just now. She took a few napkins from the side and stuffed them into her hand. She said slowly, who bullied you? Tell brother Yi. Little Yi turned his head and ignored him. He was so sad that he couldn't stop sobbing. He whispered, who else is there but you? Yi Yi frowned and patiently urged, don't be angry. Why are you still as willful as you were when you were a child? You don't care about me at all. You said that you wanted me to be your sister, but you never took me to heart. Little you said angrily, choking up as he spoke. Tears rolled down his cheeks. He didn't need to wipe the paper in his hand and allowed the tears to fall down his cheeks. Yi Yi softened his heart and said softly, nonsense. Why did you say such things today at the reception that was just held yesterday? He really couldn't understand the hearts of the girls. Yesterday he was clearly overjoyed, but why did he look like this today? The entanglement between Gu Yi and Gu Corporation had already exhausted his heart rate. He had to deal with Little Yu's glass heart. He was really tired. If only Shen Yu was here, he would be the most attractive to girls. 
Little you walked up to him and asked angrily, Why did you leave yesterday's reception halfway, or did you go to Goo Corporation? This is clearly slapping me in the face, saying that my god sister is inferior to Miss Goo Clan. E Yi was speechless. After a long moment of silence, he was unable to say a word of relief. It's fine if you use my proper name to compete for the limelight in Goo Corporation. You still left for no reason during the banquet. The more little you spoke, the more sad he became. In the end, he squatted on the ground and hugged his shoulders, sobbing and crying. Iyi had no choice but to help her up and sit down on the sofa. He was truly ashamed of this matter and could only say, All right, if you're unhappy, I'll give you another reception, all right? Little you sobbed and shook his head, hesitating, Who cares about the party? What I care about is your attitude towards me. I know that brother E is only willing to take care of me for the sake of my sister, but in fact it's a big problem to dislike me, isn't it? E Yi frowned. A layer of frost appeared on his cold face. During this period of time, it was extremely annoying for little Yi to bring Linger out to talk about things when he was unhappy. Today it was the same. His apology had been diluted by his daily threats and grievances. He said coldly, if you really think that way, you should behave yourself. Don't make trouble all day long. A sharp voice made little you speechless. He just turned around and sat at the side, silently crying. Seeing her like this, Yi Yi could not bear the anger in his heart anymore. He waved his hand to the frightening person on the side and said, Help Miss pack up and serve her lunch. After saying that, he walked out of the door. Little Yu's eyes were red. Seeing his figure disappear at the corner of the front hall, he also went upstairs angrily, allowing Butler to persuade him without paying attention. Returning to his room, Little Yu wiped away the tears on his face, his eyes fiercely hitting the doll beside him on the ground, and then he dialed Limo's number. You're out there, but you want me to suffer alone in the old mansion. She began by complaining as if she wanted to vent all the grievances she had just suffered from Yi Yi. Liamo wasn't angry either. He said with a hint of joy with your bad temper, which man can take it. Just like your sister, you should be considerate and gentle, making people feel heartache. I'm not her. Little you resolutely refused. She did not understand why she was never as good as her sister in the eyes of others. For example, if she was her sister today, Yi Yi would probably not have lost her temper. All right, cut the crap. I haven't been idle these past few days. I've already connected to Li Xiangnan's line. He promised to work with us to trick Yi Yi. Li Mo's words were filled with pride. This was the result of half a month of hard work. He's not from Gu Clan. Why should he cooperate with us? Little Yu had some doubts. She said that she was cooperating with them, so it would be better if they didn't put her on the spot at that time. He wants to get Gu Corporation. We want to move down Yi Yi. Of course, it's a close match. I can only blame Yi Yi for bringing him up. He actually wants to go to the deep water of Goo Corporation for that woman. Then don't blame us for being ruthless. Li Mo's low voice was unbridled and filled with high spirits. Little Yi thought for a moment and suddenly smiled, you still have a way. It seems that I have to step up on Shin Yu's side. After hanging up the phone, Little Yu put it away neatly and deliberately added some concealment to his eye makeup before leaving. When he arrived at the mystery CAFA she had previously arranged, Shin Yu had already waited there long ago. As soon as he saw her appear, he hurriedly greeted her, sit down and see if I like it. As he spoke, he gallantly pulled up the chair for her. Little Yu looked listlessly at the cappuccinos on the table. Strawberry black forest cake, a warm feeling slowly crept into her heart. These were all things she liked back then. It was difficult for Shin Yu to remember clearly that the people around her were probably the only ones who treated her sincerely. They didn't treat her as a chess piece, nor did they treat her as someone else's substitute. Unfortunately, she could only let down this friendship. Little Yu, what's wrong with you? Why are your eyes so red? Are you crying? Shin Yu looked at Little Yu carefully and asked with concern. His refined face was as warm as a gentle stream, making people feel especially anxious when they saw it. Little Yu dodged his gaze and said grievously, nothing much. Brother E only scolded me a few times. Her lips were casually written, but tears kept flowing down her cheeks. The deliberately lowered cry made people feel wrong for her. Shin Yu stretched out his hand and hesitated for a moment. In the end, he still tried to hold her in his arms and comforted her gently. Why did Yi lecture you? Are you unhappy in the old house? It had been a long time since his sincere concern. Little Yu leaned against his embrace and felt a rare warmth. Originally it was just an act, but his sobs carried a bit of true emotion. He cried even more uncontrollably. I complained to Brother E about last night, and he was annoyed. 
He said he would take me in for the sake of his sister and tell me to behave. She sobbed as she spoke, choking, how pitiful. Shin Yu lowered his head and looked at the red-nosed and red-eyed girl in his arms. His heart was in a mess. He gently rubbed her back and explained, Yi Yi has been uneasy about her sister-in-law recently. It was also because of her that he left in a hurry yesterday. His temper is a little impatient. Don't take it to heart. Little Yi looked up at him and said grievously, Big brother Shin, am I particularly annoying? Why don't they like me? Nonsense, you are the best in my heart. Shin Yu hooked her little nose as she spoke. Little you put it away as soon as he saw it, wiped his tears with a napkin and smiled sweetly, you're still the best for me. Seeing that she was in a better mood, Shin Yu let go of her hand and sat to the side. You're still crying and laughing as you were when you were young, he said with a smile. You're not afraid of being laughed at. Little you lowered his head and remained silent. He held the silver spoon in his hand and stirred the coffee in the cup. Big brother Shin, since brother E has accepted me as her sister, will she give me the shares in E Corporation? He said. Hearing the sudden question, Shin Yu subconsciously frowned and pondered for a moment before saying, Little Yu, what exactly do you want to do? It's just a joke. Are you serious? Seeing his expression change, Little Yu immediately explained. She released her hand and stopped talking about this topic. Her eyes flickered and there was a hint of calculation hidden in the corner of her eyes. She did not expect that Shin Yu would be invulnerable. It seemed that it was impossible to start from this aspect.